On Wednesday, Firebolt unveiled the Firebolt Dream, a wrist phone operating on Android with 4G LTE support. Distinguishing itself from the company's other smartwatches, this model asserts its independence by performing various smartphone functions, including making and receiving calls, without the need for a paired smartphone. The device, running on Android, provides access to multiple OT platforms, boasts compatibility with Google Play Store apps, and incorporates health and fitness tracking features. With substantial usage, the Firebolt Dream is claimed to deliver up to four hours of battery life. Pricing and availability. Available in 12 strap colors, the Firebolt Dream starts at 5,999 rupees in India. Options such as Aqua Surge, Cherry Hug, Coral Breeze, Forest Fringe, Fusion Flicker, and Shadow Glide fall under this price. Leather strap variants like Coco Couture and Midnight Grays are priced at 6,299 rupees, while metallic strap options like Irish Glam, Midnight Steel, and Sky Sizzle are listed at 6,499 rupees. Specifications and Features The Firebolt Dream Wrist Phone features a 2.02-inch screen with 320x386 pixels, 60Hz refresh rate, and 600 nits peak brightness. It is powered by a quad-core ARM Cortex A7 MP chipset, Mali TA20 MP1 GPU, 2 GB RAM, and 16 GB onboard storage, running on Android 8.1 out of the box. Connectivity includes 4G LTE, via a nano SIM, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. Pre-installed with Google Play Store, the device supports various applications and games. Additionally, it provides access to OT platforms like GeoCinema, Netflix, and Amazon Prime Video. Health features encompass heart rate, SpO2, and calorie monitors. The Firebolt Dream packs an 800 mAh battery, requiring 2 hours for a full charge, offering 36 hours of standby battery life, and up to 4 hours with heavy use. With an IP67 rating for dust and splash resistance, it measures 49.5 mm x 13.5 mm x 13.5 mm and weighs 50 g. Chapter 1, A Demon's Heart Never Has Regrets, Even in Death. Fang Yuan, quietly hand over the spring autumn cicada and I'll give you a quick death. Old bastard Fang, stop attempting to resist anymore, today all of the major factions of justice have combined together just to destroy your devil lair. This place is already covered in inescapable nets, this time you will definitely be decapitated. Fang Yuan you dem demon, just because you wanted to cultivate the spring autumn cicada, you've gone and killed thousands of people. You've committed too many unforgivable, heinous sins. Demon, 300 years ago you insulted me, took away my body's purity, killed my entire family and executed my nine generations. From that moment onwards, I hated you with a burning passion today, I want you to die. Fang Yuan was dressed in tattered deep green robes. His hair was messy, and his entire body was coated with blood. He looked around. The bloody robes floated gently in the mountain breeze, like a war banner. Fresh blood spilled from the body's various wounds. Fang Yuan had already created a sizable pool of blood beneath his feet after only a few minutes of standing there. Enemies surrounded him, there was no way out. He was almost certainly going to die here. Fang Yuan definitely grasped his condition but even in the face of death, his demeanor remained serene. His eyes were silent, like deep pools of water in a well, seemingly endless. The major forces of justice that had surrounding him included both experienced elders and youthful, gifted heroes. Some were yelling, some were sneering, there were eyes that gleamed with brightness, and some were clutching their wounds while looking on frightened. They did not move, everyone was concerned about Fang Yuan's ultimate onslaught. This anxious time lasted six hours till sunset, when the sun poured its beams over the mountainside. It felt like the entire place was on fire at the time. Fang Yuan, who had been silent as a sculpture the whole time, slowly rotated his body. The warriors were immediately alerted, and they all made a large step backwards. The grey mountain rock beneath Fang Yuan's feet had long been dyed a dark scarlet. His face had turned deathly pale as a result of the excessive blood loss, but... In the afterglow of the sunset, it took on a beautiful brilliance. Looking at the lowering sun, Fang Yuan laughed gently. The sun sets above the blue mountain, the autumn moon with the wind of spring. The morning is fine like hair and night is like snow, whether you succeed or fail when you look back there's nothing left. As he spoke, recollections of his prior existence on earth flashed before his eyes. 
He was initially a Chinese scholar on earth who came upon this realm. He lived a difficult life for 300 years and then another 200 years, almost 500 years of his life passed in the blink of an eye, so many memories that had been buried deep inside the heart began to resurface, bursting into life before his very eyes. I failed in the end. Feng Yuan groaned deeply, yet he had no regrets. This outcome was something he had expected. He had anticipated this when he made his initial selection. To be a demon means to be brutal and terrible, to murder and destroy. There is no place in heaven or on earth for such a thing to become an enemy of the world and then face the consequences. If the spring autumn cicada that I just cultivated is effective, I will still be a demon in my next life. Fang Yuan couldn't help but laugh at this thought. Wicked demon, what are you laughing about? Be careful everyone, the demon is going to attack before his final moments. Hurry up and surrender the spring autumn cicada. The warlords charged forward, with a loud bang, Fang Yuan was engulfed in a blinding burst of energy. The spring rain silently fell over Qing Mao Mountain. It was late at night, and a little breeze accompanied the rain. However, Qing Mao Mountain was not completely dark, from the side to the foot of the mountain, dozens of tiny lights gleamed like a dazzling band. These lights gleamed from lofty structures, and while they could not be compared to 10,000 lights, they were still a few thousand in number. Gu Yu, one, village was located on the mountain, adding a wonderful touch of human civilization to the wide and lonely landscape. In the heart of Guyu village stood a lovely pavilion. A big event was taking place at the time, and the lights were shining brighter than ever, radiating magnificence. Ancestors, please bless us. We pray that this ceremony will bring many young men of outstanding talent and intelligence, bringing their families new blood and hope. The head of the Guyu clan appeared middle-aged, his sideburns were graying and he was dressed in ceremonial white robes, kneeling on the brownish-yellow floor. His body was straight, his hands clasped together, his eyes securely shut as he prayed earnestly. He faced a tall black box with three tiers, each containing ancestral memorial tablets. Copper incense was burning on both sides of the tablets, and the smoke rose. Behind him, over ten people were kneeling in a similar fashion. They wore loose white ceremonial clothing and included all of the clan's elders, notable members, and those with significant authority. After finishing his prayers, the Guyu clan leader bowed and bent his waist, putting his two hands against the floor. There were light thuds as the forehead hit the brownish-yellow floor. The elders and influential clan members followed suit, gravely and quietly. The hall was filled with gentle thuds as heads hit the floor. When the ceremony ended, the congregation gently rose from the ground and moved solemnly out of the sacred shrine. The elderly in the hallway let out sighs of relief, and the atmosphere lightened. The noise of talking gradually increased. Time flies too quickly, in the blink of an eye, a year has gone by. The previous ceremony feels like it just happened yesterday, I can still recall it vividly. Tomorrow is the opening of the annual grand ceremony, I wonder what new clan blood will show up this year. Ah, I hope that some highly talented youths will appear. The Guyu clan hasn't seen a genius emerge for three years now, agreed. The Bai village, Xiong village these few years all had some talented geniuses appear. Especially that Bai Ningbing from the Bai clan, his natural talent is quite terrifying. It was unclear who had mentioned the name Bai Ningbing, but the elders' expressions began to display concern. The boy's qualifications were outstanding, after only two years of training. He had already achieved the rank of level 3 Gu Master. He could be considered the most prominent figure among the younger generation. It got to the point that the older generation could feel pressurized by the promising youth. He will eventually become a pillar of the Bai clan. At the very least, he would be an autonomous, powerful warrior. No one ever questioned this truth. But for this year's youths that will be participating in the ceremony, not all hope is lost. You're right. Fang Ji's side has appeared a young genius, able to start talking after three months, able to walk after four. At five years of age he was able to recite poetry, seems exceptionally intelligent, especially talented. What a pity that his parents died early, now he is being raised by his uncle and aunt. Yes, this one has wisdom at a young age, also harboring big ambitions. In the recent years I have heard his creations Zhang Jingju, Yang Mei and Zhang Cheng Ziyi, what a genius. The Guyu clan chief was the last to leave the ancestral temple. After carefully closing the door, he could hear the clan elders talking in the corridor. He realized right away that the elders were discussing the youth known as Guyu Fang Yuan at the time. As the clan's leader, 
It is natural to focus on the most exceptional and notable young members. Gu Yu Fang Yuan happened to be the most eye-catching of the youngsters. Experience has proven that individuals with photographic memory at a young age, those with strength to rival an adult, and those with other strong inborn skills all have exceptional cultivation characteristics. If this child shows a great potential, with great care, he could even compete against Binding Bing. Even if it is B grade, in the future, he could also become a banner of the Guyu clan. But with this sort of early intelligence, the percentage of B grade is not that big, but it is highly possible to be in a grade. With this thought, the Guyu clan head curled up his lips slowly into a smile. With a cough, he faced the clan elders and stated, Everyone, the hour is late, for tomorrow's opening ceremony. You should all rest well tonight and maintain your energy levels. The elders appeared astonished by his statements. They exchanged cautious glances. The clan leader's statements were well intended, but everyone understood what he was trying to express. Every year, the elders would struggle amongst themselves to win these young geniuses, resulting in inflamed ears and bleeding skulls. They should relax and refresh themselves until tomorrow, when the tournament begins. Especially with Gu Yu Feng Yuan, whose a grade potential was quite high, not to mention that both of his parents had died, and he was one of the only two remaining descendants of Fang Ji's bloodline. With tremendous care and training, one could assure himself a hundred years of riches. However, I'm going to go ahead and say what needs to be said first. When you compete, do it fair and square, no tricks and conspiracies are allowed, or damage to the clan's unity. Please keep this in mind, all of you the leader of the clan was sternly told. We wouldn't dare, we wouldn't dare. We'll keep it in mind. Then this is good night, please take care. The clan elders dispersed slowly, their minds deep in concentration. Shortly then, the lengthy corridor went quiet. The wind from the spring shower blew through the window, and the clan leader stepped gently towards it. He immediately breathed in the mountain's pure, damp air, which felt so pleasant. This was the third floor of the garret, and the clan leader stared out the window. He could see half of the Guyu village. Even though it was late at night, the majority of the residences in the village still had lights on, which was unusual. Tomorrow is the opening ceremony, and it is in everyone's best interests. A type of exciting yet tense atmosphere had surrounded the hearts of the clan's members, and many of them could not sleep well. This is what the clan hopes for in the future. The clan leader sighed, many lights flickering in his eyes. At the same time, a pair of clear eyes quietly glanced at the same lights gleaming in the night, filled with complex emotions. Guyu village, 500 years ago? Looks like the spring autumn cicada really worked. Fang Yuan calmly observed, standing at the window, allowing the rain from the wind to fall on his body. The purpose of this spring autumn cicada is to reverse time. The spring autumn cicada scored 7th in the 10 big mystical Gu rankings, indicating that it was more than just a creature. Simply put, it is the ability to be reborn. With the use of the spring autumn cicada, I have been reborn, going back to 500 years ago. Fang Yuan held out his hand, his gaze fixed on his own young and soft, pale palms, then slowly clinched them, accepting the truth of this reality with all his power. The sound of dripping rain hitting softly against the windowsill filled his ears, and he slowly closed his eyes, only to open them after a long time. He breathed a sigh of relief. 500 years of experience, it really feels like a dream. But he knew he wasn't dreaming. Chapter 2, Back in Time with 500 Years of Wisdom Legend says that there is a river of time in this realm. It helps the world's temporal flow and circulation. And by employing the spring autumn cicada's abilities, one can travel back upstream and revisit the past. There are many differing perspectives on this fabled tale. Many people don't believe it, and some are doubtful of the truth. Few individuals are truly willing to believe it. Because each time the spring autumn cicada is used, the user must pay with his life, allowing his entire body and cultivation to be the driving force behind its power. Such a price is simply too high, and people cannot accept the fact that after paying with their lives, they have no idea what will happen. So, even if someone owns the spring autumn cicada, they would not dare to utilize it so freely. What if the rumors were false, and it was all a scam? If Fang Yuan had not been trapped into such a situation, he would not have used it so quickly. But now, Fang Yuan is completely convinced. Because the truth had been exposed bare in front of his eyes, and he could not dispute it. He has actually been reborn. It's just a pity. From the start I had wasted an absurd amount of effort, killing hundreds of thousands of people, 
making even the heaven as furious and inciting people's vengeance, went through suffering and multiple hardships to finally attain and refine this good goo. Fang Yuan thought with a sigh, although he had been reborn, the spring autumn cicada did not accompany him. Humans are the greatest among countless of creatures, and goo represent the essence of heaven and earth. Goo comes in thousands of unique and intriguing shapes and sizes, there are too numerous to count. Some goo will entirely vanish after only one, two, or three uses. Some goo can be reused multiple times as long as it is not used above its limits. However, it is likely that the spring autumn cicada is one of those types that can only be utilized once before disappearing permanently. But even if it's gone, I can still refine another, I did it in my previous life, so why can't I do it in this life? Fang Yuan's heart burst forth with ambitious and resolute impulses when the thoughts of pity were pushed aside. Being able to rebirth made the loss of the spring autumn cicada completely tolerable. Not to mention, he had something valuable with him, so he didn't lose everything. This priceless gem was his 500-year collection of memories and experiences. In his memory, there are numerous riches and valuable goods that no one has yet opened. All major events and situations are easily grasped through the veins of history. There are innumerable figures, some are the forerunners of hidden levels, some are geniuses, and some have not even been born yet. These 500 years of life also include memories of hard cultivation and extensive war experience. With all of these memories and experiences, he had an undeniable understanding of the overall situation and impending chances. With proper strategy and execution, he could empower the situation with amazing ferocity and grace. It was no longer an issue for him to take a step ahead of others, shattering greater barriers. So how do I go about this, hmm? Fang Yuan was really sensible. He gathered himself and faced the night rain outside the window, wondering. With this thinking, things began to feel more difficult. After a moment of thought, his brow furrowed even more. Five hundred years was a long time. Don't mention the long muddled memories that cannot be recalled, even remembering the hidden locations of treasures or special encounters with people was difficult, but the main problem was that the locations were separated by a long distance and had to be accessed or visited at specific times. The most important thing is cultivation. The me right now has not even opened my primeval sea, hasn't stepped on the path to be a goo master. I'm just a mortal I have to hurry and cultivate, catching up to history and seize the opportunities with the best advantage. Not to mention that many of these buried treasure locations lacked sufficient foundation. Instead, it would be like stepping into a wolf's den, hoping for death. The issue in front of Fang Yuan right now was cultivation. He needed to raise the level of his foundation as quickly as possible. If he were slow like in his prior life, he would arrive too late. To cultivate as fast as possible, I would have to borrow the resources from the clan. With the state I am right now, I have no power or ability to travel back and forth across the dangerous mountains. Even an ordinary mountain boar can take my life. If I can reach the cultivation of a third level goo master, I'd have the means to protect myself and leave the mountain. Through the eyes of a 500 year old human who has cultivated in the demonic way, Ching Mao Mountain was simply too small, and Guyu Village felt like a cage. While the cage limited freedom, its solid bars provided a certain level of safety. Hmm, in this short period of time I'll just stay in this cage. As long as I can reach third level Gu Master, I can leave this poor mountain. Luckily tomorrow is the awakening ceremony, I'll be able to start training as a Gu Master soon after. When he thought of the awakening ceremony, old memories that had been buried in his heart rose again. Talent, huh? He scoffed, his gaze fixed out the window. At this point, the door to his room was gently pushed open, and a young teenager entered. Big brother, why are you standing in the rain by the window side? The youth was skinny and slightly shorter than Fang Yuan. His facial features were strikingly similar to those of Fang Yuan. As Fang Yuan turned to face this young man, a complex expression crossed his face. It's you, my twin little brother. He raised his eyebrows, his attitude returning to one of chilly indifference. Fang Zheng lowered his head and focused on his own toes, this is his signature stance. I saw that big brother's window was not shut closed, so I thought I'd come in here and close it. Tomorrow is the awakening ceremony, it's so late and you haven't gone to bed yet big brother. If uncle and aunt knew, they would probably be worried. Fang Zheng wasn't startled by Fang Yuan's coldness. Ever since he was a tiny child, his older brother had always been like that. Sometimes he would think. 
Maybe a genius is just like this, being very distinct from ordinary people. Even though he had the same face as his older brother, he believed that he was unremarkable like an ant. They were born from the same womb at the same time, and thus why are the heaven s so unfair? His older brother had been endowed with sparkling talent, whereas he himself was as commonplace as a stone. Everyone around him would say, this is Fang Yuan's little brother when they discussed him. His aunt and uncle would continually advise him to learn from his older brother. Even when he looked into the mirror sometimes, he would feel disgusted as he saw his own face. These ideas had been running for many years, collecting day and night deeper into his heart. Like a gigantic stone pressing against his heart, these few years Fang Zheng's head fell more and more, and he also grew quieter, worried. At the thought of his aunt and uncle, Fang Yuan laughed silently. He could still remember clearly how the parents of this world had both lost their lives in one of the clan missions. When he was only three years old, he and his little brother became orphans. In the name of upbringing, his aunt and uncle grabbed hold of the inheritance left behind by his parents while inflicting harsh treatment against his younger brother and himself. He originally planned to just be a normal person, even planning to conceal his abilities and bide his time. However his life was difficult, making Fang Yuan have no choice but to choose to expose some of his talents. The so-called talent is merely but a mature and intellect soul that carried a few of Earth's popular ancient poems. With this he managed to startle people and capture attention. Because of pressure from the outside world, the young Fang Yuan made a decision to keep a cold indifferent expression to protect himself, reducing the possibility of revealing any secrets. Over time the coldness would become a habit that he was accustomed to expressing. Thus his aunt and uncle were no longer harsh on him and his younger brother. As the years passed and they got older, the future became more optimistic and better care increased. This was not lover, but a form of investment. It's hilarious how his small brother never realized this truth, not only was he mislead by his aunt and uncle, he also started hiding resentments inside. Although he appeared like a good-natured and honest youngster now, in Fang Yuan's memories when his brother was found out to have an agreed talent the clan invested great effort in rearing him with all they had. After that all the suppressed animosity and envy and hate inside was freed, and many a time Fang Zheng would target, suppress, and make life difficult for his own older brother. As for his own grading, it was merely C-grade talent. Fate liked to play a joke. A set of twins the older one only had C-grade talent, but had been renowned as a genius for a dozen years. The younger one who was often disregarded was the one with a grade talent instead. The results of the awakening ceremony had left the tribe astonished. The treatment of the two brothers had drastically reversed following that. The younger sibling was like a dragon rising up to the heaven as, the older brother was like a phoenix that dropped down to the earth. After there followed the many hardships and troubles from his own younger brother, the chilly glances of his aunt and uncle, the contempt of the clan's people. Did he dislike it? Fang Yuan in his prior life loathed it. He loathed his own lack of talent, he hated how ruthless the clan was, hated how fate was so harsh. But now, with his 500 years of life experiences, using this to rethink this course his heart was genuinely serene, not a shred of hatred. What was there to be gained from resentment? Thinking about if from another point of view, he could comprehend his younger brother, aunt, and uncle, even those opponents from 500 years later who attacked him. The strong consume the weak, survival of the fittest, these have always been the rules of this world. Everyone has self-ambitions, always fighting to grasp the opportunity. Among all the war and killing what is there not to be understood, 500 years of life experience have long allowed him to realize all of this, with the heart that wishes to obtain immortality. If anyone tries to stop him from pursuing his goals, he will murder and survive. The goals in his heart were too great, taking this path meant making the world your adversary, and it was intended to be alone and to kill. This marked the end of 500 years of life. Revenge is not my intention, the demonic path does not compromise. With that, he couldn't help but laugh and give his younger brother a brief glance. You can leave. Feng Zheng's heart shook as he felt his brother's eyes were as keen as ice blades, penetrating the deepest regions of his heart. Under such a stare, he felt naked in the snow, unable to conceal his secrets. Then I'll see you tomorrow, big brother. Feng Zheng quietly closed the door and went, not daring to say anything else. Chapter 3, Please Move Aside and Scram. Bang, bang, bang. The roving night watchman pounded his wooden clappers rhythmically. The sounds echoed through the lofty pillar houses, 
and Fang Yuan opened his dry eyelashes, silently thinking, it is already the hour before dawn. He had been lying in bed pondering for quite some time last night. He came up with a number of plans. He probably slept for just over two hours. This body has not begun cultivating, his energy is not as strong, and so his body and mind are still exhausted. However, with 500 years of experience, Fang Yuan had developed a profound steel-like determination. He is unconcerned about sleep-deprived weariness. He immediately pushed away the thin silk blanket and stood up elegantly. He opened the window and discovered that the spring rain had stopped. The scent of the land, trees, and wildflowers met him. Fang Yuan felt his head clear, the tiredness fading away cleanly. The sun hadn't yet risen, and the sky remained a deep dark blue, neither dark nor bright. Looking around, the tall buildings of green bamboo and wood contrasted with the mountain, creating a sea of pale green color. The tall dwellings had at least two levels, and they were distinctive to the mountain people. Because of the mountain's rough surface, the first floor consists of large wooden pegs, while the second floor houses the residents. Fang Yuan and his brother Fang Zhen remained on the second floor. Young Master Fang Yuan, you're awake, I'll go upstairs and wait for you to wash up. At this point, a maiden's voice rose from downstairs. Fang Yuan looked down and spotted his personal helper, Shen Kui. Her looks were just slightly above average, but she dressed appropriately. Shen Kui donned a green robe with long sleeves and slacks, embroidered shoes, and pearl hairpins in her black hair. Her entire body emanated youthful vibrancy. She climbed upstairs, smiling pleasantly at Fang Yuan and holding a basin of water. The water was at the appropriate warm temperature and was used to wash the face. After rinsing his mouth, he cleaned his teeth with a willow twig and snow salt. Shen Kui waited patiently, her face smiling and her eyes bright as spring. After he finished, she helped Fang Yuan dress, her big breasts pressing against his elbow or back several times. Fang Yuan's face remained expressionless, and his heart was as tranquil as water. This servant girl was nothing more than his aunt and uncle's watchdog, and she was a conceited, heartless creature. In his previous life, she enthralled him, but following the awakening ceremony, when his standing collapsed, she instantly turned away and threw him endless disapproving stares. Fang Zheng arrived just in time to observe Shen Kui smoothing the creases on Fang Yuan's breast. His eyes flickered with jealousy. During his time living with his older brother, Fang Yuan looked after him and had a servant ready for him. However, unlike Shen Kui, his servant was a large and wide old woman. I wonder which day Shen Kui can wait on me like this, and what it feels like. Fang Zheng pondered in his heart, but he did not dare. Everyone knew his aunt and uncle had a biased fondness for Fang Yuan. Initially, he did not even have a servant to wait on him. Fang Yuan took the initiative and asked for one for Fang Zheng. Despite the class difference between master and servant, Fang Zheng rarely underestimated Shen Kui. That was because her mother, Mother Shen, one, stood alongside his aunt and uncle. Mother Shen was the guardian of the entire household, and she had complete trust in his aunt and uncle, therefore her authority was not limited. All right, no need to clean up, Fang Yuan impatiently swatted aside Shen Kui's gentle, little hands. His clothes had always been neat, she was only trying to entice him. Fang Yuan's potential for an agrade talent was significant to Shen Kui and her future prospects. If she could be his concubine, she would be able to move up from servant to master, which was a significant step. In his past life, Fang Yuan was duped by her and harbored affections for Shen Kui. Following his rebirth, he was as clear as a raging inferno, with a frigid heart. You may leave. Fang Yuan did not look at Shen Kui as he adjusted his own sleeve cuffs. Shen Kui pouted slightly, sensing that Fang Yuan's perplexing behavior today was unusual and unsettling. She wanted to respond in a spoiled manner, but she was terrified of his icy and perplexing attitude, so she opened and closed her mouth several times before replying yes and withdrawing obediently. Are you ready? Fang Yuan questioned Fang Zhang. His younger brother waited in the doorway, his head stooped down to examine his toes. He whispered a soft yes. Fang Zheng had been up since the fourth watch, too scared to fall back asleep. He had discreetly gotten out of bed and prepared a long time ago, his eyes covered in dark rings. Fang Yuan nodded. In his previous life, he wasn't sure what his younger brother was thinking, but how could he not comprehend in this life? But it was immaterial to him just now, so he simply said, then let's go. So the two brothers exited the house. 
On the way, they encountered many young people of similar ages, all in groups of twos and threes, definitely traveling to the same place. Look guys, those are the Fang brothers. Their ears could catch up on the short guarded conversation. The one walking in front is Fang Yuan, and he's the Fang Yuan who created the poems, some of them emphasized. So that's him. His face is expressionless as if he had no regard for others, just like the rumors say. Someone muttered in a harsh tone filled with anger and envy. Hmph, if you were like him, you could act like that. Someone bitterly remarked, concealing a sense of disgust. Fang Zheng listened without expression. He had grown accustomed to this type of debate. He followed silently after his bigger brother, keeping his head low. The light of morning had appeared over the horizon, casting Fang Yuan's shadow across his face. The sun slowly rose, but Fang Yuan suddenly felt as if he was traveling into darkness. This gloom came from his older brother. Perhaps in this life, he would never be able to escape his brother's imprisoning big shadow. He felt a sudden surge of pressure on his chest, making breathing difficult. This awful feeling made him think of the word suffocate. Humph, this talk is a good example of the saying, those who have outstanding talent easily bring about jealousy from others, Fang Yuan sneered as he listened to the gossip around him. It's no surprise that when it was revealed that he had C-grade talent, he was encircled by opponents and subjected to harsh, scornful coldness for quite some time. Fang Zheng's breathing became dreary, and he attempted to avoid listening. What Fang Yuan did not realize in his former existence, he could sense in great detail in this life. This was his sharp understanding, honed over 500 years of life experience. He instantly remembered his aunt and uncle and how cunning they were. Giving him Shen Kui to oversee him and passing on an elderly wet nurse to his younger brother, without mentioning other differences in their lives. All of these actions were intended to cause unhappiness in his younger brother's heart and create a schism between the brothers. People are not concerned about receiving less, rather, they are concerned with the unequal distribution of what they do receive. In his previous life, his experiences were insufficient, and his younger brother was too foolish and naive, so his aunt and uncle successfully instigated a rift between them. After being reincarnated with the awakening ceremony before him, it appeared that the situation was tough to modify. However, with Fang Yuan's evil means and wisdom, the situation is not unchangeable. His younger brother can be completely suppressed, and young Shen Kui could become a concubine early on. Not to mention his aunt and uncle and the clan elders, he had at least a hundred ways to beat them. But, I don't feel like doing that. Fang Yuan sighed carelessly. What if it was his younger brother? Without the blood tie, his younger brother was an outsider, he could abandon him at any time. So what if Shen Kui got any prettier? Without love and loyalty, she was little more than a heap of flesh. Keep her as a concubine? She isn't worthy. So what if it was his aunt, uncle, or clan elders? They are just passing through life, why waste your time and energy beating them? Hee <laughs> hee. As long as you don't get in my way, you can go ahead and scram, I don't need to worry about you. 1. Mother Shen is a title or a way to address a woman in her position. Chapter 4, Gu Yu Fang Yuan. The sun rises into the sky, its rays brilliant. The mountain fog is not thick, so sharp rays can easily pass through. Over 115-year-olds gathered in front of the clan pavilion. The clan pavilion stood in the center of the village, with five stories and sharply tilted roofs, it was heavily guarded. The square existed prior to the pavilion, and the shrine of the Guyu ancestor memorial tablets was located within it. The pavilion housed every generation of clan heads. With each major ceremony or incident, the clan elders would gather here to discuss meetings. This was the village's administrative center. Good, all of you are punctual. Today is the awakening ceremony, it is your life's great turning point. I won't say much, just come with me. The elder of the academy was in charge at the time. His beard and hair were white, and he was in good spirit as he led the young teenagers into the pavilion. However they did not go up, but were led downstairs after going through the entrance of a great hall. Following down a constructed stone ladder, they went into an underground cave. The group of youths made surprised and amazed noises. The underground cave was beautiful, stalactites sparkling with the colors of the rainbow. This light shone on the youths' faces, the neon hues gorgeous. Fang Yuan was mixed into the crowd, quietly observing everything that was happening. In his heart, he thought, hundreds of years ago, the Guyu clan came to Qingmao Mountain and settled down after migrating from the central lands to the south border. 
It was when they found a spirit spring in this underground cave. This spirit spring produces a large number of primeval stones it could be said that this was the foundation of the Guyu village. They walked several hundred steps. It got darker and the sounds of water were faintly heard. After turning around a corner, a three jong wide, one, underground river greeted them. By now the colorful lights of the stalactites had disappeared completely, yet in the darkness the river emitted faint blue light. It was like a star river of the night sky. The river flowed from the dark depths of the cave. Inside the crystal clear waters, one could see fish, aquatic plants, and even the sand beneath the river. Opposite the river was a sea of flowers. This was the Guyu clan's closely cultivated moon orchids. The beautiful blue and pink colored petals were like shaped like a crescent moon, the flower stems were like jade, the center of the flower shining like the sort of warm brilliance that radiates from pearls under the light. At first glance, in the dark background the flower sea looks like a huge piece of land covered in bluish green carpet dotted with countless pearls. The moon orchid is food for a lot of goo. This flower sea could be said as the clan's biggest cultivation medium, Fang Yuan thought knowingly to himself. Wow, so pretty. It really is beautiful. The new sight opened the young teenager's eyes. Each one of them had a light radiating from their gaze with excited and anxious feelings. All right, listen as I call your names. Those who are called must walk through this river to the opposite bank. Walk as far as you can, of course the further you go the better it is. Are you all clear? The elder said. All clear, the youths replied. Actually before they came here, they had all heard their family members or seniors talk about it. It is known that the further you can walk, the better your talent is. Your future will also get brighter. Gu Yu Chenbo. The elder clutched the name list and called out the first name. The river was wide but not deep, reaching up to a youth's kneecaps. Chenbo's expression was somber when he stepped into the flower sea beach. As he did so, he could sense an unseen pressure as if there was a wall in front of him that he could not see, keeping him from advancing forward. During this moment, the flowers at his feet suddenly gave off a feeble white light. The light collected around Chen Bo and entered his body. For a minute Chen Bo felt the pressure drop, the unseen wall preventing him suddenly felt softer. With this, Chen Bo clinched his teeth and mustered his strength, marching ahead. He tried to force his way in stiffly, although after three steps the wall in front of him hardened again back to the state before. Thus he could not walk any further. As he watched this the elder sighed. While documenting what transpired, he said, Gu Yu Chen Bo, three steps, no talent to become a Gu master. Next, Gu Yu Zhao Xia. Chen Bo was deathly pale as he walked past the river back to the youths, gripping his teeth. Without the gifted talent he may live as a normal human, occupying the lowest place in the clan. His stature was unsteady, it was a terrible blow to him, as if reality had shattered all his ambitions. Many onlookers sent him sorrowful gazes, while even more had focused eyes upon the second guy crossing the river. It was a pity that this child could only go four paces forward he did not have skill either. Not everyone has the natural talent to be a goo master. Generally speaking, it is not bad if five out of ten people have talent. In the goo clan, this ratio is higher, reaching six persons. This is because the Guyu clan's ancestor the first generation clan chief was a famous, legendary, and powerful man. Due to cultivation reasons his bloodline possessed powerful genes, so the average quality of talent in the Guyu clan was normally higher since they carried his blood in their veins. After two straight failures, the other seniors witnessing the event in the dark began to make unpleasant faces. Even the clan leader frowned slightly. The academy elder then shouted out the third name, Guyu Mobe. Here, a horse-faced youth wrapped in linen robes said softly as he approached. He was tall and sturdier than his colleagues. He exuded bravery. He crossed the river in a few steps and reached the other bank. Ten steps, twenty steps, thirty steps, one by one, little lights entered his body. He walked for thirty-six steps before being unable to continue. The young people on the riverbank watched with wide-open eyes, shocked. The academy elder exclaimed gleefully, Good, Guyu Mobe, be grade talent. Come here, and let me see your primeval sea. Guyu Mobe returned to the academy elder's side. The latter extended his hand and placed it on the juvenile's shoulder, closing his eyes to check with focus. Then he withdrawn his hand and nodded, writing on the paper, Guyu Mobe, primeval sea measuring 6 by 6, can be vigorously trained. This unique gift can be classified into four grades ranging from A to D. 
A D-grade talent child raised for three years has the potential to become a rank one senior GU master and serve as the family's foundation. After two years of cultivation, a C-grade talent youth can typically become a rank two senior GU master, serving as the clan's backbone. A B-grade talent must be nurtured. They frequently become future clan elders, and after 67 years of training, they will achieve rank three GU masters. And getting in a grade, even if it was just one, would bring good fortune to the entire clan. Great care must be taken, with this talent, they can advance to rank 4 Gu Master in around 10 years. At that point, they would be allowed to compete for the job of clan leader. In other words, as long as Gu Umo Bay grows up, he will one day become a Gu Yu clan elder. That is why the academy elder chuckled joyfully, the elders watching in the darkness exhaled in relaxation, then turned to look at one of the elders among them with envy. Guyu Mo Chen, the grandpa of Guyu Mo Bei, was another horse-faced elder. His face was already smiling. He provocatively gazed at his former adversary and remarked, What do you think? My grandson isn't bad, huh? Guyu Chi Lian. Guyu Chi Lian had a full head of red hair. He made an impatient humph and did not respond to the other. His facial expression was really dark. Half of the youths had already strolled across the flower sea an hour before. There were some C and D grade skills among them, and half of the adolescents lacked any talent at all. Sigh, the bloodline is getting thinner. These few years the clan hasn't had any rank 4 masters to strengthen the bloodline. The fourth generation clan head was the only rank 5 master, but in the end he perished together with the flower wine monk and did not leave behind any descendants. The Guyu clan's later generation talents are getting weaker and weaker, the head of the clan said with a deep sigh. The academy elder exclaimed, Gu Yu Chi Chen at this point. When they heard this name, all of the elders turned to stare at Gu Yu Chi Lian, who was his grandson. Gu Yu Chi Lian was little and short, with pockmarks all over his face. He clenched his hand and sweated profusely. He was clearly quite frightened. The little lights entered his body as he proceeded onto the opposite bank. After 36 steps straight, he came to a standstill. Another B grade, the academy elder shouted. The youths caused a commotion, giving Gu Yu Chi Chen envious looks. Ha ha ha, 36 steps, 36 steps. Gu Yu Chi Lian exclaimed, gleefully looking at Gu Yu Mo Bei. This time, it was Gu Yu Mo Chen's turn to look unpleasant. Gu Yu Chi Chen, ha. Huh. Fang Yuan rubbed his chin thoughtfully as he stood in the crowd. In his memories, the clan severely chastised Gu Yu Chi Chen for cheating at the awakening ceremony. Chi Chen actually possessed a C grade skill but because his grandfather Gu Yu Chi Lian assisted him in falsifying the findings, he appeared to have a B-grade talent. To be honest, if Fang Yuan wanted to cheat, he had innumerable options, some of which were even better than Gu Yu Chi Chen's method. If a B or a grade talent arose, they would have the clan's exclusive attention. But first, Fang Yuan had only recently been reborn. This condition made it difficult to devise a cheating strategy. Second, even if he were to cheat, he would be unable to mask his cultivation pace. He'd be exposed by then. Gu Yu Chi Chen, on the other hand, was unique in that his grandfather was Gu Yu Chi Lian, one of the clan's two most powerful seniors. With this, Chi Lian would be able to cover for his grandchild. Gu Yu Chi Lian was always hostile towards Gu Yu Mo Chen, these two elders are the clan's two biggest influential authorities. To suppress his opponent he would need his own grandson to have an outstanding talent. It is also because he was helping from behind, Gu Yu Chi Chen was able to conceal the truth for a time. In my memories, if it were not for that incident, the truth would never have been exposed. Fang Yuan's eyes flashed with brightness, as he considered how to apply this knowledge to his advantage. If he exposed the matter on the spot, he would receive a little payment from the clan, but he would also upset the extremely powerful Gu Yu Chi Lian. This was not advisable. He was unable to blackmail them in such a short period of time. Due of his poor position, it would just backfire on him. As he pondered, he suddenly heard the academy elder cry out his own name, Gu Yu Fang Yuan. One, three Zhang, is an ancient Chinese measuring unit. Zhang stands 3.3 meters. Chapter 5, The First Human and Three Gu, Hope's Awakening. At that point, his surroundings became quiet. Countless eyes were on him. It's becoming increasingly exciting, Fang Yuan thought to himself, laughing. He crossed the river in front of the crowds and arrived on the other side. He felt a blanket of pressure on him. 
This pressure originated from the spirit spring located deep within the flower sea. The spirit spring created primal qi, which caused the pressure, but small lights appeared from the flowers beneath Fang Yuan's feet, quickly rising. These glowing dots surrounded his entire body before entering him. These are the Hope Gu, Fang Yuan remarked. The person in charge did not inform them, but he knew quite well. Every patch of light is a Gu, also known as the Hope Gu. One of the oldest legends mentions the Hope Gu. According to legend, when the world was first created, it was a wild and dangerous place. The first man came among the wild beasts of the world. Renzio, one, was infamous for eating raw meat and drinking blood, and he led a tough life. A particular group of wild monsters was known as predicament. These wild creatures adored Renzio's flavor and craved his flesh. Renzio lacked the sharp teeth and claws of a wild beast, as well as the might of a mountain rock. How could he combat the predicaments? His food source was unstable, so he had to conceal all day. He was at the bottom of the food chain and barely survived. At this point, Three Gu approached him and said, As long as you use your life to provide us, we will help you through this difficulty. Renzio had no other option but to comply. He first donated his youth to the biggest Gu of the three. That Gu then gave him strength. Renzio's life began to alter as he gained strength. He began to have a steady supply of food and was able to defend himself. He fought valiantly and mercilessly, conquering numerous predicaments. However, he quickly struggled and discovered that power was not everything. It needed to be healed and cultivated, not spent freely at his discretion. Not to add that when faced with the complete group of predicaments, his own strength was insufficient. Renzio considered deeply on this lesson and resolved to dedicate his prime middle years to the most beautiful Guam of the three. Thus, the second Gu granted him insight. Renzio's wisdom enabled him to learn how to ponder and reflect. He gained experience and saw that employing wisdom was often more beneficial than using strength. By relying on intelligence and strength, he was able to achieve all of his previously unattainable ambitions and kill countless predicaments. He ate predicaments meat and drank their blood, surviving with persistence. But nice things don't last forever, and Renzio was old and just getting older. This is because he sacrificed his youth and middle years to preserve Gu's vigor and wisdom. When a guy becomes older, his muscles weaken and his thinking slows down. Human, what else can you give us? You don't have anything else to offer us, the strength and wisdom Gu stated as they recognized this. They left him. Renzio was formerly surrounded by difficulties due to a lack of insight and strength. He was old and unable to run, his teeth had fallen out, and he could no longer devour wild fruits and plants. His heart was filled with desperation as he collapsed to the ground, surrounded by predicaments. At this point, the third Gu approached him and said, Human, take me up. I will help you escape the predicament. Renzio said with tears in his eyes, Gu, I don't have anything else left. See, the strength and wisdom Gu have abandoned me. I only have my old age left while it is not as worth my youth and middle age, but if I give you my old age, my life would immediately end. Even though I am surrounded by predicaments right now, but I will not die immediately. I wish to live a little longer, even if just a second more. So you should leave, I have nothing else to provide to you. However, the Gu answered, among the three I have the smallest needs. Human, if you just give me your heart, it will be enough. Then I will give you my heart, Ren Zia replied. But Gu, what can you give me in return? In this situation, even if the strength and wisdom Gu returned to my side, it would change nothing. When compared to the strong Gu, this Gu appeared fragile and resembled a little ball of light. When compared to the wise Gu, this one could only emit a weak white light, which was not lovely in any way. However, as Renzio gave it his heart, this Gu suddenly emitted a limitless amount of light. In this light, the predicaments shrieked in horror, this is the hope Gu, withdraw we predicaments are most afraid of hope. The predicaments retreated abruptly. Renzio was dumbfounded, and from that day on, whenever he encountered a challenge, he gave his heart to hope. At this point, the Hope Gu had formed into a stream of light and had already penetrated Fang Yuan's body. Because of the outside pressure, they immediately accumulated in his abdomen and spontaneously formed a group three inches below his navel. Fang Yuan felt a sudden release of pressure. He began walking forward. With each stride he took, the Hope Gu would emerge from the sea of flowers and enter his body, becoming a ball of light. The ball of light became brighter and brighter, but the person in control on the opposite bank grimaced. 
This number of Hopegu is lower than expected, many seniors observing Fang Yuan in the dark thought as they watched the scene. The clan leader frowned as well. This was obviously not the sign of an A-level ability. Fang Yuan defied the strain and continued walking forward. Below 10 steps it means that there is no cultivation talent. 1020 steps means D-grade talent. 2030 steps would be C-grade talent, 3040 steps is A-B-grade talent. And 4050 steps would mean a grade talent. Up till now, I have walked 23 steps. 24, 25, 26, 27. Fang Yuan counted in his heart, as he traveled the 27th step, he heard a blast, and the ball of light between his two kidneys reached its limit and exploded. This explosion of energy occurred just within his body, outsiders cannot perceive it. At that moment, only Fang Yuan could feel an earth-shaking reaction. The fine hairs on his body rose up, his pores tightened, and his mind stretched to its utmost. Soon after, his head became blank, and his entire body became mushy, as if he had fallen into some clouds. His heart eased, his fine hair flattened, and his pores reopened. In a short period of time, his entire body began to perspire. This entire process seemed to take a long time, yet it was actually completed quickly. The feeling vanished as quickly as it arrived. Fang Yuan lost consciousness for a brief moment before reawakening. He privately examined his anatomy and saw that a hole had opened beneath his navel and between his two kidneys out of thin air. The awakening ceremony was successful. This was the yearning for immortality. 1. Ren Zio, Ren is human, while Zio is an ancestor. He is the first human, like Adam in Adam and Eve. Chapter 6, The Journey to the Future will be exciting. The aperture was mysterious and unique. It was located inside Fang Yuan's body, yet it did not share the same space as his internal organs. It might be described as both infinitely large and infinitely little. Some name it the Purple Prefecture, while others call it the Chinese Pool. However, it is commonly known as the Primeval Sea Aperture. The entire body is spherical, with the surface coated in streaming white light, similar to a thin layer of light coating. The layer of light from the Hope Goo had earlier exploded. This thin membrane of light sustained the aperture, preventing it from collapsing, and the primeval sea was naturally contained within. The sea waters were smooth as a mirror, with a greenish-blue color, yet the water was dense, giving it a copper shine. Only rank 1 goo masters can create this green coppery primordial essence, also known as the green copper sea. The sea surface height did not reach half of the aperture, but rather 44%. This was also the restriction of a sea level skill. Every drop of seawater contained pure ancient essence, signifying the consolidation of Fang Yuan's essence, vigor, and soul. It also represented the accumulation of his life potential over the previous 15 years. Gu masters employ this primordial essence to raise Gu. This also implies that Fang Yuan has officially begun his path to becoming a rank 1 Gu master. Since the aperture had opened, no more hope Gu could enter Fang Yuan's body. Fang Yuan composed himself and realized that the pressure before him was as heavy as a wall, he could not take another step forward. Just like in my previous life, he smirked indifferently at the outcome. You can't go any further. The academy elder cried across the water, clutching a thin thread of hope. Fang Yuan turned around and walked back, responding through his actions. At this point, even the young teenagers started reacting. The audience began to chatter. What? Fang Yuan walked 27 steps. So he was just a C-grade talent. Unbelievable, only a C-grade for such a genius like him. The crowd caused a big disturbance. Big brother. Gu Yu Fang Zhang looked up, shocked to see Fang Yuan return across the river. He couldn't believe it, his own sibling had only a C-grade? He had always assumed that his older brother would excel academically. No, it wasn't just him, his aunt and uncle, as well as many others in the kin, shared this sentiment. But the outcome was unexpectedly the reverse. Damn, he was only a C grade. The Guyu clan head clenched both fists, drawing a deep breath with sorrow in his voice. The elders observing from the darkness had conflicting feelings. Some were frowning, some lowering their heads in conversation, and some looking up with a sigh. Could the results be wrong? How can that be? This method is accurate beyond reasoning. Not to add that we were watching the entire time, even cheating is hard. But all his actions and intelligence previously, how do you explain those? 
Youths with higher quality of primeval sea would indeed display characteristics that surpass the ordinary man, such as intelligence, perception, memory, strength, agility, and so on. On the other hand, these characteristics do not mean that the primeval talent is definitely high, everything will still be determined by the results. Sigh, the bigger your hopes the bigger the disappointment. The Guyu clan's generation now is no longer like the first generation. His socks were wet with the river's extremely cold waters, which pierced his bones. Fang Yuan continued with the same indifferent expression, his distance becoming closer to the gathering. He could see the academy elder's serious countenance and was aware of the attention from over a hundred youths. These glares were a mix of disbelief, shock, sneering, and some taking delight in the tragic incident, while others were indifferent. It was the same situation, forcing Fang Yuan to remember his prior life. During that time, he felt like the sky had collapsed. When he crossed the icy river, he lost his footing and fell, submerging his entire body in the water and felt lost. Nobody stepped forward to help him up. Those disappointed, frigid glances and gazes were like sharp blades cutting into his own heart. His head was jumbled, and his chest burned with misery. It was as if he had plummeted from the heavens to the ground. The higher you are, the harder you fall. But in this life, when the same scene repeated itself, Fang Yuan's heart remained tranquil. He remembered the legend, when adversity strikes, give your heart to hope. And today, that hope lives within him. Even though it was small, it outperformed those who had primal potential. Allow people to be disappointed. What else could they do? What is the significance of other people's disappointments for me? The most important thing is to keep hope within my heart. 500 years of living had taught him that the most exciting events in a person's life occur during the process of pursuing one's own aspirations. There is no need to ask people not to be disappointed or to make them happy. Walk your own way, allowing others to be dissatisfied and sad as they please. Sigh. The academy elder exhaled deeply and screamed, Next, Gu Yu Feng Zheng. But no response came. Gu Yu Feng Zheng, the elder roared again, his voice echoing across the cave. Ah, I'm here, I'm here, Feng Zheng exclaimed, breaking free from his amazement and dashed out. Unfortunately, he tripped over his own foot and fell, smacking his head with a groan before falling into the river. Instantly, the entire cave erupted in laughing. The Fang brothers, nothing special. The Guyu clan chief scoffed, annoyed by Fang Zheng's apathy. This is such a huge embarrassment, Fang Zheng struggled and plunged into the water. He couldn't get up because the river bottom was too slick. Despite his best efforts, he appeared more foolish and clumsy. His heart raced as the sounds of laughter filled his ears. But exactly at this time, he felt a great tug that lifted him up. His head finally left the water's surface, and his body regained balance. He wiped his face in panic and fixed his gaze. His bigger brother, Fang Yuan, had grabbed his collar and dragged him up. Big brother. He opened his mouth to speak. But instead, he began choking on water, resulting in a severe cough. Haha, <laughs> the difficult older and younger brother of the Fang family someone laughed on the riverbank. The laughter got louder, but the academy elder didn't come out to stop it. He was severely frowning, with disappointment in his heart. Fang Zheng was at a loss for what to do until he heard his brother remark to him, Go on. The road to the future will be interesting. Fang Zheng opened his mouth in amazement. Fang Yuan's back was to the throng, so they couldn't see clearly, but Fang Zheng could sense the serenity emanating from Fang Yuan. As his older brother talked, the corners of his mouth rose slightly, showing a deep and serious smile. It was clearly only a C-grade talent, so how can Big Brother be so calm? Fang Zhen couldn't help but ponder, his heart full of uncertainty. However, Fang Yuan did not say anything else. He clapped Fang Zheng on the back and turned to walk away. Fang Zheng strolled towards the floral sea with a stupefied gaze. I never thought Big Brother would actually be so calm. If it was me, I'd. He bent his head and walked forward absently. However, he was unaware that he was acting out a miraculous scene. When he eventually jerked out of his meditation, he was already deep in the sea of flowers, standing at a distance no one had ever reached before him. 43 Steps Oh my god, a grade talent cried the academy elder, who appeared to be out of his head. A grade, really an a grade. It's been three years, and a grade talented genius has finally appeared in the Guyu clan. The clan elders, who were watching in the darkness, were also yelling and losing their composure. Well, the Fang bloodline is descended from the Qi bloodline, 
so the Qi family will adopt in this Gu Yu Fang Zhang, Gu Yu Qi Lian declared instantly. How is that possible? You old bag Qi Lian, your morals and abilities are out of order, but you're definitely good at misleading young boys. It's better to pass this kid to I, Gu Yu Mo Chen to raise Gu Yu Mo Chen immediately responded with a shriek. Stop arguing. No one is more qualified to raise this child than the current clan leader. Whoever has any objections is to go against me, Gu Yu Bo. The Gu Yu clan leader had gone insane, sweeping his blazing red glare over the disappointed and dejected stairs. Chapter 7, A Gu Master Has Nine Ranks, Flower Wine Leaves Behind Treasure. Soon, a week had passed. Humans are above all creatures, Gu are the essence of heaven and earth. In this world there are thousands of species, countless number of Gu. They live everywhere around us in the soil, in the bushes, even on the bodies of wild beasts. As humans continue to propagate and grow, the scholars of the past gradually uncovered the mysteries of the Gu. Those who have opened the aperture, using their own primeval essence to feed, refine, and manipulate these Gu people who have achieved these various purposes are what we call Gu Masters. And all of you have successfully opened your aperture in the awakening ceremony seven days ago. With the coagulation of the primeval sea, right now you are all rank 1 Gu Masters. In the local academy, the academy elder spoke with confidence and calm. Fifty-seven pupils sat in front of him, carefully listening. A long time ago, the boys were passionately enamored with the mystique and strength of a Gu master. As a result, the kids paid close attention to everything the elder taught and said. At this point, a young teenager raised his hand. With the elder's permission, he rose up and requested, Elder Sir, I've known this since I was a child, there are rank 1 Gu masters, rank 2, and so on. Could you explain in greater detail to us? The Gu Yu teacher nodded and waved his hand, inviting the young man to sit down. Gu masters have nine ranks, from bottom to the top rank 1, rank 2, rank 3 all the way up to rank 9. Every rank is considered a big realm, and it is divided into four small realms initial stage, middle stage, upper stage, and peak stage. You have all just become Gu masters, so all of you are rank 1 initial stage. If you all work hard in your cultivation, your cultivation base will naturally advance to rank 2, even rank 3. Of course, the higher your talent the bigger your chance of promoting. For D-grade talent, the primeval C takes up about 23 layers of the aperture, the highest promotion reachable is rank 1 to rank 2. For C-grade talent, the primeval C is 45 layers of the aperture. Usually the progress stops at rank 2 but with luck a small percentage of people can advance to rank 3 initial stage. B-grade talents have a primeval C that takes up 67 layers of the aperture, they are able to cultivate to rank 3, even as far as rank 4. As for a grade talent, the primeval C is plenty, it takes up 89 layers of the aperture. This kind of talent in a person is naturally the most gifted and the most suitable for a Gu master's cultivation, being able to reach rank 5. As for Gu Masters who are rank 6 and above, they are all legends. I am not clear about the specifics either. In the Gu Yu clan, there has never been the appearance of a rank 6 Gu Master, but rank 4 and rank 5 Gu Masters we have had before. The teenagers' ears perked up, and their eyes shone brilliantly as they listened. Many of them couldn't help but gaze at Gu Yu Feng Zhang, who was seated stiff in the first row. After all, he was a gifted individual. Their eyes were full of envy and jealousy. At the same time, some students stared at the corner in the final row of the classroom. Gu Yu Feng Yuan was resting quietly on the desk, leaning against the window in the corner. Look, he's still sleeping, someone said quietly. He's been sleeping continuously for a week, yet he's still not awake. A voice entered the room. There's more. I heard that he was up all night, wandering about at the edge of the village. There's been people who've seen it more than once, apparently he holds a wine jar at night dead drunk outside, luckily, the village surroundings have been cleared clean in the last few years, so it's safer. The other students whisper here and there, allowing all kinds of small gossip to spread quickly. Ah well, the blow was just too big. Someone hailed as a genius for so many years unexpectedly ending up to be a grade talent in the end, he <laughs> he. If only it was just the case. Of all the people his own little brother was pronounced in a grade, right now being the center of attention, enjoying the best treatment. The younger brother soars up to the sky, while the older brother falls to the ground, tut tut. As the pupils' discussion grew louder, the academy elders' forehead furrowed into a frown. In the entire classroom, 
All of the teenagers sat respectfully and actively. This made Fang Yuan, who was sleeping on his table, stand out so much that it pained my eyes. It's already been a week, and he's still so dispirited. Mph, initially I must have been mistaken by him. How could someone like this be a genius? The elder pondered disgruntledly. He had spoken to Fang Yuan several times about this, but Fang Yuan continued to do whatever he wanted. He would sleep through every class, leaving the elder in charge of instructing with a very frustrated headache. Forget it, he's just a C grade. If he can't even withstand this kind of blow, fostering him with that kind of temperament will just end up wasting the clan's resources, nothing good will come out of it. The elder's heart was filled with disappointment for Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan was simply a C grade, contrasted to his younger brother, Fang Zheng, who was in a grade talent. Suddenly, this was someone worth the clan's effort in training. While reflecting on all of this, the academy elder also responded to the most recent query. In the clan's history, there have been many strong masters. For rank 5 masters, there were two, the first generation clan head, our ancestor, who established Guyu village, and the fourth clan head, who had remarkable talent and managed to cultivate all the way to the realm of a rank 5 Gu master. If it hadn't been for that despicable shameless demon flower wine monk sneak attack, he might have been able to achieve rank 6, but, as he spoke, he let out a loud sigh. Below the platform, the youths began shouting in wrath. It's all because of that flower wine monk, he was too sinister and cunning. What a pity that our fourth clan leader was soft-hearted and benevolent, and died at a young age. If only I was born a few hundred years earlier if I saw that demon I would have torn off his ugly face. The story of the fourth clan leader and the flower wine monk is well known across the Guyu clan. The flower wine monk was also a rank 5 Gu master, well known within the demon faction at the time for his extensive experience as a large flower thief. A couple hundred years ago, he visited Qing Mao Mountain. He attempted to commit crimes in Guyu village, but was eventually caught by the fourth generation clan lord. After an earth-shattering conflict, the flower wine monk was defeated to the point where he had to plead for mercy on his knees. The fourth clan's leader was merciful and generous, aiming to spare his life. However, the flower wink monk unexpectedly launched a sneak assault, inflicting serious wounds on the fourth clan head. The clan leader became enraged and killed the flower wine monk on the spot. However, his severe injuries were incurable, therefore he died. Thus, in the minds of the Guyu clansmen, the fourth generation clan leader was a great hero who gave his life for the hamlet. Flower wine monk, huh? Fang Yuan opened his tired eyes, startled by the raucous talk in the classroom. He stretched his body, resentful in his heart, wondering where this flower wine monk had died. Why can't I uncover his legacy despite searching the entire village? In his memories, a Gu master from the clan was broken-hearted and began drinking heavily. About two months later, the man was very intoxicated as he lay down outside the settlement. His strong wine perfume unintentionally attracted a liquor worm. The Gu master was ecstatic, completely focused on catching it. The liquor worm retreated, and because the Gu master was hard on its scent, he followed it and discovered an underground hole entry, which he entered. The liquor worm was a highly valued and expensive variety of Gu. The half-drunk Gu master decided to take the chance and enter the hole, which led him to a secret underground grotto. After that, he discovered the flower wine monk's bones and the inheritance he had left behind. When the Gu master returned to the hamlet, he presented his findings, which made quite a commotion among the entire clan. Later on, that Gu master benefited greatly from it, and his cultivation foundation suddenly became exceptional. His sweetheart, who had previously abandoned him, was drawn to him again, and he became the talk of the clan for a while. Sadly I only heard bits and pieces about this piece of news, so I don't know where the accurate location is. It wasn't like I knew I would be reborn again to this day. Flower wine monk, where in the world did you die off to? He'd spent the last few days buying wine and walking around the village as soon as night fell. He intended to exploit the aroma of liquor to attract the liquor worm. Unfortunately, he never saw the liquor worm arrive, leaving him quite disappointed. If I could find that liquor worm and refine it into my vital goo, that would be so much better than the clan's moonlight goo. In the blink of an eye, it's already April, there's not much time left. Fang Yuan sighed and looked out the window. Under the blue sky and white clouds, lush mountains stretched into the distance. There was a bamboo grove nearby. This was Qingmao Mountain's unique spear bamboo, 
with each bamboo stick as straight as a line and the ends as pointed as a spear tip. Not far away, the forests had already turned green. The fragile shoots appeared in a sea of yellow-green color. Occasionally, elegant and colorful sparrows would perch on the branches. The breeze of spring blew, capturing the freshness of the mountains and rivers and disseminating it over the land. Without realizing it, the class was nearly over. The academy elder finally informed, This week, I have taught you all how to contemplate and check your own aperture's primeval sea, as well as how to meditate and shift around the primeval essence inside your body. Now is the time for you all to refine your vital goo. After this class, you will all go to the academy's goo room and pick a goo worm. After choosing your goo, please go home and focus on refining it. When you have finally refined your goo, then you can come back to. Chapter 8, Things Will Always Remain Things, But, Humans Will Change. There was a goo room beside the academy. The goo chamber was only 60 meters superscript 2 in size. A goo is the key to power on the path of cultivation for a goo master. At the end of class, the enthusiastic adolescents dashed to the goo room. Form a line, enter one by one, several voices cried, it was understandable that there were guards outside the goo room. The youths entered one at a time and exited. Finally, Fang Yuan entered the goo room. This was a weird room. The four walls all had holes, and each of these embedded square holes contained another square hole. The size of each hole varied, with some being large and others small. The larger holes were no bigger than an earthenware cooking pot, while the smallest holes were no smaller than a hand. Greystone basins, verdant jade dishes, magnificent grass cages, and earthen burners were among the many square holes filled with various sorts of goo. Some goo remained silent, while others made several noises such as chirping, clucking, and rustling. All of these noises converged to form a type of living symphony. Goo are also divided into nine big levels, following the same concept of the nine rank realms of goo masters. All of the gin in this room are rank one goo. Fang Yuan looked about, immediately aware of this. In general, rank one goo masters are limited to using rank one goo. If they employed higher level goo, these masters would have to pay a very large price. In addition, goo must be fed. Feeding higher level goo was sometimes too expensive for lower ranked goo masters to afford. Thus, new goo masters would always choose a rank 1 goo worm as their first refined goo, unless there was a specific situation. The first goo refined by a goo master is extremely important because it will become their crucial goo, tying their life together. If it dies, the goo master will take a heavy blow. Alas, my original wish was to get my hands on the flower wine monk's liquor worm and refine it as my vital goo, but right now there are still no leads on my search for the flower wine monk's skeleton. I don't even know when will I be able to find it, or when someone else does. Just to be safe I'll pick a moonlight goo first. Fang Yuan breathed deeply as he continued to walk towards the wall that was directly in front of him. A row of silver plates could be found on one of the top layers of the holes in this wall. Each plate contained a goo. These goo were crystalline and crescent-shaped, resembling blue quartz. The goo exuded a peaceful and elegant aura against the silver dish. Known as the moonlight goo, this type of goo was the Guyu clan's local goo, and many of the clansmen chose it as their essential goo. The moonlight goo was not a natural goo, rather, it was a breed developed by the Guyu clan using a secret procedure. The moonlight goo could not be found anyplace else, it may be considered an emblem of the Guyu clan. Because it was all rank 1 moonlight goo, the differences were minimal. Fang Yuan casually selected one and took it. The moonlight goo was exceedingly light, around the weight of a piece of paper. The insect occupied a small portion of his hand and was roughly the size of a regular jade pendant. As Fang Yuan placed it on his hand, he could see through it and see the lines on his palm. Fang Yuan took one more glance and saw nothing amiss with the moonlight goo before walking out of the goo chamber. Outside the goo room, the line was still long. As soon as the next person in line saw Fang Yuan go, he dashed inside the room, filled with enthusiasm. If it were someone else, the first thing they would do after receiving their goo would be to take it home and immediately refine it. However, Fang Yuan was not in a hurry to do so because his thoughts was still preoccupied with the liquor worm. The liquor worm was more valuable than the moonlight goo, while the moonlight goo was a specialty of the Guyu hamlet, it did not benefit a goo master as much as the liquor worm. After leaving the goo room, Fang Yuan went straight to the tavern. Shopkeeper, Two jars of aged wine Fang Yuan searched through his pockets and placed the remaining primal stone bits on the counter. These few days, 
he would come here to buy wine, then scout around the village border, hoping to attract the liquor worm so it would appear. The shopkeeper was a short, chubby middle-aged man with an oily face. After a few days, he had remembered Fang Yuan. Sir, you've come. As he greeted Fang Yuan, he extended a thick and short pudgy hand and neatly brushed away the primitive stone bits. As he placed them on his palm, he shifted his hand up and down to ensure that the weight was correct. The shopkeeper's smile became even wider as a result. Primeval stones were the currency of this universe, used to determine the value of all things. At the same time, it was a concentrated matter of the world's essence that could be used on oneself and was useful in assisting a gumister in his cultivation. It was comparable to gold on earth because it has both monetary and useful features. Earth's financial system is based on gold, which has been substituted in this world by primitive stones. Primeval stones have even greater purchasing value than gold. However, with Fang Yuan's continuing expenditure, no number of primal stones would suffice. Two jars of wine every day, and it's already been seven full days, the initial savings I had are almost all spent, Fang Yuan grumbled slightly as he walked out of the tavern with two jars of wine. When someone becomes a Gu master, he will be able to extract primeval essence directly from a primeval stone, replenishing the primeval sea within his aperture. Thus, to Gu masters, primal stones were not only a sort of payment, but also a supplement to their cultivation. With enough primal stones, the rate of cultivation increases significantly, which can compensate for the disadvantages of individuals with lesser talent grades. I won't have primeval stones to buy wine anymore tomorrow, yet the liquor worm just doesn't want to appear. Do I really have to take the moonlight goo and refine it as my vital goo? Fang Yuan was feeling a bit unfulfilling. As he went with the two wine jars in his hand, he began to ponder. Academy Elder said, the first person who manages to refine his vital goo will get a reward of 20 primeval stones. Right now I guess a lot of them are at home trying their best to refine their goo and compete for the first position. A pity, refining the vital goo is more of a test of one's talent. Those with better primeval talent will have better advantage. With my C-grade talent, without any special means I have totally no chance of winning. It was at this point when Gu Yu Feng Zhang cried out to him from behind. Big brother, you really did go to the tavern and buy alcohol follow me, and and uncle want to see you. Feng Yuan paused in his tracks and turned around. He noticed that his younger sibling was no longer speaking with his head lowered. Right now, the two brothers were looking at each other directly. A blast of wind blew, lifting the older brother's unkempt short hair and swishing the lower hems of the younger brother's robes. Even after only one month, humans change. A week following the awakening ceremony, both the older and younger brothers saw significant changes. Fang Yuan, the oldest brother, descended from the heavens, cruelly destroying the label of brilliance. And the younger brother began to shine brightly, gradually rising like a new star. Fang Zheng, the younger brother, found this type of transformation to be earth-shaking. He now tasted the sentiments that his older brother used to have, people placing their expectations on him, and others staring at him with envious and jealous stares. He felt as if he had been snatched from a dark nook and transported to a heaven filled with light. Every day when he woke up, he felt as if he was having a very lovely dream. The difference between how he was treated previously and now was like night and day, leaving him partly unable to believe his reality even now, while simultaneously being firmly habituated to it. It was difficult to adapt. In a short period of time, he went from unknown to closely watched, with people constantly pointing at him. When Fang Zheng walked down the street, he would hear people around him chatting about himself, applauding him. His face would heat up and he'd be absolutely at a loss for what to do, his eyes trying to avoid gazes, and he almost forgot how to walk properly. Gu Yu Fang Zheng lost weight during the first 10 days, but his energy level increased. Something known as self-confidence began to emerge from within his heart. This is what Big Brother had always been feeling before, how beautiful and painful at the same time. He couldn't stop thinking about his older brother Gu Yu Fang Yuan, how did his older brother handle the attention and discussion. He instinctively began to emulate Fang Yuan, trying to be expressionless all the time, but rapidly realized that he was unsuitable for this approach. During class, a girl's shout could easily turn him red. On the road, all the flirtation from older women drove him to run in a panic several times. He was like a kid learning to walk, stumbling, and falling as he tried to adjust to his new surroundings. Throughout the process, 
he couldn't stop hearing about his older brother's melancholy, alcoholism, refusal to go home at night, and sleeping soundly in class. He was astonished by this. His own older brother, who was previously a powerful entity and regarded as a genius, has suddenly transformed into this? However, he gradually began to understand. His older brother was, after all, a regular man. Anyone who has such a defeat and massive blow will become depressed. Along with this realization, Fang Zhang secretly felt an incomparable joy within. He was hesitant to confess this sensation, but it was undeniable. His older brother, who was recognized as a genius and was always casting a shadow over him, is currently acting unhappy and disparate. From the other perspective, wasn't that a testament to his own development? He was the remarkable one, and this was the reality. As a result, when he saw Fang Yuan holding the wine jars, his hair disheveled and his clothes dirty, Gu Yu Fang Zhang felt comforted, and his breathing became much easier. However, he said, Big brother, you have to stop drinking. You cannot go on like this you have no idea how worried the people who care about you are, you need to wake up. Fang Yuan was emotionless and did not say anything. The two brothers looked at each other. Gu Yu Fang Zhang, the younger brother, had bright eyes that exuded sharpness and keenness. Gu Yu Fang Yuan, the older brother, had two orbs that were a deep black and resembled a deep ancient pool. These eyes made Fang Zhang feel strangely oppressed. Not long after, he subconsciously shifted his eyes and glanced elsewhere. However, when he discovered this, he had a sudden surge in anger. It was self-directed anger. What is wrong with you? Can't even gather the confidence to stare squarely at your older brother? I have absolutely changed. With these thoughts, his eyes returned to their clarity, and he refocused their stare on his brother. But Fang Yuan had already stopped staring at him. Holding a jar of wine in each hand, he moved by Fang Zhang and murmured in a low voice, What else are you looking at? Let's go. Fang Zhang's breathing became disorganized, and the strength that had built up inside his heart could no longer be discharged. This caused him to undergo a difficult-to-describe depression. Given that his older brother had walked far ahead, he could only hasten his pace to catch up. This time, however, he raised his head to face the sun rather than lowering it. His eyes was riveted on his own feet, which were stepping on the shadow of his older brother, Fang Yuan. Chapter 9, Two People Who Start on the Same Road But Eventually Become Distant The sunset was a red tint that appeared over the east. The sky remained brilliant, but everything appeared gloomy. Overlooking the window, the mountains in the distance were gradually turning a deep dark. The lighting in the living area was dim. Aunt and uncle sat high in their chairs, their faces cast in shadow and their expressions difficult to read. When he saw Fang Yuan carrying the two jars of wine, his uncle Gu Yu Dong Tu's brows furrowed. He opened his mouth and began to speak, in the blink of an eye, you are both fifteen years old now. Since you both have the talents of a Gu master, especially Fang Zheng, your aunt, and I are proud of the both of you. I will give you both six pieces of primeval stones, take it. Refining your goo consumes a lot of primeval essence, so you will need these primeval stones. As he stated this, some servants approached and handed Fang Yuan and Fang Zheng each a tiny bag. Fang Yuan snatched his bag quietly. Fang Zheng instantly opened his bag and discovered six oval-shaped, grayish-white primal stones. His face lit up with thanks at instantly and he rose from his seat to face his aunt and uncle. Thank you aunt and uncle, your nephew does need primeval stones to replenish my primeval essence you have both raised me until today, this gratitude is engraved into my heart, I shall not forget it forever. Uncle smiled and nodded, quickly waving her hands and saying gently, sit down, sit down although you both are not our children directly, we have always raised you as our own, you both are able to gain a future, and we are proud of that. Alas we do not have children of our own, and sometimes we thought that if you both could really become our children it would be the best. Her remarks had tremendous meaning. Fang Zheng didn't understand, but Fang Yuan scowled slightly. Uncle came on the scene and stated, I have discussed this with your aunt. We thought of adopting you both and become a genuine, real family. Fang Zheng, I wonder if you are willing. Fang Zheng was surprised for a while, but the look on his face suddenly transformed into a delighted smile and he replied, to be honest, ever since both my parents died, I have longed very much for a family of my own, to be able to become a family with aunt and uncle, this is too good to be true. Aunt's frown relaxed and she laughed, then you are our good son, shouldn't you stop calling us aunt and uncle? In a period of realization, 
Fang Zheng altered his statement to father, mother, aunt and uncle laughed heartily. What a good son, not a waste of us husband and wife to raise you since you were five years old. And we have raised you for ten whole years, she said as she dried her eyes. Uncle gently asked the silent Fang Yuan, Fang Yuan, how about you? Fang Yuan shook his head without saying anything. Big brother, Gu Yu Fang Zheng was ready to advise him when uncle, whose tone remained unchanged, intervened. If that's the case, Fang Yuan my nephew, we won't force you. Since you are already 15 years old, you need to start being independent, this way you will also easily carry on your Fang bloodline. Uncle here has prepared 200 primeval stones for you as financial support. 200 primeval stones Fang Zheng's eyes widened, he had never seen that many primeval stones before. He couldn't help but show a jealous face. But Fang Yuan continued to shake his head. Fang Zheng looked bewildered, and uncle's mood shifted significantly. Aunt's face had also become hazy. Aunt and uncle, if there is nothing else, your nephew will leave, Fang Yuan said without giving them another time to reply. After completing his sentence, he took his wine jars and exited the hall promptly. Fang Zheng stood from his seat and said, Father, mother, big brother is not thinking clearly, how about you let me advise him? Uncle waved his hand and sighed, alas, this matter cannot be forced. Since you have the heart, as your father, I am already very content. Servants, take care of young master Fang Zheng and treat him well. Then your son will take his leave, Fang Zheng said and the living room grew silent. The sun set below the mountain, making the living room darker. Uncle's harsh voice rose out of the darkness after a while. Looks like this brat Fang Yuan has seen through our plot. The Guyu clan's regulations plainly stated that the eldest son, at the age of 16, would be eligible to inherit the family property. Fang Yuan's parents had died, leaving behind a fortune. Aunt and uncle were taken care of it. This legacy was far more valuable than a mere 200 essence stones. If Fang Yuan had agreed to be adopted by aunt and uncle, he would have lost his right to inherit the fortune. If Fang Yuan, at the age of 15, decided to be independent, he would not follow the clan's rules. Fortunately, we won over Fang Zheng, and Fang Yuan only has C-grade talent, uncle sighed, happy. Then, husband, what do we do if Fang Yuan decides to become independent at the age of 16? Aunt's tone became hysterical as she considered the inheritance. Hmph, since he is acting undisciplined, then he can't blame us. As long as we catch him committing a huge mistake before he leaves us and expel him from our family, it will be counted as snatching away his right to inherit the legacy, uncle said with a smirk. But the brat is very clever, how could he make a mistake? Aunt inquired, puzzled. Uncle looked at him with a scowl and said, you are really stupid if he won't make a mistake. Can't we frame him instead? Just let Shen Kui seduce Fang Yuan and scream assault, we catch him on the spot, fabricate a story about him acting wild while he was drunk. Surely we can expel Fang Yuan. Husband, what a brilliant plan. And exclaimed. The thick colors of the night covered the sky, and the stars were mostly obscured by floating dark clouds. Each household in the village gradually turned on its lights. Gu Yu Fang Zheng was led into a room. Young Master Fang Zheng. The old master personally had me tidy up this room especially for you, Mother Shen said in a welcoming tone. She bowed her waist and smiled attractively. Fang Zheng glanced around, his eyes shining. This room was at least twice as big as his previous room. A large bed stood in the center of the room, next to the window, and a rosewood desk held a delicate set of ink and paper. The walls were adorned with exquisite ornaments, and the floor beneath his feet was not ordinary but rather a layer of soft handmade carpet. Fang Zheng had never spent time in such a room since he was a child. He immediately nodded his head repeatedly and said, This is very good, it really isn't bad, thank you Mother Shen. Mother Shen was aunt and uncle's most valuable asset, she oversaw all of the slaves in the house and was a housekeeper who lived up to her reputation. Shen Kui, the girl who served Fang Yuan, was her daughter. Mother Shen laughed, I am not deserving of young master's gratitude. It is my duty, my duty young master, do not hesitate to eat well and sleep well. Whatever you want, just shake the bell beside your bed, somebody will attend to you immediately. Old master has already instructed us, so in these few days please do put all your attention on cultivating, young master. Just leave all the other chores to us. Fang Zheng felt a gush of gratitude in his heart. He did not say anything, but deep down inside he decided, 
This time I must get number one and not let aunt and uncle down. The dark clouds in the sky were getting heavier, and the night was getting darker. In the night sky most of the stars were covered away by the clouds, leaving a few shining with faint light, blinking away in the sky. Aunt and uncle must be plotting on how to expel me from the house right now. In my previous life they secretly instigated the servants to provoke me, and then framed me. Then they expelled me from the family, I wonder if there will be any changes in this life. Fang Yuan sneered in his heart as he walked along the streets. He had long seen clearly the true colors of his aunt and uncle, but he could also understand it. Men would throw away their lives in pursuit for wealth. No matter whether on earth or in this world, there would always be many people who would be willing to trample over kinship, friendly, and love for their own self-interests and benefits. In fact kinship did not exist. In the beginning when aunt and uncle took in Fang Yuan and Fang Zheng, their only purpose was to seek the heritage. It was just so that the two brothers were repeatedly unexpected. All things are difficult before they are easy. To me this is more so of the case. Firstly I do not have outstanding talent. Secondly I do not have the care of a teacher. It is equivalent to raising a family from nothing, but with my parents' legacy it can be said to be a huge advantage for me. In my previous life aunt and uncle stole away the heritage, and because of that I had to waste two full years to be able to cultivate to rank one peak stage. In this life I cannot afford to make the same mistake. Fang Yuan pondered in his mind as he walked. Instead of staying home, he held the two jars of wine and walked towards the outskirts of the village. The night deepened and the dark clouds obscured the starlight, the mountain breeze blew, growing stronger gradually. The mountain rain was coming. But he still had to search, to get a hold of his parents' inheritance, he would need to wait until he was sixteen. And the flower wine monk's treasure was the only thing that he could get his hands on in the short run. There were not many people on the streets. The houses along the road showed a dim light. Some small rubbish and leaves were blown away by the wind, drifting about. Fang Yuan's thin clothing could not stop the mountain wind, and he could not help but feel a cold chill. He simply opened the wine jar drinking a small mouthful of wine. Although it was turbid wine, but after swallowing it he felt a warm feeling rising up. This was the first time that he actually drank wine in these few days. The further he walked out of the village, the lesser the houses beside the road, and the dimmer the lights became. In front of him it was even darker. The wind blew heavily against the mountain forest, the branches swaying in the night, making a whistling noise that sounded like a herd of beasts roaring. Fang Yuan's pace did not slow down. He walked out of the huge entrance of the village and out into the darkness, going further as he walked. And behind him were the bright and brilliant lights of tens of thousands of houses. In these lights there was a warm corner. The younger brother Fang Zheng was seated at his desk, reviewing the notes that he had taken down during class. The lights in the house were shining brightly, the and solid wall blocked away the cold winds. Beside his hand was a cup of warm ginseng tea, the steam rising up from the cup. Young Master Fang Zheng. The hot bathing water has been prepared for you. Outside the door, Shen Kui's voice softly floated through. Feng Zheng's heart jolted. Then bring it in please. Shen Kui strolled into the room with her waist bowed, her expression happy. Your servant greets young master. Her eyes flashed lustful looks at Feng Zheng. Feng Yuan was merely a C grade talent, but Feng Zheng was an A grade talent to be able to grab a hold of him, is truly the biggest fortune. Chapter 10 a storm may emerge from a clear sky, perfecting goo is full of obstacles. Pitter-patter. Big, heavy showers dropped on the earth, pounding the roof of the verdant bamboo hut, making brittle sounds. The surface of the pond in front of the building was full of ripples as the rain fell, the fish in the water swimming energetically around, the aquatic plants swaying about at the bottom of the pond. The sky was gloomy, a thick rain curtain blocked the field of vision as far as the eye could see. In the rather murky room the window was open, and Fang Yuan silently watched the heavy rains, sighing. It has already been three days and three nights. On the night three days earlier he had wandered out of the village with two jars of wine, searching about the surrounds. But when it was late into the night it started pouring rain. Put aside him being wet to the bones, the key thing was that given the situation he could not go about searching anymore. Rainwater would quickly remove the wine fragrance. At the same time, Forcing himself to search in such conditions could raise suspicions. Although he had previously pretended to be a depressed drunk to conceal his true intentions, he knew not to underestimate the intelligence of those around him. Only a fool would believe others were stupid. Under this helplessness, 
Fang Yuan could only halt his search, not to mention that the rain began immediately and continued indefinitely. It fluctuated in weight, but it never stopped. I guess in this way, I won't be able to find the liquor worm for a short period of time. To be safe, I can only choose to start refining the moonlight goo. While refining it, if I can find the liquor worm during the process, it would be the best, but if I can't, this would have to do. But this matter is very common, a storm may arise from a clear sky, something unexpected may happen anytime. In this world, who can do everything without having a purr? Fang Yuan's thoughts were calm, his 500 years of experience had long washed away the impulsiveness that he rarely exhibited in the first place. He shut the door and window and sat cross-legged on his bed. He slowly closed his eyes and breathed a few times to calm his mind. In the next moment, the image of his primeval aperture appeared in his mind. The aperture was located inside his body, but it was strangely unusual, limitlessly large, and yet infinitely small. The aperture's outer layer consisted of light. The white light left a thin impression but still supported the aperture well. The hole contained a sea of primordial essence. The ocean was a green copper tint, and the sea's surface was as clean and peaceful as a mirror. The water level was approximately half the height of the aperture. The entire volume of the sea filled 44% of the aperture. This was the green copper primeval sea of a rank 1 goo master, and every drop of seawater contained primeval essence. It was Fang Yuan's life force, the sum of his essence, vitality, and soul. Every drop of primeval essence was valuable since it was the foundation of a goo master and the source of strength. Goo masters must rely on primeval essence to refine and use goo. As he retreated his consciousness from the primordial water, Fang Yuan opened his eyes and took the moonlight goo. Moonlight goo sat peacefully in the center of his hand, resembling a curved blue moon, little and crystalline. With a simple thought, the primordial sea in his aperture tipped over, and a jet of primeval essence burst from the sea's surface and flowed out of the body, eventually into the moonlight goo. The moonlight goo instantly radiated a bright blue light slightly quivering in Fang Yuan's palm as it resisted the influx of primordial essence. Gu are the essence of heaven and earth, conveying the world's secrets and enforcing natural law. They are living beings that roam freely beneath the sky, each born with its own will. Right now, with Fang Yuan attempting to refine it, it would imply wiping out the will. With danger looming, the moonlight Gu instinctively resisted. The procedure of refining is extremely complicated. The moonlight Gu resembled a bent crescent moon. As the green copper primal essence flowed into the crescent, the two pointed ends turned green. Slowly, the green copper essence extended to the center of the crescent moon. In less than three minutes, Fang Yuan's face turned pallid. A massive amount of primal essence rushed into the moonlight goo, causing him to experience a weakness that quickly attacked his heart. 1%, 2%, 3%, 8%, 9%, 10%. Ten minutes later, Fang Yuan's primordial sea had depleted 10% of primeval essence. However, on the blue crystalline moonlight goo's surface, the points of green copper essence on the two tips of the crescent barely expanded a little space towards the center. The moonlight goo was extremely resistant. Fortunately, Fang Yuan had anticipated this and was not shocked. He persisted, pouring more essence into the moonlight goo. 1%, 2%, 3%. After another 20 minutes, the primeval sea in Fang Yuan's body had only 14% remaining. The green copper essence on the moonlight goo had expanded slightly, with the two tips covering around one twelfth of the moonlight goo's surface. The rest of the moonlight goo's surface retained its natural light blue tint. Refining a goo is so hard, Fang Yuan groaned as he gazed at it. He interrupted the flow of primitive essence, halting the refining process. He had been refining for half an hour and had eaten more than half of the primeval sea in his aperture, leaving only 14% of the primeval essence. And barely one twelfth of the moonlight goo had been polished. To make matters worse, the moonlight goo was still generating a faint blue glow. Even after Fang Yuan had finished refining, the moonlight goo continued to resist, forcing away Fang Yuan's green coppery primal essence. Fang Yuan could clearly sense the moonlight goo pushing forth the primitive essence that he had poured into it. On its surface, the green copper essence at the moon crescent's two tips was gradually diminishing. Based on this rate of decline, the moonlight goo should be able to expel all of Fang Yuan's primal essence in around six hours. When he needed to refine this goo, it would be no different than starting afresh. 
When refining goo, a goo master must replenish his primeval sea while continuously engaging in the refinement process, consolidating his victory. It is akin to a battle between two armies, a battle of positional warfare, or a war of attrition. Even though I refined one twelfth of the goo, I wasted three quarters of my primeval essence. Refining goo is a test of one's ability to shift his primeval essence and the patience of an enduring battle. Fang Yuan grabbed a chunk of primal stone from his money bag and thought. A Gu master had two options for replenishing the consumed primal essence. The first option was natural healing. Over time, the primeval sea would spontaneously replenish the primeval essence. For a C-grade talent like Fang Yuan, replenishing 4% of primal essence would take around 1 hour. In 6 hours, it could recover 24% of the total amount of primal essence. The second method was to absorb the natural essence straight from a primordial stone. The primeval stone is a natural treasure. As natural primal essence was concentrated and absorbed, the water level of the primeval sea rose at a constant rate that could be observed with the naked eye. After about a half hour, the ancient sea had been replenished to its original volume of 44%. At this point, the sea's rising water level came to an abrupt halt. Even though there was still space inside the aperture, Fang Yuan was unable to store any more primal essence. This was the extent of his C-grade talent. Thus, one can understand the importance of the grade of one's cultivation talent. The higher the talent, the more primeval essence the aperture can keep, and the faster the primeval essence recovers naturally. In Fang Yuan's case, in order to refine a goo and solidify his findings, he must absorb primeval stones because his primeval essence natural recovery rate cannot compete with the rate at which the moonlight goo expels it. However, Fang Zhang, an A-grade talent, could recover 8% of primal essence every hour. In 6 hours, he would regain 48% of the primal essence, while the moonlight goo could only expel 3% of it. Fang Zhang did not need the assistance of a primal stone. He could continue refining with a few naps in between and successfully refine the moonlight goo in a few days. That was why Fang Yuan understood right once that in this test to refine the moonlight goo, he would never be able to take first place. It had little to do with a person's physical strength, as the first factor was their level of talent. The second reason would be prehistoric stones. If there were an excess of primal stones available to devour, a B-grade talent could outperform an A-grade talent and take first place. I have six primeval stones in my hands, but I can't compete with Guyu Mobei or Guyu Chi Chen, who have their elder family members supporting them from behind. My talent is C-grade, and I can't compete with Fang Zhang who has an A-grade talent. I never had a chance of winning this test, so why not divert my energy and go look for the liquor worm? If I can make the liquor worm into my vital goo, it will be far superior to the moonlight. Fang Yuan kept the moonlight goo and got out of bed. He was going to open the window when he heard a knock on the door. Outside the door, his servant Shen Kui called out, Young Master Fang Yuan, it's me. It's been raining for three days straight, so I brought you some food and wine. Young master, eat and drink and get some relief from your depression. Chapter 11, It's Just Power Play. Fang Yuan frowned slightly. Based on intuition and 500 years of life experience, he detected a conspiracy. His eyes flared, and he lowered his brow. I'm a little hungry right now, you came at the right time. Come in, he said. Shen Kui smirked coldly outside the door, holding the food box, as she heard his response. But when she pulled open the door, her face took on a soft, humble expression. Young Master Fang Yuan, the food and wine smell delicious, I can smell it as I hold the box. Her voice was lovely, with hints of longing and flattery. She placed the food box on a little table and removed the plates, arranging them neatly. The dish was incredibly fragrant and delicious. She then brought out two wine cups and poured the wine. Come, young master. Sit down. Your servant mustered her courage today and wants to accompany young master for a drink. She smiled like a flower as she walked to Fang Yuan's side. She boldly took his hand and brought him over to the chair by the table. Then she sat on his leg, leaning her kind body against Fang Yuan's chest, pretending shy and sweet while talking in his ear. Young master Fang Yuan, your servant has always liked you. It doesn't matter what grade you are, I will always wish to be beside you, rely on you, and comfort you. Tonight your servant would like to give her body to you. She was extremely suited up today. She applied blusher to her lips, which looked like cherry powder. When she murmured into his ear, 
A delicate and youthful breath caressed Fang Yuan's earlobe. Because she was seated on his lap, Fang Yuan could readily feel her well-shaped body, her supple thighs, tiny waist, and delicate chest. Young master, let me feed you wine myself. Shen Kui took the wine cup, raised her head, and sipped. Then her gaze fixed on Fang Yuan, her small cherry lips slightly opened, and she leaned over to his mouth. Fang Yuan's demeanor was neutral, as if the object in his lap was a block of sculpture rather than a young woman. Shen Kui initially felt worried when she noticed Fang Yuan's look. But when her lips were only an inch from his, she was confident, sneering in her heart. You're still pretending, she mused. Fang Yuan scoffed, his tone contemptuous. So it's just a power play, one, dot. Shen Kui's face stiffened as she gulped the alcohol in her mouth, attempting to pull fake flattery. Young master Fang Yuan, what are you saying? Fang Yuan's eyes emitted chilly light. He peered into Shen Kui's eyes while pressing his right hand firmly against her dazzling white neck. Shen Kui's eyes contracted, and her voice was filled with panic. Young master, you're hurting me. Fang Yuan didn't respond, but his grip on her neck became stronger. Young master Fang Yuan, your servant is a little scared. Shen Kui was already having difficulty breathing and was anxious. A soft pair of hands subconsciously gripped Fang Yuan's hand and tried to pry it away. But Fang Yuan's grasp was as strong as iron and could not be torn away. Looks like uncle and aunt let you come over to seduce me and frame me? This must mean that there are already people arranged downstairs, huh? Fang Yuan scoffed and said, but who do you think you are, coming to use tactics on me, with the two piles of garbage of rotten flesh on your chest? As he stated this, his left hand went up her chest and savagely seized her sensitive breasts, instantly deforming them. Shen Kui's eyes widened as she felt intense pain in her chest. Her eyes welled up with tears at the pain. She wanted to scream, but Fang Yuan grasped her throat so tightly that she could only sob a few times. Then she started resisting violently, for she was about to suffocate. But, at this point, Fang Yuan gradually relaxed his grip. Shen Kui quickly opened her mouth and sucked oxygen greedily. Her breathing was too quick, resulting in a series of harsh coughs. Fang Yuan laughed gently and extended his palm. He lightly stroked her cheek, speaking in a careless tone, Shen Kui, do you think I can kill you, or not? If Fang Yuan yelled at her in an evil and harsh voice, Shen Kui might respond furiously. But when Fang Yuan grinned and spoke in a shallow tone, wondering if he could murder her or not, Shen Kui felt a deep sense of horror in her heart. She was afraid. She glanced at Fang Yuan with horror in her eyes, seeing this young man smile all over his face as he looked at her. At this point, Shen Kui promised herself that she would never forget his gaze for the rest of her life. This pair of eyes was devoid of expression, dark and profound, like a deep ancient lake hiding a frightening beast. Under the gaze of these eyes, Shen Kui felt exposed in the middle of ice and snow. The person in front of me undoubtedly dares to murder me and is capable of doing so. Oh heaven s, why did I come and provoke such a devil? Shen Kui's heart was filled with regret. She wished she could turn and flee right now, but she was still on his lap, she didn't dare to run away, and she couldn't muster the bravery to do anything. Her muscles were stiff all throughout, and her lovely figure trembled. Her face was as pale as white paper, and she couldn't speak a word. I will not kill you because you have been my personal servant girl for many years. If you want to escape from slavery, go find my little brother, who is stupid and naive. Fang Yuan retracted his smile and patted her cheek, his tone simple as water. With a sigh, he eventually said, You can leave. Shen Kui, as dumb as a piece of wood, walked out obediently. She was terrified and had no idea how she had gotten away from the devil known as Fang Yuan. The men lurking in the shadows were perplexed when they saw Shen Kui emerge so frightened. They actually arranged such a beautiful trap, it's even more innovative than my previous life. He he, aunt and uncle, this kindness of yours I will remember deeply. Fang Yuan rose up and departed shortly after Shen Kui did. Whatever the case, he could no longer stay at this property. A knowledgeable man sees and mitigates known threats, what more can be said about a devil? When there is insufficient strength. Only a fool would risk his life. Innkeeper, do you have any rooms available? Fang Yuan approached the village's single inn and inquired about the pricing. Yes, yes. There is room on the second floor and third floor. Not only is it cheap, the rooms are also tidy and clean. The first floor is the cafeteria, guests of the inn can come here and eat. 
There is also service for asking the inworkers to bring up food to your room. The innkeeper was generous in his hospitality to Fang Yuan with his dulcet tones. This inn was the only one in the village, but it was not particularly popular. In fact, it was fairly deserted. Only when the annual merchant caravan arrived to trade on Qing Mao Mountain would the inn be full of customers. Fang Yuan was a little hungry, so he gave the innkeeper two whole round chunks of primal stones. Give me a good room for me to stay in, and prepare two jars of wine, 34 different dishes, return me any excess balance. Done. The innkeeper grabbed the two chunks of prehistoric stone and said, Do you want to eat in your room or in the hall? Fang Yuan stared to the sky. The rain had ceased, and it was almost evening. He could just eat in the lobby and then proceed to the outskirts of the village to continue his search for the flower wine monk's riches. So he responded, I'll eat in the hall. The inn included a dining hall with 12 square tables encircled by four long seats. Between the tables were massive and strong pillars that supported the inn. The floor was covered in large marble tiles, but it was damp, making it difficult to disguise the moisture of the mountain. There were three tables filled with people. An old man sat by the window, drinking wine and staring out at the sunset, alone. In the center of the cafeteria, 56 hunters sat around a table. They were talking loudly about their hunting experiences, and at their feet was a mound of various types of mountain game, including pheasants and hares. In another corner, there was a table with two young people who appeared to be discussing something in secret. Their figures were veiled in the darkness, it was difficult to see them and determine their gender. Fang Yuan chose to seat at the table nearest the door. Soon after, the foods were served to the table. With my C-grade talent, to refine the moonlight goo I would need to borrow primeval stones. If my luck is good and this moonlight goo does not have a strong will, I would only need five pieces. But if it is stubborn that I'd be in trouble, probably need around at least eight pieces. Goo are living animals, thus they have an inherent will to survive. Some goo have a strong will and will always resist the refinement process, others have a weak will and will helplessly submit throughout the refining process. Once there is no resistance, the refining process becomes relaxing. Right now I only have six primeval stones on me, but I gave two to the innkeeper so I'm left with four pieces. There's not enough. In this world, primal stones are the local currency, and their purchasing value is quite high. A typical family of three would spend at most one piece of essence stone per month. However, a goo master consumed more primal stones. Take Fang Yuan, for example, just refining goo would require an average of seven primal stones. And this is just on a moonlight goo, if he truly did locate the liquor worm, merely to refine it with Fang Yuan's grade talent, he would need at least a dozen more. In other words, right now my situation is even if I find the liquor worm, I don't necessarily have the primeval stones to refine it. However I still need to search around, because there is a huge possibility that the flower wine monk's treasure has a huge abundance of primeval stones. It was not a tough deduction. After all, the flower wine monk was a fifth-ranking goo master. How could such a well-known strong warrior of the demonic faction not have primeval stones, the most important thing in a goo master's cultivation? 1. Power play strategies that demonstrate or aim to improve a person's power or influence. Chapter 12, Green Bamboo Wine is Aromatic, Goo Master Displays Authority. Right now everything comes down to the flower wine monk's treasure. If I can find it, all my problems will be solved. If I don't find it, all these issues will greatly slow down my speed of cultivation. If that happens I'll lose out to people at my age in cultivating. I don't understand I've spent more than a week trying to attract the liquor worm to appear, why do I still not see it? Fang Yuan grimaced and tortured his mind. It was like putting food in his mouth and not knowing how it tasted. 1. Suddenly, a loud noise interrupted his thoughts. Fang Yuan turned in the direction of the sound and realized that the six hunters sat around the table in the center of the hall were extremely drunk. The atmosphere around them was hot, and their faces were all crimson. Brother Zhang, come, drink another cup. Old Brother Fang, we brothers admire your abilities you took down a black-skinned wild boar alone, what a man this cup of wine you must drink, or else you will be disrespecting us. Thank you brothers for your sincerity, but I really can't drink anymore. Brother Feng can't drink anymore, perhaps you dislike this wine because it's not good enough? Waiter, come over give me some good wine. The ruckus became more louder, it was clear that the group had consumed a lot. The waiter rushed over and said, well, sirs, we do have good wine, 
but it is quite expensive. What, you're afraid we won't pay up? When the hunters heard the waiter, some of them stood up and stared at him. They were either enormously tall or thick and strong, robust, and active in a terrifying way, and each possessed the fortitude of a mountain man. The waiter gave a quick response, I would not dare to look down on you brave men, it's just that these wine is really expensive, one jar costs two pieces of primeval stones. The hunters were stunned. Two primal stones were obviously not cheap, they amounted to two months worth of the typical monthly household costs. Even if hunters earn more from hunting than regular mortals, for example, a black-skinned wild pig may be worth half a primal stone. However, hunting was dangerous, and a misstep could turn the hunter into prey. To the hunters, wasting two primal stones just to drink a jar of wine was simply not worth it. Is there really such an expensive wine? Boy, you aren't trying to lie to us right? The hunters were shouting, but their voices were hesitating, as if they couldn't gracefully leave the situation. The waiter kept claiming he wouldn't dare. The hunter known as Brother Feng recognized that the setting was not right and hurriedly commented, My brothers, let's not spend any more. I can't drink any more, let us drink this wine another day. What, you can't say that brother. This is. The surviving hunters shouted, but their voices faded. They returned to their seats one by one. The waitress was also a savvy individual. When he saw this, he knew he couldn't sell the wine anymore. However, this incident did not surprise him. As he was about to leave, a young man's voice came from a table in the dark corner. He he, hilarious. Each one of them blindly shouting for nothing. If you can't afford to buy wine, you should just obediently keep your mouth shut and go to the side. When the hunters heard this, one of them quickly shouted in wrath, Who said we can't afford it? Waiter, bring over that jar of wine, I'll give you the stones, two pieces of it. Oh, give me a moment, sir, I'll get it. The waiter was unprepared for this unexpected turn of events. He swiftly responded, turning to pick up a wine container and bring it over. This wine jar was the same size as a conventional wine jar, but when it was uncorked, a fresh and mellow aroma filled the cafeteria. Even the elderly man sitting alone at the window couldn't help but turn over and inspect the jar when he smelled the wine. The wine was quite nice. Dear guests, it's not bragging, this is the green bamboo wine. The entire village only has one in, which is us, smell the fragrance. The waiter inhaled deeply as he said this, his face flushed with delight. Fang Yuan was relocated. This inn waiter did not brag. Gu Yu village had three taverns. Wine served there included common rice wine, muddy wine, and other common varieties. To entice the liquor worm, Fang Yuan bought wine every day for seven days, he was definitely aware of the prices. Several hunters examined the wine jug in front of them. They were consumed by their alcohol addiction. They twitched their nostrils and swallowed. The hunter who bought the wine in a fit of passion had an even stranger countenance, with a veneer of sorrow and contempt on his face. After all, this jar of wine was worth the equivalent of two primal stones. I was too rash and bought the wine by impulse. This waiter is not too typical. He immediately brought the wine, now the cork is unsealed. Even if I want to return the goods it is too late. The hunter became increasingly troubled as he reflected. He wanted to return it but couldn't since he was terrified of being shamed. Finally, he could only bang on the table and say with a strong smile, Damn, this wine is good brothers, please, drink all you want. Today, this wine is on me. At this moment, the young man at the corner table snarled, How is this small jar of wine enough for six? If you have the courage, go buy a few more jars. When the hunter heard this, he became infuriated and stood up, his stare fixed on the young man speaking. Brat, you sure have a lot of words. Come, stand up and fight me. Oh, then I will stand up. As soon as he heard the hunter's reply, the young guy rose up and emerged from the shadows, beaming. His body was tall and slender, with a pale complexion. He was dressed in navy military robes and appeared clean and spotless. His head was wrapped in a blue headband and his upper body was clad in a jacket that exposed his small, weak shoulders. The lower torso was clad in long pants, bamboo sandals, and knotted calves. The green belt around his waist was his most distinctive feature. The center of the belt was a shiny piece of copper with the word one engraved in black on it. It's a rank one goo master. The hunter recognized the sort of clothing. He took a deep breath, the rage on his face fading and giving place to alarm. He never imagined that he would actually provoke a goo master. Didn't you want to fight me? Come on, hit me. 
The young Gu master approached the man cautiously, a teasing smile on his lips. But the hunter who had before challenged him was locked in place, unable to move. Maybe you guys can all come at me together, that works too. The young Gu master approached the hunter's table casually and spoke. Their facial expressions had altered. Some of the hunters with drunken red faces had gone pallid. Each of their foreheads was covered in cold sweat, and they were agitated, afraid to even breathe deeply. The young Gu master extended his hand to pick up the green bamboo wine container. He placed it under his nose and sniffed, smiling. He said, it sure smells good. If my lord likes it, then please feel free to take and drink it. It is an apology from me for offending my lord, the hunter who angered him before hurriedly replied and cupped his hands together before his chest, pushing a smile to his lips. The young man's demeanor immediately changed, with a loud crack, the jar shattered on the ground. The goo master appeared cold as ice, his gaze as sharp as a sword. His voice rasped, you think you have the right to apologize to me? You bunch of hunters must be really rich, even richer than me, since you guys spent two primeval stones to drink wine? Do you have any idea, how upset I am over primeval stones right now you actually dare to show off your wealth in front of me at this time you mortals can even compare to me? We wouldn't dare, we wouldn't dare. To offend my lord, it is a heinous crime. We mortals did not mean to offend you, these are our primeval stones, please accept Lord Goo Master. The hunters immediately sprang to their feet and took out their rudimentary stones. But how could these people have money when all they had were bits and shards of ancient stones, the largest of which was only one-fourth of a primeval stone? The Goo Master rejected the primal stones, yet he did not stop sneering. He utilized his hawk-like eyesight to scan the entire cafe. The hunters he surveyed lowered their heads. The elderly man sitting at the window, seeing the scene, quickly averted his head away from the Gu master's sight. Only Fang Yuan observed quietly and without hesitation. Fang Yuan was not qualified to wear the outfit worn by this young Gu master because it was intended for formal Gu masters alone. Fang Yuan would only receive it from the clan after graduating from the academy. The word one on the copper piece on the young Gu master's belt showed his status as a rank one Gu master. However, he was already roughly 20 years old, and the aura of primordial essence coming from his body suggested that he was in the rank 1 upper stage. Starting cultivation at 15 years of age and only reaching rank 1 higher level at around 20 years of age revealed that the young Gu master possesses just D grade talent, one grade below than Fang Yuan. This person was most likely a logistics Gu master and not a battle Gu master. Even if that were the case, it was more than enough to defeat these six formidable hunters. This was the power differential between a Gu master and a mortal individual. With power, one can be at the top. This is the nature of this world. No, actually any world is also the same, the big fish eats the small fish and the small fish eats the shrimp. It's just that this world shows it even more openly, Fang Yuan muttered to himself. Okay, Zhang Ya, you've already taught them a lesson, let's not further embarrass these mortals, if it gets out, even if you're not embarrassed, I will be said another young person sitting in the corner. When everyone heard the speaker speak, they assumed it was a young woman. Zhang Ye, a young Gu master, stopped sneering after his female companion rebuked him. He didn't even look at the old stones that the hunters had recovered, they were not even the equivalent of two primeval stones, and he wasn't interested in them. He flipped his sleeve and went back to his own table. As he walked back, he said fiercely, if you think you have the guts to keep drinking, then go and drink green bamboo wine, I want to see who still dares to drink it. The hunters all bent their heads, as if they were six obedient children who had been disciplined. The powerful perfume of wine pervaded the entire restaurant. The hunter who bought the wine felt his heartache as he inhaled the aroma. After all, he spent two primal stones on this wine and never got to taste even a mouthful. Fang Yuan put down his chopsticks, he had eaten enough. His eyes flashed for a second as he smelled the wine aroma before removing two primitive stones and placing them on the table. Waiter, give me a jar of green bamboo wine, he asked casually. The whole scene froze. Zhang Ye, a young Gu master, came to a halt almost immediately. His mouth twitched as he breathed. He had scarcely just concluded his admonition when Fang Yuan sought the drink. It felt like stepping over him and slapping him in the face. He turned around and cast a venomous look at Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan returned the stare coolly, his face expressionless and fearless. Zhang Ye's eyes widened, and the coldness in his expression disappeared.
He felt the presence of primordial essence on Fang Yuan's body. After recognizing Fang Yuan, he grinned warmly and said, Ah, it's a junior brother. Everyone else knew what was going on, and their expressions toward Fang Yuan changed. Given that he was a Gu master himself, it's not surprising that this youngster was not afraid of them. Even though he was still at the academy, his standing had already shifted. Lord Gu Master, your wine. The server rushed over with a smile on his face. Fang Yuan bowed at the young Gu Master, grabbed a jar of wine, and exited the inn. 1. It indicates that he is working hard but not seeing results. Chapter 13, The Bamboo Grove Beneath the Moon, With a Bead of Snow Around 300 years ago, an extraordinary mind arose within the Guyu clan. He was incredibly competent and had already cultivated himself to the level of a rank 5 Gu master at a young age, with the potential to go even higher. He was well known throughout Qing Mao Mountain, had a bright future, and was considered as the pinnacle of hope and responsibility by the clan. Everyone in the Guyu clan's history praised him as the fourth clan chief. Unfortunately, he died to protect his people and confronted the equally formidable rank 5 Gu master, the demonic flower wine monk. Despite defeating the flower wine monk in a fierce battle, he permitted the devil to kneel and beg for mercy. In the end, he acted recklessly and was caught by the flower wine monk's sneak attack. The fourth head angrily executed the flower wine monk, but he died prematurely as a result of his own serious injuries. This horrific event has long spread, becoming a well-known story among the Guyu clan. However, Fang Yuan noticed that this story was not credible due to a key fault. In his previous life, a month later, a drunken Gu master who had been rejected by his sweetheart lay down outside the village, so intoxicated that he looked like a fish. Finally, the flowing smell of wine drew a liquor worm. The Gu master tracked the liquor worm until he found the flower wine monk's remains in a secret underground cave, together with his inheritance. This Gu master hurried back to the clan and informed them of the event, causing a massive uproar. As the storm passed, he profited as well. He got the wine worm. His cultivation improved, the female friend who had previously abandoned him returned to his side, and he became the talk of the town for a while. Stories typically evolve as they are passed down from generation to generation. However, in Fang Yuan's memory, the story of the Gu Master discovering the riches seemed incredibly authentic, but he had the sensation that it was masking other truths. I wasn't aware of it at first, but in these few days while I searched and analyzed on the side, I've noticed that something feels out of place. As night fell, Fang Yuan walked through the bamboo grove that grew surrounding the hamlet, mulling over the clues he'd acquired thus far. If I put myself in his shoes and think about it, when I discover the flower wine monk's treasure why would I not take it all for myself, but go and notify the clan instead? Don't even mention sense of clan honor, everyone has greed in their hearts. What is it that would make that goo master betray the greediness in his heart, even going as far as to be willing to abandon all interest and profit? and report this finding to the clan's top brass. The truth is constantly obscured by the mist of history. Fang Yuan racked his mind but couldn't come up with a solution. After all, he had too few leads. The only two hints he had may be authentic or fake, so they couldn't be entirely trusted. Fang Yuan couldn't help thinking about himself. No matter what, after buying this jar of green bamboo wine I only have two primeval stones left on me. If I can't find the treasure then I'll be in grave trouble. Today shall be considered the final gamble, it's all or nothing. However, he did not have enough primeval stones to refine a goo worm in the first place. Why not invest in this wine to improve your chances of success? If it were other people, they would probably play it safe and conserve the primordial stones. However, for Fang Yuan, doing so was inefficient. He would rather take a risk and gamble. You see, the people of the demonic faction relish taking risks. The darkness became denser and the spring moon resembled a bow. Clouds obscured the moonlight, as if the crescent moon were wrapped in a thin coating of gossamer. Because it had stopped raining for three days and three nights, the muddy energy between the mountains had been washed away, leaving just the purest of freshness. This fresh air was as pure as white paper, and it did a better job of distributing the wine aroma. That was the first reason Fang Yuan felt so confident tonight. The previous seven days of searching produced some results. At the very least, it confirmed that the flower wine monk did not perish in those areas. This was the second reason Fang Yuan was confident. In the bamboo grove, the grass was thick, the white blooms were plentiful, and the green spear bamboo was straight as a pencil, 
resembling a clump of jade rods. Fang Yuan opened the jar seal, releasing a rich wine scent right away. Green bamboo wine is perhaps the most popular in Guyu village. This was the third reason why Fang Yuan felt secure tonight. With these three big reasons coming together, if I want to succeed, it has to be tonight, Fang Yuan whispered in his heart as he slowly tilted the wine jar, spilling a small drop of wine upon a stone. If the hunters had noticed this sight, they would have been very concerned. After all, this wine is worth two entire primal stones. But Fang Yuan remained unconcerned. The lovely perfume quickly dispersed over the night. The breeze was gentle, and a faint perfume permeated the bamboo forest, contaminating it. Fang Yuan stood in his seat, absorbing the perfume. He looked for a while but saw no action. All he could hear was a nightingale crying in the distance, sounding like a string of bells. His gaze stayed silent. He wasn't surprised, so he went away for a few hundred meters. In this spot, he repeated the process, pouring a few drops of wine and waiting. He went over the process multiple times, traveling away to different locations and dropping wine each time. After all of this, the green bamboo wine in the jar was reduced to a small quantity. This is the last time, Fang Yuan lamented. He tipped the wine jug over, the bottom toward the sky. The remaining wine in the jar poured out. The wine sprinkled on the grass, making it sway. The wildflowers were stained with alcohol, and their heads were slightly down. Fang Yuan stood there, holding the last shred of hope in his bosom and glancing about. The night was already thick. A dense cloud had obscured the moonlight. The deep shadows created a veil around the bamboo grove. There was total silence all around, with each strand of green spear bamboo standing alone and leaving a trail of straight up and down lines in Fang Yuan's pupils. He remained silent at the location, listening to his own steady breathing. Then he felt the faint hope he held in his breast slip away, becoming nothing. It failed after all. A voice in his head said, Today I had three great advantages gathered together, yet I still failed, not even seeing the shadow of the liquor worm. This means that in future the rate of success will be lower. Right now I only have two primeval stones left, and I still need to refine the moonlight goo. I can't risk it anymore. Taking a risk usually brought unfavorable outcomes. However, if the outcome was optimal, the profit would be enormous. Fang Yuan enjoyed taking risks, but he was not a gambling addict, nor was he determined to recoup his losses. He recognized his own limitations and abilities. Right now, 500 years of life experience told him it was time to stop. Sometimes life was like this. Frequently, there was one goal that appeared to be perfect and full of temptation. It seemed so close, yet with so many twists and turns, the goal remained unattainable. It made them anxious, and they kept thinking about it all day and night. This is the helplessness of life, but it's also the charm of living, Fang Yuan stated coldly, turning to walk away. It was at this very moment. A gust of wind blew like a gentle arm, sweeping away the clouds in the night sky. The clouds dispersed, revealing the hidden moon. The crescent-shaped moon in the sky shone like a white jade lamp, casting moonlight as clear as water down to the land. The moonlight shone through the bamboo forest, onto the mountain rock, into the river and streams of the mountain, and onto Fang Yuan's body. Fang Yuan was dressed casually, and the moonlight softly lit his youthful features. The darkness seemed to dissipate in a second, leaving behind a field of snowy frost flowers. The nightingale began singing again, as if infected by the moonlight, but this time with multiple songs. They all answered by tweeting from various spots in the bamboo grove. At the same time, dragonpill crickets, a type of insect that resided in enormous mountains and was active at night, began humming a rustling song of life. They were nocturnal creatures. Their bodies projected a faint red glow, and they jumped out in droves, each as bright as a red agate. Fang Yuan initially thought the dragonpill crickets were like jets of crimson water jumping around, landing on green grass and wildflowers and prancing beneath the moonlight in the bamboo forest. The bamboo forest was like a conscious pond, under the moonlight, the spear bamboo's green jade colors shined with the brilliance of light and smooth jade. Mother Nature was presenting her incredible beauty to Fang Yuan at this time, with the sight of dense trees and dazzling spring blossoms. Fang Yuan unconsciously paused in his footsteps, as if he were in a heavenly land. He was about to depart, when he took a subconscious glance around. He poured the last dredges of wine over the clump of wild flowers and grass, which stirred gently in the wind but remained empty. Fang Yuan smiled to himself and resumed his line of sight. However, while turning aside, 
he observed a dot of white snow. This snowball was attached to a spear bamboo pole nearby. Under the moonlight, it resembled a suspended spherical pearl. Fang Yuan's two pupils expanded quickly, and his body trembled slightly. His heart rate decreased and increased with each passing second. It was a liquor worm. Chapter 14, A Crucial Theory is Hidden Within a Mountain Crevice The wine worm resembled a silkworm, and its entire body emanated pearl white light. It was overweight yet had a nice appearance. The liquor worm ate wine and was able to fly. When it flew, it curled into a ball and traveled rapidly. Even though it was only rank 1 goo, it was more valuable than a few rank 2 goo. Making it into one's essential goo was significantly more beneficial than using moonlight goo. The wine worm was currently connected to a bamboo pole 5060 steps away from Fang Yuan. He held his breath, stepping backwards gently rather than closing in hastily. He knew his distance was close, but catching a liquor worm directly was a difficult task for a goo master who had only recently entered the primeval hole, such as himself. You may say that there was no chance of success. Fang Yuan couldn't see the liquor worm well, but he could feel it aiming its vigilance at him in the darkness. He cautiously backed away, careful not to disturb the liquor worm. He knew that if the liquor worm flew away, he'd never be able to catch up to his own speed. He needed to wait until the liquor worm was inebriated, at which point he would have a chance to catch it because its flying speed would have dropped. When Fang Yuan moved further away, the liquor worm crawling on the bamboo pole stirred. The rich perfume of wine before it was so inviting and attracting that the worm became lost in thought. If it had saliva, it would have drooled for a long time, leaving a pool of saliva behind. But the liquor worm was extremely watchful and vigilant. Only after Fang Yuan took 200 steps back did it shrink somewhat and bounce into the air. When it flew high in the air, its body coiled up into a ball that resembled a little, white rice dumpling. The miniature dumpling swept across the air in a round arc landing on the grass that had been sprinkled with green bamboo wine earlier. With delectable meal right in front of its eyes, the liquor worm relaxed its guard. It impatiently clambered onto a flower bud full with wine and inserted its tiny head, leaving only a plump tail on the outside. The liquor worm was hungry, and the green bamboo wine was absolutely excellent. It opened its mouth wide and breathed, instantly engrossed in the sweetness of its food and completely forgetting about Fang Yuan. At this point, Fang Yuan began to approach cautiously. He could see the liquor worm's tail outside the blossom bud. This tail was fat and rounded, much like that of a silkworm. The brightness it emitted reminded folks of a pearl. At first, the liquor worm's tail hung outside, motionless. Then, after a while, this tail began to curve upward, indicating that it was drinking quite pleasantly. When Fang Yuan was only 10 steps away, its tail began to wag and swing in a joyful rhythm. It was completely drunk. Fang Yuan almost burst out laughing when he saw this. He stopped walking and calmly waited. If he went there right now, he would have a great chance of catching the liquor worm, but Fang Yuan's plan was to have the liquor worm lead him to the flower wine monk's bones. The liquor worm quickly withdrew from the blossom bud. Its body was bigger, and its head swayed around like a drunken man. It unexpectedly failed to recognize Fang Yuan's existence. It moved up onto another bright yellow blossom and perched on the stamen, happily eating on the wine drops. This time, after finishing its drink, it felt full. Its body shriveled into a spherical ball and gently flew upwards. When it reached 1.5 meters above the ground, it soared gently toward the deeper portion of the bamboo grove. Fang Yuan swiftly followed its path. The liquor worm was already highly intoxicated, causing it to fly at half its normal pace. Despite this, Fang Yuan had to run with all his might to follow its shadow. The young youngster sprinted through the bamboo thicket, chasing a little bead of snow not far ahead. The moonlight was lovely, and the breeze was leisurely and steady. Green spear bamboo stalks flew past his eyes in the bamboo forest, which was like a clear pond, before soon falling behind him. The ground was a verdant blanket of grass, dotted with blooming wildflowers. There were little moss-covered stones and yellow bamboo shoots. Fang Yuan's light shadow was likewise moving quickly over the ground, passing through the shadows cast by each stalk of bamboo, which formed a black line. He kept his gaze fixed on the bead of snow, gulping in massive amounts of pure mountain air and commanding his legs to catch up despite the subtle wine aroma in the air. Because of his haste, the moonlight appeared as water to his eyes. Light and shadow shifted regularly, as if he were riding through seaweed-filled water. The liquor worm flew out of the bamboo forest, as did Fang Yuan. 
A sea of white flowers with a yellow patch in the center caught the wind from his steps and scattered their petals. A group of dragon pill crickets, resembling a flowing poem, just occurred to rush to the front. When Fang Yuan dashed through, there was a swoosh and a crimson cloud blossomed before him, dispersing around a sea of red star fireflies that emerged from it. A tranquil mountain stream paved with stones, the gurgling water surface mirroring the spring moon in the night sky, with a few splashes, Fang Yuan waded across, leaving thousands of silver-colored ripples. It was unfortunate that this stream's lovely and priceless stones had been crushed and destroyed after so many ages. Fang Yuan was in hot pursuit, doggedly following the liquor worm. As he moved up the mountain stream, he could hear the sound of a waterfall. After turning back in a sparse forest, he noticed the liquor worm fly into a fissure in the center of a boulder. Fang Yuan's eyes shone brightly, and he paused in his tracks. So it's here. He panted heavily, his pulse pounding against his chest furiously. With this single halt, he could feel his entire body covered in sweat, with hot air flowing throughout to follow his rapid blood flow. Looking around, he noticed that this was a shallow benchland, one. Pebbles of varying sizes blanketed the ground, with the river's surface barely covering the little stones. There were also slabs of grey stones spread around the region. Behind Qing Mao Mountain stood a massive waterfall. The waterfall's flow changed with the weather, it plunged to the ground, creating a deep pool. Beside the deep pool sat the Bai clan hamlet, a prominent clan equal to the Guyu hamlet. The cascade had numerous smaller branches, and Fang Yuan was clearly facing one of them. This benchland was normally dry, but due to recent severe rains over three days and three nights, a tiny creek has formed here. The gushing stream sprang from the massive boulder into which the liquor worm had previously entered. The boulder rested against a sheer mountain face. Small streams that broke off from the main cascade were like silver pythons slithering down the mountainside, colliding with the boulder. After a long time, the center of this massive boulder had crumbled away, forming a crevice. As the waterfall flowed down, the water stream gently boomed. It was like a white curtain that fully blocked the opening in the boulder. Fang Yuan's breathing became less worried as he observed his surroundings. His eyes shone with determination, he stepped to the boulder, took a deep breath, and then dove in head first. The boulder gap was quite huge, and two adults could easily walk side by side through it. What more can be said about Fang Yuan, a 15-year-old teenage boy? When he raced in, the swift currents pressed down on Fang Yuan's body. At the same moment, cold water immediately soaked him from head to toe. Fang Yuan fought against the water pressure, taking fast steps forward. As he proceeded a few dozen steps, the water pressure decreased. However, the area in the fissure began to narrow, and Fang Yuan could only go sideways. His ears were filled with the sound of the water, the top of his head was a sheet of white, and deeper within the boulder was a black blackness. What was hidden in the darkness? It might be a dangerous serpent, or a toxic gecko. Perhaps it was a trap created by the flower wine monk, or it was simply empty. Fang Yuan could only move forward by walking sideways, gradually slipping into darkness. The water no longer rushed over his head, and the stone walls were covered with moss, which grazed against his skin and felt slick. He was quickly enveloped by the darkness, and the stone crevice became narrower, squeezing around him. His cranium gradually lost its ability to rotate freely. Fang Yuan gritted his teeth and moved forward. After another twenty steps, he noticed a red tint of light in the darkness. At first, he believed it was an illusion. However, as he blinked and focused, he began to confirm that this was truly light. This insight prompted him to rekindle his spirit. He continued walking for another 50 to 60 steps, the red light becoming brighter. In his vision, the light gradually stretched into a long, vertical, fine seam. He extended out his left arm, felt the wall in front of him bend away. He instantly rejoiced, realizing that there was an enclosed chamber inside the massive boulder. With a few more steps, he rushed into this light seam. His eyes were welcomed with an approximately 80 square meters broad enclosure. I've been walking for so long. With this distance, I'd have long passed the boulder, so I should be in the heart of the mountain cliff right now. As he assessed this hidden place, he stretched his hands and legs about, extending his limbs. The entire room was flooded with faint red light, but he had no idea where it was coming from. The stone walls were moist and covered in moss, but the air was extremely dry. There were some withering vines on the walls as well. The vines tangled, covering half of the wall surface. There were even some wilting blooms sprouting on the vines.
Feng Yuan noticed the remnants of these flowers and leaves and felt a sense of familiarity. These are wine sack flower goo and rice pouch grass goo, a thought occurred to him, and he recognized the withering stems and vines. Goo come in a variety of shapes and forms. Some resembled mineral rocks, such as the blue crystal form of the moonlight goo. Some appeared in the form of worms, such as the silkworm-like liquor worm. Prior to Feng Yuan, there were also flowery grassland sorts such as the wine sack flower goo and the rice pouch grass goo. These two varieties of goo were ranked as natural goo. They would be able to grow just by pouring in primordial essence. After maturing, the center of the flower secreted flower nectar wine, while the grass pouch produced aromatic rice. Feng Yuan shifted his gaze along the vines, and sure enough, he spotted a mass of withered roots clustered into a ball-shaped clump in a corner. The liquor worm slept quietly on the clump of dead roots. It was already an easy grasp. Feng Yuan stepped over and took the liquor worm in his arms. Then he got down on his knees and ripped apart the dead vines, revealing a pile of skeleton bones coiled inside. I finally found you, flower wine monk. He smiled when he saw this. Just as he was going to reach out and strip the last vines, suddenly, try touching it. A voice with malicious purpose rang out behind Feng Yuan. One, Benchland, https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash bench underscore left parenthesis geology. Chapter 15, The Victor's Right History. Someone's voice appeared behind me unexpectedly in this secret cave. Even Fang Yuan felt the hairs on the back of his neck spring up, his scalp numb. He had been following. Could it be that his many outings over the past few days have piqued people's interest and suspicion? Or was it someone dispatched from his uncle? In his mind, he remembered the rank one Gu master he met in the inn, a young man named Zhang Ye. In that brief instant, his mind raced with many ideas and predictions, as well as thoughts of a solution. Fang Yuan could sense that the little sentence was full of terrible intent. This made him inwardly grumble. He was only at the rank 1 starting level right now, and he didn't even have a Kigu. To a Gu master, this was the same as having no fighting ability. How was he supposed to fight? Too weak, too weak, he exclaimed in his brain. You have already been poisoned by my single gate poison Gu. Without my other goo that acts as the counterpart to it, after seven days you will turn into pus and blood and die, stated a voice in the background. Fang Yuan clenched his teeth, his expression frigid. He said quietly, you want the liquor worm? I can give it to you. He rose up slowly and carefully. But at this point, another voice emerged. This voice was full of terror and whispered in a tremor, I'll give it, I can give you anything, please just spare my life, O oh flower wine monk. Wait a minute, this is. Fang Yuan scowled, then turned around in surprise. He saw light and shadow moving and fluctuating on the wall in front of him, forming an image. A lean and frightening Gu Master stood at the top of a mountain, with another Gu Master prostrating in front of him. A collapsed pit surrounded the two Gu Masters, with pieces and slabs of stone covering the area, indicating the aftermath of a fierce conflict. A group of elderly bystanders stood nearby, their faces filled with rage and fear. In the middle of the drama, the victorious Gu Master raised his head and chuckled loudly. Ha ha ha, Gu Yu's hero, cultivating to rank 5 at such a young age. I thought you were quite something at first, but I didn't expect you to be so unbearable. Humph. The laughing Gu Master had long, narrow eyes. He was clad in long pink robes, his large, wide sleeves swinging in the breeze. The place where his robes met around his neck was slack and open, showing his strong and pale pectoral muscles. The most striking feature about him was his bald head, which shone without a single strand of hair. The flower wine monk Fang Yuan recognized the Gu Master's identity right away. To compare myself to Sir Flower Wine, I'm just a fart. I must have been sick in the head to not recognize such a great person and offended Sir Flower Wine. Sir Flower Wine, Please remember my clan's generous hospitality earlier and spare my life. The Gu Master prostrate on the ground, shaking, cold sweat all over, tears and mucus mixing as he begged for mercy. Fang Yuan narrowed his gaze and carefully identified between the two, understanding that the other Gu Master was dressed in the Gu Yu clan head attire. The appearance indicated that this guy was the fourth generation clan leader. The elderly observers were most likely the clan elders of that generation. He <laughs> he. Generous hospitality? You sure have the guts to say it. I was actually sincere in coming to trade with you, using primeval stones to buy your clan's moon orchids with a fair price. 
It was you who was harboring evil intentions, pretending to greet and take me in, telling me to take a seat at your banquet, intending to lace my liquor with a poisonous goo. You all have been looking down on me way too much, I have made a living under the sky under the name of flower wine. The flower wine monk sneered at the kneeling fourth generation clan leader, if you had cooperated fairly, none of this would have happened, in the end, you just wanted to use my head to raise your reputation and fame, you only have yourself to blame for your death. Sir, please spare my worthless life, the fourth generation clan chief cried out in dismay, his knees scraping against the ground as he crawled over to the flower wine monk's foot and hugged his leg. Sir, my clan has a spirit spring which produces primeval stones, we also planted huge numbers of moon orchids in an underground cave. I am willing to take in your enslavement goo and become your servant, my life and death are at a whim, I am willing to devote a lifelong servitude to you sir. Fang Yuan remained dumbfounded, while the few elders in the photo appeared even more hesitant. The flower wine monk narrowed his eyes, his rage had subsided. His eyes flashed and he said, Mph, the enslavement goo is precious beyond reason, it is a rank 5 goo, do you really think I would have one? However, you have been infected by my single gate poison goo, and only I can cure the poison, so I'm not afraid of you disobeying. Since that is the case, your clan has to give me 3,000 stocks of moon orchids and 3,000 primeval stones every week, and I will come around every now and then to pick up the goods and temporarily cure your po. Thank you so much for your mercy, sir, the fourth generation clan leader wept continuously, kowtowing non-stop. His head bled profusely as it hit the mountain granite. Humph, stop kowtowing, I despise groveling people like you the most. What so-called Guyu genius, strong rank 5 fighter, how unworthy of your name, you better serve me properly, and this is also about your life. Ugh, the flower wine monk cried out, his face horrified. He swayed his body as he kicked the fourth generation clan's head away. He frantically backtracked a few feet, shrieking at the fourth generation clan leader. How do you still have goo? The fourth generation clan head was kicked in the stomach and spat blood out of his lips. He rose up slowly, his face exhibiting a cunning smile. Ha ha ha, anybody has the right to punish people of the demonic faction. This goo is called Moonshadow, and it is the best at hiding, even though it is only rank 4, but it has the ability to restrict the usage of the primeval sea and primeval essence. Demon, you and I have been fighting fiercely, and you don't have many goo on you anymore. How could you possibly restrain the moonshadow goo? Just obediently surrender and become my servant, as long as you serve me until I am. The flower wine monk went into wrath and yelled, to hell with you. His voice had hardly faded when his body lunged forward like a bolt of electricity, delivering a punch to the fourth generation clan head's heart. The fourth generation clan leader did not anticipate the flower wine monk to be so extreme, even when his primordial sea was threatened. The flower wine monk refused to compromise. A massive force struck, and he launched into the air, his body crashing to the earth like a broken sack. Thump. He expelled a large mouthful of new blood, the scarlet liquid mixed with innumerable pieces of internal organs. Have you gone insane? We could have completely settled this over a discussion. He glared at the flower wine monk, his lips moving with tremendous effort. His sentence was cut short when his legs buckled and his head swiveled to the side. He died. Clan head. Men of the demonic path are all insane. Kill him, kill this demon. Avenge the clan leader. He has been inflicted by the moon shadow goo. He can't just simply use his primeval essence anymore. Over a time even his primeval essence will be threatened. The elders who were watching from the sidelines erupted in rage and stormed the place. Ha ha ha, all those who are looking for death, come, the flower wine monk exclaimed into the air. Faced with the elders charging at him, he charged head first. A furious combat occurred, and the flower wine monk rapidly had the upper hand. Soon, all of the elders had collapsed to the ground, some injured and the others dead. Just as the flower wine monk was going to finish out the last elders, his facial expression altered and he covered his abdomen with his palm. Damn, I'll come back in the future to deal with you lot, stated the flower wine monk. He gazed daggers at a few of the elders, and his body moved like electricity as he raced into the mountain woods, disappearing in an instant. Chapter 16, Taking as much as one can take. Try touching it. You have already been poisoned by my single gate poison goo. Without my other goo that acts as the counterpart to it, after seven days you will turn into pus and blood and die. To compare myself to Sir Flower Wine, 
I'm just a fart I must have been unwell in the head, to actually not recognize such a great person and offended Sir Flower Wine. Sir Flower Wine, please remember my clan's generous hospitality earlier and spare my life. The scene played out on the wall for the second time. Fang Yuan remained still until the motion picture repeated itself for the third time, at which point he exhaled weakly and muttered, I see. This way of leaving a moving picture with sound on the wall was most likely done by the flower wine monk, who used a photo audio goo. This goo was able to record images and project them later. The photo audio goo relied on light and sound to survive. For some unexplained reason, this secret cave radiated red light, yet the stone crevice was connected to the outside world, thus it did not totally isolate the sounds outside. Fang Yuan could still hear the thunder of the lesser waterfalls. Thus, the photo audio goo was able to survive in this secret cave. When Fang Yuan yanked away the withered plants, he most likely alarmed the photo audio go hiding in the stone wall. As long as one is not foolish, one can discern that this moving image is genuine based on conjecture alone. Back then, the fourth generation clan leader attempted to conspire against the flower wine monk but failed. After losing the battle, he attempted a sneak attack, which resisted the latter but ultimately killed him. This period of history was considered dishonorable, therefore the remaining clan leaders resolved to alter the facts. They switched the positions of the fourth generation clan leader and the flower wine monk. The flower wine monk was vanquished in battle, attempted a sneak attack, and perished on the spot. On the other side, the fourth generation leader was transformed into a just and perfect hero. So this account had a major flaw. The flower wine monk had certainly died on the spot, thus his corpse should be in the hands of the Guyu clan. So why was another mound of remains discovered? In his past existence, the Gu master who discovered it was undoubtedly scared when he saw the moving image. Those remaining elders had long since died, but the truth about the flower wine monk was most likely kept hidden by the clan's senior brass in order to prevent it from being revealed. Gu master realized that taking the riches alone would be a great risk. If an investigation revealed that he was linked with the flower wine monk in the future, the top brass would undoubtedly execute him. Thus, after reaching his decision, he did not dare to hide this riches and instead decided to alert the senior brass. Doing so would demonstrate his commitment to the clan. His subsequent actions would also demonstrate that he made a sensible decision. Even if he did, it would not guarantee that Fang Yuan would follow suit. I went through a pretty rough time searching for this treasure, so I should take everything for myself. Why should I share it with others? So what if I've been found out? Without braving the risks, where would you get profit? That Gu Master is really cowardly, Fang Yuan smiled coldly, no longer caring about the moving image that kept repeating on the stone wall. He went around and stretched his hand, using his might to separate the dead vines and roots. The flower wine monk's remains were also impacted. It was initially whole, but it was currently being disassembled into multiple pieces. Fang Yuan couldn't care less, he kicked away a piece of leg bone that was in the way before squatting again to sift through the remains. First, he discovered a bag of primitive stones. When he opened them, he discovered only 15 pieces. Old miser, Fang Yuan snarled. The flower wine monk's outward demeanor was spectacular, yet he had very little money saved. However, he instantly realized that because the flower wine monk had been in a hard struggle and had been contaminated by the moon shadow goo, he would almost certainly have utilized primitive stones to heal his injuries. It wasn't too horrible to leave behind 15 pieces. After that, he discovered several dead goo remains. The majority of them were flower and grass varieties that had shriveled away totally. Goo are also living animals, thus they require food to exist, and the most of them are finicky. Despite the fact that grass goo and flower goo require less nourishment, there was no sunlight in this underground cave. And after that, following that, there was nothing. The flower wine monk was at the same level as the fourth generation clan chief. Following a difficult struggle, he fought with approximately 10 elders. His own goo were mostly consumed, and he grew the wine sack flower goo and the rice pouch grass goo here to help heal his injuries. However, due to the moon shadow goo, he was eventually dragged to death. After 300 years, the goo in his custody passed away. The only ones remaining were the photo audio cue on the wall and the liquor worm. This liquor worm was most likely depended on the wine sack flower goo and barely survived until today. However, when the wine sack flower goo wilted one by one, it also lost its feeding source. 
This motivated the liquor worm to venture outside and search for wild wine sack flowers. Then, this night, it was drawn to the aroma of the green bamboo wine and approached Fang Yuan. The photo audio goo can only record once, since it's a one-time use goo. Looks like the liquor worm is my greatest gain here, no wonder that goo master decided to report to the clan. Looks like it was because the profit was too small, and not worth such a huge risk. Fang Yuan felt a kind of complacency. In his memory, the goo master was already rank 3, although the liquor worm was just rank 1 goo. It was more valuable to Fang Yuan, but it was practically worthless to Gu Master. However, it was evident that the clan had given him a large payment for his report. Should I also tell the clan? Fang Yuan pondered for a time, then dismissed the idea. The flower wine monk's treasure appeared to be limited to the liquor worm and the primitive stones, but this was not the truth. The most valuable thing was the wall that concealed the photo audio Gu. In other words, the moving image on the wall continued to repeat itself. This photograph could be sold to multiple communities. Trust that the senior brass of the two other villages on Qingmao Mountain are highly interested in this type of proof, which could lead to a clan's conviction. What? You mentioned a sense of loyalty and honor to the kin. I'm sorry, Fang Yuan doesn't have any of that. Furthermore, this moving image isn't even a powerful force capable of destroying the entire clan, it won't cause much significant damage. The clan's indifference will also make Fang Yuan appear unimportant. He needed to rely on his own hard effort to discover cultivation resources, yet, in the early stages of cultivation, he needed to borrow more powers from those around him. Count on the clan? Ha <laughs> ha! Fang Yuan sneered in his heart, how can I be so naive like my past life? Do not rely on others, you must rely on yourself for everything in this life. After ensuring that he had raided every nook of the cave, Fang Yuan began his return journey along the original route home. He retreated outside the mountain, squeezing past the boulder while resisting the water pressure. Looking back at this massive boulder, Fang Yuan was reminded of his old existence. It was reported that the remains were discovered in an underground secret cave. But how was this location underground? It was obviously located inside the mountain wall. It's no surprise that he couldn't find it for seven days straight, despite his best efforts. It appears that in his previous life, when the clan learned about this location, the first thing they did was remove the wall with the image, followed by spreading a truth riddled with lies to deceive the clan's members. Finding this spot tonight was a combination of chance and hard work, with the green bamboo wine serving as the main reason. This green bamboo wine was extremely rich, and could be considered the greatest in Qingmao Mountain. Perhaps in his previous life, after Gu Master lost his lover, the wine he had been drinking was this one. However, none of this was essential anymore. Fang Yuan had found and looted the flower wine monk's treasure, while it was ultimately disappointing, it was reasonable. The most essential thing was that Fang Yuan had achieved his original goal, liquor worm, and obtained the item he most required, primeval stones. Next up, I'll need to set my heart on holing myself in the in refining this goo. As long as I have a vital goo, I can return to the academy and be qualified to stay in the academy dormitories. I'll also be able to borrow the clan resources to cultivate. I can only stay in this inn for one or two times, if I stay too long, the cost is too much. Fang Yuan hurried back to the village, his footsteps never stopping. He was originally left with two primal stones, but now he has 15 pieces, bringing the total to 17. However, to a goo master, this little number of primordial stones means nothing. Chapter 17, Beginning to Refine the Liquor Worm With my C-grade talent, the amount of my primeval C in the aperture is only 44%. The speed of goo using up primeval essence is way faster than my own recovery rate. If I want to refine a goo I would need to borrow external help, which means I need to waste primeval stones. The weaker the goo's will, the smaller the resistance, the easier it becomes for me to refine it. However any living creature will always have the will to live. To refine the moonlight goo I would at least require 5 primeval stones, at the most I'd need 8 pieces. Right now, to refine the liquor worm, I would need at least 11 pieces, and at most 16 pieces. The liquor worm, like the moonlight goo, was a rank 1 goo, but it was much rarer. As a result, the refinement process became increasingly complex. In other words, even though Fang Yuan currently has 17 primordial stones, refining the liquor worm would only leave him with 6 pieces, or at least 1 primeval stone. At night, 
the dazzling crescent cast clean and pure moonlight. The moonlight was like the Lady Saint's soft hand brushing over Guyu village. Along the route, the bamboo dwellings looked like jade, standing in large numbers. The night breeze moved slowly. Under the moonlight, Fang Yuan made his way back to the inn. The inn's door was already closed. Fang Yuan knocked on the door. I hear you, I hear you. Who's knocking on the door at this late hour? The innkeeper complained as he opened the door, his eyes droopy from sleep. But when he saw Fang Yuan standing at the entrance, all of his irritation and weariness vanished, and he bent his waist and murmured with a flattering smile, Ah, it's his young lordship. This tiny one is extremely fortunate to be able to open the door for his lordship. Fang Yuan bowed, his gaze cold with indifference, and entered the inn. His expression made the worker laugh in a more humble way, and he took the initiative to inquire, My lord, are you hungry? Do you like me to contact the chefs and prepare some modest items for you as supper? No need, Fang Yuan shook his head and instructed, Go and prepare some hot water for me, I would like to wash myself. Yes, the worker instantly responded, My lord, go to your room first. I guarantee that the hot water will be delivered immediately. Fang Yuan gave a nod of agreement and walked up the stairs to the second level. The worker watched Fang Yuan's back, his two eyes gleaming in the light and showing an expression of jealousy. This is a goo master, oh, if only I had the talent to cultivate, how good that would be. He clenched his fists and sighed profoundly. These words floated into Fang Yuan's ears, and he laughed bitterly in his heart. A goo master possessed the ability to transcend humans, becoming a man above mankind but this came at a heavy cost. The first challenging challenge was financial resources, a goo master needed primeval stones to cultivate, wars needed primeval stones, goo refining needed primeval stones, and trading was no exception. How might cultivation occur in the absence of primal stones? This was a challenging situation that the innkeeper, as an ordinary mortal watching from the sidelines, would not understand. Earlier in the evening, the young Gu master Zhang Ya expressed his displeasure with the hunters by dropping their wine jars, implying that while he couldn't bear to spend primeval stones to drink this green bamboo wine, these hunters, who were just ordinary men, had so much money to spare. In reality, a Gu master's life is constantly strained, despite the fact that their strength was great and they achieved more than a common mortal. Using every single piece of primeval stone required great consideration, especially when it came to lower-ranked Gu masters. Taking a look at the big picture, just that meaning could tell a lot about a Gu master's cultivation situation. Not only that, but as a Gu master's dominion expands, so do the resources required. Without sufficient backing, a Gu master's path to cultivation is extremely difficult. Fang Yuan reflected on his prior life and gained a profound grasp of this fact. He returned to his room, and just as he turned on the lamp, an innkeeper appeared with a basin of hot water together with cotton towels and other necessities. Fang Yuan let the worker depart and closed the room door, then lowered the door lock, bathed himself, and rose to his bed. Despite the fact that his body was exhausted, his heart raced with excitement, I finally got my hands on the liquor worm. The liquor worm is rarer than the moonlight goo, because it is a goo that enhances a goo master's latent aptitude. Fang Yuan sat cross-legged on the bed and brought out the liquor worm, which was still sleeping sweetly. The liquor worm's body was slightly larger than the moonlight goo, soft and white like a silkworm. The creature's body was cloaked in a layer of delicate wavering light, similar to a pearl's mellow shine. Its plump white head was adorned with two black sesame seed-like eyes, giving it a wonderfully naive appearance. Fang Yuan's nose twitched as he inhaled the fragrance of the liquor worm, which weighed about half a chicken egg and exuded a faint and misty aroma of wine, not the aroma of green bamboo wine. The wine smell flowed right down into the opening, into the green copper primeval sea, which surged and rippled for a minute before quickly absorbing the wine, producing a gleam of pure and refined primeval essence. The other primeval essence had an emerald green tint with a metallic copper luster, but this primeval essence was pale green and more condensed than the original. This was the primeval essence that a rank 1 middle stage goo master could create. Fang Yuan smiled as he noticed the sparkle of pale green primordial essence in his green copper sea. Right now, my cultivation base is only that of a rank 1 initial stage. However, with the liquor worms condensing, once the primeval essence is refined, I will be able to obtain rank 1 middle realm primeval essence. The beauty of this benefit cannot be expressed in one or two phrases. But he quickly regained his smile, however, 
I have yet to totally grasp the liquor worm. Only by refining the liquor worm and transforming it into my vital goo will I be able to freely employ it and, eventually, develop my primal essence with maximum effectiveness. He no longer hesitated and proceeded to draw out a jet of green copper primal essence from his primeval sea, firmly wrapping around the liquor worm and dragging it into the air before Fang Yuan, where it began to penetrate its body. The liquor worm sensed its life was in jeopardy and awoke abruptly, launching a furious effort to expel Fang Yuan's primitive spirit. This liquor worm has a really strong resistance. Fang Yuan's expression darkened as he felt the consumption rate of his primeval essence exceed more than double what the moonlight goo had consumed. No matter what, I have to refine the liquor worm. His two eyes shone brightly as he proceeded to feed primal essence into the liquor worm. In the room, the candles on the table silently burned illuminating a bright light in the center of the room while the far corners of the walls were black. The candlelight radiated on Fang Yuan's face, but he had already closed his eyes, focusing all of his attention on the liquor worm. Fang Yuan's entire body emitted a continuous jet of green copper primeval essence that resembled a mist, which gathered and firmly wrapped around the liquor worm, which hovered in the air less than a foot away from Fang Yuan's face and struggled with all its might in the midst of the green copper primeval essence. Time passed away silently. As the candles burnt, the light dimmed and the crescent outside the window gradually faded, and a new day began. The morning light filtered through the thin break in the window and beamed into the room, as if the window had a light edge. Fang Yuan opened his eyes and glanced at the liquor worm in front of him. The liquor worm's white body had turned a shade of green as a consequence of Fang Yuan's efforts after half a night but it was evident that the volume of green color was not even 1% of the liquor worm's body. Fang Yuan's expression was gloomy, this liquor worm's will was far too tenacious, and its resistance was impossibly strong, simply put, this was beyond a rank 1 goo's capabilities. This goo was most likely the flower wine monk's primary goo. The flower wine monk was a rank 5 master, therefore this liquor worm was initially rank 5, but because it went through all those years without enough nourishment, being full one moment and starving the next, its grade dropped. It is currently at the rank of one, yet its will remains as strong as a rock. Fang Yuan had guessed the truth. This liquor worm was once the flower wine monk's vital goo, its original will had been wiped clean and purified to the end, it had accompanied the flower wine monk throughout all of his conflicts, traversing through the deep realm. After the flower wine monk died, his powerful will remained in the liquor worm, and Fang Yuan's attempt to improve the liquor worm involved fighting against the flower wine monk's will. This was far more difficult than attempting to enhance a natural goo. The flower wine monk, a master of the demonic faction, had a stronger will than the righteous faction's masters of his level, and when confronted with death, he was able to summon strength that even he couldn't imagine. It is difficult to refine this liquor worm in a month unless there is a powerful master who can utilize a rank 2 or rank 3 goose breath to squeeze this liquor worm and suppress the worm's will to the lowest limit. With this kind of aid, I'll be able to achieve twice as much with half the effort. Fang Yuan sighed as he pondered. His parents had dead, and his aunt and uncle were plotting against him, he had no support, so where could he possibly obtain external aid? If he had A-grade talent, he might have had a chance but he only had a C-grade skill, and no one in the clan was positive about him, so who would be ready to devote such energy to come and help? More importantly, he could not reveal the presence of the liquor worm. There was no liquor worm in Guyu village, and Fang Yuan was unable to explain its origins, if it was discovered, the top brass could easily link it to the case of the flower wine monk. Based on this information, 17 primal stones will not suffice. I'd need at least 30 primeval stones. No matter how difficult it is, I'll still want to refine this liquor worm. Fang Yuan's determination was like metal, and he was already determined to refine the liquor worm. Although the liquor worm was not the world's best choice for a vital goo, it was still much better than the moonlight goo, and it was also the best option in Fang Yuan's current situation. The vital goo was extremely important because it would greatly influence a goo master's cultivation direction in the future. Growl. At this point, Fang Yuan's gut erupted in protest. Fang Yuan was naturally famished after going without sleep for the night and focusing all of his efforts on polishing the liquor worm. I guess I'll go and fill my stomach first and think of a way to accumulate primeval stones. Fang Yuan rubbed his belly and went downstairs, he went to the cafeteria and took a seat in the corner, ordering a few different breakfast items. Just as he was about to eat, 
his younger brother Gu Yu Feng Xing came. Big brother, why are you staying at the inn? Why didn't you return home and sleep last night? His brother was quite forthright, with a tone that said he was expecting an explanation. Chapter 18, Let the Past Dissipate Away as Smoke When confronted with his brother's inquiry, Fang Yuan remained silent and continued eating his breakfast, knowing that his younger brother's character, Fang Zheng, was not one who could maintain his composure. Fang Zheng saw that his bigger brother did not even flutter an eye at him, as if Fang Yuan pretended to be heir, and in the next minute, he yelled out in an unhappy tone, Big brother, what did you do to Shen Kui? She has been crying non-stop since she exited your room yesterday. When I consoled her, she cried even harder. Fang Yuan gazed up at his younger brother, his face expressionless, and Fang Zheng frowned, staring steadily at his older brother, waiting for his response. The atmosphere was becoming strained. But Fang Yuan only looked at him for a second before lowering his head and continuing to eat. Gu Yu Fang Yuan, how can you act like this Shen Kui, as a servant girl, has served you for so many years, I have seen her gentleness and care towards you, Fang Zheng, the younger brother, screamed in shame and frustration, banging his hand on the table. Fang Yuan's attitude was clearly one of contempt for him. Yes, I understand your sense of loss and dejection. Yeah, you're a C-grade talent, but that doesn't mean you should dump your rage on others simply because of your personal misfortune. This is not fair to her. He had scarcely finished when Fang Yuan sprang up and raised his palm in an instant. Slap. With a loud crack, he smacked Fang Zheng hard. Fang Zheng covered his right cheek and stumbled two steps backward, his expression filled with amazement. Useless bastard, what type of tone are you using when talking to your own older brother? That Shen Kui is nothing more than a servant girl. Would you forget that I am your older brother because of her? Fang Yuan admonished in a low tone. Fang Zheng finally reacted, the stinging pain on his face coursing through his neurological system in waves. He gazed wide-eyed, his breathing ragged, and murmured in surprise, Big brother, you hit me? You never hit me from the time I was a child till I grew up. Yes, I was discovered to be an A-grade talent, but you were only a C-grade. But you can't blame me, this is the entire structure of heaven. Slap. Fang Zheng hadn't finished speaking when Fang Yuan struck him with the back of his hand again. Fang Zheng was surprised and covered his cheeks with both hands. Naive fool, do you recall how I cared for you from a young age? When our parents died, our lives were difficult. During the new year, aunt and uncle only handed us one new robe. Did I wear it? I gave it to someone to wear. When you were younger, you enjoyed eating sweet porridge, so I would tell the chefs to prepare another bowl for you every day. Who brought you back after being bullied by others? Not to mention a slew of other issues, I don't think it's worth discussing. So, right now, because of a maid, you'd talk to me like this and come to question me. Feng Zhang's face flushed his lips quiver with embarrassment, annoyance, surprise, and anger, but he couldn't utter anything in response. Because what Fang Yuan said was true, whatever. Fang Yuan snarled, if you gave up your own biological parents and admitted someone else, what am I worth to you as your big brother? Big brother, how could you say that? You are also aware that I have always desired the warmth of a family since I was a child, as Fang Zhang quickly explained. Fang Yuan raised his hand, preventing his brother from going on. From now on, you are no longer my younger brother, and I am no longer your older brother. Big brother Fang Zheng was astonished and opened his mouth to say more. At this point, Fang Yuan said, Don't you like Shen Kui? Don't worry, I didn't do anything to her. She is still a virgin, untainted and pure. Pass me six primal stones, and I'll pass her to you. From now on, she can be your personal maid. Big brother, why are you? Having his inner thoughts disclosed so suddenly caused Fang Zheng to fear and feel unprepared. But, at the same time, his heart felt at ease since the one thing he was most concerned about had not come true. Shen Kui personally served and bathed him earlier in the night. Even though nothing significant occurred, Fang Zheng could never forget the softness of that night. Whenever he thought about Shen Kui, his heart throbbed with memories of her skilled hands and lovely red lips. Sincere sentiments of youthfulness had long taken root in the young man's breast and began to expand. When he learned about Shen Kui's odd state last evening, a surge of rage erupted in his heart, and he immediately stopped refining his moonlight goo and turned the town inside out in search of Fang Yuan, eager to make a statement. When Fang Zheng did not respond, Fang Yuan frowned and added, Love is very normal, be more honest. 
It's pointless to hide away. Of course, if you do not wish to exchange, that is also okay. Feng Zheng was nervous on the spot, I'll exchange. Why would I not exchange? But the primal stones on me are no longer sufficient for six people. As he spoke, he pulled out his money pouch, his face flashed. Feng Yuan took the pouch and found six pieces in it, but one of them was half the size of a normal primeval stone, and he immediately knew that Fang Zheng had absorbed the primeval essence from this stone to speed up the process of refining his moonlight goo. After all, the more natural essence is absorbed from the primeval stone, the smaller the stone becomes, and its weight decreases. Even though it was only five and a half pieces, Fang Yuan understood that these were all the primeval stones that Fang Zheng possessed right now. Fang Zheng had no savings of his own, and these six primeval stones had been handed to him by aunt and uncle not long ago. I'll keep these, you can leave now. Fang Yuan's gaze was chilly as he tucked the bag away. Big brother. Fang Zheng wished to say more. Fang Yuan lifted his brow slightly, stating slowly and leisurely, before I change my mind, you better disappear from my eyes. Fang Zheng's heart tightened, he gritted his teeth, and eventually turned and left. When he stepped through the doorway of the inn, he subconsciously covered his chest with his hand, feeling a wave of uneasiness, as if he had just lost something very important. But he instantly got hot as he remembered Shen Kui and that wonderful night. I can finally have you rightfully as mine, Kui Kui, one, dot. He walked away from Fang Yuan without looking back. Fang Yuan stood expressionless for a long time before eventually sitting down. A worker approached Fang Yuan attentively and asked if he wanted to reheat his breakfast. The bright sunlight shone through the window, shining on his uninterested face and making those who saw it feel a little cold inside. The cafeteria's business was slow, and the streets became more crowded. Fang Yuan did not hear it, his gaze shifted like a cloud, as if he was reminiscing about old memories. The worker waited for a while, but when he saw Fang Yuan in a trance, never saying a single word, he could only rub his nose and leave sadly. After a long time, Fang Yuan's eyes refocused, and the past recollections in his heart had scattered like smoke. When he returned to reality, half of the table was illuminated by sunlight, the hot air from the dishes had dissipated, and he could hear the busy noise of the streets. He reached inside his robes and patted the five and a half primal stones at his bosom, his mouth curving into a cruel and contemptuous smile, which he soon dismissed. Waiter, Go reheat these dishes for me. Fang Yuan took a look at his dishes and weakly opened his mouth, shouting away. His eyes were frigid at this point. Did your older brother really say that? In the hall, uncle frowned, his voice cold, and aunt sat aside, speechless at the fresh red hand print on Fang Zheng's cheeks. Yes, when I met big brother, he was in the inn for breakfast. The whole affair proceeded like this, Fang Zheng said pleasantly. Uncle's frown deepened condensing into three black lines, two. After a few breaths, he sighed and stated solemnly, Fang Zheng, my child, remember this. We put Shen Kui, the maidservant, to Fang Yuan. How can he use her as a tradable item? If you wanted it, you should have notified us earlier. We'd just assign her to you. Ah. Fang Zheng was astounded as he listened to this. Uncle waved his hand and said, take your leave. You handed all of your primal stones to Fang Yuan so I'll just give you another sex. Remember to employ them properly when improving your goo and seizing number one. We will be really proud of you when you succeed. Father, your child is ashamed. Fang Zheng burst into tears. Uncle groaned and responded, just go, hurry back to your room, and refine your goo. You don't have much time remaining. When Fang Zheng left, uncle's face was furious and enraged. Bang. He struck the table with his palm with enormous power, muttering, mph this blasted bastard. He actually took our personnel to perform an exchange, he's quite crafty. Aunt urged, husband, control your anger. It's only six primitive stones. Do you understand, woman? This Fang Yuan is simply a C-grade ability, if he wants to improve the moonlight goo, he will require primeval stones. With his limited experience as a first-timer, six primal stones will be insufficient to perfect it. But now that he has twelve pieces, it will be more than enough. Uncle was furious, gritting his teeth. He continued, a goo master's cultivation will be very quick as long as there are enough resources and no barriers. In two to three years, the clan will be able to produce a rank two goo master. The lower Fang Yuan's cultivation rating, the worse his chances of claiming the family inheritance one year later. He is still young and is only beginning to cultivate. 
we will impede him and cause his initial stages to lag behind those of his age. The Academy's resources are always granted to outstanding students. With his latent talent, if he falls back, he will be unable to obtain any resources. Without the aid of resources, his cultivation will deteriorate even further. With this vicious cycle, I'd like to see if he can receive the family inheritance a year later. And could not understand, even if we do not stop him, he will only be at rank 1 middle stage a year later. Husband, your cultivation is at rank 2, why are you still terrified of him? Uncle was so enraged that he stumped and yelled, Woman, you really are a case of long hair but short insight. With only my identity as the senior, should I really beat down the younger generation? If he wishes to reclaim the inheritance, that is understandable and cannot be stopped directly, I can only fight back using clan laws. According to the clan regulations, to be head of the house at the age of 16, a person must have at least rank 1 middle stage cultivation. Otherwise, Fang Yuan would have no right to spend clan resources. Do you comprehend what I just said? Ant became enlightened. Uncle's eyes sharpened, a glitter in his gaze, and he shook his head, sighing, Fang Yuan is just too smart, too cunning. He could see right through a power play. What kind of intelligence is this? Scheming and planning at such a young age was terrifying. Initially, I planned to continue conspiring against him, but he moved out immediately. I planned to rely even more on Shen Kui to monitor and worry him, but he eventually left and got six primeval stones. Alas, if he could be as foolish as Fang Zheng, it would have been ideal. Oh, starting today, you must treat Fang Zheng better. After all, he is a first-rate talent. Not to mention that I can see he is dissatisfied and unhappy with Fang Yuan. These feelings are excellent, but they must be managed carefully. I have a sense that he'll be the ideal weapon for dealing with Fang Yuan in the future. Within the blink of an eye, two days had passed. Fang Yuan sat cross-legged on the bed, his eyes closed, moving his green copper primeval essence, concentrating his mind on refining the liquor worm. A small cut on its body had already been dyed the green color of green copper, but the liquor worm's wool was still as tenacious as ever, and it struggled in the midst of the ethereal primeval essence. Fang Yuan's refinement was not going well, it was really difficult. I worked two days and two nights, barely resting for two hours each day, and spent twelve pieces of primal stone, but only made about one-fifth of the progress. Calculating according to time, I believe someone will be able to refine their goo in the next few days. Fang Yuan could see the issue well, but his ability was of a low grade, and the liquor worm he was attempting to refine had an exceptionally tenacious will to survive, it was much stronger than a normal moonlight goo, thus lagging behind was expected. A moment of falling behind is nothing as long as I have the liquor worm. Fang Yuan's heart was clean as a mirror, with no sign of concern or despair in him. Suddenly, the liquor worm curled into a ball. Oh no, the liquor worm is counter-attacking, Fang Yuan exclaimed, his eyes widening in surprise as he saw the liquor worm curled into a round small dumpling, emitting a brilliant white light. It was risking everything for this one last stand. Fang Yuan felt a strong will emerge from the liquor worm's body, flow right through the primal essence, and fall into the primeval sea through his aperture. A typical adolescent would panic in the face of a goo counterattack, which was highly uncommon. Only goo with a strong will would give it their all, as it was either success or death. Though he was shocked, Fang Yuan did not panic, in fact, he was quite excited. Putting everything on the line in one last attempt is also a good thing. As long as I can withstand this counterattack, the liquor worm's will will be severely weakened. However, I must devote my complete attention to fighting back against this will, I cannot tolerate even the tiniest outside disturbance. Otherwise, it would be horrible, sigh. But I hope no one comes and bothers me at this time. His thoughts had been finalized, and he was ready to gather the primal essence in his aperture and embrace the liquor worm's intent, he would become entwined with it and fight it for 300 rounds. But at this point, an amazing incident occurred. A goo appeared in the center of his aperture, right over the water and high in the air. Boom. Gu let out a powerful breath. This breath was like the Milky Way spilling forth and flood water gushing down from the mountains, but it was also like a terrifying beast whose dignity had been insulted, opening its fiery red eyes and looking around to see who would dare to breach its territory. Is this the spring autumn cicada? Seeing this Gu, Fang Yuan was greatly astonished. 1. Kui Kui is a loving nickname for Shen Kui. 2. In the novel, refers to being condensed into a word. Authors note, 
he thanks many people. I'll keep going, three years, six years, nine years, in this period of time, some of you may leave temporarily, and some will always stay. In the bustling process of human life, we continually mark our constant existence, and we all prove to each other that we have lived previously. I had envisaged the following scenario, when we are old, you would look at Gu Zhen Ren this ID and laugh in your hearts, oh, it's him, I used to read his book when I was younger. I even gave him a recommendation vote. Maybe I'll open my previous layout and see all these familiar IDs, those who have previously rewarded, voted, and commented, and I'll remember how, when I was writing alone, these names were the company of my long and difficult journey, providing me with warm little lights. Right here in the book, there is a minor little surprise, and Fang Yuan will begin to properly exhibit his own style. Those who were able to read up to this point are predestined, and I guarantee that this book will get increasingly fascinating. Chapter 19, Rank 6 Essential Gu, The Spring Autumn Cicada During refinement, the Gu counterattacked. At this point, the liquor worm, which had acquired the flower wine monk's incredibly strong will, infiltrated his aperture and boldly counterattacked Fang Yuan. Under Fang Yuan's will, large amounts of primeval essence rose to the sky and formed a towering monster wave, brazenly accepting the incoming liquor worm's will. The waves in the sea tumbled, causing bursts of high tide. Just before both sides were going to meet violently in the center of the aperture, a faint picture of a goo worm appeared in a blank space between the two energies. The cicada's body was little, if the moonlight goo was characterized as a blue crystal shaped like a curved moon, then this cicada was a delicate work of art produced by a master artisan from palm wood and tree leaves. The goo's head and abdomen were brownish yellow, and its surface had the texture of a tree's growth rings, as if it had witnessed countless years. On its back were two very wide and translucent wings, like two tree leaves overlapping, with a similar structure to a typical net vein leaf. The center had a coarse stem, from which sprouted a network vein of leaf lines on both sides. The spring autumn cicada. It had been startled. It was like a big beast, typically lurking in its cave in a deep sleep, but it was suddenly woken, and it also discovered that its territory had been violated. Who dares to come into my turf and go wild? The spring autumn cicada was enraged and gave forth a feeble yet powerful aura. It was like the Milky Way, rolling forth with huge and enormous waves, it would sweep across mountains for 10,000 kilometers or submerge a broad desert. Compared to this aura, the liquor worm's will was like that of an ant meeting an elephant. The aura rushed around and spread like a huge unseen tsunami, and the liquor worm's invading will was unable to withstand it, it was swallowed whole by the aura. Fang Yuan felt depressed as the green copper primeval essence he had pushed forward with his power crashed with this aura like a wave slamming upon a vast mountain. The condensed primeval essence crumbled and dissipated into rain, dispersing down to the primeval sea. The waves on the primordial sea surged one after another, as if a rainstorm had just passed through, intensifying the volatility. However, after a few seconds, the spring autumn cicada's aura expanded downward, pressing against the primordial sea. Boom! Fang Yuan felt a buzz, and the rolling waves on the sea calmed down in an instant. The aura of the spring autumn cicada firmly repressed the entire primeval sea, like an invisible mountain pressing down. The surface of the sea was calm as a mirror, with no single wave rolling about. It was like an originally crumpled piece of paper, suddenly flattened by a boundless giant hand. This was clearly an unparalleled strength. Fang Yuan felt as if an immense invisible mountain was pushing down on his heart, he compared it to Sun Wukong being crushed down by the Five Elements Mountain, Fang Yuan was unable to mobilize a single pint of primeval essence. Despite his amazement, he was not terrified, instead, his heart was filled with excitement. I didn't think the Spring Autumn Cicada would actually follow me and be reborn together so it's actually not a one-time use goo worm, but one that can be used again repeatedly. The Spring Autumn Cicada was a rank 6 grade, and it was both the first and the last rank 6 Gu in Fang Yuan's previous existence. To make it, Fang Yuan had utilized all means and resources, squandering an unbelievable amount of strength, and fermenting for 30 years to finally succeed. But not long after he succeeded, when the spring autumn cicada was still hot from the oven, warriors of the righteous faction sensed Fang Yuan's menace and banded together to assault and kill him. After being reincarnated, Fang Yuan assumed the spring autumn cicada had died because he could not find it, but it had really fallen into a deep sleep and was sleeping inside Fang Yuan's body. 
Even though the spring autumn cicada had appeared, its situation remained dire. Traveling back 500 years in an instant was a massive blow to its vitality, it was so feeble that even its master, Fang Yuan, couldn't feel it. After being reborn, it had always been in a profound sleep, its appearance now was due to the danger that the aperture was facing, one could say that the liquor worm's will had awakened it. It was quite feeble. In Fang Yuan's memories, the original spring autumn cicada was full of vitality, its body was like a beautiful floorboard giving off a warm and glossy varnish, and its two wings were emerald green, like two delicate tree leaves that had just sprouted. The cicada's body was rough and dim, like dead wood, and its wings were fully yellow, like the withering leaves of autumn. The tips of its wings were slightly rolled up and incomplete, like the corners of fallen leaves. When Fang Yuan saw this, he felt both relieved and fortunate. He was relieved since the spring autumn cicada had taken such a terrible hit, it was only a foot away from the brink of a cliff, barely alive. The lucky thing was, thank heaven s, the spring autumn cicada was weak to this point, otherwise he would be in serious trouble. One must understand that a goo master and a goo must complement one another, with the best case scenario being that they both have the same ranking. A rank 1 goo master should use a rank 1 goo, as this was the most appropriate. If the goo's grade was lower than the goo master's, it would be the equivalent of a strong man carrying a small stick, with a small strength output. If the goo's grade was higher than the goo master's, it would be the equivalent of a small child carrying a heavy axe, unable to wield it properly. The spring autumn cicada was a rank 6 goo, and Fang Yuan was only a rank 1 initial stage goo master. To use an analogy, if the spring autumn cicada was a mountain and Fang Yuan was a squirrel, the mountain would simply crush the squirrel flat in the first second. If the spring autumn cicada was at its pinnacle, Fang Yuan's feeble rank 1 aperture could not bear it, the cicada's majestic aura would simply cause the aperture to burst to death. Fortunately, it was in its weakest condition, so Fang Yuan's aperture could handle it right now. I gave up on the moonlight goo, going to great pains to find the liquor worm and refine it into my vital goo. But, in actuality, I had a vital goo from the start, the spring autumn cicada is my vital goo. Fang Yuan's heart was flooded with emotion as he felt a strong connection with the spring autumn cicada. The essential goo is the first goo that a goo master refines, it is extremely important and has a significant impact on a goo master's subsequent progress. If a key goo is carefully chosen, the goo master's progress will be smoother, if the crucial goo is of poor quality, the goo master's cultivation will suffer, and peers will outperform him. More importantly, it will have an impact on a battle's outcome. Fang Yuan was clear on this issue, thus he was dissatisfied after selecting the Guyu village's distinctive moonlight goo, he needed to go all the way to discover the liquor worm. According to a rank 1 goo master, the liquor worm was already regarded a high quality pick, but the moonlight goo was only slightly above ordinary. However, life is exciting since no one can predict what will happen next. Fang Yuan had refined the spring autumn cicada in his previous life, after his rebirth, the spring autumn cicada fell into a deep sleep, but the connection between them still existed, in fact, Fang Yuan discovered that, as if going through the refinement of the river of time, his connection with the spring autumn cicada had grown even closer and mysterious than in his previous life, however, because the spring autumn cicada was too weak, Fang Yuan was unaware of it. In a genuine sense, the spring autumn cicada is the first goo that he has refined, yet, the spring autumn cicada was not developed in his current life, but rather as a result of his 500-year-old hard effort. The spring autumn cicada was Fang Yuan's essential goo, a rank 1 goo master with a rank 6 vital goo. If this sort of stuff was uttered out loud, it is expected that no one would believe it. This has already broken the boundaries of human mind. Nonetheless, that is precisely what occurred, the fact is beyond doubt. The liquor worm as a vital goo is already one of the best choices, but when you compare it to the spring autumn cicada, it is just like scum on the ground my vital goo in this life is actually the spring autumn cicada, ha ha ha. Chapter 20, The Academy Elder is silent. The enormous excitement he felt did not overwhelm his intellect, he quickly calmed down and began to examine the ramifications that the spring autumn cicada might bring to him. The spring autumn cicada has the potential of rebirth. However, it is currently in its weakest stage, if I utilize it, it will die. However, it is still a rank 6 goo, so I can fully utilize its aura. This will not cause any harm to its body, he he he. 
He closed his mind and opened his eyes to see the liquor worm hovering in front of him, trembling in the smoke-like green copper primordial essence that had encircled it. Previously, the liquor worm's desperation pushed it to risk all on a single throw, but in the end, it was easily vanquished by the spring autumn cicada's aura, and as a result, its present strength is only a fraction of its old strength. Spring Autumn Cicada With a simple thought, Fang Yuan released a small trace of the spring autumn cicada's aura. This aura pressured onto the liquor worm's body, the liquor worm immediately stood still, motionless like a dead creature. Its scattered will felt the spring autumn cicada's aura, it shrank into a ball and was too afraid to move even a little bit. Fang Yuan laughed and took the opportunity to mobilize his primeval essence. Previously, when he tried to refine it with his green copper primeval essence, the liquor worms will resisted fiercely, so it could only expand arduously bit by bit. However, right now, Fang Yuan's green copper primeval essence drove straight in, flowing vigorously and without resistance. The green copper color on the liquor worm's surface spread quickly, and the once pearl white liquor worm was completely green in a matter of seconds. The overall situation had passed. The remaining vestiges of the liquor worm's will were readily washed away by Fang Yuan's will, disintegrating into nothingness. With that, the liquor worm was completely perfected. Compared to the beginning, when Fang Yuan had to suffer hardships such as trampling mountains and crossing ravines, the refining process now was as simple as swallowing saliva. The refined liquor worm and Fang Yuan were linked by a mysterious and cordial feeling. When Fang Yuan told it to huddle up, it would curl and if he told it to curl into a ball, it would curl into a round little dumpling. It was as if he was moving his own finger. Fang Yuan reclaimed his primeval essence, and the liquor worm returned to its fat and white state, leaping through thin air and plunging into the middle of Fang Yuan's aperture. Once inside, the liquor worm flew a distance away around the hovering spring autumn cicada and entered the green copper primeval sea. On the sea surface, the liquor worm stretched its body arbitrarily, occasionally twisting around its chubby waist, appearing comfortable. With the spring autumn cicada, my plans will have to change. Fang Yuan collected his mind away from the aperture and took out the moonlight goo, repeating what he had done before, releasing a hint of the spring autumn cicada's aura and pushing it down on the moonlight goo. The moonlight goose will immediately surrendered as it sensed the aura of the spring autumn cicada, its dread so strong that it could only turtle up in the farthest corner of its own body. Fang Yuan's primordial essence rushed in, and the moonlight goo was transformed into a jade green color in an instant. With a single thought, the moonlight goo's will was easily strangled. After he finished, he reclaimed his primeval essence, and the moonlight goo returned to its original, semi-transparent, blue crystal form. He put away the moonlight goo, which did not enter his aperture but instead dropped directly onto his forehead, leaving a pale blue crescent mark in the center of his brow. The Moonlight Goo's complete refining procedure, from start to finish, took less than five minutes, creating a stark contrast between the beginning of his tough refining process and the current position. Not only was it rapid, but the expenditure of primordial essence was little. Fang Yuan had spent six primeval stones in the preceding few days to develop the liquor worm, but tonight, when he could see the bottom of the primeval sea through his aperture, he did not utilize a single stone. Ha ha, with the spring autumn cicada at hand, it is as simple as having a god as help. After today, all I have to do is use its aura to press down, and any rank 1 goo will be quickly refined. Even though I merely have sea level talent, I don't require the assistance of primordial stones. The distinction between before and today is analogous to heaven and earth. Fang Yuan was in a good mood, his current circumstance was like pushing away the mist and clouds to reveal the blue skies. Although the spring autumn cicada was at its weakest point, it was still a rank 6 goo. A fallen tiger still leaves a threat, a festered ship still has 3 pounds of nails, 1. Simply relying on its aura, Fang Yuan's cultivation from today onwards would receive a significant driving force. The moon was bright outside the window, and there were few stars, so the moonlight shone on Fang Yuan's face. I initially assumed I wouldn't be able to reach to number 1, but the road twisted and turned unexpectedly. Time waits for no one, I must go to the academy right now and earn the top prize. Fang Yuan's eyes glistened. With a thought, the spring autumn cicada faded away from view and disappeared once more, returning to its profound slumber. He then summoned the liquor worm and concealed it in a corner of his bed to avoid the academy's unwanted investigation. Fifteen minutes later, at the clan academy, the academy elder had long gone to bed, 
but in his dreams he could vaguely hear the sound of someone knocking on the door. The noise roused him, and he opened his eyes, very unhappy. Who is it outside there in the middle of the night? Instantly, a courteous voice responded, reporting to Sir Elder, this is a student from this year's batch, he has already finished refining the moonlight goo. You ordered your subordinates earlier to report to you as soon as the first name emerges, regardless of the time. Well, it is true that happened. The academy elder frowned and got out of bed, putting on his robes and asking, which kid got number one this year? Is this Gu Yu Fang Zhang? The subordinate outside the door responded, it appears so. I rushed over here to inform you of the news as soon as I heard it, sir. It appears to be someone from the Fang family branch. He <laughs> he, considering the time, it is probably him. The academy elder laughed lightly, confidently asking, who else could possibly be than the A-level talent genius? Even with primal stones, all of those B-grade talent students would be worse off. Or then, why is the level of cultivation skill so important? As he stated this, he pulled the door open and walked out. Outside, his subordinate bowed respectfully and took two steps backward. Sir is right, he said. In the hall, ten or so candles blazed together, illuminating up the hall. The man who had received Fang Yuan had already cleared up all uncertainties by now and his countenance was surprised by the strong light of the candle fire. Wait, what did you just say? You're called Gu Yu Fang Yuan, not Gu Yu Fang Zhang. Fang Yuan nodded, and when the senior went in from the entryway, Fang Yuan and the man rose up and turned around to meet. When the academy elder spotted Fang Yuan, he smiled and marched over to stand in front of him, touching his shoulder in a kind gesture. You did well, Gu Yu Fang Zhang, you did not disappoint me. You are an A-grade talent genius. No matter how hard your B and C grade peers try, they will never be able to compare to you. Ha ha ha. Fang Yuan and Fang Zhang were twin twins whose outward look was akin to a flaw, even the academy elder was deceived. Fang Yuan, who was neither arrogant nor modest, took a little step back, releasing his shoulder from the school elder's grip. He glanced at the academy senior, his hands folded behind his back, and murmured with a faint smile, Sir Elder, you were mistaken. I'm Gu Yu Fang Yuan, and Gu Yu Fang Zhang is my younger brother. Huh. The academy elder opened his mouth slightly, his expression startled. He glared at Fang Yuan doubtfully, his brow turning into a frown. After a few breaths, he finally spoke. You are Gu Yu Fang Yuan. Yes, sir, Fang Yuan said. Have you refined the moonlight Gu? The school elder was taken aback by Fang Yuan's crescent mark on his forehead, and his eyes were gleaming as he asked the obvious question. Yes, that is correct, Fang Yuan responded. So, you are the first of your batch. The academy elder was asking dumb questions, but he wasn't wholly to blame, because this situation was completely unexpected. He has been in head of the institution for decades and is quite experienced, he has seen C-grade talent pupils compete for first place before, but never at this early stage, and this batch included peers with A and B-grade talent. If there is no one earlier than me, Fang Yuan seemed to be deep in thought, then scratched his nose and added, then it seems like it. The academy elder says, 1, it signifies that even if it is rotten or damaged, it can still be used. Chapter 21, How Did Big Brother Get to Number 1? The sky was not yet bright, and the sun had not yet risen, the east sky had just begun to brighten, with the dark colors gradually receding and the fragrance of the night lingering in the air. Gu Yu Fang Zhang walked quickly toward the academy, his cheeks flushed crimson, and the streets were vacant until he heard fast footfall. Despite the fact that the mountain air was moist in the early morning, he didn't feel any cold rush, his heart was full of rising enthusiasm. I have been cultivating hard these few days, expending two primal stones. I didn't sleep at all last night, and I've finally mastered the moonlight goo. I am an A-grade student who works extremely hard. No one can be faster than me, father and mother. I promised you I would not disappoint you. When Fang Zhang remembered telling his aunt and uncle about the good news earlier, they expressed satisfaction and relief, filling him with excitement and pride. Just wait, all you clans people who looked down on me, and my big brother. From now on, I will make you all look up to me, Gu Yu Fang Zhang. Fang Zhang couldn't help but clench his fists and hasten his pace as his thoughts grew more intense. He approached the academy entrance. The academy's two guards stared at him oddly and questioned, Why are you back, Gu Yu Fang Yuan? What, big brother came here just now? When Fang Zheng heard them, he looked surprised and puzzled. 
He shook his head and clasped his hands together, his tone tinged with arrogance, two elder brothers, I am not Gu Yu Fang Yuan, but I am Gu Yu Fang Zhang. I have already perfected my vital Gu, and I am here to claim the top prize. Are you Gu Yu Fang Zhang? You brothers are simply too same, no surprise the academy elder was mistaken, the guard on the left side exclaimed, his eyes widening. The guard on the right shook his head and muttered, you came one step too late. Just last night, in the late hours, your older brother Gu Yu Fang Yuan came to meet Sir Elder and take the top award. My older brother Fang Zhang instantly opened his eyes wide, yelling out, wait, you say he got number one. How is this possible? Isn't his older brother a C-grade talent? Getting number one, this must be a hoax, right? It is true. How could we possibly joke about with this situation? The guard became unhappy as he saw Fang Zhang in amazement. This has been confirmed by an academy elder. The name list will be released and revealed soon. What's wrong? Your older brother didn't tell you about it. The other guard added. Fang Zhang just stood stupid by the entrance. Fang Zhang's heart was filled with many illusions of his rivals, the most dangerous of which were Gu Yu Mo Bei and Gu Yu Qi Lian. The actuality was so different from his vision that he couldn't comprehend what had just transpired. These two were of B-rank talent, and they were supported by the clan's two main family branches, each of which had a grandpa who wielded enormous authority as an elder as well as significant financial power. Fang Zhang's heart and intellect were ready if one of these two persons won first place over him, even if it meant he would feel a sense of loss. But right now, the person who took away number one was not Gu Yu Mo Bei or Gu Yu Qi Lian, it was none of his opponents in his heart, but it was his older brother, Gu Yu Fang Yuan. That guy with a C-level talent. That person who slipped downward and became depressed following the awakening ceremony. That person who slept soundly in class throughout the day. That person was always excessively drunk and never returned home at night. That person who tormented Shen Kui, smacked him twice, and removed all his primal stones. That person who has always held him down, like a shadow embedded in his heart. How can things be like this? It can't be possible. Feng Zheng yelled in his heart. I was so hard working, but he just drank every day until he was intoxicated, and yet in the end, he was the one who earned number one, is this even fair? Why? Why? The sun rose from the east, birds chirped, and the fresh air of spring swept across Qing Mao Mountain. Gu Yu Feng Zheng, bathed in the warm sunlight, slowly lowered his head, gritting his teeth, looking at his own lonely shadow. The excitement in his heart had turned into a balloon that leaked air and long dissipated leaving behind emotions of confusion, resentment, unwillingness, puzzlement, fear, and other complicated feelings. As time passed, the sun rose higher. The Academy Bulletin Wall had posted a fresh name list, which had only two names, Fang Yuan and Fang Zhang. Following the posting of this list, the news quickly circulated. After hearing the news, all of the young kids who had been working on improving their goo at home after receiving one were in a frenzy. How can it be like this? If Fang Zhang had been number one, I might have believed it, but it's Fang Yuan, isn't he a C-level talent? Could there have been an error, the A-grade talent Fang Zhang actually lost to the C-grade talent Fang Yuan, is this Tales from the Thousand and One Nights, 1. The M.O. Branch Family Residence. The foliage in the courtyard was overflowing, and the aroma of tea wafted about. One of the clan elders of the Guyu clan, Guyu M.O. Bei, was seated in front of his desk, staring out the window at the spring scenery. He leisurely drank his tea and murmured, M.O. Bay hasn't continued refining his goo, dot. The housekeeper, standing to the side, hurriedly said, after hearing the news about Fang Yuan in the afternoon, young master M.O. Bay appeared to be deeply affected and has no mood to continue refining the moonlight goo. It's a shame, because young master M.O. Bay was so near to success. Actually, even if Fang Zhang was ranked first, he could still be overlooked but it has to be Fang Yuan, a C-grade talent. So young master M.O. Bei lost interest, it couldn't be helped. Hmph do not excuse him. Gu Yu M.O. Chen sniffed bitterly, his visage severe and his tone harsh, a Gu master's cultivation process is full of suffering at every step, what is a minor setback like this? Fang Yuan has only a C-grade, therefore his success at number one was most likely due to luck. The moonlight Gu he chose must have had a weak will, which is how he was able to take the top. If M.O. Bay can't see past this and let such a minor defeat affect him, how is he meant to lead our M.O. family branch in the future, let alone compete with the Qi family branch? No one is authorized to advise him, 
he should think about it himself. Yes, master. The housekeeper did not dare to disagree, almost simultaneously, in the residence of the Qi family branch. Sai, Gu Yu Fang Yuan. The clan elder Gu Yu Qi Lian sighed a deep sigh, his brows drawn down in a frown as he thought, waving his hand around. Someone, call young master Qi Chen over please. Gu Yu Qi Chen entered the room with a bewildered expression and kneeled down with respect, saying, Your grandson greets his grandpa. Seems like you already know about the news, Gu Yu Qi Lian stated softly, looking at his sole direct grandchild. I summoned you here to prevent you from being influenced by this subject. You see, when refining the important Gu, one looks first at talent, then at the Gu worm. Fang Yuan's talent is just C grade, but he was able to reach number one this time. This signifies that the Gu he chose, in comparison to all of your colleagues' moonlight Gu, has a significantly weaker will. This is completely due to luck. So, dear grandson, don't be discouraged, this is absolutely nothing. He is only a C-grade talent, he is the same as you, but his supply of resources is not as plentiful as yours. His path to success will be more difficult than yours, believe your grandfather, you will soon outperform him. Therefore, you should set this trivial subject aside. Fang Yuan will not be your opponent and is not worthy of being your enemy. Your true adversaries are the A-grade talent Fang Zheng and the M.O. family's M.O. Bei. Do you understand? Thank you for the wisdom, Grandpa. I understand. I'll go now and continue polishing my Gu. Gu Yu Qi Chen had lost the mournful expression on his face, replacing it with a high spirit ed resolve to battle. MMM. Elder Gu Yu Qi Lian nodded, happy, and smiled, saying, Good grandson. While your talent is merely C grade, you may be confident that grandpa will totally back you. Later, I will come out and use the aura of a rank 3 Gu worm to block your moonlight Gu's will and assist you improve this Gu. 1. It refers to tales from the thousand and one nights here. https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash one underscore thousand underscore and underscore one underscore nights. Chapter 22, Dancing Moonblade. The sky was blue and clear, as if wiped clean, and the sun shone golden. Puffs of white clouds drifted away, and a flock of colorful peacock parrots chirped as they flew beneath the blue sky, making an arrow shape as they soared. The colorful parrots would only come in big groups during the springtime. Their bodies were littered with feathers the color of the rainbow, and their bodies were the size of an eagle. The birds had parrot beaks and tails that flowed like a peacock's tail. It had been ten days since Fang Yuan won first place in the test to refine the vital goo. The spring breeze blew over the entire mountain's green grass, while wild flowers bloomed eagerly, and bees and butterflies danced around together. Life was surging all around, it was the wonderful beauty of springtime. The breath of spring was so strong that the tall bamboo walls encircling the training grounds couldn't contain it. This training field, which occupied three mu, one, was flat, paved with a layer of thick and wide grey graphite, and had four sides planted with green spear bamboo. The green poles were set tightly together side by side, straight and tall, forming a circle of green high walls. While the edges of the wall were likewise stone, Clusters of green grass erupted from numerous spots. In between the bamboo, some wild flowers poked in from the outside, and a few even climbed the wall. Fifty-seven fifteen-year-olds were standing in the middle of the training field, forming a semicircle around the academy senior in the center and focusing their attention on him. This was a tutorial to show the pupils how to utilize the Moonlight Goo. The Moonlight Goo is our Gu Yu clan's iconic Goo, similar to the Xiong, too, houses bear strength goo and the bai, three, houses stream goo. The majority of you on the field have picked the moonlight goo as your essential goo, therefore you must all pay attention. Soon, I will personally demonstrate how to attack with the moonlight goo. Students whose vital goo is not the moonlight goo must also focus on me, as this classical long-distance attacking strategy may also be employed on other goo, the range of methods available is vast. As he talked, the school elder extended his right hand, five fingers spread wide, and dropped his palm so the young teens could see the middle of it. First, you use your mind to mobilize the moonlight goo and move it to the center of your palm. As he spoke, the crescent mark representing the moonlight goo glided down the elder's arm and into his palm. Then, you mobilize the primeval essence in your aperture, pouring it into the moonlight goo. A thread of white silver-colored primeval essence spilled out from the elder's body, almost imperceptible, and entered the moonlight goo in his hand. The academy elder was a rank 3 goo master, 
and only rank 3 Goo Masters could create white silver primeval essence. Rank 1 Goo Masters produced green copper primeval essence, while rank 2 Goo Masters produced red iron primeval essence. When they reached rank 3, they produced white silver primeval essence. After absorbing the thread of white silver primal essence, the crescent-shaped mark on the elder's hand began to shine brighter and brighter, emitting a magnificent pale blue light even though it was daytime. That's awesome. How beautiful. The children couldn't help but exclaim in surprise and delight when they saw it. The pale blue light was clear like water and flickered faintly in the elder's palm. At first glance, it appeared that the academy elder's hand was scooping a handful of moonlight. The academy elder smiled slightly and said, Now watch carefully. The last step is just like how I will do it, launching it out. As he spoke, his five wide open fingers gently closed together, then he raised his arm and carefully slid it forward, keeping it straight, before lightly waving his palm in a cutting motion. The entire movement was consistent and forceful. Swoosh. The young children heard a faint brushing sound opposite their ear. Following the academy elder's movement, the condensed water-like pale blue light in his palm was thrown forth in that manner. The light morphed into a faint blue moon blade in the air, only the size of a wide open palm and shaped like the crescent moon in the night sky. It drew a straight line in the air before colliding with a grass doll 10 meters away. A tearing sound was heard, and the moon blade cut clear through the grass puppet's neck, which was roughly 30 centimeters thick. The puppet's body shook, and the massive head abruptly fell to the floor. After cutting the grass puppet in half, the moon blade seemed dimmer but it continued flying for about 6 meters before the crescent faded away, eventually disintegrating in the air. Looking at the grass puppet's neck again, one could see that the sliced region was incredibly flat, as if it had been chopped away with the sharpest sickle. When the kids witnessed this, their eyes widened, and a couple of them unintentionally touched their own necks, taken aback by the moonblade's attacking strength. The teens had glowing eyes as they peered at the grass puppet, some of them staring at the elder's palm, and a few of them glancing at their peers, conversing, and whispering eagerly. Only Fang Yuan stood buried in the crowd, his demeanor frigid and his figure serene. In his previous incarnation, Fang Yuan had cultivated to rank 6 and founded the Blood Wing Demon Sect in the Middle Kingdom. He taught tens of thousands of people and was regarded as a towering figurehead of the demonic side, his fame glorious. The school elder was only a rank 3 Gu master, Thus this tiny deception would have no effect on Fang Yuan's emotions. All of you who have refined the Moonlight Goo, come out. Each of you will grab a grass puppet and practice attacking in the same way that I did, tossing out the Moon Blade. When the Academy Elder was finished, about 30 students walked out. In this batch, the entire clan had a hundred young teens joining the awakening ceremony. Those who had cultivating talent were around 57, and those who had chosen the Moonlight Goo were around 35. After a few days of hard work, they had all refined the Moonlight Goo. Those who remained were all D-grade talents, not because they didn't want to refine the Moonlight Goo, but because they couldn't. To the younger members of the Guyu clan, the Moonlight Goo was more than just a goo worm, it was a symbol of the clan's pride. Thirty-five of them immediately lined up in a row, each facing forward and ten meters apart from a grass puppet on the other side. Fang Yuan stood in the midst of the row, but he drew little notice. The practice began. The pupils all put out their right hands, allowing the moonlight goo to migrate to the heart of their palm, and one by one, the blue crescent mark began to emit water blue light as green copper primordial essence was poured in. When they drew a vertical cut with their palm, only seven or eight crescents flew out, some of which appeared for a brief moment before dissipating, some of which flew for two to three meters before disintegrating into blue light with a bang, and some of which flew further but in a completely different direction straight up into the sky. When the young adolescents witnessed the elders' demonstration, they thought it was simple, but when they started practicing themselves, they realized how difficult it was to throw a moon blade and have it hit the grass puppet. The elder smiled faintly as he observed the spectacle, which he had seen every year and was not shocked by. The other 22 pupils could only stand outside the field, jealously observing. After five minutes of practice, the youths were progressively able to make moon blades, for a time, Pale blue moon blades flew across the training site. A few moon blades faded midway, a few unintentionally collided with another, some flew out of the training field, twirling around, and just a few were able to hit the grass puppets. Of course, all of this was due to pure luck. The academy elder began tutoring and guiding each person individually. 
He concentrated on Fang Zheng, Mo Bei, Qi Cheng, and other pupils with good latent potential, meticulously correcting their postures and instructing them from his own experience. He only addressed two phrases to C-grade talent students like Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan kept condensing the blue light in his hand. He waved his palm a few times, cutting the air, but he did not release the light, pretending and acting. With the field in disarray and no one focusing on him, he moved his thoughts and released his hold on the moonlight goo, his palm tilting slightly, making a cutting action. On a void drawing attention, he focused on the grass puppet on his left rather than his own. With a whoosh, a moon blade shot out of the turmoil, drawing a straight line in the air and cutting precisely into the neck of a grass puppet. The moon blade sliced deep into the grass puppet's neck, but it swiftly regrows, tangles, and heals the wound. Of course, this grass puppet was not your typical scarecrow. It was a rank 1 scarecrow goo with the nature type ability to self recover. Unless the puppet was chopped in half at once, it would just return to normal in a short time. Wow, look at that crescent. How cool, who threw it? Fang Yuan casually struck a grass puppet with his moon blade, causing the most significant result so far. The students outside the field cried out in surprise, and even the academy elder was taken aback, asking, That moon blade just now wasn't bad. Was this yours? He cast an inquisitive glance at a C-grade talent student, since that grass puppet was right across from him. This male student opened his eyes, perplexed by everyone's sudden stares at him. To be honest, the field had been in a state of mayhem earlier, with moon blades flying around, so he had no idea if he had thrown it. However, looking at it, it's probably me, thought the young lad, and he nodded instinctively. The young people around him immediately stared at him with admiration. Who is he? and what is his name? Some of the female students inquired around. Even if he throws out a moon blade, I cannot lose, Gu Yu M. O. Bei said, his eyes flashing with determination. So it's not Big Brother who threw it, Gu Yu Feng Zheng exclaimed, relieved. After uncle and aunt consoled him, he was able to recover from the previous hit. Big Brother, you won first place last time because you were lucky in picking a weak-willed moonlight Gu. A Gu master's cultivation cannot always be based on luck, I shall win you. Fang Zheng was rooting for himself in his heart. You did well. Continue to work hard, seize the emotion you felt earlier. The academy elder touched the student's shoulder, smiling as he encouraged him. The small child was filled with joy and nodded often, his eyes taking on a new glitter. The elder seized the chance and declared, Listen up, everyone, this will be your assignment. Practice well after class, I'll check the outcomes in three days. The award for the best performance is 10 pieces of primordial stone. Understand? Yes, the young kids all screamed enthusiastically, their excitement only growing as they learned of the primordial stone award. However, barely three minutes later, the moon blades that sailed through the air began to thin out. Damn, every single moon blade takes up 10% of primeval essence. The moon blade consumption is simply too high, I am merely a C-grade talent with an aperture that can only retain 38% of green copper primal essence. I can only throw three moon blades. Those that stopped sighed. The school senior remained cool as he observed everything, but his heart groaned. This is the reward of people with high cultivating talent. Using the moon blade requires only three words, practice makes perfect. Those with higher grade skill may hold more primal essence in their apertures, and their recovery rate is faster, allowing them to train more frequently. Those with less talent can employ primal stones to compensate, increasing the amount of practices. However, individuals with low-grade skill and no primal stones, even if they have the desire to train, will remain helpless. Sigh, the Goo Master's cultivation method is just too cruel. I had best take care of those high-achieving students. 1. Mu, an ancient Chinese unit, equals 666 and two-thirds meters superscript 2. 2. Xiong House. Xiong is the word for bear. 3. Bai house, Bai is the word for white as in white color. Chapter 23, Raising a Gu Resembles Raising a Mistress. The sun had already set. The sunset glow was still burning in the sky, and the mountains far in the distance were coated in a thick coating of gray ash that was rapidly turning black. After a day of classes at the school, the pupils strolled out in groups of twos and threes. I'm quite happy today, I learned a lot. Especially how I learned to use the moonlight goo. The way the moon blade soars through the air is really cool. It's too bad that my talent isn't enough, so in the future I'll just be a logistics goo master and won't be able to fight on the battlefield. 
The young teens chatted cheerfully. A handful of them invited pals over. Let's go eat, and while we're doing it, how about some rice wine? Sure, that's not a bad suggestion. You guys go first, I need to go to the store beside the academy's goo room and get a grass puppet. It will be simple to practice at home with it. Fang Yuan visited the goo room alone. The academy's goo room had a variety of rank 1 goo worms, including Fang Yuan's moonlight goo, which could be freely plucked from inside. Once in a while, students would receive a free chance to pick a goo worm, however, if they wanted more goo, they would have to pay. In this short time, Fang Yuan had no desire to refine any additional goo, so he proceeded to the building beside the goo room, which was a little store. There were seven pupils in the store, each negotiating over the counter with the proprietor to purchase grass puppets. It's you, Junior. The rank one goo master in charge of the store was in his thirties, and when he spotted Fang Yuan, he immediately greeted him while bartering with his customers. Fang Yuan was surprised to learn that this goo master was Zhang Ya, the young goo master who had taught the hunters a lesson at the inn. Ah, it's you, senior. Fang Yuan nodded, his face expressionless. Zhang Ya took a grass puppet from the counter behind him, passed it to the student who bought it, and asked Fang Yuan with a warm grin, did junior brother also come here to buy a grass puppet? If you want me to leave one for you, you only need three pieces of primal stone. These goods sell like hotcakes, there are currently only seven remaining, if you wait any longer, there will be no stock left. Zhang Ya's attitude toward mortals was arrogant, but toward those like Fang Yuan, he was exceedingly kind and genuine. Fang Yuan shook his head, inwardly grinning, thinking that Zhang Ya definitely knew how to handle business. The scarecrow goo was used to make the grass puppets, and even with the primordial essence added, the total cost should not exceed one and a half primeval stones. Senior, this is unfair. It should be first come, first served, why leave anything for him? Yes, we all arrived early. If you want to do business, you should understand the regulations. Three pieces will be three pieces. Here's the primeval stones, give me a grass puppet. When the store's young customers learned that there were only seven puppets left, they stopped negotiating and took out their stones to purchase one. Seven delighted teens swiftly exited. Would my junior like to buy a grass puppet? Zhang Ya laughed as he asked, it appears that they were sold out, but there is still the eighth puppet tucked away below the chest. If junior does not buy it now, you will miss out on the opportunity. Fang Yuan showed little interest in the grass puppet shaking his head and placing a chunk of ancient stone on the counter. I want to buy ten moon orchid petals. Zhang Ya stared Fang Yuan in the eyes, removed the primal stone, opened the counter drawer, and took out a paper bag containing ten pieces of moon orchid flower petals. Please be sure. Fang Yuan verified the goods on the spot and discovered no mistakes before leaving the modest shop. Goo has to be fed. A goo master refines and uses goo while also needing to raise it. There are numerous types of goo worms, each with its own set of food requirements. Some eat soil, some eat starlight, some eat tears, and some eat clouds and air from the nine skies. Refining a goo is difficult, and using one requires a great deal of practice. In Fang Yuan's current three goo, for example, the moonlight goo requires moon orchid petals, two meals per day, one in the morning and one at night, and two pieces of flower petals at each meal. The liquor worm, on the other hand, requires wine, and a jar of green bamboo wine can sustain it for four days. The spring autumn cicada is even more unusual, as it drinks directly from the river of time to stay alive. The flow of our planet is supported by the river of time, which is not far away in the sky but quite close at hand, flowing by every person's side. Every movement done by any living creature necessitates the use of time. The river of time is unseen and colorless, but all living organisms survive and thrive in its waters. Time is like rushing water, hurriedly gliding forward. After buying the bag of moon orchid petals, Fang Yuan went to the inn to buy green bamboo wine. The liquor worm could also drink some turbid wine or rice wine to live, but with this kind of second-rate wine, the amount it needed to drink would increase, and it would need many jars every day. After calculating, Fang Yuan decided it would be better to buy green bamboo wine right away. Young sir, you've come. The workers in the inn had already known Fang Yuan, and he delivered him three primal stones directly, saying with a familiar ease, give me a jar of green bamboo wine and cook me a few delicious things. You do not need to give me the change, simply put it here first. You can deduct one stone from my charge at the end of the month. 
Even though Fang Yuan no longer stayed at the inn after moving to the academy dormitories, he would always eat here when he bought wine. All right, young sir, please take a seat, the dishes will be sent over immediately, the worker echoed, escorting Fang Yuan to his seat. He took the cloth on top of his shoulder and carefully wiped the table before leaving. The meals were served very soon, just as the worker had indicated. Fang Yuan ate while mentally calculating, a piece of primeval stone can buy me ten pieces of flower petals. Every day, the moonlight goo gobbled four pieces. A jar of green bamboo wine costs two pieces of stone and can sustain the liquor worm for four days. In other words, just to rear and feed these two gus, I'd have to pay approximately one stone per day. Fang Yuan had spent fourteen and a half primeval stones just to raise the goo, despite the fact that the monthly living expenses for a mortal family of three only used up one piece of primeval stone. From the beginning of refining the goo to today, sixteen days had passed. I obtained the flower wine treasure, took Fang Zheng's bag of primordial stones, and received the first place prize. My primeval stone assets originally totaled forty-four pieces and a half. However, in the early days of developing the goo, I squandered six and a half pieces before using fourteen and a half pieces to feed these goo. My living expenditures were half a piece, and today I am probably left with twenty. Fang Yuan took out his money pouch, opened it, and looked inside. The bag contained bits of ancient stones, each of which was grayish-white, elliptical in shape, with equal volumes and the size of a duck egg. After counting, he discovered that he only had twenty pieces left. If this continued, Fang Yuan would only be able to last half a month with the stones he had left, unlike his peers, who had relatives and friends to help them out, especially in the case of students like Gu Yu Mo Bei and Gu Yu Qi Cheng, who were loaded with primeval stones. Fang Yuan could only think of one method. My uncle and aunt have already cut off my living expenses, but every weekend, the clan academy would provide each student three pieces of primordial stone as a stipend. Fang Yuan crunched the food in his lips as he pondered. Looks like I'll have to show off in the Moonblade assessment in three days to get that ten primeval stone prize. His physique was still expanding at the time, and he had consumed all of the rice and dishes without even realizing it. Fang Yuan took up the sealed green bamboo wine jar, lifted his feet, and began walking out of the inn. Young sir, young sir. The innkeeper pursued him from behind, saying, I just wanted to let you know that the trading company will be in the village in less than a month. By tradition, they would always purchase the green bamboo wine from our business. Young sir enjoys our green bamboo wine and buys a few jars every week, so the innkeeper directed me to inform him of this situation. Our store has a limited supply of green bamboo wine, so I'm afraid we'll be left with very little after we sell it to the trading company. Is this the case? When Fang Yuan heard the news, he frowned slightly. Fang Yuan had 500 years of experience and could naturally tell the difference between Zhang Ye's tricky words and the shop worker's truthful words. Fang Yuan needed to feed the liquor worm, which required a large amount of green bamboo wine in the long term. If this inn ran out of stock, he would have to feed the liquor worm with a lot of second-rate wine. After thinking about it, Fang Yuan took out ten pieces of primal stones and remarked, then I'll buy another five jars. It's not possible for him to drink several jars per day because people would become suspicious after a while. I'll need you to carry them and follow me to the academy dormitories. All right, young sir. The worker promptly accepted the primordial stones. The moon orchid flower petals could only last for five days without any special storage measures, so Fang Yuan would only buy a bag every time, however, the green bamboo wine could be stored for a very long time, so this was not an issue. A few workers followed Fang Yuan into the academy dorms and deposited the wine jars under his bed before leaving. When he noticed the money sack that had abruptly flattened in his palms, he sighed. Raising a goo is just as difficult as refining one. This is also taking into account the fact that he had 500 years of previous life experience, so he didn't need to practice using his goo, which meant that the consumption rate of primal essence would be reduced, saving him a large number of money. A grass puppet costs three primeval stones, and those his age would need to practice using the moonlight goo and waste primeval essence in order to improve their skills. When too much primeval essence is consumed, primeval stones must be used as a supplement due to the slow recovery rate. Fortunately, my spring autumn cicada only feeds when it is supposed to. Otherwise, I would have gone bankrupt and would never be able to sustain it. 
Fang Yuan suddenly felt extremely fortunate. A typical level rank 2 Gu Worm can cost up to 1 to 2 primal stones per day. The higher the Gu, the more food is required, or the more valuable and scarce the food is, making it more difficult to keep. It is sufficient if the food is available for purchase, nevertheless, certain Gu demanded food that was difficult to obtain, and some of it did not even circulate in the market. This was even more valuable than the spring autumn cicadas food, which was time itself. As the adage goes, an inch of gold cannot buy an inch of time. Is it possible to buy time with any amount of money? You can't. In theory, a goo master can refine as much goo as they like, whether it's 10, 100, or a thousand worms. However, in fact, a goo master usually only had 45 goo. Why? The main reason is that it is difficult to afford. The higher the grade of the worm, the more expensive it was to feed and raise. It frequently gave a goo master too many troubles to deal with, causing them to have unending headaches about it. Another factor was inability to use. To launch a single moon blade assault with the moonlight goo, 10% of primordial essence is required, a C-grade skill goo master may run out of primeval essence in their apertures after 3 to 4 attacks. Isn't it a waste of resources to raise so many goo if they can't be used? Thus, there was a saying in the goo master's cultivation, raising a goo is similar to raising a mistress. To keep a mistress, you would need to buy food, clothes, and a house. It is extremely expensive, and the more you have, the more expensive it becomes, a normal man cannot afford it. Even if you keep a large number, a man's energy is finite, he can't employ them all. Would you grow them merely to gaze at them? As the rank of the goo master rises, so does the food standard of the goo worm. Thus, please do not believe that a goo master has no limit to the number of goo he may refine, in general. A Gu master can only preserve about 45 Gu of his level. If the number of Gu was increased further, the Gu master would go bankrupt. Chapter 24, Close Combat, Gu Master. Three days later. The common strategy for resisting against a flying fist is to lower your body to dodge. When your attacker attacks you, rapidly squat down and counterattack, striking his crotch and abdomen. You should not be terrified of a swinging fist. Those that come up and start swinging their fists right away are usually persons who lack intelligence and are impulsive and reckless. On the martial arts field, the academy's martial arts, one, instructor spoke while performing demonstration actions. A wooden puppet's right swept over, and the martial arts instructor quickly squatted down, dodging the incoming attack. Then he threw a punch at the puppet's abdomen, knocking it down with several punches. The students formed a circle to watch the presentation but the majority of them lacked spirit and showed little enthusiasm. The academy taught a variety of courses, and this lesson was the one that taught the foundation of martial arts. Using fists and legs to exert oneself was too inferior to the handsome and cool assault style of the moon blade, which caused almost all of the pupils to become distracted. The following class will be a moonlight goo use evaluation. How have you been practicing lately? I'm still doing well. I can throw three moon blades but only a couple of them actually land. Usually, I get two blades on the grass puppet. MMM, that's exactly like me. I got a grass puppet specifically to practice this in these few days. The young teens whispered to one another, their minds long gone from the lesson, and they were all worried about the next class's assessment. They had practiced hard after class for this assessment, and now they were flexing their hands and feet, looking forward to it. The sounds of the students' debate had reached the instructor's ear and the martial arts coach snapped his eyes back at them, saying, no talking allowed in class, all of you keep your mouths shut and watch closely. He was a rank 2 goo master, with a powerful upper body and bronzed skin covered in scars. With a frightening cry, he pressed down on all of the trainees in the field. Silence fell in the martial arts field. The basis of martial arts is the most significant among all things. It is more vital than anything else during the early phases of a goo master's cultivation. All of you better pay attention to me. After he finished scolding, the martial arts instructor summoned another wooden puppet, a two-meter tall light yellow puppet with huge wooden feet that made sharp sounds as they stepped on the blue stone floor tiles. The puppet stretched its arms and rushed clumsily towards the coach. The instructor dodged its attack, hugged its waist, and used his strength to push it forward, forcing the massive and tall wooden puppet to tumble to the ground. He then rode on the puppet's waist and quickly swung his fist at the puppet's head. 
The wooden puppet resisted for a moment until its head was smashed and fractured by the instructor's rain of blows, leaving it paralyzed on the ground and unmoving. The martial arts instructor rose up, his breathing steady and long as always, and told the students, when confronted with a massive and tall enemy in close battle, do not be terrified. Ruining your opponent's center of gravity is a smart approach for pinning them down. Just like I did before, you must hug the opponent's waist, control his hips, and then drive forward with your strength. After that, you seize the opportunity to get on his body and viciously punch your opponent. Those without defensive qualities will immediately collapse. The coach watched all of this and chuckled bitterly in his heart. The kids nodded repeatedly, but the majority of their eyes indicated displeasure. It was difficult for these young people to comprehend the significance of having a martial arts foundation, especially for a goo master in his early stages, because they were naturally drawn to beautiful things and lacked personal understanding and experience. This was true for each batch. Remember that in close combat, your sight should not constantly be focused on the enemy's eye. It should target the enemy's shoulder. Regardless of whether you punch or kick, the enemy's shoulder always moves first. In close combat your speed is very important, the speed I am talking about in this context is not the speed of your fists, but the speed of the movement of your legs. Distance is the best defense. Keep your legs elastic, then you will be able to easily burst out your strength. When hitting with your fists, use a triangle support. Otherwise, you risk losing your footing. The opponent has not fallen, but you fell first. The instructor carefully lectured while demonstrating all of his vital experiences gained from sacrificing blood and tears, as well as experience gathered over long battles. Unfortunately, the pupils were ignorant of this, and they gradually resumed whispering, with the focus of the discussion remaining on the Moonblade evaluation for the next lesson. This martial arts instructor is very pragmatic, but his teaching style is wrong. Fang Yuan watched quietly among the crowd, nodding and shaking his head at times. The instructor had no discipline in his teaching, he taught completely by interest, and just taught whatever he thought of, so the things he taught came out in a mess, and there was a lot of complicated information. Many students listened seriously at first, but gradually they lost interest and averted. Although Fang Yuan's battle experience was more extensive than the instructor's, listening to others narrate was also a method of cultivation verification. A Gu Master's combat style is often categorized into two categories, melee and ranged. The Moonblade Assault is classified as medium range due to its effective distance of only 10 meters. When it came to close combat Gu Masters, the martial arts instructor was the ideal example. Melee warfare Gu Masters would usually chose Gu that enhanced their own bodily qualities and cultivate them, giving them superhuman strength, agility, responsiveness, and endurance. This martial arts instructor's entire body was covered in bronze skin, which was not his natural skin color, but a type of copper skin goo's effect. The copper skin goo greatly increased the goo master's skin toughness and defense, allowing him to take more damage. A single moon blade would deplete 10% of primal essence. How many times can a goo master throw a moon blade in battle? The number is small, especially for novices who have trouble creating efficient blows. It can only be used as a form of trump card, the terrifying factor outweighs its lethality. To a rank 1 Gu master, martial arts kung fu is the most useful skill. This is because the martial art offense is more durable and dependable. It's unfortunate that people won't realize this fact unless they have first-hand experience with it. Fang Yuan cast a brief glance around at his peers, a small scowl emerging on his lips. After a short break, the students' eyes were filled with anticipation, the academy elder was late. He waved his big hand, pointing at the row of grass puppets in front of the bamboo wall, and went straight to the subject, saying, All right, today is the day to check the results. I want five people to come up in the correct order and attack three times with the moon blade. Swoosh. The first group of kids walked up, and the moon blade danced in the air. After three rounds, just nine moon blades landed on the grass puppets. The school senior shook his head, slightly disappointed. This hit rate was too low, with just two of the five able to successfully throw out two moon blades. You all better practice properly after this, especially you, and you, the senior admonished in a brief statement, then waved his huge palm and added, next group. The two that were reprimanded dropped their heads and left the field in dismay. One of them was a girl, her eyes a little red and her heart grieving. She was only a C-grade talent, 
but she couldn't bear to use primeval stones to quickly recover her primeval essence, so she practiced very little in these three days, resulting in her unskilled throwing of the moon blade. A goo master needed money to refine goo, raise goo, and even practice using goo, but where could she get so much money? Even though her two parents were supporting her from behind, every family had their own problems, and being short on funds was a common dilemma for a goo master. Anyway, I don't have a chance of being number one. I might as well give up and save on primitive stones, it's better for me. As she reflected on this, her heart relaxed once more. Many of the pupils did poorly due to a lack of experience, and the academy elder's brow furrowed further. This little lady was not alone in her thinking. Fang Yuan stared, discreetly shaking his head, these individuals are truly wretched and sad. They sacrificed their own opportunity to advance for a little number of primitive stones. Primeval stones are designed to be used, if you want to be a miser and collect primeval stones, why did you become a goo master? In other words, those who are short-sighted typically quarrel over every cent and chase after less important things, but those with lofty objectives usually display a tolerant and generous attitude, as well as the strength to give up and let go of things. It's finally my turn. At this point, Gu Yuem Obey's horse face lit up in a confident smile all over, and he walked up to the field. His stature was stout, and he gave out a fierce and strong aura. After standing still, he raised his hand and threw three moon blades, all of which hit. Two of the blades hit the puppet's chest, while the other blade hit the puppet's left arm, shaving away a few green grass. This result naturally sparked admiration among the young teenagers. Well done. The elder's brow furrowed slightly. The next group approached, with Gu Yu Chi Cheng standing among them. He had a little and short frame, a pockmarked face, and a slightly worried expression. He sent out three moon blades at the same time, and they all hit the puppet's chest, leaving three interconnected scars. The scars moved from deep to superficial, and the puppet's self-healing ability allowed them to return to their previous look within a few breaths. However, this outcome was already linked to Gu Yuem Obey's performance and gained the elder's approval. Chi Chang held his head high as he went out of the field, looking M Obey defiantly in the eye along the way. Humph below the field, Gu Yu M Obey released a chilly snort, but he did not return Chi Cheng's glance, instead focusing on Gu Yu Feng Zheng, who had not yet risen. His heart knew that the only real threats were Gu Yu Chi Cheng and Gu Yu Feng Zheng. The former was a B grade talent like him, with a constant supply of primeval stones, while the latter was an A grade talent. Feng Zheng didn't have as many primeval stones as them, but he could practice a lot in a short period of time by relying on his own natural recovery speed due to his grade talent. Gu Yu Qi Cheng's results have just appeared, and they reveal a draw with M Obei, leaving only Gu Yu Feng Zheng. Gu Yu Feng Zheng eventually appeared on stage during the final few groups. 1. Chinese Boxing But I interpret it as martial arts, because this land isn't really China, and their language isn't really Chinese. Writing Chinese boxing feels out of place here. Chapter 25, The Light of Spring is Lovely. Is he Fang Yuan, or Fang Zhang? Some of the kids were murmuring, and some still couldn't tell the difference between Fang Yuan and Fang Zhang, the twin brothers. This is Fang Zhang. Fang Yuan always wears a cold expression, he never appears tense, someone replied. Oh, there'll be a spectacle. After all, Fang Zhang is our village's sole A-grade talent in three years. The crowd turned to look at the field. Feng Zheng's fingers trembled slightly as he stood on stage, feeling the pressure from the stairs directed at him. He put out his first moon blade, trying to aim for the grass puppet's chest, but because he was stressed, he missed and the moon blade imprinted on the grass puppet's neck. The young teenagers immediately expressed their surprise. They assumed that Feng Zheng did it on purpose, instead of shooting for the puppet's chest, he went for the neck demonstrating his immense confidence in his own attacking abilities. They couldn't help but look forward to Fang Zheng's next move, but Gu Yu M Obei and Gu Yu Qi Cheng had their complexions cast down. The academy elder and Fang Yuan were the only ones on the field who recognized Fang Zheng's blunder. How dangerous, Fang Zheng screamed in his heart, secretly feeling lucky as he looked at the moon blade. He took a few deep breaths, attempting to relax down, and then flung out two blades which hit the grass puppet's chest precisely this time. This result made the school elder nod his head, and M. Obey and Chi Cheng calmed down as well. Feng Zheng's result differed from theirs, so it would all depend on how the academy elder graded them. 
The other students sighed as Fang Zhang's later performance was uninteresting, leaving them slightly disappointed. The following groups were also uninteresting. No one could outperform Mo Bei, Qi Cheng, and Fang Zhang, and the young people began to whisper. At this rate, the top scorer in today's assessment should be among the three of them. All three of them managed to hit the grass puppet. I wonder who the academy elder will deem better. Hold on, this is the last group. Fang Yuan is rising. Oh, that C-grade gift called Cold Genius? Haha. <laughs> Fang Yuan eventually entered the stage when it was time for the final group. It's that Fang Yuan. Gu Yu Mobe raised his head and gazed at Fang Yuan for a moment before lowering his gaze carelessly. The last time you got incredibly lucky, you chose a weak-willed Moonlight Gu by accident and won first place. Let's see how you do this time. Gu Yu Qi Cheng gripped his arms, expecting to see Fang Yuan make a fool of himself. Big brother, this time won't be like the last. I've worked so hard for so long, I'm sure I can outperform you. Gu Yu Fang Zhang pursed his lips and clenched his fists fiercely. Gu Yu Fang Zhang's victory over his own older brother Fang Yuan had a special and great significance for him. He had previously received second place in the assessment to refine the vital Gu, despite the fact that he was an A-grade talent. Many eyes were drawn to Fang Yuan, and the school elder's attention was also fixated on him. Fang Yuan's attitude was icy and aloof. He stood there, ancient essence pouring into the moonlight goo in his palm, and with a cut in the air, he struck out the first moonblade. This moonblade sailed very high, going over not just the grass puppet's head, but also the bamboo wall. It traveled for over 15 meters before the light dimmed and vanished. Pfft. Someone couldn't stop laughing. Someone scoffed, this is way too outrageous, isn't it? He is truly a genius. No wonder he ranked first in perfecting the goo. Another remarked sarcastically. Fang Yuan's poetry and early wisdom had already produced unhappiness among these people, but when he relied on luck and ranked first in honing his vital goo, they felt a layer of jealously added to their displeasure. Many of them were expecting a nice show, to witness the genius Fang Yuan unveil an embarrassing action, and his moonblade did not disappoint. Waves of laughter rushed through the audience. The academy elder shook his head slightly, inwardly smiling at himself, why did he have to be so concerned with Fang Yuan for no reason? He was only a C grade and a boy who gained first place in refining Gu by sheer luck. In his heart, he had already made up his mind, even if Mo Bei, Qi Cheng, and Fang Zheng had identical outcomes, he would still rank Fang Zheng first. The fight between Gu Yu Mo Bei and Gu Yu Qi Cheng exemplified the political struggle between the clan's two most prominent seniors. The academy elder had always remained in the center and had no intention of entering the political maelstrom. The academy elder was more attracted towards the clan head, Gu Yubo, and Fang Zheng was a set with the clan leader, adding in the fact that he possessed a great talent, choosing him as number one would imply biased concern for him, which the clan's upper authorities could tolerate. A fresh spring breeze swept over, the smell of flowers flowing into the training grounds, and the sunlight beamed down on Fang Yuan's body, casting a single black shadow on the earth. His countenance remained chilly as he quietly peered at the grass puppet ten meters away, the moonblade in his palm emitting a faint blue glow. Of course, he had purposefully thrown the first moonblade off course, and now he only had two chances to act. Given the school elder's position, he would have to provide an outcome that exceeded everyone's expectations in the next two attacks to win first place. With only two chances remaining to attack, it's impossible. Big brother, I have finally won over you. Gu Yu Fang Zheng's eyes did not flatter as he stared at Fang Yuan. From young to old, the life shadow that his older brother had cast on him gradually melted away at this time. Fang Zheng could feel victory approaching, his two fists were subconsciously clinched and his entire body trembled slightly with joy. Big brother, my success this time is only the beginning. Next, I'll keep winning over you until I've banished all the shadows in my heart. Fang Zheng promised himself in his heart, I will prove to the clan the excellence of an A-grade talent genius. But just then, Fang Yuan acted, his right palm, like a knife, slashed through the emptiness. With a piercing tearing sound, the watery blue light encased in his palm was thrown out and shot through the air transforming into a curved blue moonblade and hurtling towards the grass puppet. In the blink of an eye, Fang Yuan's right palm was bathed in blue light once more, and he drew out the third moonblade. The two attacks flowed together seamlessly, like water. Under the shocked gazes of the spectators, the two moonblades flew out in fast succession, 
the gap between the two blades in the air less than half a meter, they hit the grass puppet's neck precisely. This, Feng Jing's pupils shrank, a horrible feeling emerging from his heart, the students then slowly opened their mouths wide, shocked expressions on their faces. They noticed that the grass puppet's head slowly tilted to one side, then slid off the neck and rolled two to three meters away. Fang Yuan beheaded the puppet. This outcome exceeded everyone's expectations on the field. Is this luck or skill? The academy elder grimaced, and the rest of the students' hearts were filled with doubt. The entire training area fell silent for a brief moment. How could this be? Fang Jing mumbled, staring at Fang Yuan blankly, the rushed feelings in his heart dropping suddenly, plummeting to their lowest point. Fang Yuan squinted his eyes, as if ignorant to the stares he received from the throng. Cluck and cluck. Under the blue skies and white clouds, a group of peacock parrots suddenly fluttered their wings and flew in midair, dragging their majestic, long and slender peacock tails and clucking as they flew about joyfully. Fang Yuan stood in the midst of the training field, staring up. Under the strong sunlight, the multicolored feathers of the birds shone even more, and his demeanor was apathetic, as if the person who had just severed the grass puppet's head wasn't him. Ah, the light of spring is really enchanting. He sighed in his heart. Chapter 26, The Nature of All Organizations As dusk approached, the sun on the horizon appeared like blood, and the afterglow rays flooded into the school, where approximately 50 pupils sat erect. On the platform above, the academy elder called out names one by one, distributing allowance. This was the academy's weekly subsidy, a weekly amount delivered every seven days, which could be considered financial aid for these young teenagers. After all, feeding and raising their own Gu was a significant financial burden for them. Gu Yu Fang Yuan. The elder read aloud. Fang Yuan rose from his place in the last row near the window and strode up the stage, holding two money bags, one containing three primordial stones, the clan's allowance, and the other containing ten primeval stones as a reward. Work hard, the elder urged, giving Fang Yuan a profound look. Fang Yuan had consistently achieved number one, which had caused those elders who were first disappointed in him to pay some attention. Fang Yuan nodded and put the purse into his arms before returning to his seat. Damn it, he actually got number one again. Gu Yu Mo Bei locked his attention on Fang Yuan, his heart rather angry. Those two moon blades repeatedly struck the puppet's neck. Is this due to pure luck or actual skill? Gu Yu Qi Cheng narrowed his eyes, this question had been on his thoughts since the assessment's conclusion. Although they had lost, their hearts were unfulfilled, and they wanted to know what had happened. It wasn't only him, several students unconsciously turned their gaze to Fang Yuan, and this question haunted them. When the day was coming to a finish, the academy elder made an announcement, you've all been in the academy for a while now, and you're all familiar with how to use your important goo. In the next days, I will show you how to warm and nourish your aperture, expanding a goo master's cultivation domain. The higher the domain of a goo master, the more condensed your primeval essence. A rank 1 goo master has green copper primeval essence, a rank 2 goo master has red iron primeval essence, and a rank 3 goo master has white silver primeval essence. One portion of red iron primeval essence is equivalent to 10 sections of green copper primeval essence. Similarly, one component of white silver primeval essence is equivalent to 10 sections of red iron primeval essence. You must all remember that the goo are simply tools that we utilize. Cultivation is the cornerstone of all goo masters. The greater your rank, the stronger the goo you can employ. During the next three months, whomever can take the lead and advance to rank one intermediate stage will receive 30 primordial stones. At the same time, he'll be able to select the second goo first. After three months, we will use the data to elect a class monitor and two vice class monitors. The class monitor will receive a subsidy of 10 primordial stones, while the vice class monitor will receive 5 pieces. That concludes today. You can all leave. The elders' comments shattered the silence in the academy. Time to elect the class monitor and vice class monitor. Someone squeezed his fist with pleasure. The class monitor receives 10 primal stones every 7 days, whereas the vice class monitor receives 5 pieces. If I can be the first to reach rank 1 middle stage, I will undoubtedly be able to become the class monitor. Another had lights in his eyes. The primitive stones are not the main focus. What is important here is the position of class monitor and vice class monitor, it reflects glory and elevates one's identity over others. When ordinary pupils see the class monitor, 
They must all bow and greet him. Gu Yu Mobe and Qi Chang possessed enough of primal stones, yet they valued the position's prestige much. To become the class monitor, you must be the first person promoted to the rank 1 middle stage. This means that if Big Brother sees me in the future, he must bow and greet me. Hold up, where's Big Brother? Gu Yu Fang Zhang instinctively looked back, but Fang Yuan seat was vacant. Students walked out of the academy. Where is Gu Yu Fang Yuan? Gu Yu Mobe wanted to find Fang Yuan and ask him face to face, but Fang Yuan was one step ahead and had already fled. Hmm, he sure rushed away quickly. Is he afraid? Gu Yu Qi Cheng scoffed. Looks like he got lucky again in today's test. Whatever, it's only 10 primeval stones, right now, what matters is that I advance to middle stage and get that class monitor position. Gu Yu Mobe narrowed his eyes and looked to his side, where Gu Yu Qi Cheng and Gu Yu Fang Zheng were. These two were his true adversaries, although Fang Yuan was only a little C-level talent, he was not on PAR. The first two times, Fang Yuan was lucky and got number one, but this time it is a cultivation test, and the focus is on the talent of cultivation, Gu Yu Qi Cheng thought, depressed in his heart. His true talent was only AC, it was only via cheating that he was able to give the impression of having AB. How hot-blooded and naive they are at this age, Fang Yuan growled as he leaned against the academy's entryway. The alleged glory was simply a great tool utilized by the highest levels to encourage those below them. In the end, it was merely an illusionary coating of brilliance, it was pointless. Fang Yuan's 500 years of experience had long allowed him to comprehend some of life's mysteries. Whether it comes to a clan, sect, or demonic group, whether it is this world or earth, all organizations are like this. The high and low positions are established, making the law of promotion clear, letting those in the organization climb up non-stop from the bottom. Because chasing after profit is the nature of humans, and positions of authority often make people have superiority, creating the illusion that oneself is living a more valuable life than others. Power is like the carrot dangling in front of a donkey. The desires of humans are stimulated by it, and each of them secure their personal gains with someone with authority for it. After climbing up one level, there will be a higher level. While they are busy currying favor for personal gain, their hard work is squeezed out from them and their value is exploited by the upper position. In every organization, as long as there is a chain of command, it is to give serve to those at the upper ranks. The so-called class monitor and vice class monitor position is like the smallest carrot, luring everyone else into the structure of the clan. And to prevent those below from realizing the truth, those at the higher positions integrate shared values, clear-cutting the idea of glory, meritorious deeds. This is the real truth, yet it is a pity that too many people in the world do not understand. They foolishly work hard for others. And for every organization in the world, the most fundamental of its essence is just one thing, and that is the redistribution of resources, where the higher the position the more resources they can enjoy. Fang Yuan had previously formed the Bloodwing Demon Sect in the Middle Kingdom, where he educated tens of thousands of individuals. He created the positions of demon soldiers, demon generals, and demon sages, each with their own set of benefits, causing hordes of people to flock over like ducks, allowing Fang Yuan to boss them around. This type of event enabled Fang Yuan to fully understand the manner of thinking in this idea. Thus any organization is just a representation, while the real basis is just one word resources. Without food resources, one will die of starvation. Without water resources, one will die of thirst. Without cultivation resources, one will become weak and sooner or later, be bullied to death and primeval stones are the most valuable resource for a Gu master. Fang Yuan's two orbs were as deep as an ancient pond, and as his thinking reached this point, the corners of his mouth twisted up slightly, forming the outline of a sneer. He had long since left the academy and was now standing at the school's gate entrance. He noticed the first group of pupils emerge and begin to approach him. It's Fang Yuan. What's he doing at the middle of the gate entrance? Hmph, every time I see his dead dysfunctional state. I feel so pissed off. Don't worry about him, he's probably waiting for someone. He received no attention from the young teenagers. Fang Yuan went across and blocked their path just as they were about to cross. I'm plundering. Everyone must surrender a piece of primeval stone before they can leave. Chapter 27, Complete Extortion The young teenagers were astonished and enraged. What? I didn't hear wrongly, did I? Fang Yuan, your head must have overheated and gone confused. 
You would actually stand at the gates of the academy and blackmail us. Have you gone mad? Who gave you the guts to put your ideas on us? Scram, you're just a petty C grade. How dare you block my way? If you don't scram, I will send you flying with my, erg. Fang Yuan reacted angrily. His right palm slashed forward furiously. His maneuver was rapid and precise, with his palm slice striking the left side of someone's neck. This unfortunate adolescent had no idea Fang Yuan was about to harm him. While he was still cursing Fang Yuan, he was struck by a powerful blow. His two eyes rolled up and he passed out on the spot. Fuck you actually dared to strike, exclaimed the throng, as the young teens fled subconsciously. Gu Yu Bei Ju fainted, what should we do? Some of them were horrified and terrified, screaming in horror. What else can we do? There are so many of us, and Fang Yuan is alone. We should all rush at him and beat him up. Other people said, their wrath boiling over. That's right, he sure doesn't know his place how he dares to provoke us by himself. He's definitely digging his own grave with his overambitiousness everyone get on him together. Fang Yuan had already struck before they could react. He rushed toward the huddle of teenagers, taking a few steps forward. He slashed his palm, and the edge of his hand cut into the neck of a young man. The young man rolled his eyes upward before collapsing. A-H-H, shouted another kid, striking his fist at Fang Yuan and whirling through the air. Fang Yuan dipped his body and evaded, then lifted his leg and kicked the boy in the groin. A-H-H-O-W-W-W-W-W-W. The youngster's yell was sonorous and outraged at first, but after taking the blow, his voice instantly soared higher and became piercing and harsh, filled with a type of agony and pain. Thump. He slumped to the ground his knees giving way as he covered his crotch with his two hands. He rolled around on the floor, screaming, the anguish so intense that his entire body was drenched in cold sweat. Fang Yuan thrashed his two hands around like a tiger in a herd of sheep. He had 500 years of combat expertise, and these kids were just a bunch of mushy green kids who had only recently begun cultivating. How could they possibly be his opponents? Fang Yuan knocked down the entire gathering of young kids in the flash of an eye. They would have been lying on the ground if they hadn't fainted, the pain draining them and their bodies suffering all over. Gu Yu Mo Bei entered and screamed, what's going on here? He noticed Fang Yuan standing at the entrance to the academy gates, surrounded by five to six classmates. This Fang Yuan, he wants to extort our primeval stones, one of them yelled loudly while gripping his stomach. Wow, still full of energy huh? Fang Yuan said flatly as he kicked forcefully at the boy who had just yelled. Ow. The child immediately yelled out in anguish, curled up like a shrimp. Fear appeared on his face, tears flowing down his cheeks as he dared not to speak again. The pupils who came over all sensed Fang Yuan's tremendous savagery and brutality when they observed this sight, their pulses beating. All right, everyone, be good and hand out a piece of primeval stone, and then I'll let you go, or else these people on the ground here will be your fate, Fang Yuan said coldly. In your mother's face, you petty little C grade would even dare to win me, a B grade. Gu Yu Mo Bei erupted in wrath, throwing his fists as he rushed toward Fang Yuan before they knew it. Fang Yuan veered laterally with a little shift of his ankle, allowing Mo Bei's fist to go past. Then he extended out his left hand, elevating the index and middle finger toward the center of Mo Bei's clavicle, jabbing at the area below the throat with precision. Mo Bei suddenly blacked out thumping to the ground and fainting on the spot. Hiss. When they observed what had just transpired, the young pupils who were about to surge forward came to a halt, each exhaling a mouthful of chilly air. Fang Yuan's attacks were suddenly too profound to comprehend in the eyes of these young people. They didn't pay attention to basic martial arts, but it was mentioned in passing throughout class. The human body had many weak points, and several of the locations that Fang Yuan had struck were among them. When these portions were struck, a person would readily faint on the spot, and a significant blow would cause a life-threatening crisis. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, attacked with caution. Those he had tackled were either knocked out or in excruciating pain, losing their capacity to fight in a short period of time. There were no critically injured individuals. This was the terror of five centuries of military experience. Are you going to give me your stones or not? Fang Yuan demanded of the other adolescents. They exchanged glances for a second before half of them clenched their teeth and the other half yelled violently, all surging towards Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan avoided and struck at the same time. His cultivation foundation was humble, but his kingdom remained, 
His heart was as cold as ice, and his motions were swift and accurate. Thump, thump, thump. After a few breaths, corpses collapsed back onto the ground. It's too vicious too terrible. They're not going to die, are they? There were a few young females who remained behind and did not hurry ahead. Their eyes were wide open, and after witnessing what had occurred thus far, their bodies trembled more and more. Fang Yuan swung his glance to them, and they paled as they waved their hands and retreated. No, don't come over. We'll surrender, we'll surrender the stones. Fang Yuan let go of a few bits of primal stones after receiving them. They staggered out of the academy gate as numerous pupils approached in quick succession. This was the only option to get out of the academy. With Fang Yuan barring this path, he would be able to keep all of the pupils at bay. Damn, what's going on? Said the next wave of pupils. Isn't that Gu Yu Mo Bei? Gu Yu Chi Cheng asked, his eyes wide and his mouth gaping as he peered at the comatose Mo Bei on the floor. The youngsters were enraged when Fang Yuan opened his mouth and spoke, and they attacked him before falling. Sir Elder, we're just going to keep watching all of this and not stop them? What if someone loses their life, how are we going to salvage the matter? The security guards were worried. Several of the guards were furious, saying, this Fang Yuan has too much guts. He would actually dare to extort his classmates at the academy school gates under our eyelids. This is acting with utter disregard of the law and discipline as long as Sir gives the command, we subordinates will take away this kid. Since the beginning, the violent incident of Fang Yuan blocking the entryway and shamelessly extorting his peers had drawn attention. However, mortal guards had no authority to punish the students, thus they could only report to the school elder first. When the academy elder heard the news, he did not immediately order a halt. Instead, he went up the pavilion and watched from a distance. Looks like this child has fighting talent, the academy elder said, his interest growing as he watched. Fang Yuan's usage of the Moonblade today had already caused the elder some concern. Right now, he was seeing Fang Yuan, who had an unstoppable fighting technique and a graceful manner, make an enemy out of the entire batch of kids. His heart's concerns were dispelled as a result. There were those in this world who were especially acute and sharp towards fights, these were secret gifts. They were skilled fighters who enjoyed conflicts. They were frequently inspired in battle, and their achievements were always astonishing, if not unbelievable. Ah, he's a natural battle goo master, too bad his talent is only C grade, in the end, he just lacks one step of a grade, said the academy elder. Sir, are you not going to stop this farce? I'm afraid the consequences of letting him go on with this nonsense won't be good, the guards alongside him said, concerned. Chapter 28, Capital Free Enterprise. Why stop it? Joked the academy elder, raising his brows. This young man has taken control of the entire situation, and his attacks are fully restrained. Look at the way he cuts at the neck, he only acts on the left or right side, but never cutting at the nape. This is because he knows that striking the neck sides can cause a person to faint on the spot, while attacking the area at the back of the head and neck can cause death, so he automatically abstains. Look at all those youths on the ground, which one of them is actually heavily injured. None even if they were badly hurt, so what? Are you saying that our academy's treatment goo masters won't be able to cure this sort of traumatic wound? But Sir Elder, that child is just too arrogant. He blocked the entrance. This is obviously not acknowledging our existence as guards being ignored isn't the main problem though, the important matter is how the clan will think of our academy. To actually allow a small petty C grade student make a fuss in the academy and not stop it. If word goes out, we're afraid this might affect your reputation, Sir Elder. The guard's eyes widened as he said this. Oof, is it because you were all ignored by the boy that your own dignity feels challenged? Ask the academy elder. He snarled and sent a razor-sharp stare at the guards. They all lowered their heads in disagreement. What's wrong with fighting? As long as no lives are lost, it will stir up the competitive side of the students and temper their will to fight. To stop this type of fight is to stifle the students' fighting passion. Was there no fighting in previous batches? Every batch had their own battles, and it happened very frequently. The only difference was that it usually happened in the latter half of the year when the students had already mastered some means of fighting. Maybe it was because the fights in the previous years were all single battles, there were rarely huge scale fighting like this one. But this Fang Yuan is really good at creating a disturbance said the chief of the guards. No, no, no. The academy elder shook his head, that was because you all did not dare to stop it. 
because after half a year, a Goo Master will have the ability to fight beyond a mortal's strength, and with your petty mortal bodies, how are you supposed to stop it? Right now, you all want to stop Fang Yuan, perhaps because he just started cultivating, so he doesn't have enough power. It's also because you feel. The elder's tone had changed abruptly. Your surnames are not Gu Yu, what is your worth? Because of your loyalty, you were all given the position of guards, rewarding you with some sweet benefits. But in reality, you are still slaves. Just slaves a slave dare give preposterous opinions of their masters, caring about the matters of their masters. The elderly man's face was as dark as water. This was not your subordinate's idea, not my meaning. I wouldn't dare I wouldn't dare. The guards were pale-faced and babbling non-stop as they kneeled down to the ground. The school elder snorted coldly and pointed at the chief guard, who had just termed Fang Yuan a guy skilled at causing havoc. You gave an outrageous comment on your master. You are relieved of your position. After a moment, the elder addressed the others, saying, After half a month, there will be a re-examination to determine the new chief. The other guards' eyes sparkled brightly, and their hearts pounded with excitement. The position of chief of the guard every month I'll be able to receive half a primeval stone more. To be able to become the chief is to become a man above men. Aside from the masters, I dare to see who else would show displeasure at me. If I became the chief, how cool that would be. All right, what are you all pestling here for? Get downstairs and wait for the battle to end, then sweep the field said the older man. Yes, yes, yes. Your subordinate takes his leave. As they fell down, the guards left in reverence and awe, one of the security guys on the stairs lost his footing and fell. There was an immediate series of sounds indicating a chain of people falling and banging down. However, because of the academy elders' strength and influence, the guards crimsoned their faces and endured in pain, not making a single sound. Mph, those minions are just like dogs. Every once in a while they'd get this itch to misbehave, you'd have to smack them so that they know fear and respect. Then just throw some small victories and bones to them, letting them fight amongst themselves like dogs, letting them compete amongst themselves to serve my clan with their life. To hold a stick in one hand and a carrot in another this is the unique way of the upper echelons. The academy elder listened to the quiet murmur. A new group of ten or so students had gathered at the entryway. Fang Yuan stood boldly, and three little girls huddled behind him on the opposite side. You, you you better not come over. If you come over we'll shoot you with the moon blade. A film of blue light was on their hands. They appeared to be compelled to the point where they would mobilize their primal essence and use the moonlight goo. Fang Yuan's body was still that of a normal 15-year-old boy, and attacking him with the moon blade would be futile. But he was not intimidated, instead, he sneered at them and took a step closer to the girls. You girls have pretty big guts huh, have you forgotten the rules of the school? Inside the academy fighting using goo is forbidden, or else the penalty will be expulsion. If you girls want to be expelled, then just do it. This. The little females paused. Indeed, there is such a rule. The blue glow in their palms dissipated. Fang Yuan's eyes blazed as he spotted this opening and sprinted forward, his hands waving in the air, easily dispatching two of them. Her morale plummeted when she realized she was the last one standing. She slumped to the ground, sobbing and pleading with Fang Yuan, don't you come over Fang Yuan, please let me go. Fang Yuan looked down at the young girl with a condescending expression on his face, his frigid voice echoing in her ears. A piece of primeval stone. The girl's body fluttered and she hastily opened her money pouch, realizing what she was doing. Don't hit me, I'll give them all to you, I'll give you all my stones, she said as she took three to four pieces of primal stones and held them in her palm. Fang Yuan's face was expressionless as he extended out with his right hand gently. He delicately pinched a chunk of ancient stone from the girl's hand with his fingertip and thumb. The little maiden couldn't help but tremble. Fang Yuan's hand had the pale and delicate form of a youth, yet in her eyes it was terrifying, like a savage claw of horror. I've said it before, I'll only take one piece of primeval stone, Fang Yuan remarked honestly, pausing for a while. The girl stood up after staring at Fang Yuan for a long time. Her limbs, however, remained feeble, and she was unable to stand fully. Her heart was already filled with worry for Fang Yuan, and she was so terrified that she couldn't take a single breath. The academy elder couldn't help but shake his head when he witnessed this. One of the reasons he chose to stay an observer was to see each of the students' fighting abilities. This girl who fainted on the ground had only a C-grade talent, but with her attitude, 
She could only become a logistical goo master, she would be able to contribute to the clan, but she was not expected to fight on the battlefield. As for this Fang Yuan, stroked the academy elder's chin, his eyes narrowing with a flare of light. He thought Fang Yuan was fascinating. Fang Yuan possessed not only combat ability, but also a sense of propriety. Extortion for a chunk of primal stone was not beyond the elder's capabilities. However, if Fang Yuan wanted to blackmail him for two pieces, he would have to intercede. Originally, the academy's stipend was three pieces. Having a portion removed would still be regarded harmless. But, if he extorted two stones, what is the sense of providing a subsidy? He should just hand everything to Fang Yuan. The final group of pupils arrived swiftly. There were only five of them, including Fang Yuan's twin younger brother. Big brother, how could you be like this? You are too bold to actually beat up your classmates at the gates and take away their primeval stones, Gu Yu Fang Zheng said, his eyes wide. I advise you to quickly go to the academy elder and take the initiative to admit your mistake, or else with you making such a huge matter, it's not a joke, you might actually get expelled. He couldn't believe what he was witnessing before him. Fang Yuan laughed and replied, you're right. Fang Zheng breathed a sigh of relief. It was encouraging to see that his older brother hadn't gone nuts and could still be convinced. But then he heard Fang Yuan remark, Every one of you, a piece of primeval stone. What? Fang Zheng exclaimed, his mouth wide open, even I need to pay up. Of course, my dearest little brother, you can choose not to, Fang Yuan said gently. But you'll end up like them, he added, pointing to the fallen on the ground. Some of them had passed out while others were groaning in agony. Even his own younger brother isn't spared. This Fang Yuan is crazy, he's too vicious. We cannot defeat him, a wise man does not fight when the odds are against him. We better hand it over and overcome the trouble. That's right, we'll just pass up the primeval stone first. It's just one piece anyway, when we go back and report to the teachers, he'll be getting it. With defiance in their eyes, the remaining students accepted Fang Yuan's blackmail after learning from their classmates' blunders. Hold up, Fang Yuan called out as they were about to walk away. Are you really going to break your word, Fang Yuan? The youths became concerned. Fang Yuan sighed softly as he regarded the teenagers on the ground. Do you guys really think that I would squat down and search through their bodies one by one? The youths stared blankly until being struck by realization one by one. Each of them flushed and hesitated as they approached the spot. Fang Yuan narrowed his eyes as he glanced at them. There was a flash of frigid light in his eyes, and the five young people quickly felt their hearts racing and their scalps growing numb. All right, Fang Yuan. We understand your meaning. We'll just help you this once. They could only bow their heads and dig through each of the young teens' money pouches on the ground, extracting a piece of primal stone from each bag under Fang Yuan's autocratic aura. They then gathered everything and handed it over to Fang Yuan. There were 57 people in the entire class. Fang Yuan had 56 pieces of primal stone after extorting one from each of them. He had 20 pieces in total, but he spent 10 of them on a couple jars of green bamboo wine. When the number of primal stones from his allowance and reward were added together, the total number of primeval stones he possessed in his hands was 79 pieces. This type of capital-free business that consists of extortion and plundering is truly the most profitable business, Fang Yuan said as he pocketed his money pouch, which had suddenly enlarged enormously into his bosom, and strutted out, leaving behind a floor full of youngsters, laying on the ground like corpses. And a few youngsters, including Fang Zhang, stared blankly after Fang Yuan's increasingly fading shadow. Get out there fast. All of you, faster arrange the little masters properly. The treatment goo master, where is he, ask him to come over fast. The guards yelled as they surged forward, collapsing over one other in their haste to introduce themselves. They happily devoted their everything for the insignificant job of chief guard. Chapter 29, Untrustworthy. Put all of the wine jars under the bed, Fang Yuan commanded four innkeepers. Jars of green bamboo wine were in each man's hands. After successfully extorting his peers, Fang Yuan went to the inn and purchased 20 jars all at once. Fang Yuan pumped in 40 primeval stones for the purpose of the liquor worm, and each jar cost two pieces of primeval stones. The money sack that had just bulged collapsed by half in an instant, leaving 39 fragments of ancient stones left. However, it was worth the money because these wines would last the liquor worm a long time. All right, the workers said quickly, 
They would never dare to show disrespect to a Gu master. Add to it the fact that Fang Yuan had purchased so much wine, and he could be considered the inn's main customer. The workers were able to readily put down their current tasks and workload with just a casual remark before the innkeeper. After the innkeepers had gone, Fang Yuan shut the dormitory door and sat cross-legged on his bed. It was already dark outside. The stars and moon shone brightly in the sky, and the night breeze flowed with a tinge of fragrant smell. The room was completely dark. Fang Yuan relaxed his mind, allowing his focus to drift into the primordial sea. The waves of the primordial sea rose and fell, emitting a green copper-colored glow. Every drop of salt water contained the green copper primeval essence that only a rank 1 Gu master possessed. Fang Yuan's sea grade talent was limited since the primeval sea filled up 44% of the entire aperture. The aperture's four walls were a thin coating of white light that supported and encased the aperture. There was nothing in the sky above the primordial water. Under Fang Yuan's guidance, the spring autumn cicada had already buried itself away, recovering itself in a deep sleep. A adorable and chubby white liquor worm floated on the primordial water. It frisked around on the seawater, sometimes diving into it, sometimes tossing its head and tail, spraying and splattering water droplets around. Fang Yuan transmitted a thought across his mind, and the liquor worm answered instantaneously. It stopped playing and coiled up into the shape of a rice dumpling, drifting into the air gently. It arose from the green copper sea and rose to the center of the hole. Go! Fang Yuan summoned a tenth of his ancient energy, converting it into a tiny stream and sending it all into the liquor worm. He had already perfected the liquor worm, so it did not resist this time. It inhaled the full jet of primordial essence and assimilated it all into its body. A little cut immediately dropped the sea surface. The curled liquor worm transformed the primordial essence into a driving force and began to emit white light. An enshrouding mist of wine vapors was gradually formed inside the mild light, eventually converging into a pale white wine mist. The wine mist was fantastic. It did not separate, instead enclosing the liquor worm. Rise, Fang Yuan thought transferring another 10% of his primeval essence. The green copper salt water sank into the wine mist, as the wine mist dissolved into the seawater, it steadily diminished until there was no trace of it left. That 10% of green copper primitive essence likewise lost its overall volume, leaving it with 5%. This 5% of ancient essence, however, was far more compacted than previously. The original primordial essence was jade green with a copper sheen. Although this new primordial essence had the same copper shine as the old one, the green was a darker shade of pale green. A pale green primeval essence was the primordial essence that only a rank 1 middle stage goo master possessed. The purpose of the liquor worm was to condense the primal essence and augment it by a modest realm level. A goo master possessed nine great kingdoms, ranging from rank 1 to rank 9. Every great realm was divided into four smaller realms, the initial stage, the middle stage, the upper stage, and the peak stage. Fang Yuan was merely a rank 1 beginning stage Gu master at the time, but with the help of the liquor worm, he had 5% of the primordial essence of a rank 1 middle stage Gu master. If I want to condense out 5% of middle stage primeval essence I would need to use 20% of initial stage primeval essence. I want to convert all the 44% of my primeval sea into middle stage primeval essence, so I'd need to use around 180% of initial stage primeval essence. To reach this target as soon as possible, I'd need to borrow the help of primeval stones. Fang Yuan opened his eyes and removed a whole primal stone the size of a duck egg from his backpack while he pondered this. The primordial stone was ellipsoidal in shape and transparent gray in color. Its size would continue to shrink as the natural essence inside it was eaten. His right hand closed slowly, the primordial stone gripped in his palm. He absorbed the stone's innate primitive essence, constantly renewing his own aperture. The sea surface level that had sunk into his aperture gradually began to rise. The primordial stone was intended to be used. Fang Yuan was not stingy in the least and would not preserve it. I do not have someone to back me up, and I do not have support from friends and family, thus I can only rely on extortion and plundering. Today was just the first time, but after this, Every seven days when the academy gives out the school allowance, I will continue blocking the academy gates. Fang Yuan's appetite could never be satisfied by thieving and blackmailing. The most valuable item in a Gu master's cultivation was the primal stone. Fang Yuan was unconcerned about the consequences of his plundering deeds. This world was not like Earth. 
On Earth, schools would always forbid fights in order to maintain harmony. However, warfare was the predominant focus in this universe. They would struggle for survival, whether they were goo masters or mere mortals. It was sometimes a combat with a terrifying wild beast. Sometimes it would be a battle against the elements, and other times it may be a battle for resources with other goo masters. As a result, individuals encouraged and campaigned for mild fighting. This was the portrayal of most of the human lives here, from young to old, from minor brawls to fights deciding life and death. This world's surface was limitless. The southern border alone, where Fang Yuan was now staying, was more than seven to eight times the total surface of the earth. Because the living environment here was difficult and severe, humans would frequently build mountain communities in the shape of clans, huddling together. Every now and then, a community would be attacked by waves of monsters or by unusually harsh weather. The Goo Master would become the mainstay of a village's defense, and the attrition rate would worsen with each passing year. Men with a strong fighting spirit are required to survive. There can never be too many combat Goo Masters in a clan. Furthermore, Fang Yuan's attacks were inside the proper range. He never assaulted the lower jaw because it may easily fracture the skull and result in the death of a human being. He also never struck his opponent in the back of the head. He fought using his palm rather than his fists, elbows, or even jabbing with his fingers. He could also count the number of kicks he used. The students that fell were not seriously hurt, at worst, they were bruised. Fang Yuan was not a bloodthirsty man, he simply saw killing as a means to an end. Every time he behaved, he had a specific purpose in mind. Whatever approach he used, whichever allowed him to attain his goal the quickest, he would employ. In other terms, he was dishonest in his actions. The moonlight was obscured by clouds that hovered overhead. Guyu Hamlet was shrouded in shadow. The watchman hammered on his clappers, alerting people to the fact that it was already late at night. Be wary of fires, beast attacks, and the danger of foreign Gu masters infiltrating the hamlet. There were still many lights on in the village. Gu Yu Chi Lian remained in his study at the Qi family branch home, the lights shining brightly. I heard you were beaten up by that Fang Yuan today, said this high authority old guy in a gentle tone, showing sorrow to his own grandson Gu Yu Chi Chang. Gu Yu Chi Chang, who had a black right eye, angrily said, Yes, Grandpa. That Fang Yuan was just a petty C grade, yet he dared to act so arrogant. He blocked us all at the entrance, not caring about the friendly sentiments of his classmates, and he robbed us of our primeval stones. What's more, the academy only opened one eye and closed one eye over the incident. It was only when Fang Yuan, Gu Yu Qi Lian, on the other hand, shook his head. This is between you and your juniors. You were blackmailed to lose a piece of primeval stone and you did not suffer heavy injuries grandpa cannot act without any justifiable excuse. Even if you were heavily wounded, I will not stand up for you, do you understand why? Gu Yu Chi Cheng was taken aback. He tried to concentrate and finally responded, Grandpa, I think I understand your meaning, you're hoping I'll rely on my own strengths to find my way, right? You only understood one aspect. Gu Yu Chi Lian nodded and added, you must remember, you are not just an individual representative, but you are the image on behalf of our Qi family branch. For many years, we have confronted the Mo family branch, and your every move will represent the hope of the Qi family branch's future. Grandpa may help you in the shadows, but you must stand up and erect a self-reliant and strong image. Gu Yu Qi Lian sighed as he said this. This is also why Grandpa helped you to cheat and let you impersonate a B-grade talent. Our Qi family needs a strong successor to hold on to those who are supporting us. Gu Yu Qi Cheng became awakened as a result. Grandpa, I understand now. Gu Yu Qi Lian shrugged. Just understanding won't do any good. You must work hard. Fang Yuan is just small trouble. Next up you must study hard and train diligently on your basic martial arts and get your dignity back. At the same time do not forget to work hard on cultivating, promoting to middle stage as soon as possible. The best you can do is to win the position of class monitor, this will be great honor and a kind of help to our Qi family. Okay, Grandpa, Gu Yu Qi Cheng said loudly. Ha ha ha, this spirit is how the heir to our Qi branch should be like. Grandson, you must work hard, I will do my best to help you. Fang Yuan, are you robbing me again? Almost at the same time, in another location. Honorary father and mother, that was pretty much how things went. Fang Zhang stood straight his tone courteous and careful.
Fang Yuan's uncle Gu Yu Dong Tu and his aunt sat on their wide-back big chairs in the hall, gloomy. Aunt clenched her teeth. Fang Yuan that bastard son, him extorting others is one thing, but to think he would not even spare his own younger brother, how heartless and unfeeling. However, with such a huge crime, I expect he will be expelled from the academy soon after this, she said, while feeling injustice for Fang Zheng and gloating over the situation. That's enough, you should talk less. Uncle sighed deeply and told Fang Zheng, you only lost a piece of primeval stone, don't worry. Go to the treasury and pick up a stone, there is no business for you here now. You must go and work hard in cultivating. With your agreed talent, becoming the first middle stage Gu Master is a huge possibility. Do not waste the talent that heaven blessed you with, for, yes, father and mother, your son has left. Fang Zheng left with trepidation in his heart. He inwardly pondered, Big Brother robbed all the students when he blocked the academy gates today. He created such a terrible aftermath, I'm afraid he might really be expelled. If that happens, should I plead on his case for him? In his mind, he heard two voices. A voice replied, No need to plead for him, he even robbed your primeval stone away although you were his own young brother. Even if he was expelled, that was his own fault. If heaven commits a sin, it can be forgiven, but if one commits a sin himself, he deserves to die. Another voice replied, but he is your very own older brother, he shares a similar face, his blood thicker than water. All right, even if you do not acknowledge him, you still must plead his case. If you do not do so, how will the outsiders look at you? I'm afraid they might think of you as a heartless and ungrateful person. When she saw Fang Zhang leave the hall, she could but laugh out loud, husband, we cut off Fang Yuan's living expenses. This little bastard finally couldn't stand it and went off committing a huge error to actually dare to block the academy gates and fight in public, not to mention extortion, this is the equivalent of provoking the academy elder. I dare say the time for him getting expelled is very near. Uncle, on the other hand, shook his head. You think too simply of things. Fang Yuan will not be expelled, in fact there may not be any punishment. Why? Aunt wondered. Uncle laughed. Brawls and fights are encouraged as long as there are no heavy consequences. Did any students die in this fight? No. Aunt refused to cooperate. Husband, how would you know there weren't any casualties? There are always accidents happening from fighting. Uncle closed his eyes and leaned back in his chair. Woman, you are really naive. Do you really think the Academy Elder is just for show? When did the guards start acting? They came out at the last moment. This means that the entire scene was under control. If someone was heavily injured, they would have rushed over a long time ago, not at the last moments. You are not a goo master, so you won't understand. The academy does not forbid brawls among the students, but in fact they maintain an encouraging attitude towards it. The more brawls there are, the more helpful it would be for battles. Some students can even create strong bonds through fighting. The elders will not pursue this. It is already a routine. If anyone wants to take action on behalf of their offspring, it would break the rules. Then nothing's going to happen to Fang Yuan who robbed away such a huge amount of primeval stones? He's just going to be let go like that? With such a large number of primeval stones, it will bring a lot of help to his cultivation, Aunt said, puzzled. Uncle blinked open his eyes, his face clouded. What else can we do? Are you expecting me to go over by myself and snatch away all his primeval stones? However this matter is not something that we cannot exploit. For Fang Yuan to rob and extort even his own brother Fang Zheng, this is the key to his fall. Fang Zheng is an agreed talent, he will definitely be stronger than Fang Yuan one day. We will use this matter to divide and sow discord in Fang Zheng. We'll lead Fang Zheng away from Fang Yuan for our own use. And then three days passed. The uproar produced by Fang Yuan's robbery and extortion did not spread or expand in size, but instead went away gradually. There were no elders who broke the regulations and came to cause trouble for Fang Yuan, so the academy elder automatically closed one eye and opened one, pretending as if nothing had happened. Although, at the time, there were two or three young people who refused to accept the fact of their primal stones being taken and confronted Fang Yuan. However, as Fang Yuan effortlessly knocked them down, everyone realized that if they did not practice hard in martial arts, they would never be able to defeat Fang Yuan. A surge of enthusiasm for martial arts instruction developed among these teenagers. The martial arts instructor was pleased, he had never seen a group of pupils who were so excited about martial arts. 
Previously, when he was teaching, the kids were all bored and yawned all day, but just now, they'd be continuously seeking counsel, their eyes overflowing with vigor. The academy elder came over just to inquire about his condition. The students have been showing unexpected enthusiasm, and this change is too great, the martial arts instructor said, except for one student named Fang Yuan, who remains as lazy as ever. The academy elder laughed and clapped him on the back. He went on to say, this student that you speak of is the cause of the other student's transformation. The instructor of martial arts was perplexed. Of course, the alterations were more extensive. Fang Yuan had surely become the public enemy of the entire student batch as a result of the incident. Everyone was hostile to him, and he was alone. No one spoke to him anymore, and no one greeted him. The youths used full force, secretly practicing their fundamental methods. They had determined, with the assistance and inspiration of their parents and elders, that they would recover their honor by their own hands. The undercurrent was raging beneath the calm surface. Four more days passed. The academy elder distributed the primordial stone allowance once more, and the moment had come for Fang Yuan to act once more. Fang Yuan, you want to rob our primeval stones again? The students exclaimed, surprised and enraged as Fang Yuan barred them at the gates once more. Fang Yuan stood in the middle of the entryway, hands behind his back, face chilly and tone flat. A piece of primeval stone per person and you'll be spared of physical pain. Fang Yuan, your bullying is excessive. I want to challenge you, Gu Yu Mo Bei yelled fiercely as he stepped forward first. Oh, Fang Yuan asked, raising his brow slightly. Mo Bei came forward, fists rising. He collapsed onto the ground after a few rounds. Mo Bei, you're too useless to watch me, screamed Gu Yu Qi Cheng as he ran towards Fang Yuan. He followed in the footsteps of Mo Bei following a change of offense and defense. Fang Yuan's battle experience was 10,000 times greater than theirs, despite the fact that he had only recently begun cultivating, every force inflicted was used correctly. Meanwhile, this group of students had just begun their track. They might be able to cause him some trouble if they attacked him together. But, with them approaching him one by one, it was more soothing than the previous extortion attempt. Fang Yuan walked out with a bulging money bag after 15 minutes, leaving a floor full of youths behind. Some were still, while others screamed and howled while grabbing their belly or clutching their crotch. Brothers, it's time to come up and sweep the field quickly, the guards yelled, as everyone raced over. Fang Yuan, you're in a lot of trouble. I trained hard in basic martial arts for seven days straight, but to think I only managed to withstand two strikes from Fang Yuan and then passed out, Gu Yu Mo Bei said, full of agony and regret. He confronted the wooden puppet in the family garden, unleashing punches and kicks that left deafening echoes. He was startled to hear a chuckling voice. Little brother, do you have deep hatred for the puppet? Why the great resentment? Gu Yu Mo Bei relaxed and stopped his attacks when he heard this familiar voice. He cocked his head. Sister, you're back. Aha, uh -huh, the family council dispatched me on an investigation mission that lasted more than 10 days. Gu Yu Mo Yin said, laughing. She was a rank 2 middle stage Gu master and Mo Bei's blood related sister. Her expression soon became solemn, her eyes fixed on Mo Bei. Brother, what's the matter with those bruises on your face? Who bullied you? Ah, it's nothing. I accidentally tripped and fell, Mo Bei explained, a panicked expression on his face. He didn't want his sister to know about the embarrassing episode. Gu Yu Mo Chen's adored grandson, the Mo family's prospective successor and family head, was knocked down twice in combat. But he wasn't the only one who had a bad luck streak. The others had also suffered. Oh, you have to be more careful in that case. As for your combat training, this won't do. You do not have a gut that enhances your defense right now, so use thick towels to cover yourself. This will protect your limbs from getting hurt. Gu Yu Mo Yan gave an ultimatum before leaving. Hello, young miss. Good morning, young miss. Young miss is back your servant greets you. Miss. Gu Yu Mo Yan hurriedly marched with a chilly demeanor, and every servant she encountered bowed and paid obeisance to her. She entered the study room. Mo Yan pushed the door open and entered without warning. Gu Yu Mo Chen was practicing calligraphy with his back to her inside the room. Gu Yu Mo Chen asked simply, without turning his body, You're back. After investigating for half a month, what is the situation with the wolves' den? How did you know it's me, grandfather? Mo Yan asked. Surprised. Humph, in the entire family, 
you're the only one who dares to enter my room without even knocking once, who else could it be besides you, my beloved granddaughter? Gu Yu Mo Chen chastised, his expression filled with concern and compassion, and he smiled at Mo Yan. Mo Yan frowned. When it comes to doting, you actually adore little brother more. However since he's the future family head, you are more strict on him so others cannot sense your concern for him. After a few minutes, she inquired, Grandfather, little brother was beaten up I asked him and he lied about the situation, so I had no choice but to ask you. Gu Yu Mo Chen's expression became solemn. You haven't answered my question, he said as he sat down with his brush. Mo Yan had no choice but to say, the wolf's den is almost full, so according to the current rate of breeding speed, although there won't be an outbreak this year, there will definitely be a wolf tide next year at our mountain village. Gu Yu Mo Chen was still inquisitive, generally there's an outbreak every three years, so this is no surprise. However, within that horde, how many Thunder Crown Wolves are there? Around three. Gu Yu Mo Chen nodded confidently. The Thunder Crown Wolves were the pack's leader and the most difficult to deal with during an epidemic. Because Qing Mao Mountain had three clan villages, three wasn't a significant number. Each settlement could handle one wolf, reducing the outbreak's pressure significantly. Grandfather, you haven't told me about my little brother's situation yet, Mo Yan persisted. I suppose there's no matter telling you but he was beaten up. The first time was seven days ago, and the second time happened today. It happened in front of the school gates, and he was beaten until he sprawled on the ground and fainted on both occasions. Laughed out loud. Who has the guts to knock out my little brother? Mo Yan asked, his eyes wild. He's Mo Bei's classmate named Fang Yuan, and he fights really well. Gu Yu Mo Chen sniggered. Gu Yu Mo Yan's eyes widened, and she said, Grandfather, what are you saying? He is your own blood-related grandson. Mo Yan my dear, you are a girl, so you may not understand. Defeat and humiliation only serve as fuel for progress. Without failure, one will never develop and grow into a true, mature man. Gu Yu Mo Chen glanced carefully at his granddaughter and spoke profoundly, defeat and humiliation only serve as fuel for improvement. Mo Bei was defeated, and that is his own failure. Once he wakes up, he will ask the teachers for fighting techniques. This is a sort of improvement, and this improvement comes from Fang Yuan, who beat him into realization. As his sister, if you truly care and want to protect your brother, you should not interfere with his growth. Fang Yuan is just a boy with C-grade talent, while Mo Bei has B-grade talent. Leave this opponent to Mo Bei. In a woman's life, she needs a family and a lover. But for a man, a family is not a necessity. Yet what he cannot lack is a rival. Do not find trouble with Fang Yuan, do you hear me? This is a matter between the youths. If you get involved, this will be perceived as bullying. Breaking the rules like that will cause our Mo family to be looked down upon. Mo Yan exclaimed incoherently, but eventually lowered her head in front of Gu Yu Mo Chen's stare. Yes grandfather, your granddaughter understands. Gu Yu Mo Chen did not notice her eyes shining ominously as she staggered out of the study room. Grandfather, this is your method of loving your grandson, and I, Mo Yan, have my own. Mo Yan's heart already had other intentions. Several tables were occupied in the inn's dining room, and people were having dinner, so the atmosphere was lively. One or two waiters moved quickly between tables, serving dishes. Fang Yuan took a seat near the windows. He placed his order and ate while looking out the window. Looking out the window, the sunset appeared to be on fire, slowly burning away. Half of the sun had already set, and it peered longingly at the fields, its afterglow representing the sun's hesitation. The oozing nightfall has already hidden it far up the slopes. The adjacent streets were packed with people on their way home. Some were barefooted farmers, some herb pickers, some hunters with mountain pheasants, wild boars, and other animals, and some were goo masters. They were dressed in a blue uniform, looking clean and spirit-ed, with a headband and a waist belt to complete their outfit. The belt served a purpose, for rank 1 Goo Masters, it was a blue belt. A bronze plate with the number 1 could be seen at the front. Rank 2 Goo Masters wore crimson belts with a steel plate in the center that read 2. Sitting at the window's edge, Fang Yuan noticed 6 to 7 rank 1 Goo Masters, most of them were young males. A rank 2 Goo Master, a middle-aged male, was also present. The family elders were the rank 3 Goo Masters. The clan chief, or lord of a community, comes in fourth place. 
Rank 5 Goo Masters were uncommon, and only the first generation clan head and the fourth generation clan head had attained this rank in the Guyu clan's history. Actually, finding out a clan's strength is very simple. Find a spot in the village, settle down, and observe the people for a few hours, see how many rank 1 and rank 2 Gu masters there are, and you'll be able to see the clan's strength and wealth, Fang Yuan concluded with his 500-year accumulation of knowledge. In the Guyu village, for example, there were about 20 individuals wandering the streets, six of whom were Gu masters. There was a 50% probability of finding one rank 2 Gu master among these six. The Guyu clan was able to monopolize one of the richest resource regions in Qingmao Mountain thanks to their strength and cash. However, the mountain was only a small part of the broader southern border area. The Guyu clan was only considered a middle-o-grade clan. I've only begun my cultivation, Fang Yuan groaned as he ate his meal, and with rank 1 starting stage, I don't even have the qualification to walk the southern border, I need at least rank 3 cultivation to be allowed to further roam the world. Ching Mao Mountain was too little for his ambitions, and he was resolved to flee. Haha, Gu Yu Fang Yuan, I have finally found you as he approached, a middle-aged man laughed deviously. Hmm. Fang Yuan turned slightly to see a man with yellowish skin and drooping brows, yet he had a massive figure and developed muscles. He went several steps to Fang Yuan, arms folded, and with a tinge of hatred, he looked at the kid who was still eating his food. Fang Yuan, You've gotten yourself into huge trouble, do you know that? Ha ha ha, you have dared to hit our young master of the M.O. family, and now our young miss is here to settle the score with you. The middle-aged man continued to sneer. He kept staring and sizing up Fang Yuan, creating a mildly dangerous aura. Chapter 32, Having a Good Time If a regular person were to be glared at by this middle-aged man, they would most likely be terrified. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, lost interest after a brief glance at him and returned his attention to his food, disregarding this man as if he were invisible. Who is that guy? He's dressed like a family servant, and he's not a goo master. Why would he dare to question young master Fang Yuan? One employee wondered as he crouched in the inn's corner, fearing that things were about to go ugly. Humph, he's like a fox assuming a tiger's ferocity by using the M.O. family as his backing, this servant man dares to clamor at a goo master. If it were any other mortal man, they wouldn't have the guts to do this, a person other than the staff member answered with scorn. Even so, as a mere mortal he has the guts to cause a ruckus towards a goo master. Tisk tisk, this kind of experience must feel really great. TCH, you shouldn't think that a goo master is always high and mighty. Young master Fang Yuan is merely a rank 1 initial stage goo master, and he has just managed to refine his vital goo. If they were to fight now, he may not be the opponent of this muscular and strong mortal. Sigh, let's just hope that when they fight later, they will spare our inn and the furniture. The staff talked back and forth, but no one dared to take a step forward, instead staring from afar. Eh, you still want to eat? The powerful middle-aged man asked, his eyes clouded by the fact that he had failed to frighten or scare Fang Yuan. Do you think I'm lying to you? There are already people reporting to young miss and she will be here shortly. Do not attempt to run away young lad, because you won't be able to get away. My job here is to make sure you stay put. There will be much suffering for you later. Fang Yuan ignored the man and continued to finish his lunch. The middle-aged servant frowned, not seeing any signs of fright or astonishment from Fang Yuan. This made him feel disregarded, and it greatly harmed his pride. He had been a servant in the M.O. household for almost a decade and had earned his master's trust. Over time, he would inevitably come to understand about the specifics of Goo Masters. Rank 1 Goo Masters relied heavily on their physical combat abilities. In warfare, the value of a Goo Worm was linked to its deterrence factor rather than its fighting ability. He was well aware that, for a young Goo Master like Fang Yuan who had just recently begun cultivating, his physical strength was significantly inferior to that of a grown man. If it came down to close combat, he would have the upper hand because of his extensive training. At the same time, Fang Yuan was said to have merely perfected the Moonlight Goo, so at best, he could only fire a few moon blades. The middle-aged man had been a sparring partner for a long time, so he was well aware that if a rank 1 initial stage Goo Master used his primeval essence to unleash the moon blade, it could only cut several palm-sized wounds and cause limited damage if it managed to strike the human body. Furthermore, the man had the MO family's support, so when he approached Fang Yuan, he had no fear. 
and was fully committed to proving his worth to his masters in order to be rewarded and judged more helpful to the family. Young lad, you sure are courageous, huh? The middle-aged man said, folding up his sleeves to display his weltened and strong forearms. His two arms were big and scarred. The forearms were thicker than Fang Yuan's legs, with big projecting veins. The innkeepers were terrified, and some customers were already getting up, paying their bills, and departing this war-torn region. Fang Yuan has been found, said a triumphant, loud female voice through the door. Mo Yin took large steps forward and entered the inn. There were other family servants behind her. Her physical shape was good, she was somewhat tall and had the right curves. However, a long face like a horse's, an inherited trait from the Mo ancestry, severely harmed her appearances, and she was just a mid-looper ank beauty. She did, however, wear a dark blue uniform and a crimson belt with a square steel plate fastened around her waist. A two was carved on the steel plate. Furthermore, she had just returned from a clan mission, so there were still indications of the hardship she had just gone through. These factors combined to form a pressure and threat field that was emitted to her surroundings. As a result, when she entered the inn, the entire establishment fell hushed beneath her aura. Your servant greets you, young miss when he saw Mo Yan, the middle-aged man's attitude completely altered. He tried to grin attractively as he moved a few feet and knelt on the floor to meet Mo Yan. The personnel of the inn could only gaze in awe with their jaws wide open when they noticed this change in conduct. The tall and muscular body, in contrast to his meek groveling demeanor, was an obvious mismatch. However, the innkeepers did not laugh because his behavior simply served to highlight Mo Yan's formidable power and prestige. Some of the innkeepers were worried about Fang Yuan because he was their main customer. It would be a big loss if something happened to him and he was no longer able to patronize the inn. More of them were praying in private for Fang Yuan's surrender. It would be worse if a brawl broke out and destroyed the inn's property. Mo Yan didn't even glance at the groveling Gao Wan. Her gaze was locked on Fang Yuan. So you are Fang Yuan? You seem to be having a good meal. He he he, have you ever had a knuckle sandwich? I'll give you a taste of it, it might be even more delicious. Despite her words, Mo Yan did not make a move. Fang Yuan's actions were unusually quiet. It was peculiar. Was he being protected by any covert backers? But it shouldn't be so, I've checked before coming. This Fang Yuan only has an uncle and aunt that dislike him, while both his parents are deceased, and he even got chased out of the house by his uncle and aunt. In addition, he only has C-ranked talent, so how could such a weak young man have any sort of background? Mo Yan was mulling this over in her mind. Regardless, the circumstance was far too unusual. She needed to test and investigate further. Who told you I was Gu Yu Fang Yuan? Fang Yuan laughed and squinted at Mo Yan. Mo Yan was surprised for a time before turning to face Gao Wan. He had just stood up, but when he saw this, he dropped down again, sweat pouring from his brow. Master, your servant, your servant. He mumbled, unable to respond coherently. They possessed a drawing of Fang Yuan, but they had no idea that Fang Yuan and Fang Zheng were identical twins. No wonder this young man appeared fearless, he is actually Fang Zheng, not Fang Yuan, Mo Yan's attendants speculated. Fang Yuan cannot be compared to Fang Zheng. The former is merely a C-ranked loner with no background, whereas the latter has a ranked talent and was drawn into the clan head's faction at the awakening ceremony, and as long as he grows smoothly, he has a bright future ahead. Mo Yan was even more hesitant because she did not receive a proper response from Gao Wan. The only people who knew Fang Yuan's identity at this point were the innkeepers. They couldn't afford to anger either party, so they kept their tongues shut. Fang Yuan was full after his supper. You want to find Fang Yuan? Come with me, I'll take you to the school hostel to look for him. He stood up and spoke lightly to Mo Yan. If the person in front of me is Fang Zheng, I would not want to offend him. However, even if he is really Fang Yuan, I will follow him closely on this trip so I have no fear of him impersonating Fang Zheng. Within a few seconds, Mo Yan had made up her mind. All right, I'll accompany you to the school hostel after you. Mo Yan said, turning her body to make room for Fang Yuan, reaching out her arm and signaling for Fang Yuan to take the lead. Fang Yuan moved forward, laughing lazily. Mo Yan trailed closely behind, her servants close behind. So close. They're finally gone. Even if they start fighting, it is none of our inn's business anymore. The employees who were left behind sighed and touched their chests in relief. 
A crowd gathered in front of the school hostel. Halt. Stop right there. The school hostel only allows our clan's Gu masters to enter and leave. The two guards at the door stopped Fang Yuan, Mo Yan, and their gang. Insolent, do you not recognize who I am? How dare you stop me? Yelled Mo Yan. We dare not, the two guards said quickly. Young Miss Mo Yan, this guard holds you in high regards. However the clan rules are absolute, so how about this? You can bring one servant in. This is the most we can do for you. A grey-haired guard courteously said. Mo Yan made a clicking motion with her tongue. Her heart was full with dissatisfaction, but she did not dare to disobey the clan norms in their presence. Because the Mo family was wealthy, they had many adversaries. Remember that, in addition to the Mo family, there was also the Qi family to contend with. Aside from the Qi family, the clan heads group was also interested in the Mo family. All of you stay behind, and Gao Wan will follow me, Mo Yan said after some thought. Gao Wan quickly raised his chest, a joyful expression on his face, and said, Thank you, young miss, for the opportunity. Let's go, junior, Mo Yan said with a puzzled expression. As he led them in, Fang Yuan remained unaffected. He got to the dormitory door, unlocked it, and pushed it open. He then took a step into the room and came to a halt. There was nothing extra in the room. There was no one else, and the furnishings was plain. Mo Yan stood at the door, looked inside, and her face became solemn. Junior, you better explain yourself well, there is no one in the room. Aren't I someone? said Fang Yuan faintly. Mo Yan looked at Fang Yuan, a gleam in her eyes as she suddenly seemed to understand. I am looking for Gu Yu Fang Yuan. You know, I never said I wasn't Gu Yu Fang Yuan, Fang Yuan smirked. Go ahead and scold away, Chapter 33. Hmm. Mo Yan frowned, then her fury erupted almost instantaneously as she realized she had been duped by Fang Yuan. You are extremely brave to even consider lying to me, she said, reaching out her right hand to grip Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan remained steadfast. Mo Yan, you better think this through, he said, raising his head and laughing. Mo Yan came to a halt in her actions. Her outstretched hand paused in midair as she stood immediately outside the door, and her face expressed reluctance and disdain. There were appropriate rules within the family. Students in the dormitories were safe, and no one would be allowed to break into the hostel and kidnap the students. Mo Yan merely wanted to teach Fang Yuan a lesson and expose him to pain. She didn't want to risk being punished for disobeying the rules. If it was just me who broke the rules, that would be fine, however, if this would affect the family and even grandfather's honor. Mo Yan withdrew her arm regretfully. With bloodshot eyes, she gazed at Fang Yuan, who was inside the home. If her death stare could be translated into fire, it would instantly burn Fang Yuan to ashes. I never lied to you. I said I'd bring you to Fang Yuan, and now you've found him here, so it appears you have something to say to me. Fang Yuan smiled faintly with his arms behind his back, ignoring the pressure of a rank 2 Gu master and making fearless eye contact with Mo Yan's furious gaze. He was only a few steps away from Mo Yan. One stood inside the house, while the other stood outside. However, this same distance had also become as great as the gap between east and west. He he he, oh Fang Yuan, you sure have studied the clan rules well and thoroughly, Mo Yan remarked with a malicious smile, controlling her rage. Furthermore, she said, unfortunately for you, even while relying on the rules, all it will do for you is to stall for time. There is no way you are staying in the dormitories forever. I'll see how long you can stand hiding in there. Fang Yuan laughed delightfully and scowled at Mo Yan. Then all the more I want to see how long you can disturb me. Ah, it is already late. I have a bed to sleep in, but what about you? If I do not show up for class tomorrow and the elders come to investigate, what do you think I will say? You, Mo Yan screamed, her fingers pointing at Fang Yuan, barely holding back her wrath, do you really think I wouldn't dare to come in and take you down? Squeak. Fang Yuan pushed open the hostel doors, his lips curled into a grin, his eyes dark as the abyss, and his tone confident, as if the situation was within his hands. He challenged Mo Yan, saying, then show me. He he he. Mo Yan calmed down when he saw this. Do you think I'd fall for your goading? She squinted as she stared at Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan shook his head. He had already seen right through Mo Yan's character. Mo Yan had a 50% chance of breaking into the house if he had closed, or even half-closed, the door. 
but when he purposefully opened it all the way, it made her more suspicious and quiet. As a result, she had little prospect of forcing her way in. 500 years of experience had already made him completely aware of human nature and its flaws. He turned around, fully exposing his back to Mo Yan. Mo Yan would undoubtedly be able to seize him in one rapid action if she struck now. Mo Yan, on the other hand, remained motionless outside the door, as if an unseen mountain stood in her way. Even when Fang Yuan sat in his bed, Mo Yan only gritted her teeth and gazed at him in rage. But, despite this, she did not make a move. This is the pathetic side of humans, Fang Yuan said as he sat up and stared at Mo Yan, who was standing outside looking like a fool, thinking to himself, at times, the things preventing people from taking action are not physical difficulties, but rather the restrictions they have subconsciously placed on themselves. When it came to cultivation levels, Fang Yuan was clearly not her equal at this time. Despite her rank 2 cultivation level, she could only stare at Fang Yuan and lacked the guts to move. Her distance from him was only a few steps, and the door was completely open. The only thing that was genuinely limiting her was herself. Humanity sought knowledge relentlessly in order to understand the world and comprehend the rules, and ultimately to use them. If one is constantly bound by the rules, thus being restricted by the very knowledge they sought, that is the ultimate tragedy. Fang Yuan gave Mo Yin one last look before closing his eyes and letting his consciousness sink into the primeval sea. This Fang Yuan dares to cultivate right in front of me he is simply doing so as he pleases Mo Yan felt a sense of frustration erupt from her chest, making her want to vomit blood. She desperately wanted to strike him in the face, but she was well aware that she couldn't. Mo Yan was overcome with remorse. She felt embarrassed standing at the door because she couldn't back down. She was furious at the prospect of giving up now, but she would be humiliated. She summoned her slaves with the goal of teaching Fang Yuan a lesson but in the end she was the one who became the laughing stock. Especially since a servant was now staring at her. Damn it, Fang Yuan is way too uncooperative he's too sly, Mo Yan raged, and began to irritate him with insults, hoping to force him out of the room. Fang Yuan you brat, come out if you're a man. Fang Yuan, as a man you must own up to your own doings. Now you're being a coward hiding in that room, do you not feel ashamed of yourself? Stop pretending to ignore me get out if you know what's good for you, you cowardly, spineless trash. Fang Yuan closed his eyes and didn't say anything. Instead of discharging her rage, she became even more upset after yelling for a bit. She was beginning to feel like a clown or a shrew, blocking the entrance was just too humiliating. Ah, this is driving me insane, Mo Yen exclaimed, eventually giving up on provoking Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan, you can hide now, but you can't hide from me forever. She stumped violently and stormed out. She delivered a final instruction before leaving, Gao Wan, stand there and watch him, I do not believe he will leave the house. Yes, master, the muscular servant Gao Wan replied quickly, sending Mo Yan away. He felt bitter in his heart since the mountain was chilly and windswept at night. He'd have to stand guard the entire time, acquiring a cold so easily. It was a difficult task. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. The ebb and flow of the tides battled on within the primordial sea. The green copper primordial spirit accumulated like water, causing a rolling tidal wave. The waves pounded into the surrounding aperture walls indefinitely under Fang Yuan's mental control. The aperture walls of a rank 1 initial stage Gu Master resembled a white barrier. At this point, the green copper primeval essence was crashing towards them, generating shadows of light and an inexplicable experience. As time passed, the level of the green copper primordial sea progressively decreased. It has decreased from 44% to 12%. If a goo master wants to raise their cultivation level, they would have to expend their primeval essence to nurture the aperture. Initial stage goo masters have light barriers as their aperture walls, while middle stage goo masters have water barriers as their aperture walls and for upper stage, they have stone barriers. For me to cultivate from initial stage to middle stage, I will have to nurture the light barrier into water barrier aperture walls. Fang Yuan had comprehensive experience with the present stages of cultivation from his 500 years of memory, and the methods were as clear as day to him. He cautiously opened his eyes, only to discover that it was late at night. The crescent moon hovered high in the night sky, its light as clear as water. The door was wide open, and the moonlight shone in, prompting Fang Yuan to recall a famous earth poem, On a Tranquil Night. I saw the moonlight before my couch, 
and pondered if it wasn't the ice on the ground. One, the night breezes blew with a chill in them. Fang Yuan lacked warmth type Gu, and with only a 15-year-old body, he couldn't help but shiver slightly. The alpine night was bitterly chilly. Scoundrel, you finally opened your eyes. How long are you planning to be cultivating there? Get out, you'll be punished regardless. You beat up our young master M. Obey, so it was only a matter of time before young miss teaches you a lesson. Seeing that Fang Yuan had awoken, Gao Wan, who was standing at the door, got his spirit s up. Fang Yuan squinted, did the rank 2 female Gu master leave? Scoundrel, did you hear me? Hurry and come out here you have a room to stay in and a bed to sleep, but I had to stand here all night, don't you think I might just barge in? Gao Wan threatened, seeing no reaction from Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan remained unconcerned. Scumbag, come out and surrender yourself. You've offended the M.O. family, you will not have any good days from now on. Hurry and apologize to young miss and maybe she might just forgive you. Gao Wan proceeded to scold. Fang Yuan did not pay attention to a single word. He picked a prehistoric stone from his storage bag and held it in his hands before closing his eyes once more. Gao Wan seemed frightened after learning that he would continue cultivating and burst into tears. You mere C ranked talent, the most you can achieve in life is a rank 2 Gu master what is there to cultivate? You are no match for the entire MO family by yourself kid, are you deaf? Did you listen to a single word I said? 1. A well-known poem by Chinese poet Li Bai, Suppressive Beating, Chapter 34. Fang Yuan ignored the man and began multitasking. He studied his aperture while absorbing the inherent essence of the primordial stone. The ancient sea level, which had dropped dramatically within the aperture due to the steady flow of natural essence, began to slowly rise again. This type of recuperation speed was unavoidably slow, but Fang Yuan was unconcerned. The term cultivation was intended to be cumulative, it could not be hastened. The middle-aged servant outside the house was the pressing issue. After half an hour, Fang Yuan's green copper primeval sea had reached 44% of its maximum capacity. But this was not the end of the story. The primeval sea was a jade green color at this time, but it was merely a rank 1 early stage green copper primeval essence. Fang Yuan's earlier use of primeval essence to foster the aperture wall was no longer early stage primeval essence. The liquor worm had purified it into middle stage primal essence. Liquor worm. With Fang Yuan's thought, the liquor worm within the primordial sea flew out and hovered in midair, its body curving into a ball shape resembling a white rice ball. Swoosh. 10% of his early stage primeval essence was deployed and delivered into the liquor worm's body, and it quickly absorbed the essence. Soon after, a burst of liquor mist emitted from the body of the liquor worm and aggregated into a lump. Fang Yuan used 10% of his primordial essence to invest in this wine mist once more. When the mist was fully dissipated, the original 10% of first stage primeval essence physically shrank by half, and the color changed from jade green to pale green. This is primitive essence at its midway stage. In order to advance in their cultivation, ordinary students all use initial stage primeval essence. However, I'll be using middle stage primeval essence, and the efficiency is at least twice of theirs. Similarly, when using middle stage primeval essence to activate the moonlight goo and throw a moon blade, it will be far stronger than activating it using initial stage primeval essence. Fang Yuan opened his eyes only after all of the primeval essence in the primordial sea had been changed to middle stage primeval essence. When cultivating, time goes in the blink of an eye, and it was already midnight. The sky was no longer pitch black, but rather a rich dark blue. The moon was no longer visible, and just a few stars lingered. The door had been open almost the entire night, and a corner of the wooden door was already wet and stained a dark color from the water. The school hostel had this disadvantage, it was not as pleasant as a typical timber lodge placed above ground, one, but it was built directly on the ground, resulting in high humidity. Fang Yuan felt a chill run down his spine as he returned to reality. Both of his legs were numb from sitting cross-legged for so long. He spread a handful of white stone powder from his clenched right palm. This was the primal stone after its essence had been completely absorbed, and all that was left was the residual powder. I had expended three primal stones after a night of cultivation, Fang Yuan calculated in his thoughts. He possessed sea skill, but he used primordial stones to replenish his primeval essence in order to pursue faster cultivation speed. The liquor worm was more important, 
as it had been utilized to polish his middle stage primal essence. This had significantly boosted the cost of his primal stones. Although I plundered another sum of primeval stones yesterday, a night of cultivation cost me three stones. In this case, although it might seem that I have a lot of resources, it is unable to sustain me for a long time with my current cultivation speed, but this is the price I have to pay for pursuing cultivation speed and efficiency. Fang Yuan gazed out the window once more, only to find Gao Wan, the muscular servant, squatting in a corner, his body folded up, as if asleep. Looks like that rank 2 female Gu master left a long time ago, leaving this Gao Wan here to keep an eye on me. He he, Fang Yuan said as he rose from his bed and began to stretch his limbs. He left the hostel once his body had warmed up. Lad, you finally decided to come out, so how about you surrender and leave with me to kowtow and apologize to our young miss? Gao Wan jumped up as soon as he heard Fang Yuan's footsteps. His powerful frame was about double the size of Fang Yuan's. His muscles tensed and his brows knitted together, revealing a pair of terrible eyes gleaming with malicious light, resembled a ravenous hyena. Fang Yuan approached him without expression. Lad, you should have come out sooner, do you realize how much the great me had to suffer by watching over you? He snickered as he approached Fang Yuan, clearly preparing something terrible. Fang Yuan gently shouted out, and with a violent leap, he aimed both fists at Gao Wan. Bastard, you're courting death, Gao Wan said his face contorted as he raised his brick-sized hand and hit Fang Yuan. The fist was extraordinarily powerful, slicing through the air and making the wind swooshing. Fang Yuan's eyes were as clear as glass. He sidestepped and moved towards Gao Wan's back as he saw the fist approaching. He struck Gao Wan's waist with a stretched-out finger. Gao Wan blocked with his retracted arm, and Fang Yuan ended up hitting Gao Wan's left forearm instead. Fang Yuan's finger felt as if it had been struck by a steel plate painful and numb. This Gao Wan has already reached the limits of a mortal's physical prowess, right now, I can only fight with the Moonlight Goo, and without any other Goo worms to assist me, I am no match for him at basic close combat, Fang Yuan's eyes gleamed, and he instantly decided to stop attacking. Instead, he took a few steps back and moved away from Gao Wan. Only the Guyu clansmen had the right to cultivate as a Goo master in the Guyu village. Outsiders had no right to attend the awakening ceremony, regardless of whether they possessed cultivation talent or not. These mortals, on the other hand, might practice physical fighting. Although he was not a goo master, he had trained diligently in his punches and kicks, and his basic talent was unwavering. He was also a middle-aged guy, which meant he was in his physical prime in a mortal's existence. Fang Yuan, aside from the moonlight goo, had just the body of a 15-year-old teenager. He was no match for Gao Wan in terms of strength, agility, or endurance. Martial artists such as Gao Wan were powerful enough to eliminate a rank 1 early stage Gu Master. They nevertheless posed a threat even to a rank 1 middle stage Gu Master. This lad is too sneaky Gao Wan was anxious as he noticed Fang Yuan had put some distance between them. The waist was a key part of the body, and if it was destroyed by sheer force, the consequences were severe. If the force was used past a certain threshold, it may be fatal. Gao Wan had spent the entire night waiting outside the hostel, so his body was engulfed by the wet atmosphere, causing his reaction speed to be slightly slower. As a result, the preceding strike had nearly succeeded. Fortunately, despite being a bootlicker, he had worked hard on his athletic ability. So, at the critical moment, his body's response reacted automatically, allowing him to narrowly deflect Fang Yuan's blow. I can't be careless any longer. This lad acts like a wolf, striking harshly and deviously, getting his way whenever I am even a little careless. No wonder young master was knocked out twice by him. Gao Wan wiped the sweat from his brow and brushed away all traces of scorn. He began to take his adversary seriously. If I can capture this lad, it'd be a great accomplishment. Young miss is sure to reward me a rank 1 initial stages Moonblade is at max only like a small dagger so as long as it does not hit my vital points it'll merely be a light external injury. Gao Wan's heart began to race as he considered this. He reached out his shovel-like hands and seized Fang Yuan. The sound of a boom boom boom. Fang Yuan exhibited no fear as he approached Gao Wan for close battle. Loud impact sounds rang across the arena as the fighters exchanged punches and kicks, taking turns striking and protecting. He had just used his hand to pillage the students, with the goal of controlling the crowd. But when it came to dealing with Gao Wan, 
Fang Yuan had gone all out. At times, he used his fingers to poke at the eyes, choking the throat, slamming the jaw with the base of his palm, cutting at the back of his opponent's head, striking the pelvic area with the knee, or grabbing the waist with his hands. Gao Wan's sweat ran down his face like a torrent. Fang Yuan's techniques were all aimed at the critical spots, each strike deceptive and lethal as if he wanted to take Gao Wan's life right there and then. Gao Wan was a simple mortal, and unlike the Gu Masters, despite his physical fighting training, his vital points remained vital. Mortals couldn't teach their eyelids to become steel-like. This was the extent of mortal martial arts. Furthermore, Gao Wan did not dare to launch any lethal moves on Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan was a Guyu clansman, therefore killing him would incite public outrage and result in his execution. In fact, his punishment will be carried out first by the Mo family. As a result, his only idea was to capture Fang Yuan alive, and it would be even better if he could make Fang Yuan suffer in the process. One side is concerned, while the other is ready to kill. As a result, Fang Yuan was repressing Gao Wan in the struggle. 1. A typical wooden cabin constructed above ground. Go ahead and scream chapter 35. Fang Yuan had the upper hand for the time being, but it couldn't last. He was already panting from weariness after exchanging blows. Gao Wan's respiration, on the other hand, remained smooth and in tune, demonstrating the vast gap in stamina between the two. At the same time, while Gao Wan worked out his limbs, his body progressively warmed up and his punching speed increased. The cold's effect of making him lethargic and numb had worn off, revealing the genuine skills acquired by decades of training. Lad, you are unable to beat me there are clan rules stating that within the school hostel, you are forbidden from using the moonlight goo. You are dead meat, doomed to be my captive Gao Wan laughed maniacally, his fighting experience was extensive, so he attempted to use words to cause Fang Yuan's fighting spirit to waver. In the end, I'm only a teenager, and my body, which hasn't fully developed, cannot be compared to this servant, Fang Yuan said calmly. His fighting spirit had been sharpened for 500 years, and there was no way it would waver. Moonlight Gu, he thought, igniting his primal essence and leaping backwards to distance himself from Gao Wan. Gao Wan was about to pursue him when he noticed a watery blue light emanating from Fang Yuan's palm. Lad, you're using the Gu Worm to fight in the school hostel, which is against the clan rules, he yelled. So what if I break the rules? scoffed Fang Yuan. He learned and memorized the clan laws, but not for the sake of obeying them. His palm cut an arc towards Gao Wan immediately. The blue moon blade flew towards Gao Wan's face with a ching sound. Gao Wan clenched his teeth and raised both arms to form a protective shield around his face. Simultaneously, he rushed towards Fang Yuan without pausing, intending to withstand the blow while terminating the conflict as swiftly as possible. The moon blade grazed his arm. His flesh and blood flowed out under the moonlight with a popping sound, a wave of excruciating pain striking Gao Wan's nerves. The anguish nearly knocked the unprotected man out. How can this be? His dash towards Fang Yuan came to a halt, and he was horrified to discover that both of his limbs had been sliced open with a severe incision. Fresh blood poured from the cut and the side, and bloody muscles were visible hanging around his flesh. Even the fractured white bones of the forearm were visible. Gao Wan was completely taken aback. This is impossible a rank 1 initial stage moon blade, the most it could do is to lightly injure my flesh. How could it cut through my bones? Only a rank 1 middle stage can do this. He was completely unaware. Fang Yuan was a rank 1 beginning stage Gu Master, but after refining with the liquor worm, he held rank 1 middle stage primeval essence. When activated using middle stage primordial essence, the Moonlight Gu released a moon blade significantly superior to the beginning stage that he had predicted. This is bad, this boy is strange, Gao Wan, who had been caught off guard, had already suffered a serious injury. His battling spirit was vanished, and he made the difficult decision to retreat. Are you able to escape? Fang Yuan asked coldly as he began to pursue, the moon blades in his hands shooting out sequentially. Save me, Gao Wan screamed as he fled, his voice echoing far beyond the school dormitories. What's going on? Someone is calling for help, the voice said alerting the neighboring school hostel guards. It's the M.O. family's young miss, M.O. Yan's servant, the guards who arrived said as they watched the chase. This is only a servant, there is no need for us to risk protecting him. Letting him stay here was already a favor towards the M.O. family. We still have to be careful, just in case he hurts Fang Yuan in desperation. 
The worried guards gathered around Gao Wan, but no one helped him, instead, they stood on the sidelines and watched, even if this servant Gao Wan died, it had nothing to do with them. However, if Fang Yuan died or was injured, it would be their fault. When he saw such a spectacle, Gao Wan became depressed and cruelly yelled, We are all outsiders you cannot leave me to die. His blood loss was becoming more severe, and his speed was slowing. Fang Yuan caught up with him, his voice as icy as ice, proclaiming Gao Wan's death sentence, Go ahead and scream it doesn't matter how loud you do so. As he spoke, the blade in his arm turned, and he shot two moon blades toward Gao Wan. Swish, swish. The moon blade swooped down on Gao Wan's neck. The servant seemed to be one step away from the abyss. The next thing he knew, his world was whirling, he could see his own feet, chest, and back, as well as the severed neck. After that, he was in complete darkness. Gao Wan had passed away. His head soared away from the impact, his body propelled back 10 meters before falling, beheaded by two moon blades. The area around the neck erupted in a fountain of fresh blood, turning the surrounding grass blood red. Murder. Fang Yuan killed someone. The guards couldn't help but yell. They had observed the entire operation and felt a flood of dread and panic run through their bodies. Fang Yuan was only a frail 15-year-old teen when he murderously murdered a strong adult. This was a goo master's power. The stage was prepared for success. Fang Yuan slowed his pace and approached the corpse more slowly. His face was calm, as if he had done nothing unusual. This expression sent shivers up the guard's spines. Gao Wan's head lay on the ground, both eyes wide open, his head rotating in his grave. Fang Yuan gave a chilly glare. He kicked the head away with his leg. The eyelids of the guards twitched. When Fang Yuan approached the corpse, he saw it was still vibrating. The blood pooled on the ground, creating a little bloody puddle. He grimaced as he examined Gao Wan's injuries. These injuries were severe enough to reveal the fact that he possessed middle-stage primordial essence. Once this was revealed, it was obvious that he had a liquor worm, and the family immediately thought of the flower wine monk. As a result, Fang Yuan was forced to keep this secret hidden. But there are too many onlookers, Fang Yuan said, scanning the neighboring guards, which numbered more than ten. He only had about 10% of his primal essence remaining, so he couldn't kill them all. After some thought, Fang Yuan bent down and lifted Gao Wan's ankle, dragging the corpse away. Young Master Fang Yuan, you can leave this to us. The guards overcame their trepidation and approached Fang Yuan cordially. Respect and courtesy were tinged with terror. Fang Yuan gazed down at the guards, who all held their breath and looked down. Give me the saber, he whispered softly, stretching out his hand. He exuded palpable pressure in his speech, delivered with power. The guard closest to him handed him the saber on his waist involuntarily. Fang Yuan seized the saber and started going, leaving a dozen startled soldiers trailing behind him. The sun rose from the east, and the first rays of light illuminated the school hostel. Fang Yuan, 15, has the thin frame of an adolescent and a pale complexion. He walked calmly under the rising sun. He had a gleaming saber in his left hand. A decapitated body was in his right hand. His footsteps left a trail of vivid crimson blood streaks on the road. The guards were taken aback, their bodies stiff from the terrifying image. Even though the sun shone on them, they couldn't feel any warmth or light. Gulp. Someone among them made a loud swallowing motion. Gifting a disseminated corpse, Chapter 36. Did you hear? Fang Yuan killed someone, a student said to his classmate next to him. I heard it too. He really killed somebody, a student with a pale face squeezed his chest. There were many guards who saw him do it. Fang Yuan was chasing after that man. That guy tried to beg for mercy but Fang Yuan paid him no heed and decapitated him immediately. That's not all. After killing him, Fang Yuan didn't even spare his headless corpse. He dragged it back to the hostel and chopped it into a meat paste. Are you for real? I'm serious beyond belief. I came early this morning and I could still see the bloodstains left between the cracks of the green rock. Oh man, why would I lie to you? Earlier, the academy elder called Fang Yuan over for this matter. The academy's students were not paying attention in class because they were engaged in small talk. The thought of murdering was too unfamiliar and frightening for this bunch of 15-year-olds. They had been under the clan's care since a young age and had only witnessed organized sparring or simply murdering chickens and dogs. It was still beyond them to kill someone. Who did Fang Yuan kill? I heard it was a family servant of the M.O. branch family. Yup, 
I'm the clearest about this matter. Yesterday, I personally saw the M.O. family's M.O. Yan bring a bunch of family servants to find trouble with Fang Yuan. The M.O. family, that's not good. M.O. Bei is in trouble now. A few of the young people turned to gaze at Gu Yu M.O. Bei. M.O. Bei sat on his seat with a pale expression, having only learned about Fang Yuan's murder this morning. It was also the Gao Wan that M.O. Bei was familiar with. Gao Wan, one of the more lively family slaves, was skilled at boot licking and had practiced his fighting skills. He was a competent lackey. Gao Wan had even sparred with M.O. Bei a long time ago, to assume he was merely murdered by Fang Yuan. M.O. Bei was taken aback exactly because of this. He was in astonishment and felt twice as shocked as the others. In comparison to his disbelief, he felt more worried and afraid. M.O. Bei would be lying if he said he wasn't terrified of a murderer like Fang Yuan. Actually, it wasn't just him, the other kids were scared as well. Fang Yuan had robbed them twice before, and they had all been aggressive with him. I actually fought such a ruthless murderer? To think I'm still alive, many of them patted their chests, feeling apprehension. Fang Yuan's murder was still partially respectable, but the kicker was that he dissected the corpse and sliced the body into flesh paste. That was far too harsh. The reality of such a heinous crime had a profound effect on all of the adolescents' pure and innocent minds. There were only the academy elder and Fang Yuan in the room. Fang Yuan stood as the academy elder sat. Because nobody of them said anything, the mood was tight. The academy elder glanced at Fang Yuan thoughtfully, a touch of complication in his eyes. The guards had informed him of Fang Yuan's murder the previous morning. This news had both astonished and suspicious him. He was the academy's rank 3 Gu master in command. He clearly understood the combat power of a rank 1 initial stage Gu master. Fang Yuan's ability to kill Gao Wan was akin to the weak defeating the powerful. In fact, some guards had already informed him that Mo Yan had barged into the academy the night before and imprisoned Fang Yuan inside. He had not paid attention to the situation at the time and had not intervened. He was the academy elder and his goal was to develop future Gu masters rather than to protect them. He supported concealed fights as long as there were no deaths among the kids. Mo Yan's arrival to find conflict with Fang Yuan was something he welcomed. For one thing, he knew that whether the fight was won or lost, it would be good to Fang Yuan's development. Second, he wished to limit Fang Yuan's influence. Fang Yuan had repeatedly shut down the academy's gates and plundered the other pupils. His power was too strong and he had to be restrained. He hadn't expected Mo Yan to return in vain, or for the family servant she had left behind to be unable to fight Fang Yuan. He even murdered Gao Wan. In this universe, strength was supreme. It was not unusual to kill someone. It was fairly common, especially to a Gu master. But it wasn't so easy when it was a 15-year-old's first killing. The Academy Elder remembers his first murder scene clearly. He was already a rank 2 Gu master at the time. In a battle when he was 19, he killed a Gu master from the Bai clan's village. He vomited profusely and panicked in his heart after killing the person. He was in no mood to eat and had no appetite for a few days. He couldn't even sleep peacefully. He would close his eyes and see the dead person glaring at him furiously. But when he looked at Fang Yuan now, his expression was as cool as ice. Where was the fright? Not to add that he was completely calm. It was almost as if he had slept soundly the night before as if the person who murdered a man was not him at all, especially once the academy elder learned more about the situation. Fang Yuan did not spare the corpse after killing the servant, and in his wrath dragged it back to the dormitories to be chopped into meat paste. Such heinous practices, simply hearing about them was terrifying. As a result, the academy elder stared at Fang Yuan with mixed emotions at this point. On the one hand, he was astounded by Fang Yuan's apathy toward life, his demeanor was as steadfast and frigid as ice. On the other hand, he appreciated the fact that Fang Yuan was a natural battler. He had killed someone with the Moonlight Gu after familiarizing himself with it for a few days. Even the most gifted teenagers may not be able to do this. If he was well nurtured and battled for the clan, it would be all of their opponent's worst nightmare. Finally, he was worried and distressed. Worry not, for Fang Yuan's reputation was bound to increase as a result of this occurrence and it would be impossible to keep him down. Fang Yuan was far too brazen, he not only broke clan regulations by using his goo in the academy, but he also killed someone with it. There was a need to limit his power, otherwise, how could the elder continue to run this academy? 
He was distressed because he didn't know how to completely fix this situation. After all, it affected the MO side of the family. Fang Yuan, do you know why I called you here to meet me? Asked the academy elder, breaking the stillness in the room. I know. Fang Yuan looked at him and said, I used the Moonlight Goo in the academy, breaking the clan rules. According to the rules, as it is my first offense, I should compensate 30 pieces of primeval stones as punishment. He avoided the important subject by not mentioning Gao Wan's death. For a brief while, the academy elder was taken aback, he had not anticipated Fang Yuan to respond in this manner. Don't try to blur things in front of me, I'll ask you, what was the matter with Gao Wan's death? His countenance worsened. Fang Yuan rolled his eyes as he said, Mph, this Gao Wan went against his superiors, his intentions were vicious. Last night, not only did he block my room door, he even tried to kill me. In self-defense, I was forced to use the Moonlight Goo. Fortunately, I managed to kill this traitor. I suspect that there is a high possibility of him being a spy of the other mountain villages. I implore the elders to investigate this thoroughly. When the academy elder heard this, he frowned and became speechless. Fang Yuan could say whatever he pleased now that Gao Wan was dead. After all, Gao Wan was an outsider not a clan member. Even if he was dead, the academy elder would not care. He was concerned, however, about the M.O. family's reaction. Gao Wan was their servant who perished at the academy. The academy elder was in command of the academy and had to explain things to the M.O. family. After a brief moment of thought, the academy elder turned to Fang Yuan and asked, Then let me ask you, Gao Wan's corpse, how did you deal with it? Fang Yuan's lips curved into a nasty smile. I diced Gao Wan's corpse and put it inside a wooden box. When morning came, I put it at the M.O. family's back door. What? The academy elder was taken aback and nearly sprang from his seat. Fang Yuan had not only killed their family servant, but he had also sliced up the corpse and deposited it at the M.O. family's back door. This was obvious provocation. It was a nightmare for the academy elder who was attempting to handle this calmly. How would the big M.O. family react to Fang Yuan? a little rank one goo master. The academy elder got a headache thinking about it because the situation had already gotten out of hand. This Fang Yuan was a real rogue. Sigh, since it has already happened, there's no point in saying any more. Leave first, the punishment will come within these few days, you should get mentally prepared. The elder of the academy was extremely angry. He motioned with his hand for Fang Yuan to leave, he wanted to think this through calmly in order to come up with a solution. Chapter 37, A Compromise as well as a Threat. Meanwhile, in the M.O. household, what were my instructions to you? See what you did Guyu M.O. Chen pounded the table in the study room, screaming with wrath. M.O. Yan leaned against the old man, her head down. Her eyes glowed with shock and wrath. She had also recently learned that Gao Wan had been murdered by Fang Yuan. To think he was a 15-year-old with such methods and desire. Gao Wan was a proud servant of her M.O. family and Fang Yuan's murder was a flagrant display of disrespect for them. Grandpa, you don't have to be so angry. This Gao Wan was only a servant, his death is of no concern. He isn't a Guyu clan member anyways. But that Fang Yuan, he is too daring, you have to look at the owner before you beat the dog. Not only did he beat our dog but he even beat it to death Mo Yan said with a smirk. Guyu Mo Chen was scowling with rage, you still have the cheeks to say that have your wings grown so tough now that you don't even put my words to heart? Hmm? What I told you before, you have forgotten all about it. Your granddaughter dares not, M.O. Yen exclaimed, startled. She realized her granddad was furious and hastily kneeled down. Hmph, so what if that servant died? But now you are still showing hostility towards Fang Yuan, this is really a matter of you being short-sighted and unclear of the implications do you know the significance of your actions? The fight among juniors is their own business. As elders, we should not interfere. Grandpa, please calm down, anger will harm your body. It's M.O. Yan's fault, I burdened the M.O. family. Whatever Grandpa tells M.O. Yan to do, M.O. Yan will do it. But your granddaughter really cannot take this lying down, that Fang Yuan is too despicable, too shameless. First, he lied to me and entered the academy. Next, he hid in the dormitory and refused to come out no matter how much I scolded. Oh, is that so? Gu Yu Mo Chen asked, frowning. He had never heard this knowledge before, and a bright light shone across his eyes. He took a deep breath, suppressing his rage, and stroked his beard, saying, 
I've heard stories about this Fang Yuan. In his early years, he was able to make poems and songs, showing early intelligence. But to think that he only had C grade talent. It was difficult for him to have a good future, and thus I gave up on recruiting him. But now it seems that it's slightly interesting. Gu Yu Mo Chan paused for a moment before knocking on the table and ordering, Someone, bring that box over here. Outside the door, the servant swiftly obeyed. He soon brought in a box. The box wasn't too large or too little, but it was a little weighty. The servant carried it with both hands and stood beside the study table. Grandpa, what is this? Mo Yin said, his gaze fixed on the wooden box. Why don't you open it and take a look? Gu Yu Mo Chen squinted and asked, his tone confusing. Mo Yin rose to his feet, flipped open the wooden lid, and peered inside. Her face altered instantly, and her pupils shrank to the size of a needle. She couldn't help but take a step back and let out an uncontrollable scream. Her wooden lid had also fallen to the ground. The object stored within the wooden box was revealed to everyone present without the wooden cover. It was a pile of flesh and blood. The bloody flesh was definitely hacked off and placed in the box piece by piece. Inside, bright scarlet blood had collected. There was some pale skin and flesh, as well as lengthy strands of intestine mixed together with a few bone fragments, maybe leg bones or ribs. There were two fingers and half a toe floating in the pool of blood in the corner. Black. Mo Yan's face turned color as she took another step backwards, her stomach churning and she nearly vomited on the spot. She was a rank 2 Gu master who had previously gone out to gather experience. Despite this, even though she had slain people before, this was the first time she had witnessed such a nasty and twisted spectacle. The flesh and blood in this box were clearly the remains of a person who had been minced into pieces and stuffed inside. The aroma of blood exploded into the air and quickly saturated everything, engulfing the entire study room. The family servant's hands shook as he carried the box, his face pale. Despite the fact that he had seen the box previously and vomited, he could still feel waves of palpitation and loathing as he held it now. Only the family elder Gu Yu Mo Chen seemed unmoved among the three people in the study room. He took a quick look at the contents of the box and replied quietly to Mo Yan, this box was what Fang Yuan had placed at our family's back door this morning. What, it's really him? Mo Yan was stunned as visions of Fang Yuan flashed through her head. It was in the inn that she first spotted Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan was sitting near the window at the moment, peacefully enjoying his supper. His features were uninteresting, and both of his eyes were dark and dismal. His frame was tiny, and his skin was the paleness of a teen. He appeared to be a typical, peaceful young man. To think he had committed such a twisted and terrible thing. Her initial disbelief was followed by a wrath. This Fang Yuan is too outrageous, who gave him the guts to do such a thing. This is a provocation towards our Mo family. I will go ahead and bring him here to question him for his crimes, Mo Yan said as she walked towards the exit. You scoundrel, stop right there, Gu Yu Mo Chen yelled, grabbing an ink slab from his study desk and tossing it over. The rough and hefty ink slab landed on Mo Yan's shoulder and tumbled to the ground with a boom. Grandpa, Mo Yan held her shoulder as she screamed in fear. Gu Yu Mo Chen stood up, his finger pointing at his granddaughter, and said angrily, It seems like all these years of training were in vain. You have disappointed me greatly against a small rank 1 initial stage Gu Master, not to mention you involving so many people, but even being led by the nose by the other party. At this point, do you still not understand the meaning behind Fang Yuan's words? What meaning? Mo Yan wondered. Gu Yu Mo Chen let out a snort, if Fang Yuan wanted to provoke us, he would have blown up this matter, so why did he place this box at the secluded back door instead of placing it at the front door where there are many people walking around? Maybe he wants to reconcile with us? No, if he wanted to reconcile, wouldn't it be better to apologize face to face? Why must he send us this box of minced corpse? This is definitely a provocation Mo Yan murmured. Gu Yu Mo Chen nodded and shook his head. He wants to reconcile, but at the same time, he is also provoking us. Placing the wooden box at the back door is his intention to reconcile. Placing the corpse inside the box, that is a provocation. You see, the old man said, pointing to the box, this wooden box is not big, and it cannot hold a complete corpse, so there can only be a portion of the corpse inside. He is trying to tell us that he does not want to blow up this matter and wants to settle this amicably, but if our MO family wants to pursue this matter, he will place the remainder of the corpse at our main entrance, 
thoroughly blowing up the issue. Mo Yan was taken aback when he heard these comments. She had not expected Fang Yuan's actions to have such significant significance. His method is really wise, Gu Yu Mo Chen praised, with just one action, he exercised both toughness and softness, capable of advancing and retreating safely. This is just a simple wooden box but it not only expresses Fang Yuan's intention to compromise but also his ability to pose a threat to our MO family. And it so happens that he does hold on to the weakness of our MO family. MO Yan thought it was amazing. Grandpa, aren't you thinking too highly of him? Are you sure that he's capable of this? He is only 15 years old. Too highly. Mo Chen frowned at his granddaughter. Looks like you've had too easy a life in the past few years. Fostering your arrogant attitude, you are unable to clearly see the reality. This Fang Yuan was unfazed by danger and deceived you to enter the school. Next, he used his wisdom in the face of danger and hid within the dormitory to avoid trouble. No matter what insult you threw at him, he did not respond. This is his ability to calmly endure. Mo Yan listened with wide eyes, surprised that her grandfather praised Fang Yuan so highly. She retorted angrily, Grandpa, he only has a C-grade talent. Gu Yu Mo Chen took a big breath and said, Yes, he is only a C-grade. Having such wisdom and yet only C-grade talent, it really is a pity. As long as his talent was higher, even if it was just a B-grade, he would certainly become an influential member of our Gu Yu clan. What a pity, he is only a C-grade. The old man sighed with emotion. His sigh was filled with both regret and joy. Mo Yan remained silent, and Fang Yuan's image reappeared in her head. Fang Yuan's fragile expression was hidden by a layer of strange and terrible gloom under her psychological influence. You created this problem on your own, how are you going to solve it? Gu Yu Mo Chen broke the stillness as he began to put Mo Yan to the test. Mo Yan pondered for a moment before responding in an aloof and cold voice, Gao Wan was just a servant, so there are no implications even if he dies. Fang Yuan is just a C grade, so he is also a small matter. What's important is maintaining my MO family's reputation. To appease this matter, we might as well kill Gao Wan's entire family to show the entire clan our attitude to protect the rules and regulations. MMM, you're able to think of the big picture. Setting aside your personal emotions to defend the interests of family, this is very good. However, your method is still flawed. Gu Yu Mo Chen thought about her answer. Please enlighten me, Grandpa, pleaded Mo Yan. Gu Yu Mo Chen solemnly stated, This matter was instigated by you, so I shall punish you with seven days confinement, and from now on, do not find trouble with Fang Yuan again. Gao Wan defied his superiors a servant who dares to offend his master deserves death, so he should have been executed for his crimes because he is a servant of the Mo family. We are responsible for our inability to educate our subordinate and thus, after a few moments of silence, he added, for the next seven days, rest well at home, do not go out. At the same time, think about the profound meaning of why Grandpa chose to handle the matter this way. Yes, Grandpa. Chapter 38, The Demon in the Light The spring rain dropped from the sky's layers of dark clouds. Raindrops were as thin as hair. As they descended, they covered Ching Mao Mountain in fine mist. The inn's dining hall on the first floor was nearly vacant. There were just four guests at each table. Fang Yuan took a seat near the window. A rush of wind blew through, carrying a poetic atmosphere and the aroma of flowers with it. The light rain from the sky is sleek and crisp, the color of grass is seen from afar but disappears when close, Fang Yuan observed through a window before returning his gaze to the inn. Before him was a table laden with fine wine and delectable delicacies. The color, fragrance, and taste were all excellent. Especially the green bamboo wine, which overflowed with alcohol smell and a sense of freshness. In the bamboo cup, the dark green liquor sat peacefully. It had an amber-like sheen from his vantage point. At the table next to him sat a grandfather and his grandson. They dressed modestly since they were mortal beings. The grandfather sipped his rice wine while envying Fang Yuan. He was clearly drawn to the green bamboo wine, but he couldn't afford it. The grandson chewed his cooked beans, a crunching sound coming from his mouth. Simultaneously, he irritated his granddad by shaking his arm. Grandpa, Grandpa, tell me about the story of Renzia. If you don't tell me, I'll report to Grandma that you secretly came out to drink. Sigh, I can't even drink in peace, the grandfather grumbled, yet his face was filled with adoration for the child. 
Then let me tell you the story of Renzio who gave his heart to the Hopegu, escaping his predicament of being captured. He rubbed the boy's head. Renzio's story was the most well-known and widely distributed tale in the world, as well as the oldest folklore. This is how the old man told his story. Renzio was able to flee his circumstances thanks to optimism, according to the account. But as he grew older, he could no longer hunt since he lacked strength and wisdom. Even his teeth had fallen off, preventing him from chewing on many wild fruits and veggies. Renzio could feel death approaching. At this point, the Hope Goo told him, Human, you must not die, if you do, your heart will be lost, and I will lose my only home. Renzio was powerless. Who wishes to die? But if the heaven s and earth want me dead, I have no choice. The Hope Goo went on to say, There's always hope in everything. As long as you can catch a longevity goo, you will be able to increase your lifespan. Renzio had long been aware of the longevity goo's existence, but he waved his hand aimlessly. When the longevity goo stays still, nobody can detect it and when it flies, it is faster than light. How can I possibly catch it? It's too hard. The Hope Goo then revealed a hidden message to Renzia, Human, don't give up hope no matter what. Let me tell you, on the northwest corner of this continent, there is a huge mountain. On the mountain, there is a cave and in that cave, there is a pair of round and square goo worms. As long as you can subdue them, there is no goo in this world that you cannot catch, including the longevity goo. Renzio had no option, this was his last chance. He overcame all obstacles to reach the mountain. He then risked his life and journeyed through numerous risks to reach the summit. He utilized his last remaining strength to make his way inside the cave on the mountain top, near the entrance. The cave's interior was utterly dark, and one couldn't even see their own fingers. Renzio was walking in the dark. He would occasionally run across items that he had no idea what they were. As a result, he was damaged and wounded all over. At times, he felt as if this black cave was a separate planet in and of itself. He had the impression that he was the only one in the region. He spent a lot of time trying to get out of the darkness. Not to mention dealing with the two goo worms. Two voices spoke to him from the darkness just as he was at a loss on what to do. There was a voice that said, Human, you're here to catch us? Go back, for even if you had the strength goo, it would be impossible. Human, return, we will not take your life, even if you had the wisdom goo to assist you, you may not be able to find us. Renzio was fatigued and panting on the ground. The strength and wisdom goo had left me a long time ago, and I don't have much time left, so I'm at my wit's end, he said. But I will not give up as long as there is hope in my heart. The two voices fell silent when they heard Renzio's comments. I understand, human, you have already given your heart to the hope goo, one of the goo stated after a while. You will not, under any circumstances, give up. In that case, we'll give you a chance, the other said. We will let you utilize us as long as you can utter our name. Locating their names among all the words in the world was like locating a needle in a haystack, Renzio thought. Furthermore, he had no idea how many words their names contained. Renzio swiftly inquired of the Hope Goo, but it, too, was unaware. Renzio had little choice but to guess their names at random, he spoke several names and wasted a lot of time, but the darkness did not answer, indicating that he was mistaken. Renzio's breath became weaker as he transitioned from an elderly man to a dying man, much like the scene of the evening's lowering sun, which had already been lowered halfway across the horizon, becoming a sunset. The food he had packed was progressively depleted, his thinking slowed, and he had almost no energy to speak anymore. Human, you are almost dead, so we will let you go, said the voice in the darkness. You can use your remaining time to climb out of the cave and take one last look around. But you've upset us so the hope goo will stay with us as a punishment. Even if I die, I will not give up hope, Renzio tightened his fist. The hope goo was moved and enthusiastically responded to Renzio's call, emitting a bright light. A light began to shine at Renzio's chest area, but it was too weak to illuminate the darkness, and it couldn't even cover Renzio's entire body, only engulfing his chest area. Renzio, on the other hand, could feel a new burst of energy pouring into his body from the hope goo. He continued to talk, shouting names, but he was already bewildered, many names had already been shouted, but he couldn't recall them and had to repeat them, wasting a lot of effort. Renzio's life was coming to an end as time passed. Finally, on his last day, he said the word regulation. Human, I admire your perseverance, a voice said from the darkness. 
You have uttered my name, so I shall heed your directions from now on. But I can only help you capture all the goo in the world if I work with my brother. Otherwise, it is impossible with only my abilities. As a result, you should give up. You're almost dead, so you might as well take one last look at the world. Renzio was resolute and shook his head, he used all of his time to continue saying out names as he attempted to guess the name of the other goo worm. Seconds and minutes passed, and he soon realized he just had one hour left. However, he unintentionally said the word rule at this point. The blackness vanished instantly. The two Gus appeared before him, one cubic, called regulations, and the other spherical, called rules, forming rules and regulations. No matter who it is, as long as they know our names, we will listen to them, the two Gu declared simultaneously. Human, since you already know our names, we shall be at your disposal. But keep in mind that it is critical that no one knows our names. The more people who recognize our names, the more people we have to obey. Tell us your wish now that you are the first to subdue us. Renzio said, then I order you both to go get me a longevity goo. The rules and regulations goo collaborated to achieve an 80-year longevity goo. Renzio was already a hundred years old, yet after drinking this goo, the wrinkles on his face vanished and his feeble limbs became muscular again, and he exuded a bright aura of youth. He jumped up onto his feet with a belly flop. He stared at his physique with joy, knowing that he had regained the body of a 20-year-old. That's all for today, grandson, let's go home. The old man finished his wine after finishing the story. Grandpa, please keep telling me what happens to Renzio after that. The grandson shook his grandfather's arm, uncompromising. Let's go, I'll tell you when there's another chance. The old guy put on his straw hat and jacket, then handed his grandson a smaller pair. The two strolled out of the inn, going into the rain and gradually disappearing from view. Rules and Regulations Fang Yuan's eyes was gloomy as he spun his wine cup, his heart touched by the liquor in his cup. Renzio's fame was well known across the world, and nearly no one had not heard of him. Fang Yuan had, of course, heard of him. However, whether it was a legend or a story, it was dependent on the reader's knowledge, the grandfather and grandson had previously considered it as a story, but Fang Yuan could understand the deeper meaning. The same as Renzio. When he didn't know the laws and regulations, he explored in the dark, sometimes he crashed into things, knocking into others, injuring himself and making himself look like a shambles, and sometimes, within a larger region, he became lost and bewildered, traveling without a sense of direction or purpose. Strength, wisdom, and optimism could not overcome this darkness, which was not entirely black or the absence of light. The darkness dissipated and light was invited into Renzio's existence only when Renzio learned of the rules and regulations and stated their names. The blackness represented the gloom of the rules and regulations, and the light represented the light of the rules and regulations as well. Fang Yuan shifted his gaze away from his cup and out the window. Outside the window, the sky was still dark, the greenery was abundant, and the pelting rain was flying by like mist. Nearby, the bamboo tall houses were lined up in a row, extending far out. On the road, several people walked, their feet stained with mud from the rain, some wore grayish-green straw coats, while others carried yellow-oiled cloth umbrellas. This world's heaven and earth are like a huge chessboard, Fang Yuan concluded. All life forms are chess pieces that follow their own set of rules and regulations. The four seasons, which alternate between spring, summer, autumn, and winter, each have their own set of norms and regulations. Water has its own set of rules and regulations as it flows from high ground to low ground. Hot air has its own set of rules and regulations as it rises. Humans, of course, have their own set of norms and regulations. Everyone has their own points of view, desires, and principles. In the Guyu village, for example, servants' lives are cheap but their masters' lives are noble. This is part of the set of rules and regulations. As a result, Shen Kui, who wishes to befriend the wealthy, is doing everything she can to avoid her servant status. Gao Wan tried all means and manner to please his master, abusing their authority. As for uncle and aunt, they succumbed to avarice, seeking to keep my parents' inheritance for themselves. The academy elder wishes to cultivate Gu masters in order to keep his place in the academy. Everyone has their own set of rules and regulations, each profession has its own set of rules and regulations, and each society and group has its own set of rules and regulations. We can only see the problem clearly from one side if we grasp the laws and regulations. 
leave the darkness behind and embrace the light, skirting the rules with ease. To the Mo family's head Gu Yu Mo Chen, it is to protect his family branch's prosperity and benefits, Fang Yuan pondered, his heart already clear. Mo Yan caused issue with me, which would be deemed breaking the rules, therefore he will not do anything to me for the sake of his family's prestige. Indeed, he may even compensate me. Actually, the Mo family has a lot of power, so if they want to ruin their reputation by punishing me, there's nothing I can do. Gu Yu Mo Chen, on the other hand, is terrified. He is not frightened of breaking the rules himself, but he is afraid of others following in his footsteps. If the elders intervene in a junior's scuffle, it would worsen the problem. If the higher UPS were implicated, it would endanger the entire mountain town. Gu Yu Mo Chen was terrified. What if, in the future, others kidnapped his grandson Gu Yu Mo Bei? There is only one guy in his entire family line, therefore what would happen if he died? This kind of worry, Perhaps he isn't aware of it himself. He is merely guarding the rules subconsciously. Fang Yuan's eyes were clear because he had a complete comprehension and awareness of the situation from beginning to conclusion. Gao Wan did not have the surname Gu Yu, instead, he was a foreigner, a servant. It was nothing to be concerned about when the master executed a servant, in this world, it was common. In the event of Fang Yuan murdering Gao Wan, it was not Gao Wan's death that was important, it was his master the Mo family, who stood behind him. However, Gu Yu Mo Chen should have understood my intention of compromise and threat from the moment I sent them a box of minced corpse. This is exactly what I want him to believe. If I'm not mistaken, the Mo family will not investigate Gao Wan's death. Of course, the Mo family would be concerned if I had more talent and at least a B grade. Even if it meant losing their reputation, they would prefer to keep a future threat like myself at bay, Fang Yuan smirked in his heart. Strength can be relied on, but weakness can also be exploited. Fang Yuan was a pawn in the game of chess, but he understood the rules and regulations, therefore he already had the attitude of a player. An ordinary character would be like Gu Yu Mo Chen or the Academy Elder, understanding their own laws and regulations but unsure of their lack of knowledge, but Fang Yuan, who had a clear view of the broad picture and was clear of rules and regulations, was incredibly difficult to be like. To grasp norms and regulations, one must be like Renzio, fumbling around in the dark and aimlessly wandering around. Strength, wisdom, and hope would be meaningless at this point. One must spend a significant amount of time going through it themselves and acquiring experience. Renzio had spent time and tried many times under the threat of death to be able to say aloud the names of the rules and regulations Gu. Because of his 500 years of experience in a previous life, Fang Yuan was an expert in rules and regulations. He thought he could create a beautiful future after his rebirth, not because of the spring and autumn cicada, not because he knew numerous secret troves and treasures, and not because he understood what the future held. But it was due of his 500 years of experience as a person. Just like Renzio was able to quickly capture all of the goo in the globe by controlling the rules and regulations goo. And because Fang Yuan was so familiar with rules and regulations, he was able to look down on the world and see through its truths and lies. Being meticulous and precise, or getting right to the heart of the matter, I proudly laugh as I stand on top of the world, coldly looking at the people in the world who behaved like pawns, obeying their respective rules and regulations, living their lives straight. The laws and regulations of the darkness are the same as the rules and regulations of the light. However, the reborn monster had crossed the path of light. Toad Caravan Merchant Chapter 39. The month of May marked the transition from spring to summer. The scent of flowers filled the air, the vast mountains were evergreen, and the sun began to gradually reveal its fiery aspect. The white clouds drifted like cotton under the pure azure skies. The bamboo forest on Qingmao Mountain was always straight like spears, pointing towards the blue sky. Weeds grew wildly everywhere, and unknown varieties of wild flowers dotted the grass thicket as the light breeze blew the heavy fragrance of flower pollen and the smell of green grass assailing visitors. Halfway up the mountain, a massive number of terraced fields were laid down, layer by layer, step by step, resembling a verdant green sea from afar. Numerous farmers were hard at work on the terraced fields, with some cleaning the canal for the channeling of water to irrigate the fields and others rolling up their slacks, standing in the fields, and planting sprouts. These folks were all obviously mortal strangers, as the Guyu clansmen would never have done such menial work. Ring, ring, ring. 
Camel bells might be heard faintly in the spring breeze. As the farmers descended the mountain, they noticed a caravan creeping like a colorful worm from the mountainside, slowly revealing its head. It's the merchant caravan. Yes, it's already May, it is about time for the caravan to come. The adults recognized the situation right away, and the children stopped playing with the water and clay in their hands and ran enthusiastically toward the caravan. The southern borders contained a hundred thousand mountains, of which Ching Mao Mountain was merely one, and on each mountain were villages after villages, which were maintained by everyone by blood links and kinships. The forests were deep and frightening between the mountains, the cliffs steep and full of dangerous falling rocks, and a vast number of vicious monsters and unusual goo worms lived in the complicated surrounds of the forest. Mortals could not cross through, and to get past these hurdles alone, one had to be at least a rank 3 goo master. Trading was difficult due to the poor economy, so the caravan merchants were the most important form of trading. Only by organizing a merchant group on such a large scale could goo masters come together with the power to help each other, conquering the difficulties in the traveling routes and traversing from one mountain to another. The merchant caravan's arrival was like pouring boiling water into the tranquil and calm Ching Mao mountain. In previous years, they would arrive in April, but this year they arrived in May. At least they're here now, the innkeeper exhaled deeply upon hearing the news. The inn's business had been slow throughout the other months, and only when the caravan arrived could he earn enough profit to last the year. Simultaneously, he had some green bamboo wine in his storeroom that he might offer to the caravan merchants. Aside from the inn, the tavern's business would benefit as well. The caravan merchants entered the Guyu Mountain village one by one, led by a treasure brass toad, a two and a half meter tall toad with an orange yellow body and a thick back full of warts and knots, similar to the lumps of bronze nails on ancient city gates. Thick ropes were strung around a plethora of products on the treasure brass toad's back. At first look, the toad appeared to be lugging a massive bag. A middle-aged man with a pockmarked circular face sat cross-legged atop the toad. He was overweight and had a huge belly. When he smiled, both of his eyes formed slits. He hailed the neighboring Guyu peasants by cupping his fists. Fu of the Jia clan was the name of this individual. His cultivation was at rank 4, and he was the merchant caravan's leader this time. Jia Fu, who was sitting atop the treasure toad's head, was stable and steady as it moved forward. When the toad hopped, his height would be level with the windows of a building's second story. Even when he returned to the earth, he was higher than the first level of the bamboo buildings. The previously wide streets were abruptly congested and constricted. The treasure brass toad was a beast that crept into the center of a swarm of bamboo dwellings. A giant fat worm followed the treasure toad. It had two eyes that looked like multicolored glass windows, with dazzling and beautiful colors. The worm was 15 meters long and had the body shape of a silkworm. The worm's surface, on the other hand, was coated in a thick coating of black porcelain-like leather armor. A hemp rope was knotted around another abundant pile of things and products on the armor. Goo masters sat one by one, some elderly and others young, in between the gaps and intervals of the products. There were also mortals who were strong and tough martial fighters, slowly going forward on the ground after a large black beetle. Following the fat beetle, there were brightly colored ostriches, hairy mountain spiders, winged snakes with two pairs of feathered wings, and so on. However, these were few in number, the majority of the creatures were toads. These toads resembled the treasure brass toad, although they were smaller in size and built like cows and horses. The toads hopped onward, their bellies swelling as they carried goods and people. The merchant caravan made its way far into the settlement. Children on the road would look on with wide eyes, exclaiming with delight or astonishment. The second-story windows opened one by one, the mountain dwellers observing the merchants from a safe distance. Some wore fearful expressions on their faces, while others waved their hands in greeting. Old brother Jia, you arrived a little late this year, you must have had a difficult journey, Gu Yubo said as he approached the leader of this year's merchant caravan. Because Jia Fu was a rank 4 Gu master, Having a rank 3 senior in charge of receiving him would definitely be considered as a form of neglect and derision. Jia Fu raised his hands and murmured, this year's road was rather unfavorable. On the way we bumped into a group of secluded blood bats and we lost quite a few good men. Then on Jubai Mountain we ran into a mountain fog, and we didn't dare to continue traveling at all. So we were delayed for quite a lot of time, and caused brother Gu Yu to wait for quite a while. Their tones were very courteous as they spoke. Every year, 
The merchant caravans came to Guyu Hamlet to trade, and the merchant caravans required business to generate money. Ha ha ha, it's enough that you're able to come, please, the clan has prepared food and wine, let me host a welcoming dinner for you, old brother, Guyu Bo invited. Clan head is overly polite, Jia Fu remarked. The merchant caravan arrived at the Qing Mao Mountains borders early in the morning and was stationed at Guyu village by the afternoon. By evening, the village's surrounds had transformed into a sprawling region of temporary shops and stores. Various red, blue, yellow, and green high tents were constructed, and every inch between the tents was crammed with numerous small street stalls. The night was falling, but the neighborhood was still well lit. From the settlement, a continuous stream of pedestrians poured into the area. There were both mortals and goo masters. The young children bounced around in high spirit, while the grown-ups smiled as if they were celebrating a festival. Fang Yuan followed the crowd, strolling alone. The throng was humming with activity, with groups of people either surrounding the vendors or rushing in and out of the tents' entrances. The air was thick with the voices of merchants advertising their wares. Come, come, take a look. Top-notch blue sea cloud tea brick. Drinking this tea makes one as cheerful as a fairy even if it's not a person drinking. It can be used for feeding and raising tea goo. It is a cheaply priced item for its value. One piece only costs five primeval stones. Brute force longhorn beetle goo. A goo master who uses this goo will be able to burst out with the strength of a cow. You can walk away, but don't regret it. Intimate grass. High quality intimate grass. Everyone look at this quality. It's as fresh as if a newly picked one. One caddy for two pieces of primeval stones, very cheap price. Fang Yuan's movements paused slightly as he heard this, then he followed the sound and walked over. He noticed an ostrich hauling a two-wheeled handcart. A bunch of pastel green herbs was on the handcart. Every grass blade was a meter long, thin and long. Their average width was comparable to a fingernail. Some of the grass's sharp points sprouted red heart-shaped flower buds. The intimate grass was a form of supplementary food for goo worms, and its value arose from the fact that it could be combined with a few other meals to feed a goo worm. Fang Yuan, for example, had to feed the moonlight goo two pieces of flower petals per meal. If he added a blade of intimate grass, the moonlight goo would be satisfied with just one petal. The intimate grass only requires two primeval stones per caddy, however the moon orchid petal need one primeval stone for every ten pieces. A simple calculation would show that combining the intimate grass and feeding the goo would be more cost-effective. Half a month ago, I was fined 30 primeval stones for using the moonlight goo in the academy to kill Gao Wan, but the M.O. family later paid me 30 primeval stones as compensation, so I didn't really take any losses. In recent days, I have robbed twice, my total number of stones amounts to 118. However, Recently I continuously spent essence to refine middle stage primeval essence and nurture the four walls of my aperture, and I would use up three. Since Fang Yuan killed someone, the cruel and callous image had deeply established itself in the hearts of the students, and no one dared to question him for a time. This made his robbing more simpler because just a tiny number of people dared to oppose him. Fang Yuan calculated in his heart, then shifted his gaze and continued walking deeper into the core of the temporary store setup. A crowd had gathered around the intimate grass stall. They were all goo masters or pupils, shouting and rushing to buy it as they had primal stones in their hands. Fang Yuan didn't lack the funds to purchase intimate grass, but he lacked the time. If memory serves, that mudskin toad should be in that store. In my previous life there was a goo master who got it from gambling on the first night, hence he earned big time. I must hurry, I cannot lose a great deal through trying to save a little. Toad Goo Slumbears Within the Purple Gold Rock, Chapter 40 The further one walked, the more prosperous and flourishing it became. The number of small street sellers has decreased, while the number of huge tents has increased. There were a variety of enormous tents to be seen, including red, blue, green, and yellow tents of all forms and sizes, with several being cylindrical in shape. Others put enormous red lanterns instead of two-door pillars at the entrance to their tents. Some tents had bright lights inside, while others were dull and dark. As he proceeded, Fang Yuan took in his surroundings, eventually halting outside a grey tent. It's here, he assessed as he examined the tent, which had two pillars at the entrance and carvings on the pillars, two lines of antithetical couplet, one. On the left side, it said, small display of courage, obtain good fortune during the four seasons. 
On the right side, it said, large display of skills, obtain good prosperity in all four directions. There was one more phrase in the middle, luck changes with time. That's right, this is a gaming establishment. This gaming den occupied approximately one mu, two, of land and was considered a huge tent. Feng Yuan entered the room. On either side of the tent, there were three rows of counters. There were amber or fossils on the counter. Some were the size of a palm, while others were the size of a face. There were some that were even bigger, they were as tall as a person. It evidently couldn't fit on the counter, so it was dumped on the floor. Unlike the other tent businesses, this one was deafeningly quiet. Several goo masters stood in front of the counters, some attentively examining the rocks on exhibit, while others took the fossils and massaged them in their hands to get a feel for them. Some were conversing calmly with their companions, while others were debating the price with their shop clerks. But, no matter what they talked about, they spoke quietly so as not to disturb others. This was a rock gambling establishment. There were various types of goo in the goo universe, each with its own shape, size, and effect. Goo worms must consume their specific diet. They can only survive for a brief period of time without food. Nature, on the other hand, was both callous and beneficent to life forms. The goo worms have a possibility of survival even if they are starved. That was to hibernate and seal itself. If the moonlight goo does not have any moon orchid petals to devour, it may self-seal. It will strive to conserve as much energy as possible, similar to winter hibernation, and will slip into a deep slumber. Not only would the blue glow on its body fade away at this point, but it would also transform from a clear crystal to a grey rock coated in a layer of rock shell. The rock crust will eventually thicken and transform into a boulder. For example, if the liquor worm self-seals, it will build a white cocoon around itself, folding its body and falling into a deep sleep within the cocoon. Of course, not every goo worm will be in this state of sealing and hibernation. It has a low probability of occurring, and in most circumstances, the goo worm will starve to death rather than hibernate. Only a limited number of goo worms can self-seal under certain conditions. A few goo masters who unintentionally obtained these sealed goo worms rocks or cocoons would awaken the slumbering goo worms within. As a result, they would enjoy a lucky break. Some of the goo masters became successful as a result of this, and it was a watershed moment in their life. These circumstances occur frequently in the goo master world, and are frequently false or true tales that give people hope and dreams. These rumors were the inspiration for the idea for this rock gambling den. On the exterior, these rocks all appeared the same. Only by opening them can one tell if there is a goo worm hidden inside. In a small-sized rock gambling den like this, 9 out of 10 rocks are solid core, having no goo worms inside. Even if there are goo worms inside the rock, they may not be living worms, most of them are dead goo. But once someone hits the jackpot of a live goo, under most situations, one would be able to earn a huge fortune. If the goo worm is a rare species, they either become a successful person in life or get murdered and robbed of their fortune. Fang Yuan knew this in his heart, owing to his familiarity with the circumstances beyond these doors. He had previously joined in a trade caravan as a clerk in the rock gaming den. He then ran his own rock gambling den, which was even bigger than this one, it was a medium-sized rock gambling den. He managed to dupe some gamblers while also making mistakes that allowed other bettors to win a valuable goo worm. Fang Yuan stopped at the entryway for a moment, surveying his surroundings before gently walking to the counter on the left side. Every few meters behind the counter, there was a store assistant, both male and female. A green belt hung around their waists, indicating that they were not regular people but rank 1 goo masters. The majority were in the early phases, with only a handful in the middle. When a female goo master near him saw Fang Yuan approaching a counter, she smiled softly and said, Young master, what goo worm do you need? Every rock on this counter is sold at 10 primeval stones each. If this is your first try, why don't you go to the right counter? The rocks there are sold at only 5 primeval stones. If you are seeking thrills, you can go to the high-end counter in the middle, the rocks sold there are at. This was an experienced female goo master who had previously worked at the rock gambling den. She observed Fang Yuan as he entered and deduced from his looks, age, and height that he was a student. All of those who came to gamble were goo masters. Students were regarded second-rate goo masters who were just beginning their cultivation. Where would they get the money to come and gamble rocks if they were frequently short on funds due to feeding their goo worms? 
students enjoy this since they usually come to look around and have an eye-opening experience that satisfies their curiosity. Most were only window shoppers, however others with well-to-do families might try to buy one to trial. However, most people just bought the cheapest fossil. As a result, the female goo master had no expectations about how many rocks Fang Yuan could purchase. Let me take a look around first, Fang Yuan said flatly, then began looking deeply into the pile. It should be at this counter in this particular rock gambling den, according to his memories. But it had been 500 years, which was far too long. Many things were already hazy to him, especially since 500 years of memory was a massive capacity, thus Fang Yuan couldn't remember anything vividly. He could only barely recall that on the first night the caravan arrived this year, a lucky bird spent five primeval stones to purchase a fossil with a purple gold luster. He got a mudskin toad after opening it on the spot. This toad goo was then purchased by another guy, earning him a small sum in primordial stones. Fang Yuan frowned after a time of observation. Fossils with a purple gold light numbered up to 20 on this counter. In which rock was a mudskin toad hidden? Every rock in this area was priced at 10 primal stones. Fang Yuan had 98 primal stones with him at the time, and he could buy up to 9 pieces. But, in reality, he couldn't count like way. The repercussions of any risk or gamble have to be considered. Fang Yuan was no longer a newcomer, like those gamblers who believed they had been favored by heaven. Those who believed they had been blessed by fate were frequently those who fell victim to the mischief of fate itself. I'm alone, with no relatives or friends to help me, I need to save some primeval stones to survive, as well as to buy food for my goo worms. He counted, and under the most basic reservation, he could only buy seven pieces of fossil. This rock, the purple gold is dotted like the stars, but it's flat as a pancake, there's definitely no mudskin toad inside. This piece has striking purple gold color, but it is only fist sized. If there really is a mudskin toad inside, the rock should be at least 30% larger. This purple gold fossil, well it's big, but the surface is extremely smooth. While the mudskin toad's skin is supposed to be rough and uneven, this is evidently not the one. Fang Yuan continued to watch and assess utilizing the cancellation method. When goo worms hibernate after self-sealing, they generate a natural fossil that is undetectable by the majority of the world's detection technologies. The other detection methods were too crude, and if utilized, they would quickly kill the barely surviving goo worm within. As a result, when goo masters chose rocks, they could only rely on their intuition, experience, and luck, with a little help from instinct. This would not be considered gambling otherwise. Of course, there are numerous wonders in this vast universe, and one cannot rule out the possibility that an exceedingly gentle detecting mechanism exists, allowing a goo master to determine whether a rock contains a goo worm. Fang Yuan had heard such claims in his previous life, but after experimenting, he discovered that they were all lies. Fang Yuan thought to himself, if such a method really exists, it has to be a hidden legacy, controlled in the hands of a small number of mysterious people, having no impact on the gambling business. It was still peaceful in the Qing Mao mountain range, but the further east one goes, the more rich the gambling dens became. Every family settlement in the Bai Tiyou, 3, mountain range has its own gambling den. There were even large-scale gambling dens established in some large-scale forts. Pan Shi, 4, village, Gu Mu, 5, village, and Kengjing, 6, village were famous for their rock gambling, and there were even megazized gambling houses. Each of these three massive gambling dens had a thousand-year history. Their firm was still thriving, with an infinite number of gamblers. There had never been a situation where somebody had made a clean sweep. Fang Yuan was currently in a tent that could only be described as a small-scale gambling den. If any other 15-year-old came, they would be confused by all the different fossils, and even if they chose one, it would be by chance. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, was unique. For starters, he already knew a fraction of the answer from the beginning, thus his search range was reduced to less than 30 pieces. Of course, finding that one rock among these 20-odd fragments was also exceedingly tough. After observing for a while, he chose six pieces of purple gold fossils that best meet the requirements using his 500 years of knowledge and such a deep reservoir of information. He had an 80% likelihood that the mudskin toad was sleeping within one of these six relics. 1. An antithetical couplet can be found at https colon slash slash en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash antithetical underscore couple t. 
2, mu, 1 mu equals 666 23 meters 2, 3, by TOU means whitehead, 4, pan shi means monolith, 5, gu mu means ancient grave, and, 6, Chengjing means pale whale. Chapter 41, Rock Dissection I'd like to buy some rocks, Fang Yuan stated to the female Gu Master after deciding on his targets. Newbie, the female Gu Master thought immediately. Even the most shady gamblers would pay close attention if they wanted to buy the pebbles. They would carefully examine the stones before placing them in their palms and rubbing them to feel the surface and weight. Even after such actions, if people still have the wrong feeling, they will give up. No one would say bye right away. And for someone like Fang Yuan, who said bye right away, he is certainly a rookie with his first rock gambling experience. Despite this, the female Gu Master's countenance remained unchanged, and she continued to grin like a flower, saying softly to Fang Yuan, then which piece are you choosing? Fang Yuan indicated an item and remarked, this piece. She grabbed it right away. Fang Yuan pointed again, this time saying, this piece. She was perplexed because she had not expected this youngster to purchase two things. It appears that this youngster is the type to gamble heavily, she mentally assessed. Fang Yuan then pointed again, saying, and this piece, that piece, I'm buying them all. The female Gu master was astonished, and she couldn't stop herself from reassessing Fang Yuan. It appears that this ordinary looking youngster has a really good family background, otherwise, how would any ordinary Gu master have the spare cash to spend like this? The female Gu master's expression softened to believe that the young man in front of her was a genuine customer. This was a pleasant surprise. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, startled her once more when he pointed to the farthest purple gold rock and said, Oh yeah, and those two pieces as well. Which young master is this from the Guyu village? It looks like he's the main family branch's inheritor. If I can hook up with him, I might not need to stay here and slog as a shop clerk anymore, the female Gu master thought to herself. With this thinking, the female Gu Master's smile softened even more, and she even glanced seductively at Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan was surrounded by six rocks. Fang Yuan extracted sixty primal stones and presented them to the female Gu Master. All of the other Gu Masters in the tent were drawn to his act of payment. Oh, someone is going to rock gamble. We've been watching for over an hour, but we haven't acted yet. Now that someone is giving it a try, we might as well watch. It's a student. He actually took out 60 primeval rocks at once, his family must be affluent. He looks like a greenhorn. Mph, gambling rocks isn't so easy. He's gonna get hurt real bad. The Gu Masters stood there quietly debating, all their gazes fixed on Fang Yuan. Young Master, do you want to open the rocks right away? Our gambling den offers free service to open the rocks, the female Gu Master softly recommended, her eyes sending enticing glances. Fang Yuan looked over the audience with the corner of his eye, his lips twisting into a curious smile. He rejected the female Gu Master by waving his hand. Purple gold is my lucky color, and this is my first time betting, it is very meaningful. I'll open the rocks myself. The female Gu Master's eyes gleamed brightly as she reflected on her heroic demeanor, as expected of a wealthy young master. Never in her wildest thoughts would she have imagined Fang Yuan as kinless in Gu Yu Hamlet a vagabond with no support, forced to rely on himself for everything. Tisk, so what if you have money? I wonder which rich kid this is, coming here to waste his parents' hard-earned money. Ignorant young lad, how can one choose the rocks based on lucky color? Sigh, this act is simply akin to throw primeval stones into the water, and waiting to see the ripples for fun. The goo masters in the tent quickly lost their enthusiasm. Their already modest hopes vanished when they realized Fang Yuan was a prodigal son. Some Gu masters even averted their attention and turned around to examine the fossils on the counter. Fang Yuan's mental condition was unaffected by the changes in his surroundings. He triggered the primal essence within his primeval sea without expression, spilling it into the moonlight goo. The crescent mark on his right palm then emitted a faint water-like blue glow. Fang Yuan grabbed a purple gold pebble with his right hand and held it in his palm. He then closed his fingers and gently stroked the surface of the fossil. The blue light shone on, the waves of light rippling like water as the purple gold rock shrank in size, vast amounts of powder from rock shavings pouring out from the spaces between Fang Yuan's fingers and landing on the tent carpet. Young master has good hand to work, the female Gu master said, seizing the opportunity. This youngster isn't a good for nothing, what great skills, 
the Gu Masters said, his eyes flashing with a complex glimmer. They had begun to perceive Fang Yuan in a different way. Fang Yuan rubbed the blue light on the surface of the rock, demonstrating careful use of the moonlight goo. Normally, it would take two to three years of using the moonlight goo to reach this level. Being able to do this at Fang Yuan's age and student persona is quite impressive. See, he's using our Gu Yu clan's specialty, the moonlight goo, some of the Gu masters saw and became proud of Fang Yuan. But opening the rocks with this method is still too rough, shook several of the older and more experienced Gu masters. The purple gold pebble shrank from little larger than a palm to the size of a fist, grasped tightly between Fang Yuan's fingers. As the fossil grew in size, the blue light got more intense. Eventually, all that remained was a mound of rock powder settling on the carpet to form a little hill. There was no goo worm inside this solid rock. As expected, he's untrustworthy, the goo masters said, shaking their heads. Young master, there's still five pieces left, the female goo master reassured. Fang Yuan's expression was relaxed and undisturbed. He took the second purple gold rock and began to grind. But the end product was still a solid rock, there was no goo worm inside. The third piece remained unchanged. The goo masters became irritated. Stop looking. By relying on color to pick the rocks, there's no point in this gamble. If he gets a good goo from this, I'll eat the pile of rock powder on the floor, someone mockingly laughed. Don't give up young master, there are only three pieces left, you're only halfway through. The female goo master continued to push Fang Yuan forward. Fang Yuan grasped the fourth piece and ceased all motion when it reached palm size. Oh. There's something? The rock composition changed, it's not purple gold sediments, but a kind of ink black color. Don't tell me he really got super lucky from blinding guessing. The goo masters in the vicinity yelled gently. Young master, you must be careful from now on. Don't make sudden movements, hibernating goo worms are very fragile, and using too much strength will kill the goo worm inside. The female goo master was surprised by the circumstance. She advised carefully after being surprised for a brief moment. Fang Yuan's actions paused, his fingers rubbing together as fine granules fell. He was no longer as fluid as before, repeating the action at frequent intervals. The black rock powder gradually slid off, and as the rock shrank, Fang Yuan's movements became slower and gentler. The rock powder accumulated on the carpet when Fang Yuan's black-colored rock was scraped clean. Sigh, what a pity, it's a rock in a rock. What a waste of my emotions, I really thought there was a goo worm inside. You are all too easy to fool, is rock betting so easy? 9 out of 10 are all empty, how else is the shop going to make money? Young master, your luck is already not bad. Getting a rock in rock the first time, normal people cannot do it. The female goo master tried another way to console Fang Yuan, similarly to set the way for the outcome that awaited him. Getting nothing out of gambling rocks was highly typical, occurring nine times out of ten. In her perspective, Fang Yuan was picking at random, and the chances of acquiring a goo fossil were nearly none. Fang Yuan grinned but did not respond as he took out the fifth rock. He carefully ground, and in ten breaths, the surface of the purple-gold-colored rock was scraped away, revealing a rough-surfaced yellow mud ball. Chapter 42, Is that a goo? Eh, don't tell me it's another rock in the rock. By the looks of it, probably. But it's a little strange, this mud ball is enclosed by a purple gold rock surface. The mud ball surface should be compressed smoothly, so why is the surface still uneven? The others in the group were baffled. Fang Yuan's countenance remained unchanged as he held the mud ball in his palms, although his heart was somewhat moved. He kept on grinding. The powdery sand slipped off in the blue watery light. There were some dirt crumbs mixed in with the powder, which fell onto the pile of rock powder beside his leg. Don't tell me there's really something. Some of the goo masters looked, their eyes wide open. It's hard to say, someone said hesitantly. I believe there is, there is something, another said softly. The yellow mud ball shrank owing to friction, and when it was the size of a hand, someone barged into the tent. Young lad, hold up. I, Jia Jin Sheng, will be buying it. Fang Yuan's movement came to a halt, and the goo masters in the tent immediately concentrated their attention on this individual. On the outside, he appeared to be in his twenties or twenties and a half. He was dressed in a golden robe with a lace belt around his waist and a square-shaped jade piece on the belt. A word with the letter one was written across the piece of jade. This was clearly a rank one goo master. To be a rank one goo master at the age of twenty, it appears that his talent is lacking. 
However, this person's standing was fairly special. When the Gu masters in the tent saw him, they all bowed and greeted him, saying, Your subordinate greets you, second young master. Second young master. He called himself Jia Jin Sheng earlier, is he the half-brother of the merchant caravan leader, Jia Fu? This means to say, this rock gambling den is opened by him. But now that he appeared to interfere, it seems that he's breaking the gambling den's rules, the Gu masters said in a hushed voice. That's right, I'm the shopkeeper. Little brother, one. Aren't you afraid of your family's reprimand for coming out to gamble at such a young age? I'll offer 40 primeval stones now to buy that mud ball in your hand. What do you think? 40 primeval stones is a lot already, and there may not be a goo inside, but today I am in a good mood, so seeing as this is your first time gambling. 40 primeval stones. Fang Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly and laughed coldly, it appears you want to forcefully buy the mud ball fossil in my possession? Forceful purchase is violating the gambling den's rules, and you're now on Ching Mao Mountain, you want to bully a Guyu clansman like me in front of everyone. Oh, hearing Fang Yuan's final sentence, all the other Gu masters couldn't bear it and their hostility swelled uncontrolled as they looked towards Fang Yuan. Their demeanor toward Jia Jin Sheng had also deteriorated. Jia Jin Sheng had assumed that a 15-year-old like Fang Yuan would be simple to persuade with a few words. But to think that this Fang Yuan had such talents, and that with a single sentence, he had put Jia Jin Sheng in such a bind. When he saw the Gu masters getting ready to intervene, Jia Jin Sheng's expression changed instantly as he changed his tone, quickly waving his hands, Little brother, you're mistaken I am the shopkeeper of this gambling den, how could I ruin my own reputation by breaking my own rules? How would I be able to conduct business in the future? He he he. I just found your mud ball a little interesting. Thus I wanted to buy it. Fang Yuan was no longer paying attention to him. He turned back and returned his attention to the mud ball in his hands. His motions were deliberate and deliberate. Often, simply a speck of dry earth powder fell off after a few moments. A goo worm in hibernation followed him. Came gradually in front of everyone's eyes. My god, there really is a goo worm. He really opened a goo. What the hell, this sort of method of gambling can also work. This young man's luck is off the charts, he actually managed to forcefully luck out on getting a goo. The exasperation of the goo masters filled the tent immediately. The female goo master subconsciously covered her lips, unable to comprehend what she was witnessing. She'd gone to several mountain communities as a shop clerk, seen all kinds of people and customers, but she'd never witnessed such a funny sight. There really is a goo a cold light flashed over Jia Jin Sheng's eyes as he despised and regretted in his heart. The thing he despised the most was being taken advantage of. He had installed numerous surveillance devices in this gambling den that he had built. When a consumer was ready to open a gu, he'd get the news and would usually be forced to buy it. But now Fang Yuan was inside his gaming lair, getting a gu right in front of his eyes. Jia Jin Shang felt his heart throbbing. He ended up with a toad gu. It was completely yellow from head to toe. The belly was light yellow, and the back was brownish yellow with many pimply boils and nodules and warts, which were a distinguishing feature of the toad species. At first impression, it appeared little terrifying. It was only the size of a palm. It was like holding two to three eggs in your palm. Fang Yuan's face was serene in the face of admiration, envy, and annoyance as he skillfully deployed his primitive essence and injected it into the toad's body. Fang Yuan was refining the goo at the moment. Goo worms extracted from fossils are typically exceedingly feeble. They not only have little to no remaining power, but their consciousness is also lax, leaving them unprotected and unable to resist. As a result, the goo masters can easily refine them. The toad goo slowly opened its eyes after being awakened by Fang Yuan, and its belly faintly vibrated, softly screaming out. Croak. Its voice was mild, but it drew attention to everyone's expressions. The value differential between a goo that was alive and one that was dead was enormous. It's a live goo. He really opened a live goo someone rubbed his eyes, unable to believe it. This is the mudskin toad, damn it, it's the mudskin toad. Someone recognized the toad goo and screamed angrily. This young man has a lot of luck, why don't I have as much luck? Someone groaned, filled with difficult feelings like envy, jealousy, and resentment. Young master, congratulations this, this, this is to date, my first time seeing such a precious goo worm the female goo master was speechless her eyes gleaming with life. It's actually the mudskin toad. 
This is a rare rank 2 goo worm with a value of 500 primeval stones. Damn it, damn it. Someone actually managed to open such a goo worm in my shop. I've lost big time, big time. Jia Jin Sheng's face was pale as he stared daggers at the toad, his heart aching to snatch the goo away. But he knew he couldn't, because doing so would be asking for problems. This was not his family's village, but the domain of the Guyu clan. Maybe I should have paid a bit more primeval stones, maybe he might have given it to me. That's right, he's just a student. If I offered a hundred primeval stones, there's no way he'd not be moved. Why didn't I do that? Jia Jin Sheng was filled with sorrow. No, maybe this young lad doesn't know what he's talking about. Even if he opened a mudskin toad, I should be able to suppress the price and buy it. Jia Jin Sheng's heart was filled with renewed optimism. This glimmer of hope was shattered the following second by Fang Yuan's statements. Fang Yuan simply stared at the mudskin toad in his hands, disregarding the applause and amazement of those around him. He spoke in a calm voice and said to Jia Jin Sheng, It's a simple matter. Mudskin toad, rank 2 goo worm, requires 500 grams of yellow soil every meal, the more fertile the soil the better. Its species is few in number and it is the necessary main goo in refining the treasure brass toad. The market price is 500 primeval stones. Jia Jin Sheng, do you want to buy this? You, actually know so clearly, muttered Jia Jin Sheng. He couldn't say anything after such a shock. If you're unwilling, that's fine, I'll sell it to someone else, I'm sure someone will be interested, Fang Yuan added. Hold it, wait, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, but can't this price be lower? Jia Jin Sheng's smile bit errand. Fang Yuan turned around and left. Jia Jin Sheng pursued him quickly. Don't don't go I'll buy, I'll buy it. Fang Yuan has no intention of raising this mudskin toad. Fang Yuan was still a rank 1 beginning stage despite being a rank 2 gu. Although it ate yellow soil, Qing Mao Mountain was covered in green soil, making it difficult to obtain food for it. Furthermore, if Fang Yuan does not sell this gu worm, he will have to feed three goo worms himself. Even with the increased primal stone cost, the present amount of primordial stones in his possession would not be sufficient to feed them. Thus, Fang Yuan's aim was to sell the mudskin toad right away, collect the 500 ancient stones, and make a fortune. 500 primal stones were regarded a big amount by a rank 1 early stage like Fang Yuan. The trade was accomplished quickly and Fang Yuan handed over the mudskin toad to Jia Jin Sheng in front of the audience while taking five large money bags. Each bag contained a hundred primordial stones. Fang Yuan had initially had 98 primal stones, but after spending 60 on gambling stones, he only had 38 left. His fortune had multiplied many times over, and he now possessed 538 primal stones. Many Gu masters turned green with envy when they saw this. Fang Yuan stepped out of the tent with the five bags in his bosom and the last piece of purple gold fossil. Young master, you're not opening that fossil. The female Gu master blinked quickly and pointed to Fang Yuan's back, reminding him loudly. Fang Yuan paid no attention and exited the gambling den without looking back. He left a swarm of astonished Gu masters looking at each other silently behind him. Jin Jia Sheng refers to Fang Yuan as little brother as a greeting, they are not connected in any manner. Chapter 43, The Sixth and Final Purple Gold Rock The tides in the green copper primeval sea rose and fell, ebbing and flowing. The liquor worm curled into a ball above sea level, producing wine vapor that gradually turned into white mist. A swoosh of primordial essence raced up against the tide and into the wine mist. When the tide went out, there was just half of it left, and the color was even deeper. It had progressed from the early stage jade green, one, to the middle stage pale green. Although the middle stage primordial essence dropped into the water, it did not mingle with the first stage primeval essence. It sank to the bottom as if it were denser. As a result, the upper layer of the primeval sea was filled with initial stage primeval essence, while the lower half was filled with middle stage primeval essence. The wine mist circulated within the aperture as time passed. The first stage primeval essence steadily decreased as the liquor worm refined it, while the middle stage primeval essence gradually rose. The lower layer middle stage primeval essence progressively ascended, while the top layer initial stage primeval essence continued to decline but also climbed in sea level, as seen with the naked eye. Fang Yuan collected the natural essence from the primordial stones while refining his primeval essence, quickly replacing the depleting primeval essence in his aperture. Finally, 
His aperture's 45% primeval C was entirely refined into middle stage primeval essence. Many thanks to the middle stage primeval essence, or else I would not have been able to open the rocks five times in the gambling den, Fang Yuan said, sitting in a lotus position on his bed. It was now late at night. He did not visit any of the other shops after leaving the gambling den, instead returning to the academy. Even if it was on the outskirts of the Guyu Mountain Village, as a rank 1 first stage Gu Master, holding 538 primal stones was still too much. This isn't just because the prehistoric stones were heavy and difficult to transport. It also arouses the envy of others, in another sense, it would jeopardize his life. If a rank 1 higher stage or even a rank 2 sought his possessions, Fang Yuan's existing abilities would not allow him to compete. Wealth comes and goes, but humans die because of wealth, it's pathetic. What's laughable is that many people in this world cannot comprehend that. The boat of benefits carries many people, but has also sunk many others. Fang Yuan's lips curled into a cold smirk as he examined the grey-white primeval stones in his hands. A whole prehistoric stone was around the size of a duck egg. However, because half of the essence had been drained from the stone in his grasp, it was a complete circle smaller. Fang Yuan has no regrets. Everything has its advantages and disadvantages. Fang Yuan was merely a C-grade talent, but he was refining his primeval essence with liquor goo, and his primeval stone expenditure was multiple times that of others his age. Nonetheless, it was because of this that he was able to overcome his lack of aptitude. If the true cultivation rate could be calculated, he would be in the top three. Fang Yuan returned the primitive stones to his money bag and extracted the final purple gold fossil. He bought six fossils in the gambling den and opened five of them right away, bringing the sixth back with him. His eyes sparkled as he activated the moonlight goo, grinding the rock with five fingers and carefully dissecting it. The purple gold fossil shrank steadily beneath the blue waves, and was eventually ground to nothingness, leaving behind a pile of powder on the ground. Fang Yuan was not surprised, because nine out of ten times in rock gambling, you lose. Despite his 500 years of experience, he could only manage 8 loses out of 10, and the remaining 2 occasions, it was determined by whether the goo was alive or dead. Dead goo was essentially worthless. When it comes to living goo, they may not be a rare variety of goo worm, and even if they were, they could produce a life-threatening problem. Fang Yuan's current cultivation level was still quite low, ranking him toward the bottom of the goo masters. If it hadn't been for the fact that this was the Guyu Mountain Village, the mudskin toad he had before might have been snatched away by Jia Jin Shang. Gambling was never a good way to build family wealth, and it was a major cause of bankruptcy and debt. This was not the development route that Fang Yuan desired. Despite the lack of a goo worm in the final purple gold fossil, Fang Yuan was not disappointed. In fact, as he gazed at the pile of rock powder, he began to smile. Indeed, his main reason for entering the gaming den was to get his hands on this pile of rock powder. He'd simply gotten the mudskin toad for the sake of convenience. Nobody realized the truth of the result until he opened the fossil discreetly. He might now declare that the liquor worm had been woken and subdued from the purple gold fossil. This was a fantastic idea. To begin with, no one could prove the existence of the goo worm in the fossils. Who's to say the liquor worm couldn't hibernate within the purple gold fossil? That is entirely feasible. Second, he had multiple eyewitnesses. He cracked open the mudskin toad, which would have made an impression on the goo masters at the gaming den. Third, even if he was rigorously questioned, he could blame everything on his luck. Unfathomable was the concept of luck. Even if someone thought that this was the flower wine monk's liquor worm, they'd have no idea how to argue against Fang Yuan with an explanation like luck. Fang Yuan's look was foreboding in the dim light. Covering it on one side was analogous to covering a fire with paper. There will come a day when he would be revealed. He'd have to strike first to eliminate a hidden threat like the liquor worm. This is Fang Yuan's personal style. Furthermore, he had thoroughly considered everything, and the cultivation phase that was to follow would need him to expose the liquor worm. For a rank 1 goo like the liquor worm, it is extremely precious to rank 1 goo masters. But for rank 2 goo masters, it is no longer compatible for them. Thus even if this was exposed, all I would get is some attention, but it would not affect the overall situation, thus becoming nothing to be concerned over. It is not like the spring and autumn cicada. If the spring and autumn cicada is exposed, I might die a horrible death at the very next moment.
Fang Yuan's 500 years of problem-solving expertise had already made him intimately versed with human psychology, with their every thought as apparent as day to him. The flower wine traveler's legacy and the mudskin toad, among my memories these are the only two treasures here, and now that they have been obtained by me, what I can do next is only gradual and steadfast cultivation. Fang Yuan sighed deeply and relaxed his body, a tremendous sense of exhaustion overwhelming him. Sleep could not be replaced by the primeval sea cultivation of a goo master. Fang Yuan drew his cover and sat on his bed, his eyes half open. Despite the fact that there were 500 primitive stones buried beneath the bed, as well as numerous pots of green bamboo wine, he felt a sense of haste and danger. These 500 prehistoric stones were already a kind of restriction. From bloom to collapse, Fang Yuan was certain that his primordial stone expense would only increase in the future. His main source of revenue, however, was extortion from his peers. He was becoming increasingly aware of his peers' progress and development. Gu Yu Mo Chen, Qi Chen, and his brother Gu Yu Feng Zhang have substantially developed their kicks and punches in recent extortions. He used to only need one or two strikes to knock them out, but now he needs five or six. Another three to four plunders, and their punches and kicks would have been polished fully. If they challenge me one by one, with my current stamina, I cannot endure that kind of round-robin battle. Five hundred primeval stones might seem a lot, but with my current expenditure of four stones a day, it is actually not that much. Qing Mao Mountain has no more treasures, but nearby on Baigu, too, Mountain is a secretly built strength inheritance of a rank 4 Gu Master of the Righteous Path. Sai, it still comes down to the flower wine monk's treasure being insufficient, only providing me with a liquor worm. Hmm. There's still the film picture wall, perhaps I can sell it to a certain caravan merchant. Fang Yuan pondered while his eyelids drooped and he fell asleep. Chapter 44, Monkey Wine, Refusing the Liquor Worm's Opportunity Fang Yuan returned to the commercial district outside the mountain village during lunch break on the second day. There were few residents at the tentage area because many of them had to work during the day. According to his memories, Fang Yuan walked to the place where the vendor was selling intimate grass the night before, only to find an empty cart remaining on the spot, dragged along by an ostrich. It stood proudly on the spot, its body the size of an ostrich but the appearance of a chicken, the back of the creature bulging into a curved angle a pair of wide wings collected on the side of its body, the feathers splendidly bright in seven colors, the chicken head raised tall, its huge red coxcomb like an agate crown, flashing with the luster of a gem under the sunlight. It appears I was too late, the intimate grass was sold out. What a shame, if I could just get a few caddy of intimate grass, I'd be able to save a lot of ancient stones. Fang Yuan's footsteps came to a standstill as he walked away, continuing to explore the region. Come try the delicious wine from all the different villages. There are over a hundred different types of wine here, such as the lantern grass wine, the nine tune wine with a strong aftertaste, the light and elegant ancient dragon well, the sweet and sour flower rock tune, the mouth-watering hundred spring old cellar, the rich and heavy fragrant intoxication of three autumns. A shop assistant was hawking with gusto in front of a blue round bucket before the tent. Fang Yuan's eyes lit up as he became instantly fascinated and he turned to enter the wine shop. The wine shop's decor was one of a kind. A goo master stood behind a large counter in the tent's interior, surrounded by tens of crystal ladybugs the size of wicker baskets that stuck to the tent's canvas walls. There was no carpet on the floor, only uncovered mountain rocks and soil, where vibrantly colored mushrooms thrived. These mushrooms came in a variety of colors and were spherical and slightly charming, some were as huge as tables, while others were as small as benches, and they were frequently grouped in groups where a giant table mushroom was surrounded by a few lesser bench mushrooms. This is the innocent mushroom, grown on purpose by a goo master. It has the power to absorb dust and particles in the air to purify it, and it's a form of grass goo. Fang Yuan immediately recognized the mushroom's origins. He sat on one of the short mushrooms, and the surface quickly sank down, giving Fang Yuan the impression that he was sitting on a sofa like those on earth. Young master, this is the wine catalog, would you like to look through it? A shop assistant approached. Fang Yuan looked through the wine list and noticed that the wine here was more expensive than the green bamboo wine. Fang Yuan put down the catalog and said, I'll have a cup of monkey wine. The shop worker turned around and exclaimed, a cup of monkey wine. 
The rank one goo master at the counter heard and promptly stooped down to pull out a bamboo wine cup. He then took the wine cup and turned around to face the tentage, where tens of crystal ladybugs, head facing downwards and tail facing upwards, were softly hooked onto the blue tent walls as if they were only decorations for the tent. These crystal ladybugs were also a form of goo, with an empty stomach because they were frequently used by goo masters to transport priceless liquids. Their bodies were transparent, as if formed of crystals, and from the outside, one could see that numerous types of liquor could be discovered within the ladybug's stomach. Among them, the goo master swiftly discovered the crystal ladybug containing the monkey wine. He placed the bamboo wine cup at the ladybug's mouthpiece and softly stroked the exoskeleton with his other hand. After a small bit of primordial essence entered the crystal ladybug's body, it opened its mouth and a torrent of liquor gushed into the bamboo wine cup. The liquid splashed around in the cup until it was completely full. The goo master placed the bamboo wine cup filled with monkey wine on the counter, and the shop assistant, who had been waiting for quite some time, carefully held up the cup and took a few steps to present it to Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan just took a small sip, but the monkey wine was a fruit liquor, sweet, pleasant, and delicate on the palate. He stopped drinking, but Fang Yuan summoned the liquor worm with a thought. The white and plump liquor worm transformed into a flash of white light and curved an arc in the air before landing with a plop in the wine cup. The wine spilled all over the place, including the mushroom table. The liquor worm danced merrily in the wine cup, and the monkey wine could be seen dwindling with the naked eye. After a few breaths, the cup had dried out, with not a single drop left. It's the liquor worm, said the goo master behind the counter, his eyes shining. He was a rank one goo master with grade D talent only able to follow the merchant caravan and work in this wine shop, and his goal was to sightsee while looking for opportunities. The liquor worm can refine primordial essence and raise it by an entire realm, making it an incredibly valuable goo worm to a rank one goo master. Isn't this the chance he's been looking for? Do you have any plans to sell this liquor worm, young master? He approached with excitement and sincerity in his eyes. Fang Yuan shook his head, dismissing him with firmness, and then stood up to depart. This time, his motivation was to expose the liquor worm in his possession, he had never considered selling it. Please, young master, young master, hold on. I am very serious about this, perhaps we can sit down and talk about it. The goo master unwillingly accompanied Fang Yuan to the tentage entrance, but Fang Yuan did not respond. He could only stand there, his face solemn, as he watched Fang Yuan's rear view turn around a corner and disappear into the midst of the horizon. The sun gently faded and the crescent moon took its place, unconsciously. The moonlight shined brightly at night, but it was overwhelmed by the countless street lights in the merchant shops. Fang Yuan was crowded left and right as he entered the merchant shop tonight, unwittingly hearing all sorts of talks. Normally, the stores are open for three days and three nights. The merchant caravan would have gone on their journey by the morning of the following day, as it is already the second night. As a result, if we want to buy something, we must act quickly. I saw a golden bell goo the other day, but it was too expensive. It didn't become much cheaper after a lengthy time of bargaining with the shopkeeper. I'll go have a look later tonight. Did you hear what I heard? Last night, a young man opened a mudskin toad and profited 500 primordial stones. Fang Yuan listened intently disappointed that he had not heard anything about the liquor worm. The liquor worm is only a rank 1 goo worm, but it is extremely meaningful to a rank 1 goo master, while it is useless to a rank 2 or rank 3 goo master because it cannot refine their primeval essence any further. As a result, it's understandable that no one noticed. Taking the initiative to uncover the liquor worm, on the other hand, cannot be hastened for a period of time. If I overdo it, I might wind up letting the cat out of the bag, Fang Yuan thought silently in his heart as he walked. There was a hustle in front of him at this time. Fang Yuan then heard someone cry, Come quickly, there's a dishonest merchant here selling fake goo to our clansmen. The crowd was filled with rage. Oh, something similar is taking place. Go and see quickly, which shop dares to cheat our clansmen. Fang Yuan followed the crowd and came closer to the disturbance. What he saw was a vast crowd clustering around the mouth of a giant red tent with some curiously looking and others staring coldly, but the majority of the individuals were engulfed in rage. Two people stood outside the tent. One of them was a young rank 2 Gu master dressed in the Guyu clan's traditional garb. Jia Jin Sheng, the owner of the gambling den, 
was the other individual with a familiar face. My clansman, this person in front of me sold me a fake goo yesterday, the young goo master said to the throng as he raised a black goo worm in his hands, lying to me that it was a black boar goo and selling it to me for 250 primordial stones. To think that when I went home to refine it, I discovered it wasn't a black boar goo, but rather a regular stinky fat worm. Don't accuse me falsely, Jiajin Shang said coldly. When did I mention it was a black boar goo? What evidence do you have? The young goo master became enraged when he saw Jiajin Shang's denial and grabbed Jiajin Shang's wrist, saying, You cunning merchant, you dare to deny it you actually dare to lie to me of the Guyu clan on Qing Mao Mountain itself, are you looking for death? Let go of me, Jiajin Shang yelled, pushing the young goo master's hand away, if you want to cause trouble and extort money, you should find a better target. I'm not afraid of you, my brother is Jiafu, a goo master of rank 4, what can you do to me? You the young goo master gazed wide-eyed, but did not dare to act since the name of a rank 4 goo master intimidated him. Bah, Jiajin Sheng spat on the ground, raising his head and laughing mockingly at the young goo master, it was you who wanted to take advantage of the cheap goo. Didn't you ponder about why a black boar goo, which can increase a goo master's strength and is a rare goo worm, was sold even cheaper than a liquor worm? It is generally sold for 600 primordial stones. Did you think you'd be able to get one for only 250 primordial stones? Keep dreaming, bastard. The young goo master clenched his teeth, his face flushed crimson with hatred, his chest burning with shame rage. People were restless and disgust angrily, but no one dared to speak up because Jiafu's rank 4 goo master status was like a gigantic hill in front of them, stabilizing the crowd. This lad is too vicious, what a cunning merchant. No wonder he dared to be so arrogant on Qing Mao Mountain. He is actually Jiafu's little brother. I heard that they are just half-brothers, but even with that rank 1 cultivation, he is able to use this relationship to act unrestrained in the caravan. What exactly happened here? A booming voice spoke up at this point. Jiafu is here. The leader is here to settle the dispute. Everyone give way. Everyone split and formed a small corridor between them, bringing the discussion to a standstill. The leader of the merchant caravan, Jiafu, a middle-aged goo master with a powerful short frame and a huge belly, strode in wearing a long-sleeved yellow robe. Sir Jiafu, my regards, the young goo master was enraged but did not dare to speak, instead, he forced himself to withstand the rage and paid his respects to Jiafu. Jiajin Sheng was stuck in place, unprepared for his brother's arrival, his face turning pale as fury flashed across his eyes. Fang Yuan, who was watching from a distance and pondering the scenario, captured this strange expression. Chapter 45, Free of the Plans, but Caught in the Urn. Hello, young Gu Master, what's the matter? Jiafu stepped to the center of the gathering and inquired politely. The young Gu Master was flattered, so he cupped his fists again, pumped up his bravery, and described the entire issue to the surrounding clansmen. So that's what happened, Jiafu acknowledged, before asking Jiajin Sheng, little brother, is this true? Jiajin Shang snorted bitterly and moved his head away from his brother. Jiafu reflected gravely. The folks around him were silent, not daring to disrupt his thoughts, as they awaited his decision. This was owing to Jiajin Shang's deception, but the young Gu master was also to blame for being selfish and not being vigilant, or he would not have been tricked. Even the Gu Yu clan leader couldn't stop Jiafu's rank for cultivation from defending his brother. I've understood the situation, my brother is at fault for this matter causing this young man to suffer a loss and buy fake products, I am truly sorry, Jiafu said, cupping his fists towards the young Gu master. Sir Jiafu, the young Gu master responded meekly, you are a rank 4 Gu master, I am merely a rank 2, this is too much for me, too much. Hehe, he, this has nothing to do with cultivation levels, I act impartially regardless of ability, Jiafu waved his palm. A mistake is a mistake, and I apologize on behalf of the merchant caravan. As for recompense, how about this, you lost 250 primordial stones, so I will compensate you twice that amount on behalf of the Jia family. He promptly fulfilled his promise, as a disciple took out five money bags and delivered them to the young Gu master in public. Every money bag was stuffed to the full with a hundred primordial stones. The young Gu master took over the money bag, speechless because he was overwhelmed. However, I have some advice for you, Jia Fu said. A black boar goo is very rare, because it can permanently increase a goo master's strength. Even though it is only rank 1, 
It is quite difficult to find on the market. Every time one appeared on the market, it was instantly purchased. The cost is approximately 600 primordial stones. Attempting to obtain one with 250 primordial stones is impractical. Junior has learned his lesson, the young Gu master said gratefully to Jiafu. The audience roared in applause. Sir Jiafu is brilliant. Magnificent, as expected of Sir Jiafu. As a rank 4 Gu master, he did not make use of his status to bully the weaker party. Sir Jiafu really is the role model of the righteous path. No, no, Jiafu said respectfully, cupping his fists towards the throng. Our Jia family business is founded on trust and honesty. Everyone, including my brother, is youthful and naive, and he enjoys pulling pranks on others. He is actually extremely nice, I hope everyone can be more forgiving of him, don't take it personally. The crowd's applause grew louder. Hmph, Jia Jin Sheng muttered as he stamped on the ground and entered the tent, then exited out the back door. Fang Yuan discreetly observed this, thinking in his heart, it appears that the image wall at the flower wine monk's place can be sold. The flower wine monk had used a photo audio Gu to record the heinous acts of the fourth generation Gu Yu clan leader, and before he died, he used the photo audio Gu and slapped it on the wall, creating an image wall, revealing the truth to the people. Fang Yuan had long intended to sell this image wall in order to maximize his income, believing that the other two clan families on Qing Mao Mountain, the Bai family and the Xiong family, would be highly interested in it. However, selling this personally would be wrong because his cultivation was too weak, and if he brought this image wall to the other towns, he would be easily silenced. Even if the deal went smoothly and he returned safely, there was no such thing as a forever secret, and if it was disclosed to the Guyu's higher UPS, he would be booted out of the clan family at best. According to Fang Yuan's intentions, he still needed to use the Guyu clan. Therefore the safest method was to sell it to a certain merchant in the caravan, all of them were foreigners and were not involved in the village issues, so it was the best alternative for him. This caravan would depart the Guyu mountain community in one day and travel to either the Xiong or Bai families. Fang Yuan could minimize his risks by selling to them, it was the most secure option. One more cup. Where is the wine? Can you get me the wine quickly? Are you afraid I won't be able to pay? Jia Jin Sheng howled and smacked the mushroom table. Young Master Jia, here's your wine, the cashier said hurriedly. Jia Jin Sheng took the bamboo cup, tilted his head, and drank the whiskey. Good wine, he exclaimed, his voice harsh and dismal. He slammed the cup down on the table and howled again, get me another glass, I want as many as you can supply. The clerks were afraid to anger him and could only do what he said. Fortunately, this wine establishment was already packed. Not only were the mushroom tables busy, but so were the adjacent streets, Jia Jin Sheng's inebriated attitude was not unusual in this noisy area. Jia Jin Sheng sipped cup by cup, hoping to drown his sorrows, no one saw that as he drank, two obvious lines of tears spilled down his cheeks. Who would know of his anguish and sorrow? A terrible person must have a pathetic side, and everyone has their own story. He was the youngest of his brothers, the most gorgeous and resembling his father the most, and so the most adored by his father, but heaven mocked him by bestowing just D-grade talent on him. He grew up under his brother's strain, outraged and wanting to rebel, but with that talent, there was nothing he could do. His father sensed his impending death and desired to divide his possessions. Two people were to lead a trade caravan, and the results would be used to divide the family property. Jia Jin Sheng wanted to rely on his own methods to achieve family riches and clan recognition but he ended up being his brother's stepping stone once more. When Jia Fu came, he realized he had fallen into a trap, this was a ruse from the start. But what could he do? Once he entered this caravan, he was bound to be Jia Fu's fodder. The difference between rank 4 and rank 1 was so great that he was helpless to fight again. Jia Fu he forced this word from his tongue, his eyes burning with fury, unable to take it lying down. Are you willing to deal with your brother? I can assist you. He was interrupted by a voice. Jia Jin Sheng was taken aback, but when he turned around, he noticed that someone had been sitting behind him for quite some time. He shook his head and blinked many times before realizing who it was. If not for Fang Yuan, who else? It's you, he said, slightly irritated, I remember you lucky lad, acquiring a mudskin toad from my gambling den you're here to ridicule me. I have a huge business, Fang Yuan said to Jia Jin Sheng, his eyes as icy as water. If you want to acquire better results and get more assets, why not listen to me? 
Jia Jin Sheng sat up, his back straightened, and he asked, How do you know about the assets? Outsiders were not aware of this secret, but Feng Yuan was able to figure it out. The Jia family's business is not top secret, how can it remain hidden from those who want to know? Feng Yuan laughed coldly and remembered something from his prior existence. The Jia family head was a legendary figure who started from scratch, making his fortune through merchant caravans and revitalizing the Jia family's village. As he grew older, he asked his children to form a caravan in twos and split the assets based on their results, the better they did, the more family assets they received. However, his first son Jia Fu and second son Jia Gui were exceptionally skilled, and although competing for six to seven years, they were unable to reach a conclusion, and there was no obvious victor even after the family leader died. After the Jia family had died, there was an enormous amount of assets. While competing for the assets, the two brothers' conflict escalated and both called in external help, resulting in a large-scale Gu competition, and eventually, both of them died. The Jia family, which had prospered quickly, also failed quickly, causing people to marvel. Jia Jin Sheng narrowed his eyes, for Fang Yuan's reasoning was unmistakable, it had already been two years after his father declared the wealth distribution, and there are no impenetrable barriers in the world, so even if someone found out about it, it would be nothing unusual. His main concern was whether this was another trap set by Jia Fu, but there was no harm in listening. Fang Yuan did not respond right once, surveying his surroundings. This was the same wine cellar he had entered earlier in the afternoon, the merchant ran autonomously, and the shop was busy at night. Discussing here was far safer than in a silent location because it prevented the eavesdropping of certain goo worms. He grasped Jia Jin Sheng's ear and said, Lend me your ear. Jia Jin Sheng snorted angrily, but inclined his head forward. He frowned and stared at Fang Yuan coldly after hearing her explanation. This business involves the three families on Qing Mao Mountain, and we merchants despise getting involved in other people's disputes. Hmph, Jia Fu brought you here to harm me, right? Fang Yuan had long expected him to be suspicious, so he stood up and departed without explaining. He he, in that case, I'll go talk to your brother. Jia Jin Sheng narrowed his eyes, staring at Fang Yuan, and it wasn't until Fang Yuan left the wine shop that he lost his patience, chasing him out of the tent and catching up to him, don't go, we can have a talk. I know you're suspicious of me, but now that your brother has you firmly caught, you're almost close to finished, Fang Yuan said coldly, placing both hands behind his back. There is yet hope if you choose to trust in me, else, you are doomed. Are you brave enough to place this wager? Jia Jin Sheng's attitude altered as he corrected himself, saying, Jia Fu is only a little older, I have never acknowledged him as my brother, but you're right, I'm taking this bet. Fang Yuan declared gravely, 2,000 primeval stones, no haggling. Too expensive, this trade is high risk, Jia Jin Sheng said furiously. The greater the risk, the greater the reward, Fang Yuan said with a strong shake of his head, and if you sell it to those two families, you will only earn much more. This I believe, for these years the Bai family has been growing fast, and an agreed talent called Bai Ningbing has recently appeared, he has a great future ahead, Jia Jin Sheng nodded solemnly. The situation on Qing Mao Mountain is steadily improving. Your Gu Yu family's hegemony is eroding, and if I sell this to the Bai family, I can at least double my money. Hearing Jia Jin Sheng's grasp of the situation on Qing Mao Mountain, Fang Yuan couldn't help but reassess him, thinking, this Jia Jin Sheng, he is still a merchant family member after all, not those useless second generations. Jia Jin Sheng took a deep breath. Regardless of whether this is a trap, I'm jumping in. I promise you. 2,000 primeval stones it is however, I want to see the merchandise first. Of course, follow me, Fang Yuan said as he led the way. Jia Jin Sheng was already locked in the urn, and Fang Yuan had complete control of the situation. Chapter 46, Don't Overthink It When Killing People Sigma is the translator, while Sigma is the editor. Fang Yuan led Jia Jin Sheng to the mountain cavern based on his memories. The two entered the fissure in the stone, and the passage narrowed as their vision became darkened. Jia Jin Sheng became more cautious because he was in a new setting. Finally, he was unable to maintain his composure. I have a question, Jia Fu always treats people with honesty and is amicable with a good reputation. On the other hand, I lied and cheated, forcing transactions through coercion. Why did you choose to deal with me and not him? Fang Yuan's voice pierced the stone crack. 
because his cultivation is too high, so if he sees the image wall, he can choose to deal with me, or abandon the deal and just give the image wall to the Guyu clan head. I do not like giving the decision making to others, furthermore I do not believe in integrity. The so-called prestigious reputation is just because the profits are small and are unable to incur his greed. More crucially, it was due to Jiajin Sheng's unique situation, as his cultivation was weak and he was easily manipulated. Of course, Fang Yuan was not going to discuss it. He he, Jiajin Sheng smiled dryly, his suspicions quickly dispelled. That last sentence really resonated within me. They finally made it into the secret cave. Jiajin Sheng immediately noticed the image wall and couldn't help but chuckle aloud, Haha, I guessed right, you didn't lie to me. Fang Yuan stood behind him, lightly giggling but saying nothing. Jiajin Sheng observed the changing images on the wall, as well as the hatred between the flower wine monk and the fourth generation clan lord. He stared at it once and then retreated his sight, sneering, Your fourth generation ancestor doesn't look that strong, huh? Fang Yuan responded by saying, This is nothing. The Guyu clan needed a hero, thus the fourth generation became a hero. Not long after, the Bai family needs a despicable scum, so the fourth generation will become a degenerate. Hero, scum, all these are just people's opinions. Well said, Jia Jin Sheng replied, surveying the cave. What a pity, a rank 5 powerhouse. You've gotten much benefits from him, huh? He said, his gaze fixed on the corpse of the flower wine monk. The inheritance of a rank 5 Gu master was significant. Jia Jin Sheng's heart raced as he considered this, and he couldn't help but wonder. Fang Yuan raised his head. It's been so long, most of the Gu are dead. I only got a liquor worm. Jia Jin Sheng was not convinced. Don't lie to me brother, as long as this deal goes through, we are accomplices, I won't reveal any information. Tell me honestly, what did you gain from this? Fang Yuan laughed bitterly and didn't bother to respond. Jia Jin Sheng's response was expected, which is why Fang Yuan chose him over Jia Fu. Jia Jin Sheng continued to say, at the very least, I know the flower wine monk has a thousandly earth wolf spider, one. That is a rank 5 steed type goo, with a large body and is proficient in burrowing underground. The flower wine monk was a demonic cultivator, and his ability to get about freely was mostly due to this thousandly earth wolf spider, allowing him to escape from the righteous cultivators. Oh, there's something like that, muttered Fang Yuan. He didn't have much knowledge on the flower wine monk. I came to your village last year and heard this legend, and I found it interesting, so I went home and researched about it. The thousandly earth wolf spider and flower wine monk were inseparable, and in my opinion, this cave should have been dug out by the spider. Otherwise, with the Qingmao mountains rich and heavy soil, how can a cave like this form? Jia Jin Sheng smugly said. Yes, there are no other exits here. The thousandly earth wolf spider is massive, he would not have been able to squeeze out from the crack we just walked through. However, there is a possibility that the thousandly earth wolf was plotted against and killed by the fourth generation. Seeing that image wall, even when the flower wine monk was fighting, he did not summon the thousandly earth wolf. That makes the situation even more peculiar. This cave is not formed naturally, thus it has to be created by the flower wine monk. Without the thousandly earth wolf spider, could there be any other methods? Jia Jin Sheng stared at Fang Yuan with misgivings. Fang Yuan's frown tightened into a knot as he became increasingly concerned. He discovered something from Jia Jin Sheng's information, it looks that he had overlooked a critical element. He couldn't help but become lost in contemplation. Jia Jin Sheng was thinking the same thing, the image wall was no longer sufficient for him. He wanted to find the flower wine monk's bequest from Fang Yuan after he established the situation was real. However, something unexpected happened to the two of them at this moment. The image wall, which had been playing indefinitely, abruptly changed its image. The original film was replaced with a seriously damaged, pale bald goo master, who appeared on the wall. He lay helplessly on the ground, his back to the wall. His chest and limbs were severely slashed, but his wounds did not bleed, as if his entire body's blood had been taken. I am the flower wine monk. The bald goo master laughed, his face contorted with rage, future person, no matter who you are. To endure this video and let it play for nearly 100 days, it proves that you have no good will towards the Guyu family. Very well, you shall be my successor my entire inheritance is yours, but I have a condition. You must exterminate the Guyu clan for me. 
Murder the entire clan and leave no one alive. Jia Jin Sheng fell to the ground, his face frozen in disbelief. A rank five powerhouse, the flower wine monk's inheritance. He was astonished, and his mind was spinning and wondering for a second. My god a rank five powerhouse, what does that mean? Rank three is a family elder, rank four is a village lord, and a rank five is a mountain lord, able to rule over a mountain and do as he pleases to think that in this tiny place, there is a rank five goo master's power inheritance. Wait, flower wine monk is a demonic cultivator, so if I inherit his powers, is it inappropriate? No, strength has nothing to do with good or evil. The flower wine monk wants his successor to destroy the Guyu clan, but do I really have to? He's already dead, I just have to take his inheritance and ignore those issues. This is a godsend opportunity. Even with my D-grade talent, if I inherit the flower wine monk's inheritance, I might be able to improve my talent. Those rare talent tracing goo worms, they might be part of the inheritance. If I inherit this fortune and become a rank 4 or 5 Gu master, I'd be able to contest with Chia Fu. Wait I almost forgot, there's an outsider, what should I do? Should I split the inheritance with him? No, kill him only by killing him can I protect this secret. Yes, I should calm him down first, and lie that we're going to split the treasure. Getting rid of his guard, then assaulting him and killing him here. This place is so hidden, it's great. Even if I kill him, nobody would know. Even though he had all of these thoughts, it was only a brief point in his life. He squinted and smiled, as if he had a plan. He gently turned around to face Fang Yuan, but just as he was ready to say anything, he noticed two blue moon blades soaring at him. His pupils had dilated to the size of a pin, the distance was too short for him to reply in time. You. His voice trailed off. The moon blade struck his neck precisely, and his skull flew into the air, new blood flowing forth like a fountain. His body fell to the ground after two seconds. The scalding blood ran down the mountainside, turning the withering vines red. Don't think so much when killing people, Fang Yuan said flatly, then shifted his gaze to the image wall. To think there was such a twist here, how interesting, he muttered, his eyes glowing strangely. Thousandly earth wolf spider, where Li refers to a Chinese mile. A thousand Li is equal to 500 kilometers. Chapter 47, Jia Jin Sheng I didn't mean to kill you. Sigma is the translator, while Sigma is the editor. The rain poured down in torrents. Grey clouds blanketed the sky, and the distant mountains blended into a mass of black ink. The rain curtain connected the heaven S and the earth. Crack. The sky flashed brightly, and a bolt of lightning cut across it like a silver snake, then vanished in an instant. Summer was approaching, and the end of spring's heavy rain seemed to bring a hint of summer warmth. Huge expanses of jade green spear bamboo stood tall and straight on Ching Mao Mountain, resisting the winds and rain, the bodies of the bamboo straight as ever, the tips of the bamboo pointing towards the blue sky dome. Row upon row of innumerable tall pillared houses endured the great rains washing in Guyu village. Outside the village, the caravan had already set out on their journey once again. The rain is heavy, take note of the pavement. Don't fall behind, Gu masters better pull your Gu properly especially the fat beetle, don't block the mountain road anymore. You bunch of mortal martial fighters, better open your eyes wide and pay careful attention. Lose a single thing and you'll be paying for that. There was a continuous stream of shouts rising and falling in succession from the trade wagons. After stopping over at the Guyu village for three days, it was time for this merchant caravan to depart the place and take the mountain trail across Ching Mao Mountain and travel for their next destination. The torrential rain cleansed the heaven and earth, and the roads encircling the settlement were paved with cobblestone, this was still all right. However after roughly 500 meters the roads would deteriorate into a muddy and narrow mountain route. The head of the haughty ostrich chicken was drooping, its colorful rainbow feathers getting wet under the rain, adhering into clumps, becoming the example of a soaked and bedraggled fowl. The obese beetle worm moved its fat big body, traveling incredibly slow forward. The raindrops beat across its black armor, generating streams of water flow, sliding down both sides of its body onto the earth. The shaggy mountain spider was likewise soaked, and its green-black colored fur were glued together. Up the contrary, the toad goo were cheerfully crying out, bringing out the cargo and goo masters, hopping forward up the mountain. And the flying snake had already put away its wings, the big snake's body cheerfully traveling on the muddy water. To safeguard the products and keep them from becoming drenched wet by the rainwater, 
the Goo Masters were demonstrating their magical talents at the moment. On a few giant fat insects stood Goo Masters in the midst. Their two hands were raised high, each with a one-a-stretch golden light worm flying one inch above their palms. The green copper primordial energy evaporated like a stream as it concentrated into the bodies of the one-a-stretch golden light worms. The entire goo flashed like a golden bean, serving as the heart and sustaining a massive faint gold bubble dome. The scope of the hemisphere-shaped bubble dome was quite large. It could totally cover one large beetle worm while still leaving some space. When rain fell on the bubble dome, it bounced off, just like hitting an umbrella. However, this type of one stretch golden light worm ceaselessly drained primal essence, and the rank one goo masters would eventually be unable to handle it. After a while, as expected, a goo master exclaimed, No more, my primeval essence is almost exhausted, who can take over? I can almost instantaneously, a goo master rushed up and took his place. A few goo masters riding mountain spiders or pulling carriages triggered the green silk goo in their bodies. Their hair began to grow rapidly under its influence. A typical person's hair had at least 100,000 strands. A hundred thousand strands of hair, each five to six meters long, intertwined and formed an impenetrable hair raincoat over the goo master's body and the steed. The green silk goo was a rank one goo worm that was frequently utilized for defense. It activates with 30% green copper primeval essence and is not a continual expenditure kind like the one stretch golden light worm. The rank 2 black main goo can be created by combining this green silk goo with the rank 1 black boar goo. When engaged, the black main goo would involve not just hair on the head, but also hair on all pores. Within a few seconds, the goo master's body would be protected by a black mane. Steel main goo, the rank 3 famed goo, was the black main goo's advancement path. Many of the caravan goo masters chose the water spider goo in addition to the one stretch golden light worm and green silk goo. There is a tiny coating of blue raincoat visible on their bodies. Water circulated randomly across the surface of the raincoat. Raindrops would quickly become a part of the raincoat as they hit it. The raincoat on the goo masters' bodies became heavier as they were constantly soaked by the rain. The goo masters would occasionally have to urge the water spider goo to expel the extra water. The thick raincoats would be reduced to their original thin layer at this point. Those mortal warriors, on the other hand, were continuously on the move, keeping an eye on the goods on the muddy route. Most of them donned straw raincoats, but in their haste and disarray, the straw raincoats had little impact in preventing rain, and they were already saturated wet by the rains. The warriors cursed in their hearts, this accursed weather. The mountain trail becomes even more difficult to walk on when it rains. Martial artists may be physically powerful in these weather, but they are still mortals. They would readily get a cold if their bodies were wet by rain and subjected to strenuous labor. Getting a terrible illness was the least of their worries, they might catch repercussions, and if they catch a certain nasty disease, they might become gravely ill and have to cancel the trip. They may perish if they meet slick roads on the mountain tracks, or if they are attacked by wild predators and goo worms. The caravan may be large and contain a large number of goo masters, but every time they went on a journey, there was a significant fall in numbers. Mortal martial artists die the most, but goo masters suffer injuries and casualties as well. If the caravan was to come into large-scale migrating monsters, they could be utterly wiped out. Aside from natural calamities, there were also difficulties caused by humans. There may be people in the villages who do not welcome the caravan. Some villages enjoy robbing strangers. We're leaving. See you next year some of the goo masters sat on the goo worms and turned their bodies to bid farewell. Many people gathered at the village's entrance, sending the caravan away with their gazes. You must return next year, the children said, reluctant to see them go. The adults' expressions were more sophisticated. The road ahead is unforeseen. In these hard times, for those who are able to come to the village next year, how many would still be familiar faces? Be it at the merchant caravan or in the village, it is not easy to earn a living. As the wagon moved further away, the crowd dispersed. The cheery and jovial market mood had also vanished. The original location, where tents and stores had been set up, was now a shambles. The throng had repeatedly strolled on the grass carpet, trampled away the grass and dirt soil. Rainwater impacted the surface, generating mud and countless small puddles that gathered muddy water. In addition, there was a lot of trash left over. Fang Yuan stood alone on a lonely mountainside, watching the merchant caravan pass by. 
The merchant caravan slithered over the narrow mountain road under the grey heavy rain, slowly entering the dark mountain forest, like a fat and colourful flower python. Ah, the heaven s are sending their blessings, sighed Fang Yuan softly. He stood patiently amid the rain, holding a butter yellow paper umbrella. Fang Yuan wore a simple flax fabric clothing, his body slim, his skin the pale whiteness of a 15-year-old teenager, and a settled cluster of clean and short black hair atop his head. Under his cover, the ends of his hair moved slightly in the breeze. While others were cursing the weather, he was mourning its timely appearance. He murdered Jia Jin Sheng and cleaned up the scene last night, but because it happened so unexpectedly, there were going to be areas of carelessness. Because the cave is not ventilated, the stench cannot disperse quickly, especially with the bloody smell. This rain cleaned up the air and atmosphere, lowering the odds of being revealed by smell tracking methods significantly. The crack would almost certainly have a tiny cascade of water coming down it, and once the fresh water vapor diluted the air, he would be safe for the time being. Of course, as time passes, the likelihood of being revealed grows. There were so many goo worms and investigative procedures in this planet that Fang Yuan only knew a fraction of them. As the rain fell on the yellow umbrella, it made a pitter-patter sound. Streams of water then streamed down into the limestones beneath Fang Yuan's feet, hitting and causing splashes as they followed the curve of the umbrella. When the caravan rounded a turn and vanished into the woods, Fang Yuan did not display relief, but rather a grim expression. Although Jia Jin Shang's cultivation was weak and had little talent, he had a special status. The caravan's people are all busy with business, thus no one found out that he's missing. But once some time passes, it'd definitely be found out. By then, Jia Fu would return to investigate, and the real challenge would be then. The Jia family had purposefully arranged for Jia Jin Sheng and Jia Fu to be on the same caravan, he had deep intentions. In terms of cultivation, they are worlds apart. In terms of cunningness, they are also incomparable. Such an arrangement is to inflict a blow on Jia Jin Sheng and let him be clear of reality, and live life peacefully. At the same time, he is testing Jia Fu's nature, for if Jia Jin Sheng never truly understood his father's intentions. Although he had some intelligence, he only managed to scratch the surface of a merchant's wits, what a pity, a pity of such a good pawn piece. Fang Yuan felt guilty in his heart. He could readily see past the surface and see the true essence of the situation because of his 500 years of experience. When he observed the two arguing that night, he realized the intricate relationship between Jia Jin Sheng and Jia Fu, and he formulated a hazy plan in his heart from then on. Jia Jin Sheng was an ideal pawn in his scheme. His cultivation was poor, but he maintained a prominent position in the caravan, and while he had some wits, he lacked experience, making Fang Yuan an easy target. This pawn, if in control, would be highly beneficial. For one thing, he could use his relationship to establish a robust smuggling network, ready to usurp valuables from future assassinations. Second, Fang Yuan might remain in the background and utilize the picture wall to incite discord among the three families of the Qing Mao Mountain resulting in a civil war and allowing him to reap the benefits. Third, Fang Yuan could count on him to gain access to the Jia family's inner workings. The upcoming Jia family feud has prompted a large-scale Gu combat tournament, it will be a massive affair with numerous benefits to be gained. Fang Yuan might exploit this to get the best possible reward for himself. My cultivation is still too low, restraining me greatly in doing things. If there was a pawn for me to use, I can do some things that I cannot attempt myself, it is not only convenient but also lowers the risk of doing so. If I get exposed, I can simply discard the pawn and stay safe myself. The surrounding people know the situation well and are loyal to the family, thus they aren't good to manipulate. Only an outsider like Jia Jin Sheng can be used more efficiently to execute my plans. Unfortunately, I did not expect the flower wine monk to leave behind his power inheritance. The flower wine monk is a rank 5 goo master, and his heirloom is unquestionably more valuable than this pawn. Of course, it would be ideal if he could have the best of both worlds, but in the face of such treasure, Jia Jin Sheng became uncontrollable and had to be discarded. Nothing lasts forever in this world, Fang Yuan muttered, shaking his head. The bequest of the flower wine monk appeared, disrupting Fang Yuan's initial objectives. Furthermore, after the adjustments to the image wall, the movies and images were all gone, leaving only a bloody line instructing Fang Yuan to smash the image wall and disclose a tunnel entrance. 
he would be able to obtain the inheritance if he followed the trail. The blood lettering only lasted a few breaths before disappearing, and the picture wall reverted to being just another mountain wall. Fang Yuan had no time to smash the wall because he had spent the entire night cleaning up the murder scene. Killing Jia Jin Sheng in a hurry, this would leave many problems for me in the future, and I am but only temporarily safe. Although I succeeded in getting rid of the evidence, there is bound to be trouble coming for me in the future. In this case, I would have to change my way of exposing the liquor worm. I cannot go to the secret cave behind the wall crack either. I have to stay in the mountain village for some time to anticipate investigation in the near future. Feng Yuan turned back and walked in the rain towards the village, holding his umbrella. But this is fine too. I can spend a large amount of primeval stones during this period to refine to middle stage primeval essence. Using it, I can nurture my aperture and break through into the middle stage. Once I reached the middle stage, my power will double, allowing me to get the inheritance more easily and with greater confidence. A demonic cultivator's inheritance was not as soft and gentle as a righteous cultivator's, for there were frequently dangerous tests and chores, and if one did not pass, they would have to pay the price with their life. The world is difficult to predict, but that is precisely what makes it interesting, Fang Yuan said coldly. The green mountain beneath the heavy rain continued indefinitely, its green blended with grey, appearing suffocating and heavy. A gust of wind blew, and the raindrops slanted slightly, landing on Fang Yuan's shoulder and assaulting him with a chilling burst. He considered Jia Jin Sheng once more. Jia Jin Sheng, actually, I, did not want to kill you, he sighed in his heart. What a squandering of a nice pawn. Chapter 48, A Little Adorable. It rained for four days before finally ceasing. The sun climbed high into the sky, tearing away the rain curtain as if to reveal summer itself. The scent of summer had begun to permeate the air. Temperatures gradually rose as the weather grew increasingly brilliant and cloudless, wiping away the emotional air of spring. The vibrant dragon pill crickets had withdrawn in the spring night, retreating away into the deep ground to lay eggs. The green spear bamboo located on Ching Mao Mountain had begun to grow aggressively, with a noticeable increase in height almost every day. The grass and trees started to turn from emerald green to a dark green color. The never-ending green mountains began to appear more verdant and lush. For thousands of kilometers, the sky was perfectly pure and blue. Bang, 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 bang. Punches and kicks could be heard on the academy's training grounds. Fang Yuan kicked Gu Yu Mo Bei in the abdomen after exchanging over ten punches, causing him to take five to six steps backwards and leave the prescribed circle drawn on the arena. The martial arts instructor stood in front of the stage, assessing the situation. When he saw this, he instantly announced, Gu Yu Mo Bei has exited the stage, Gu Yu Fang Yuan wins for the 33rd time in a row. Hmph, I lost to you again, Gu Yu Mo Bei grumbled, his gaze fixed on Fang Yuan, but don't be arrogant. One day, I will defeat you. I can already feel it, that day is nearing. Fang Yuan gave him a blank stare before his eyes drooped downwards. That kick earlier caused you to have internal bleeding. I'd advise you to treat that injury first. This minor injury is nothing, Gu Yu Mo Bei retorted halfway before his demeanor changed and he vomited a mouthful of blood. His face was pale, this was the first time he had received this level of harm. His eyes were filled with anxiety. The martial arts instructor rushed over to calm him down. Don't worry about this level of injury, you just need to rest for a few days. Just stop practicing your punches and do not do vigorous exercises during this period. As soon as he finished speaking, two healing Gu masters waiting outside came over and methodically assisted Gu Yu Mo Bei. Gu Yu Mo Bei could not dare to say anything else, but his eyes were filled with rage, contempt, remorse, and indignation as he glared at Fang Yuan. Mo Bei has good martial techniques, but he couldn't beat Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan is too good, basically no one can beat him. Mo Bei actually vomited blood, how scary. I don't want to fight a guy like this. Sigh, but the instructor said today is practice combat, up on the arena each of us needs to go up and fight once. The students stood outside the arena, some terrified of Fang Yuan, some groaning incessantly, some pale, and others nervous. Some of them were hurt. Some clutched their injured faces, while others clutched their limbs, panting for air. Others sat on the ground and rubbed their thigh. Next, the instructor cried, seeing that no challengers were approaching. However, no one responded. Only Gu Yu Mo Bei, Gu Yu Qi Chen, and Gu Yu Fang Zhang were usually brave enough to challenge Fang Yuan. 
But these three had already been defeated. The pupils fell silent, and some even withdrew their steps slightly. When the instructor saw their terrified demeanor, he frowned. He couldn't help but think of the academy's elders' words, which were, these days, Fang Yuan has gotten too dominant, we have to suppress him. The other students cannot even raise their heads under his pressure, and if this goes on, the courage in their hearts will be simmered. Our academy nurtures courageous tigers and wolves to fight enemies, not fearful sheeps and lambs. What's wrong with all of you? No matter how strong he is, Fang Yuan is only 15 years old, he's one of your peers he has the same age as you, eats the same food as you and drinks the same water. He does not have three heads or six arms, he's not a monster pluck up your courage and show me the pride of the Guyu clan within you the teacher yelled, attempting to instill confidence in the students to act. But he is too strong, we cannot beat him. The classmates who fought him are in such a pitiful state. Mo Bei got beaten until he vomited blood. Fang Yuan is getting more ruthless with his strikes, instructor, we do not dare to fight him. The pupils muttered softly, retorting weakly. The instructor was stomping his feet in rage. These illiterate youngsters. He was obvious as a bystander. Fang Yuan had fought 33 battles in a row with no breaks in between. Despite repeatedly changing his breathing, his stamina had already been exhausted. Fang Yuan's brutal attacks prove this even more, he can't take it easy like before, and he's losing control of his strength and the situation. When someone tries harder, his exhaustion becomes visible. He may be vanquished on stage with just a few more people. Once Fang Yuan is defeated, his domineering influence will be significantly decreased, the student's courage will be heightened, and the motivation to suppress Fang Yuan will be realized. However, the kids were put off by Fang Yuan's stern demeanor. Sometimes it is not a powerful foe that defeats a person, but one's own heart. The instructor was worried in his thoughts, yet he kept motivating them. But he wasn't very adept with words. Initially, he spoke these statements to arouse the zeal of the youngsters and to rouse some challengers. But now that he's said it so many times, the kids are completely numb. Fang Yuan folded his arms and glared coldly at this. Despite being in the center of the stage, he acted as if he were a bystander. The lecturer had been encouraging for a long time, but the pupils were still staring at each other and not moving. The martial arts instructor was enraged and helpless. He looked at Fang Yuan with unease and said, Fang Yuan, you're also at fault. Your blows are getting more vicious among classmates, you should be more gentle and friendly, how can you deal such vicious blows? Be careful from now on and attack carefully. If you cause another classmate to vomit blood, I will declare your loss and evict you from the stage. Instructor, you are wrong. Practicing and fighting, we naturally have to give it our all, otherwise how can it achieve the aim of training? Fang Yuan snorted, his gaze not showing any weakness, looking directly at the instructor, don't tell me that when we are in battle, we also have to request our enemies to be more gentle and friendly. Humph, your attacks are vicious, you are causing harm to your classmates, and you dare to use twisted logic the instructor exclaimed. Instructor, you're wrong again. Coldly chuckling, Fang Yuan said, you arranged this practice match and raised the winning prize to 20 primeval stones. Without your encouragement, would these people have gotten hurt? Bastard, the martial arts instructor scowled, do you still want the prize or not? If you argue any further, even if you win first place, I will declare you a loser. You are so uncooperative and antisocial, and you dare to argue with your teachers, you have no rights to claim the 20 primeval stones as reward. Fang Yuan burst out laughing. It is but a competition that merely gives 20 primeval stones, do you think I give a damn? He turned around and walked away. He went out of the center of the arena, under the distressed gaze of the class. Despite the fact that he was unable to sell the picture wall, Fang Yuan still possessed hundreds of primal stones. Furthermore, he was not looking for primitive stones this time. He when the instructor saw Fang Yuan go down the platform, he was speechless, his face filled with amazement and perplexity. Shouldn't a 15-year-old be competitive and full of vigor? With Fang Yuan's combat abilities, shouldn't his character be even more so? How could he simply withdraw from the tournament in this manner? Furthermore, because Fang Yuan has no background, he should be careful with primal stones. Why couldn't the 20 primordial stones entice him? At this time, the martial arts instructor was unclear about what to do. Fang Yuan did not enter the trap and immediately exited the stage. The instructor instantly realized that he couldn't help Fang Yuan. With his status, 
He couldn't immediately confront Fang Yuan and push him onto the platform, could he? The students around Fang Yuan retreated, keeping their distance. There was no one around Fang Yuan as he stood on the grounds. With him at the center, the five-step radius surrounding him became a vacuum. What a shame. They could hear Fang Yuan panting if they were close to him. My stamina is depleted, murmured Fang Yuan. Despite his external demeanor, his body was slightly shaking beneath his garments. After all, he was only 15 years old and lacked the necessary goo worm. He had reached his maximum after 33 matches. Despite his extensive fighting experience from his previous existence, the other kid's combat skills had developed greatly during this period. Fang Yuan could already feel a growing sense of pressure from them. Fang Yuan's attacks represented this kind of pressure. His strikes became more powerful as he increasingly lost control of his might. In comparison to the past, when they were still too weak and he could easily overcome them, the children would only get minor bruises. But, as his grip on the arena weakened, he had to hit harder to retain his image. Experiences, after all, not omnipotent. Any thoughts or technique require a body with sufficient foundation before the value can be apparent. Fang Yuan's eyes widened as he said. In reality, he had long seen through the martial arts instructor's mind. Fang Yuan looked unsurprised, as if he had expected the academy elder's pressure on him from the start. After he killed Gao Wan, the number of those who dared to challenge him shrank. When he extorted them, many more people enslaved by Fang Yuan's dominance did not dare to fight, and they turned over their primal stones obediently. After a long time, Fang Yuan's unrivaled image would emerge. This would cause psychological stress in the children and make them unsure of their martial arts techniques. The academy elder did not want to see this. Fang Yuan was needed to push and force the kids to progress, not to fully eradicate their desire to fight. He desired to witness Fang Yuan's defeat. When Fang Yuan was vanquished, the picture of invincibility he had created would be destroyed instantaneously. It would also awaken the students' fighting spirit at the same time. It would shape their wills to be invincible after certain defeats. However, Fang Yuan need this type of pressure in order to more easily obtain primal stones. If he was defeated, the kids would recognize his weakness and attack all at once. Despite having an abundance of primal stones in his possession, Fang Yuan's main source of revenue was extortion. Without this supply, he would have to rely on his reserves. Thus, Fang Yuan's appearance in the arena and 33 straight triumphs were purely for the sake of maintaining his deterrence towards the pupils, not for the reward of 20 primeval stones. If he avoided combat from the outset, he would expose his vulnerability, if the battle raged on, he would expose his weakness. What are you all waiting for? Why is nobody getting up on stage? Go on the first prize is 20 primeval stones, you all don't want it anymore, exclaimed the instructor after breaking out of his reverie. The other pupils began to get more motivated. Fang Yuan had already exited the stage, which was a tremendous boulder off their worries. I'll go, I'll come. Two kids pushed their way up to the stage and began sparring. Sigh, if I had known this, I would have waited and not rushed up the stage. Then I would not have been thrown off the stage by Fang Yuan. What a pity, to think Fang Yuan left. He's really daring, see even the instructor is at a loss for what to do with him. When the instructor heard their whispers, he felt his reputation crumble. He was exceedingly agitated in his heart and desired to fully punish Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, had done nothing wrong and was free to leave the stage on his own terms. The instructor seemed powerless as well as moody. Finally, he turned to face Fang Yuan, who was staring at him angrily. Such boorish methods, this instructor is a little cute, Fang Yuan thought as his lips curled up into an angle. Chapter 49, they are not terrified about Fang Yuan escaping their hands. A set of somber eyes were fixed on the distant training fields. The academy elder stood at the third floor window, surveying what had happened at the arena. He squinted intensely. He felt a strange feeling in his heart the moment Fang Yuan exited the stage, not expecting Fang Yuan to do this. This lad, he is rather hard to catch. He is proficient in the academy's rules, and normally will not commit any wrongdoings. Although he sleeps in class, once he is asked a question he can answer properly, leaving others with no flaws to pick on. Trying to get a hold of a weakness of his to suppress his dominance is going to be difficult. The academy elder couldn't help but develop a slight dislike for Fang Yuan. As a teacher, he instinctively preferred diligent and intelligent students and despised misbehaving students who did not follow the rules. 
but, as the academy elder for so many years, he had a wealth of expertise and had seen a wide range of students. He had seen very obedient ones among them who obeyed orders without question. There were also individuals who produced difficulties at all hours of the day and night, consistently breaking the regulations. His heart had already become as quiet as water, unaffected by anything. Simultaneously, he carved the phrase as a teacher, one must treat all students fairly into the right corner of his desk and adopted it as his slogan. He'd never felt so contempt for a student before. The academy elder, who felt that sense of dread in his heart, was likewise taken aback. In past years, he was able to handle even the most wicked children with a big heart, tolerating their actions. But why, when it came to Fang Yuan, did he lose his sense of impartiality? He thought about it again and again until he recognized why. This young man named Fang Yuan was born with arrogance. According to the principles, Fang Yuan did not respect his teachers because of their position. Earlier, he not only disobeyed, but also scolded the martial arts instructor in public. In fact, such instances of retorting against teachers were prevalent in earlier years. Those kids, on the other hand, were continually upset. They were either defiant, enraged, or obstinate. The academy senior was certain that the more agitated the students were, the more afraid they were in their hearts. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, was not. He had no fear in his heart, as if he had seen through the academy's trickery. His expression was aloof, and even after he left the stage, his look remained unchanged, as if he had done nothing significant. Yes, he regarded defying his teachers as a little and irrelevant affair. In layman's words, he was unafraid. It was only at this time that the academy elder became dissatisfied with him and developed a dislike for him. The academy elder could put up with a student more rebellious than Fang Yuan, or a youngster ten times his age. This was due to the fact that these pupils were aware of dread and were acting in response to their disturbed emotions. They would be readily persuaded and would not lose control as long as they were afraid and impulsive. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, was not. He was calm and uncaring, and he did not respect his teachers. He was disrespectful. How can someone who has no reverence for the clan, even if raised, be valuable to the tribe? Once they appear, this sort of person, they have to be suppressed, they must be suppressed otherwise, his existence will create a sense of irresistibility in the students. In the long run, it will affect the others, causing them to lose their reverence for their teachers, and as the academy, how else are we going to manage the students? The academy elder narrowed his eyes as he made up his mind, but his visage instantly changed to a concerned frown. How was he going to keep Fang Yuan at bay? Fang Yuan had done nothing wrong, and he had no weaknesses to exploit. Fang Yuan's clever demeanor made him feel vulnerable. He'd never met a student who was so well-versed in the academy's norms and procedures. He was always fair to all students as the academy elder. He couldn't be a slum gangster and deliberately cause trouble with a teenager like Fang Yuan. He had put his faith in the martial arts instructor, but he was now severely disillusioned. It seems that to suppress Fang Yuan's domination, we can only wait until all the other students advance to rank one middle stage. The talents of a Gu master have the most influence on their growth. With his extensive expertise as an academy senior, he had estimated in his heart that Gu Yu Feng Zheng, Qi Chen, and M O Bei had the best chance of advancing first. They were in a rank and 2B grades, and with the support of their seniors, they had no shortage of primal stones. They were most likely to be the first to move to rank 1 middle stage cultivation regardless of which of the three they were. Gu Yu Feng Zheng, Qi Chen, and M O Bei are our hopeful seeds this season, the academy elder said looking around the stadium. With his trained vision, he could detect that, while the students appeared to be standing nonchalantly in the stadium, they had already silently separated into three factions. Gu Yu Qi Chen and a swarm of similarly aged clansmen crowded around him in one circle. Gu Yu Feng Zheng was at the heart of the second circle, and the clan leader's faction's younger generation was quietly backing this a grade talent genius. Gu Yu M O Bei lead the third circle. He'd already received treatment for his internal damage and was standing on the arena with a pale face. His classmates next to him were inquiring about his health. This is what it means to let them compete with each other, the academy elder exclaimed as he saw the three factions. Allowing the kids to compete freely was done not just to develop their battle instincts, but also to pre-select the leader type characters. Previously, they had to wait until the end of the year to be able to develop their own circles. However, because of Fang Yuan's appearance this year, 
his extortion has accelerated the divide. Fang Zhang, Mo Bei, and Qi Chen were the only ones who dared to compete against Fang Yuan. After a long period of subliminal influence, the other kids would naturally consider these three as the leaders. These three social circles would be the layout of the future family's higher-ups if nothing went wrong. But these factions are still not stable. Within them, there are still students moving around. Once the three take the lead and advance to the middle stage first, I will give them the positions of class chairman and vice chairman. With that differentiation, they would gain authority, and this will strengthen their social circles, the head of the school said. Of course, there was someone who was not a member of either faction. There was only one individual, and his name was Fang Yuan. It's human instinct to gravitate toward stronger folks. Despite the fact that Fang Yuan extorted and acted against the students, there were a number of young people who wished to associate with him. Fang Yuan, on the other hand, rejected them. Only those who were beneficial to him were pawns, and these kids were far too valuable. This was another reason why the academy elder despised Fang Yuan. He was too antisocial and unwilling to join the team. The clan's hold over such people as him was not as strong as it was over the other kids. The school elder's eyes returned to Fang Yuan in the arena. Fang Yuan stood alone in one corner, hands behind his back, slightly closed eyelids, letting the kids to compete for their prize. Despite the intense rivalry, his expression remained unchanged. His surroundings were empty, and no child was eager to stand next him. He obviously did not want these folks around him. Fang Yuan stood alone, engulfed in loneliness. He remained outside of the factions. But I don't have to be too concerned because this Fang Yuan is still young and can be changed gradually, the academy elder said thoughtfully. Next up will be the establishment of the class chairman and vice chairman. A year later, we will split into groups, creating team leaders and assistant leaders. Every academic year also has all sorts of honor and rewards, like the small red flower award, blue neckcloth prize, and five outstanding student prize. He wants to cultivate, so he needs resources, so he has to compete for these positions and prizes. Throughout the years, the academy elder had gradually realized something. When a new clan member is born, the clan brainwashes them. They would first be taught the clan's highest value system. They would next go through moral education, learning about the value and beauty of kinship, friendship, and love. Following that, kids would be taught honor, and many resources, such as prizes, would be used to draw them as they grew up. They would identify and enlist the most loyal clansmen into their factions using the family's given roles. Do not dismiss minor responsibilities such as chairman or vice chairman, because if they have one of these positions, they will be part of the clan's administration. On the one hand, such a system with constant influence brings about the benefits of having authority and the sweetness of power, while on the other hand, it brings about the challenge of detaching from the system. Who can escape this system with a carrot in one hand and a stick in the other? Even the most outcast or lonely members of the family would eventually become a part of the family. One who lacks loyalty will be fostered into one who is loyal. They would continue develop in the absence of kinship, friendship, or love. This is the system's power. This is the strength of rules. This is how the clan survives. 50th Chapter, The Middle Stage Night has fallen. The moon appeared among the clouds like a silver plate. The surroundings were ornamented with sparsely dispersed stars. Guyu Mo Bei stood in the courtyard, raising his head, his eyes sparkling in the moonlight. Little brother, I heard you got hurt today, his sister Guyu Mo Yan said from behind him. Sister, are you worried that I'll have long-term trauma from being beaten until I vomited blood today? Mo Bei turned around and curled his lips. Mo Yan's heart relaxed as she saw her brother laughing. Despite her genuine concern, she responded, No way, big sis here understands you best. Good brother, you have an indomitable will, the future head of our MO family, how can you be scared off by such a minor injury? He he he, I knew sister doted on me the most, MO Bay laughed shyly as he rubbed the back of his head. You know what, sister? This 15-year-old teen's eyes glowed brightly in the moonlight. Although I failed this time, I heard Fang Yuan panting during the match. Back then he easily beaten me in two or three strikes with a calm and composed manner. But his gasping already revealed his weakness. He is definitely not as strong as everyone else thinks. One day, I will defeat him fair and square. Good, as expected of a good man from my M.O. bloodline, M.O. Yin said, caressing her brother's head, a worried expression on her face, but you suffered internal injuries, 
so please don't practice your martial arts these few days. Don't touch my head sister, I am already old enough. Emo Bay shrugged his head, using an unhappy tone, I understand what you are saying, I have a plan. These few days, I'm going to nurture my aperture walls. To completely break through from initial stage to middle stage and obtain the position of class chairman, and suppress Fang Yuan's dominance. I'll let him know that, what truly matters to a Gu master's cultivation is still talent. I'm glad you can think this way. I was only a vice chairman last time. If you manage to become chairman, it will fulfill my regrets too. Don't worry sister. The position of chairman, I certainly must obtain it. In the Qi family, at the same period, there was just one torch inside the secret room, affixed to an entrance in the limestone walls. The candle remained up, illuminating this small space. Gu Yu Qi Lian, one of the two powerful seniors, sat across from his grandson, Gu Yu Qi Cheng. The two sat on a praying mat, their shadows dancing on the ground with the flickering of the candle. Gu Yu Qi Lian extended his hand and touched Qi Cheng's abdomen with his palm. Gu Yu Qi Chen's face was tense, his mind entering his aperture and controlling the ripples in his primordial sea with all his focus. There are no two identical tree leaves in our earth. There is no identical primordial essence, just as there is no identical Gu masters. When primeval essence from an external source enters the aperture, the inherent resistance of the original primeval essence in the aperture is increased. If Gu Yu Qi Cheng does not repress it and instead allows his primeval essence to resist, the essences will clash. Such a strong reaction can severely damage the aperture. The primal sea of the aperture is the base and roots of a Gu master's cultivation, and it is crucial. When the aperture is injured, one's cultivation may suffer, but if the damage is great, their latent talent may suffer as well. The Gu master would perish immediately if the aperture was totally smashed. Gu Yu Qi Lian gradually ceased transferring his primeval energy after a while, gently reclaiming his hand. Gu Yu Qi Cheng exhaled deeply, his stiff body easing. Thank you grandfather, for nurturing my aperture and transfusing primeval essence to me every three days. It has been hard on you. His forehead was covered in sweat, and he took a deep breath and said, This is inevitable. Your talent is only C grade, so if we rely on your ability alone to rise to middle stage, it'll take a long time. The time will usually be twice of a B grade, and four times of an A grade. In such a situation, your talent will be exposed. Thus, even if this method is dangerous, we have to use it. Grandson understands grandfather's intentions. As long as you understand. The old man sighed, this method also has another sequela. After your aperture has been nurtured by my silver primeval essence, even though the silver primeval essence has a greater effect, it is still an external source of primeval essence to you. Henceforth, even if your aperture walls change from a light wall to a water wall, it will still be mixed with my energy. The more external energy there is, the more impure your aperture will be. Gu Yu Qi Cheng bit his lower lip and said, Grandfather, I am willing to sacrifice my future prospects for the sake of the Qi family's future. Gu Yu Qi Lian smiled and stroked his whiskers. It is good that you have such thoughts. But the heaven s always leave a glimmer of hope for you, for you are not hopeless yet. If we can find the cleansing water goo, it will be able to cleanse your aperture walls and flush out all the external energies in your aperture sea, removing this sequela. In addition, I have also used my relationships to search for a liquor worm for you. This worm is able to help a rank 1 goo master refine their primeval essence and raise it by one small realm. In this way the primeval essence that is refined will be your body's own primeval essence and not an external one. Using this way to nurture your aperture leaves no repercussions and risks, it is a much better nurturing effect. Gu Yu Qi Lian was ecstatic. Thank you grandfather. However, the liquor worm is hard to find. Among the rank 1 Gu worms, the liquor worm, Borgu, and bookworm etc., are all extremely rare Gu. Once they appear in the market they would be snatched up immediately. Of course. There are also some goo in this world that are rumored to change a goo master's talent. But at this age, grandfather has never seen one, only hearing occasional rumors about them. The old man went on to explain. The gentle night winds drifted in through the windows and into the chamber. Gu Yu Feng Zheng sat on his bed, eyes closed, holding a primordial stone in both hands. The green copper primeval sea was roaring in the absence of breezes, with the waves pounding against the white aperture walls. He possessed A-level talent, and his primordial essence took up 80% of the aperture. 
His natural healing rate was twice that of Fang Yuan. With such a god-blessed advantage, he is already close to rank 1 middle stage. Phew. Gu Yu Feng Zhang breathed out a breath of air and opened his eyes a few moments later. The moon was bright and the stars were few outside the window, which overlooked a row of blue-green bamboo dwellings. A peaceful and harmonious scene. Time always flies when cultivating, Feng Zhang whispered gently, and it was now late into the night. Two heaps of rock powder dropped onto the floor in front of his bed as he gently opened his hands. When the essence of a primal stone was fully extracted, it would change into a mound of powder. Feng Zhang scowled as he looked at the powder mound. He took out his money bag, which was nearly empty. When he opened it, he discovered three ancient stones inside. Feng Zhang would retrieve three pieces from the academy every seven days as resources, but because Feng Yuan would steal one, he only had two left every week. Uncle and aunt would also provide him with living expenses, but just three stones every seven days. Isn't it enough just to have these primordial stones? Fang Zheng was determined to outdo his brother Fang Yuan, so he approached his uncle and aunt several times to ask for some primeval stones. After a while, his aunt would seek him out for a heart-to-heart, -heart, telling him about how poor the family was and how they were having cash flow problems, with no extra money. Feng Zheng has lost interest in asking questions since then. Father and mother are already doing all they can to support my cultivation. I cannot make things difficult for them and ask for more primeval stones. I only have three left. I can only be more thrifty. If I use one piece a day, I'll have enough for three days. I have a feeling that in three or four days, I will definitely advance to the middle stage. The only thing is, what is Big Brother's progress now? Feng Zheng subconsciously glanced towards the academy living quarters. I have a grade talent, while Big Brother only has C grade talent. His speed is definitely slower than me. Big Brother is not my match this time Big Brother, I will let you know the true power of an A grade talent. Feng Zheng squeezed his fists in thought. Dormitory at the academy. Feng Yuan's door was firmly shut. He was sitting on his bed in the dark, not asleep. Sleep cannot be replaced by the cultivation of a Gu master. Feng Yuan would normally have fallen asleep by this point. But while he was cultivating earlier today, he felt like he was just one step away from middle stage. I might as well not sleep tonight, I'm going straight to middle stage, he said, his eyes shining with purpose. He soon closed his eyes and his mind entered the aperture. Primeval Sea contains 44% green copper. The liquor worm had just purified them all into pale green colored middle stage primordial essence. Rise. With a thought. The serene green copper primordial sea stirred. The ruckus grew bigger and bigger until waves emerged. Splashing, splashing, splashing. The tides collided, pushing towards the encircling aperture walls. Most of the primordial essence, like smashing on a reef, would break into emerald waves and merge back into the sea. A small bit of primordial essence was dissipated, transforming into a speck of invisible energy that penetrated the white-colored light aperture wall. Rise again. Fang Yuan reflected as the emerald waves grew in size. Previously, the waves resembled bunnies and dogs, but now they resembled battalions of horses moving towards the aperture walls. A horse-like dragon, the waves resembling heaven. The primordial essence was swiftly depleted, and the water level dropped precipitously. Splashing, splashing, splashing. The waves pounded ceaselessly, eventually causing a shift. The white wall shook violently, the initially gentle white color radiating an eye-piercing brilliance. Feng Yuan was thrilled to see this picture since he knew the vital portion had arrived, and he swiftly activated all of his primeval essence to dash for the barriers. The white light became stronger, the light rays becoming twisted and tangling together, giving the impression of thickness. After more than ten breaths, white strips of light bands erupted on the light wall, colliding with each other like ceaseless water. They proceeded to join and merge as they collided, generating a white streaming light. Finally, the streaming light converged into a single point and totally engulfed the light wall. The white light diminished, and the aperture's original white light wall vanished, replaced by a layer of spherical-shaped white water wall. The surface of the light wall was smooth and free of contaminants. The water wall, on the other hand, was thicker than the light wall, with light waves flowing and flickering on it. The primeval sea was restored to calm, with the aperture still containing 20% primal essence. I advanced to the middle stage, Fang Yuan exclaimed as he opened his eyes. The strong sunlight crept in between the curtain holes. Unbeknownst to them, the night had passed and it was already dawn. 
Chapter 51, Reverend Insanity